America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. America this morning. New court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are unsealed. What they reveal about the high-powered people in his orbit, from Bill Clinton to Michael Jackson, and new details about an accusation against Prince Andrew. The reaction this morning. Breaking overnight, two arrests in the killing of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend in Texas on Christmas week. The father and son now charged in their murders, the possible motive, and how police tracked down the suspects. Growing concerns about a wider conflict in the Middle East after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens killed. The clues as to who may be responsible. The investigation into that deadly airport disaster. A passenger jet bursting into flames after hitting a smaller plane on the runway in Tokyo. What we've now learned about the flight crew. Chaos in the courtroom. Oh what set off this violence in Las Vegas? The judge attacked. Later, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. And the chaos as people try to get their hands on those trendy pink Stanley tumblers. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea Fujii in for Rhiannon. We begin with reaction to the Jeffrey Epstein documents. The names of several people connected to the disgraced financier and sex offenders were unsealed last night. The names in those documents include Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew. This morning, we're learning why attorneys wanted to depose former President Clinton in a now settled defamation case relating to allegations against sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his one-time paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell. And we know that Clinton has been publicly associated with Epstein before. The first batch of previously sealed court documents related to Epstein were made public last night. One from a lawsuit filed by Virginia Gouffre. She's one of the women who say they were abused at Epstein's home in Florida, New York, and on a private Caribbean island. Gouffre's attorneys sought to depose Clinton as part of her 2016 lawsuit against Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, because her attorneys argued Clinton is a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Epstein and disapprove Maxwell's claims. This is just the first of what's coming out about these names that have been associated with Jeffrey Epstein for a long time. Gouffre made no allegations of wrongdoing against Clinton, contradicting a previous claim when she said she flew with Clinton and the Secret Service in a helicopter. According to Maxwell's unsealed deposition, she said the allegations that Clinton had dinner on Epstein's private island were 100% false. Without uh, Virginia Giffre's lawsuit, this stuff wouldn't have been exchanged because it was relevant to the claims. And now the court has decided there's no good basis to keep this stuff under wraps from the public. After Epstein's arrest in 2019, a Clinton spokesperson did denied the former president knew about Epstein's crimes, denied Clinton was ever on Epstein's island, and said Clinton had not communicated with Epstein in more than a decade. Also in the documents, deposition from a witness who said she met Michael Jackson and magician David Copperfield during her time with Epstein. Epstein died in jail while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges in 2019. His death was ruled a suicide. Maxwell was convicted of sex trafficking and other crimes for helping Epstein abuse teenage girls. She's serving a 20-year sentence, which she is appealing. In a statement overnight, her lawyers said she has consistently and vehemently maintained her innocence. Breaking overnight, two people have been arrested in connection with the murder of a pregnant teenager from Texas and her boyfriend. The suspects are a father and his 19-year-old son. Police in San Antonio say it appears to have been a drug deal gone bad. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found shot inside a car last week. She disappeared just before she was scheduled to give birth. Police say her cell phone helped them track down the suspects. One of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was um, Savannah's cell phone. With that information, the detective, uh, the detectives were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. The police say they believe the son killed the couple and the father helped move the bodies. Turning to the Middle East, major new concerns this morning about a wider conflict in the region after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens of people were killed during a memorial for a top Iranian general. So, who is to blame? This morning we have some clues. ABC's Ike Ajachi is here now with more. Ike, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Officials are still trying to determine exactly how many people died, and some say more than 100. 
The Biden administration saying it's likely ISIS behind the two explosions, triggering panic on the streets of a crowded Iranian city. The two powerful bombs detonating during a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general Qasem Soleimani, killed four years ago by a U.S. drone strike and considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups that included Hamas and Hezbollah. The scene outside a local hospital, chaotic, as the wounded are frantically lifted down from emergency vehicles and pushed into the hospital on stretchers. Officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks and detonated remotely, the attack killing scores of people and wounding over 200 more, the largest in that country in more than 40 years. Iranian officials immediately accusing Israel and quote criminal America of the attacks, saying Israel will pay the price. U.S. officials denying involvement. I'm not going to speak for another nation. I would just tell you that we have no indication that Israel was in any way involved in this. The attack comes just one day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Saleh al-Aruri, in Lebanon, raising fears of a wider war in the region. We remain uh, incredibly concerned, as we have been from the outset of this conflict, about the risk of the conflict spreading into other fronts. Now, Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. U.S. officials say they were not told in advance of the strike. Andrea, back to you. Ike, thank you. Police in Newark, New Jersey, say the murder of a Muslim leader does not appear to be a hate crime. Imam Hassan Sharif was shot outside his mosque. Neighbors who gathered last night blamed crime in the area. A $25,000 reward is offered for information leading to an arrest. New details about that deadly plane collision in Tokyo this week. Local media reports the passenger jet's cabin crew told the pilots that the plane was on fire after hitting a Coast Guard plane, killing five people. Air traffic control transcripts suggest the Coast Guard plane was not cleared for takeoff. Another potential factor, some runway warning lights were not working. Japan Airlines says the disaster could cost $104 million. Now to the campaign trail and new attacks between the candidates, which is days to go before the Iowa caucuses. Former President Trump overnight released a new attack ad targeting Nikki Haley. What President Trump believes and what he will do and what he will implement works and it will benefit the families that are there. Overnight, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem hitting the campaign trail in Iowa for Donald Trump, urging voters to think of how their lives have changed since Trump left office, stressing grocery costs, gas prices, and the border crisis. Is that what you hear about when you live and talk to your families and your neighbors? Is just how much their way of life has been undermined by everything that Joe Biden has done in the White House? With less than two weeks until the Iowa caucuses, former President Trump leads by 30 points. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was pressed on why he hasn't been more forceful against Trump. Why haven't you gone directly after? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after? I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on it. I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is, is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, and kind of do that. That's just not how I roll. In New Hampshire, polls show former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley pulling into second place. Haley sharing this message with a packed town hall. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. Overnight, the Trump campaign launching a new ad attacking Haley's stance on the border wall and travel bans. Haley's weakness puts us in grave danger. Meanwhile, Trump is bringing his battle to stay on the ballot in Colorado to the U.S. Supreme Court. After that state's high court disqualified him for his actions on January 6, 2021. Trump's legal team is appealing, but not asking the justices to expedite consideration. If the court takes its time, Colorado's current ruling calls for Trump to remain on the ballot for the state's March 5th primary. It's unclear when the Supreme Court will decide whether to take up Trump's case. Turning to the weather, a cross-country storm is set to dump significant snow in the Northeast this weekend. Let's check your Thursday forecast.
Good morning. We're tracking a cross-country storm bringing some snow to parts of New Mexico, Colorado, into the Texas Panhandle in Kansas Thursday, Thursday night into Friday with drenching rain farther south. That becomes the weekend snowmaker in many parts of the northeast with drenching rain farther southeast. This expands northeast through the night on Saturday into parts of the New England state. Still lingering snow Sunday. A quick look at snowfall forecasts here. One to three inches in the light blue, six plus inches in the dark blue. I'm AccuWeather Meteorologist Jeff Cornish. Coming up, the man arrested for stealing a plane and flying out of state. Also ahead, chaos in court. A man leaping over the bench to attack a judge. But we're learning about the suspect. And later, the new dog breed, now recognized by the American Kennel Club. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. ABC, Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> A hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. An Idaho man is under arrest, accused of stealing a private plane in Las Vegas. The plane's owner reported that his emergency location transmitter was activated and he wasn't flying it. The FAA tracked it to Barstow, California, where police say the man was arrested trying to run away. Now to the wild scene inside a Nevada courtroom, a man lunging over the bench to attack the judge. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. Disorder in this Las Vegas courtroom. <laughs> 30-year-old Deobra Redden, unrestrained, lunges over the bench right at District Court Judge Mary Kay Holthus, pinning her against the wall, pummeling her on the floor, knocking the court's American flag over until court staff and sheriff's deputies fight him off. The chaos erupting moments after a relatively calm sentencing. Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but he did not want to go to prison again. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. Judge Holt is reminding Redden of his lengthy rap sheet. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. He still asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation, which apparently set Redden off. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else, because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of the state of Nevada, this court... Oh, 
The judge was injured, her condition being monitored, and a courtroom officer was sent to the hospital. A statement from the court says, we commend the heroic acts of the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. We are reviewing our protocols. In the aftermath, the judge was seen holding her head, but talking and able to walk away. We're also told Redden has a history of mental illness. He now faces multiple new felony charges. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The rocket company owned by Elon Musk is accused of illegally firing several employees. A complaint from the National Labor Relations Board claims eight workers at SpaceX were fired after criticizing Musk, circulating a letter accusing him of being an embarrassment. No comment yet from the company. The numbers are in from airports across the country. Flight cancellations in the last year have hit a 10-year low. The TSA says the cancellation rate was just 1.2%. In terms of delays, the airlines that rated best were Delta, Alaska, American, and United Airlines. Coming up, new evidence of the case of convicted killer Alec Murdoch. Also ahead, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City, getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news, only on ABC News Live. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Raya alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. We're back with a fire breaking out at the home of Miami Dolphins all-star wide receiver Tyreek Hill. He returned from football practice to find his family had escaped, but his $7 million mansion had a giant hole in the roof. No word on how the fire started. New evidence could boost convicted killer Alec Murdoch's chance of getting a new trial. It centers around a controversial clerk in the South Carolina courthouse. Murdoch's lawyers have submitted two emails, which they say clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Hill has already been accused of jury tampering, which she denies. A hearing on Murdoch's request for a new trial is expected later this month. We turn now to a reality check for people using popular weight loss drugs. More women are coming forward to say the weight is back. This morning, more people are talking about what happened to them after they stopped taking the wildly popular drugs Ozempic and Wagovi. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. Artemis Byandor started taking Wagovi in August 2021. She lost 15 pounds over six months, but once her manufacturer's coupon expired, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover the cost. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi, and since then I probably gained another 15 pounds. We asked experts just how common this type of rebound weight gain is. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. It comes back gradually. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. 
Novo Nordisk, the maker of Ozempic and Wagovi, says not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes like more exercise and a better diet. One study found when patients stop taking the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight previously lost. Coming up, a big change at Starbucks. Plus, the 16-year-old global phenomenon in the sport of darts. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Give it to me. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Reporting from the scene of the Monterey Park mass shooting, I'm Juju Chang. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse. We begin with Starbucks now serving their coffee in a York cup. For the first time, the coffee chain is letting customers bring in their own cups, but it's only if you're going through the drive through or ordering on the app. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Meanwhile, Starbucks Stanley travel mugs are flying off the shelves. Take a look at this video. People have been lining up at 3 a.m. to buy special edition of the pink cups sold exclusively at Target. They cost under 50 bucks, but on eBay, they're now selling for upwards of 200 Is that another thing I have to get my kids? Uh-oh. I think so. I like the other <laughs> Stanley cup. Just the normal yeah, color. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that one. Okay, next, a 16-year-old darts phenom. His name is Luke Lindler. His nickname is Luke the Nuke. He shot to fame at the World Darts Championship where he lost in the final but made $250,000. That's good money for a guy who lives on kebabs and orange soda. There's this video showing him playing in diapers at 18 months old. Luke says he's blown away by his growing number of fans. I've still got a lot of followers now. I've had a message off Luke Shaw for Manchester United. So it's just crazy. It's people who I've looked up to, and especially my, my club, Manchester United, wishing me luck. Well, Luke could meet his heroes. Manchester United just invited him to an upcoming match. Congratulations. Well, next, a new breed of dogs is in the spotlight. Most parents of young kids know of this healer. Take a look. Oh, yes, you have a cat in your belly. How did it get in there? Did you eat one? No. Well, no one really knows how cats get in your belly. They're probably through your belly button. What? Really? That is Bluey Healer from the popular show Bluey, about a six-year-old pup who loves to play. Now the American Kennel Club is recognizing the Lancashire Healer, making the breed of dog eligible even to compete in shows. They're small dogs that 
sh have short coats and are often black and tan they and cute. They are cute. And cute. Sure. Next, the Wall Street Journal is reigniting the debate over sleeping with your socks on. Their headline reads, if you sleep with socks on, you're a psychopath. That was just someone's quote, but it shows the passion surrounding the issue. I guess I'm a psychopath. In recent years, more has been written on the benefits of wearing socks to bed. They can increase circulation and blood flow to the feet, which can help lower your body's core temperature, and that helps you sleep. But the journal says all these health tips on the issue are only making couples argue more about it. I'm with you, though, especially when it's cold. Exactly. My feet get cold. And finally, the world's most dangerous pull-up. This daredevil showed off his strength doing his arm workout on the edge of a roof in Turkey. He hanging off the building at one point he held on with just one hand yikes i don't care how often you go to the gym don't no. do this no. top headlines next it's lunchtime in america so what are we serving up well how about everything you need to know you know that sounds pretty good give it to me your health your money breaking news pop culture with the biggest stars music trends and of course good food GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. GMA Tuesday morning. You're going to love this. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Checking more top stories for crossings at the southern border will reopen today due to a recent drop in migrant encounters. The ports of entry were closed last month during a record surge of migrant crossings. House Speaker Mike Johnson led a delegation of Republicans to Texas yesterday, calling on Democrats to increase border security in exchange for new aid for Israel and Ukraine. The leaders of Iran are vowing to retaliate for back-to-back -back bombings that killed more than 80 people. The blasts went off minutes apart as crowds gathered and attended a memorial for an Iranian general killed in a U.S. drone strike back in 2020. Iran blames Israel and the U.S. for the bombings. U.S. officials say it was likely ISIS. Finding a job just got harder. New figures show job openings in the U.S. have dropped to their lowest level in two years. Industries with the fewest openings included transportation, utilities, and hospitality. Today's weather, rain and snow along the west coast, up to 14 inches of snow in the Rockies. Rain for Texas and Oklahoma, and a weekend storm may look more wet than white for the I-95 corridor of the northeast. And finally, a whole new way to get rid of your Christmas tree. Here's Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. <laughs> well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas Tree Cleanup Crew. 
A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news, it sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know, we lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> One thing farmers stress, though, is to please make sure all decorations are removed from the tree before you donate it, guys. That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Right now in America this morning, new court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are unsealed. What they reveal about the high-powered people in his orbit, from Bill Clinton to Michael Jackson, and new details about an accusation against Prince Andrew. The reaction this morning. Breaking overnight, two arrests in the killing of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend in Texas on Christmas week. The father and son now charged in their murders, the possible motive, and how police tracked down the suspects. Growing concerns about a wider conflict in the Middle East after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens killed. The clues as to who may be responsible. The investigation into that deadly airport disaster. A passenger jet bursting into flames after hitting a smaller plane on the runway in Tokyo. What we've now learned about the flight crew. Chaos in the courtroom. Oh what set off this violence in Las Vegas? The judge attacked. Later, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. And the chaos as people try to get their hands on those trendy pink Stanley tumblers. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea Fujii in for Rhiannon. We begin with reaction to the Jeffrey Epstein documents. The names of several people connected to the disgraced financier and sex offenders were unsealed last night. The names in those documents include Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew. This morning, we're learning why attorneys wanted to depose former President Clinton in a now settled defamation case relating to allegations against sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his one-time paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell. And we know that Clinton has been publicly associated with Epstein before. The first batch of previously sealed court documents related to Epstein were made public last night. One from a lawsuit filed by Virginia Gouffre. She's one of the women who say they were abused at Epstein's home in Florida, New York, and on a private Caribbean island. Gouffre's attorneys sought to depose Clinton as part of her 2016 lawsuit against Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, because her attorneys argued Clinton is a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Epstein and disapprove Maxwell's claims. This is just the first of what's coming out about these names that have been associated with Jeffrey Epstein for a long time. Gouffre made no allegations of wrongdoing against Clinton, contradicting a previous claim when she said she flew with Clinton and the Secret Service in a helicopter. According to Maxwell's unsealed deposition, she said the allegations that Clinton had dinner on Epstein's private island were 100% false. Without uh, Virginia Giffre's lawsuit, this stuff wouldn't have been exchanged because it was relevant to the claims. And now the court has decided there's no good basis to keep this stuff under wraps from the public. After Epstein's arrest in 2019, a Clinton spokesperson did denied the former president knew about Epstein's crimes, denied Clinton was ever on Epstein's island, and said Clinton had not communicated with Epstein in more than a decade. Also in the documents, deposition from a witness who said she met Michael Jackson and magician David Copperfield during her time with Epstein. Epstein died in jail while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges in 2019. His death was ruled a suicide. Maxwell was convicted of sex trafficking and other crimes for helping Epstein abuse teenage girls. She's serving a 20-year sentence, which she is appealing. In a statement overnight, her lawyers said she has consistently and vehemently maintained her innocence. Breaking overnight, two people have been arrested in connection with the murder of a pregnant teenager from Texas and her boyfriend. The suspects are a father and his 19-year-old son. Police in San Antonio say it appears to have been a drug deal gone bad. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found shot inside a car last week. She disappeared just before she was scheduled to give birth. Police say her cell phone helped them track down the suspects. 
one of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was um, Savannah's cell phone. With that information, the detective, uh, detectives were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. The police say they believe the son killed the couple and the father helped move the bodies. Turning to the Middle East, major new concerns this morning about a wider conflict in the region after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens of people were killed during a memorial for a top Iranian general. So who is to blame? This morning we have some clues. ABC's Ike Ajachi is here now with more. Ike, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Officials are still trying to determine exactly how many people died, and some say more than 100. The Biden administration saying it's likely ISIS behind the two explosions, triggering panic on the streets of a crowded Iranian city. The two powerful bombs detonating during a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general Qasem Soleimani, killed four years ago by a U.S. drone strike and considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups that included Hamas and Hezbollah. The scene outside a local hospital, chaotic, as the wounded are frantically lifted down from emergency vehicles and pushed into the hospital on stretchers. Officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks and detonated remotely, the attack killing scores of people and wounding over 200 more, the largest in that country in more than 40 years. Iranian officials immediately accusing Israel and quote criminal America of the attacks, saying Israel will pay the price. U.S. officials denying involvement. I'm not going to speak for another nation. I would just tell you that we have no indication that Israel was in any way involved in this. The attack comes just one day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Saleh al-Aruri, in Lebanon, raising fears of a wider war in the region. We remain uh, incredibly concerned, as we have been from the outset of this conflict, about the risk of the conflict spreading into other fronts. Now, Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. U.S. officials say they were not told in advance of the strike. Andrea, back to you. Ike, thank you. Police in Newark, New Jersey, say the murder of a Muslim leader does not appear to be a hate crime. Imam Hassan Sharif was shot outside his mosque. Neighbors who gathered last night blamed crime in the area. A $25,000 reward is offered for information leading to an arrest. New details about that deadly plane collision in Tokyo this week. Local media reports the passenger jet's cabin crew told the pilots that the plane was on fire after hitting a Coast Guard plane, killing five people. Air traffic control transcripts suggest the Coast Guard plane was not cleared for takeoff. Another potential factor, some runway warning lights were not working. Japan Airlines says the disaster could cost $104 million. Now to the campaign trail and new attacks between the candidates, which is days to go before the Iowa caucuses. Former President Trump overnight released a new attack ad targeting Nikki Haley. What President Trump believes and what he will do and what he will implement works and it will benefit the families that are there. Overnight, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem hitting the campaign trail in Iowa for Donald Trump, urging voters to think of how their lives have changed since Trump left office, stressing grocery costs, gas prices, and the border crisis. Is that what you hear about when you live and talk to your families and your neighbors? Is just how much their way of life has been undermined by everything that Joe Biden has done in the White House? With less than two weeks until the Iowa caucuses, former President Trump leads by 30 points. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was pressed on why he hasn't been more forceful against Trump. Why haven't you gone directly at him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on him. I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is, is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, and kind of do that. That's just not how I roll. In New Hampshire, polls show former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley pulling into second place. Haley sharing this message with a packed town hall. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. Overnight, the Trump campaign launching a new ad attacking Haley's stance on the border wall and travel bans. Haley's weakness puts us in grave danger. Meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, Trump is bringing his battle to stay on the ballot in Colorado to the U.S. Supreme Court after that state's high court disqualified him for his actions on January 6, 2021. Trump's legal team is appealing, but not asking the justices to expedite consideration. If the court takes its time, Colorado's current ruling calls for Trump to remain on the ballot for the state's March 5th primary. It's unclear when the Supreme Court will decide whether to take up Trump's case. Turning to the weather, a cross-country storm is set to dump significant snow in the Northeast this weekend. Let's check your Thursday forecast. Good morning. We're tracking a cross-country storm bringing some snow to parts of New Mexico, Colorado, into the Texas Panhandle and Kansas Thursday, Thursday night into Friday with drenching rain farther south. That becomes the weekend snowmaker in many parts of the northeast with drenching rain farther southeast. This expands northeast through the night on Saturday into parts of the New England state. Still lingering snow Sunday. A quick look at snowfall forecasts here. One to three inches in the light blue, six plus inches in the dark blue. I'm AccuWeather Meteorologist Jeff Cornish. Coming up, the man arrested for stealing a plane and flying out of state. Also ahead, chaos in court. A man leaping over the bench to attack a judge. But we're learning about the suspect. And later, the new dog breed, now recognized by the American Kennel Club. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is OK. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as they happen abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Reporting from Atlanta, I'm Steve Oshinsami. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. An Idaho man is under arrest, accused of stealing a private plane in Las Vegas. The plane's owner reported that his emergency location transmitter was activated and he wasn't flying it. The FAA tracked it to Barstow, California, where police say the man was arrested trying to run away. Now to the wild scene inside a Nevada courtroom, a man lunging over the bench to attack the judge. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. Disorder in this Las Vegas courtroom. 30-year-old oh, hey. oh, oh, hey. oh. Deobra Redden, unrestrained, lunges over the bench right at District Court Judge Mary Kay Holthus, pinning her against the wall, pummeling her on the floor, knocking the court's American flag over until court staff and sheriff's deputies Fight him off. The chaos erupting moments after a relatively calm sentencing. Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but he did not want to go to prison again. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. Judge Holthus reminding Redden of his lengthy rap sheet. 
three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. He still asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, in prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation, which apparently set Redden off. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Addis Court. Oh, 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 hey, oh, oh, oh. The judge was injured, her condition being monitored, and a courtroom officer was sent to the hospital. A statement from the court says, we commend the heroic acts of the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. We are reviewing our protocols. In the aftermath, the judge was seen holding her head, but talking and able to walk away. We're also told Redden has a history of mental illness. He now faces multiple new felony charges. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The rocket company owned by Elon Musk is accused of illegally firing several employees. A complaint from the National Labor Relations Board claims eight workers at SpaceX were fired after criticizing Musk, circulating a letter accusing him of being an embarrassment. No comment yet from the company. The numbers are in from airports across the country. Flight cancellations in the last year have hit a 10-year low. The TSA says the cancellation rate was just 1.2%. In terms of delays, the airlines that rated best were Delta, Alaska, American, and United Airlines. Coming up, new evidence of the case of convicted killer Alec Murdoch. Also ahead, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. We're back with a fire breaking out at the home of Miami Dolphins all-star wide receiver Tyreek Hill. He returned from football practice to find his family had escaped, but his $7 million mansion had a giant hole in the roof. No word on how the fire started. New evidence could boost convicted killer Alec Murdoch's chance of getting a new trial. It centers around a controversial clerk in the South Carolina courthouse. Murdoch's lawyers have submitted two emails, which they say clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Hill has already been accused of jury tampering, which she denies. A hearing on Murdoch's request for a new trial is expected later this month. We turn now to a reality check for people using popular weight loss drugs. More women are coming forward to say the weight is back. This morning, more people are talking about what happened to them after they stopped taking the wildly popular drugs Ozempic and Wagovi. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. 
Artemis by Andor started taking Wagovi in August 2021. She lost 15 pounds over six months, but once her manufacturer's coupon expired, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover the cost. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi. And since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. We asked experts just how common this type of rebound weight gain is. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. It comes back gradually. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. Novo Nordisk, the maker of Ozempic and Wagovi, says not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes like more exercise and a better diet. One study found when patients stop taking the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight previously lost. Coming up, a big change at Starbucks. Plus, the 16-year-old global phenomenon in the sport of darts. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Reporting from LaGuardia Airport, I'm Gio Benitez. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse. We begin with Starbucks now serving their coffee in a York cup. For the first time, the coffee chain is letting customers bring in their own cups, but it's only if you're going through the drive through or ordering on the app. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Meanwhile, Starbucks Stanley travel mugs are flying off the shelves. Take a look at this video. People have been lining up at 3 a.m. to buy special edition of the pink cups sold exclusively at Target. They cost under 50 bucks, but on eBay, they're now selling for upwards of 200 Is that another thing I have to get my kids? Uh-oh. I think so. I like the other <laughs> Stanley cup. Just the normal yeah, color. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that one. Okay, next, a 16-year-old darts phenom. His name is Luke Lillard. His nickname is Luke the Nuke. He shot to fame at the World Darts Championship where he lost in the final but made $250,000. That's good money for a guy who lives on kebabs and orange soda. There's this video showing him playing in diapers at 18 months old. Luke says he's blown away by his growing number of fans. I've still got a lot of followers now. I've had a message off Luke Shaw from Manchester United. So it's just crazy. It's people who I've looked up to, and especially my, my club, Manchester United, wishing me luck. Well, Luke could meet his heroes. Manchester United just invited him to an upcoming match. Congratulations. Well, next, a new breed of dogs is in the spotlight. Most parents of young kids know of this healer. Take a look. 
Oh, yes, you have a cat in your belly. How did it get in there? Did you eat one? No. Well, no one really knows how cats get in your belly. They're probably through your belly button. What? Really? That is Bluey Healer from the popular show Bluey, about a six-year-old pup who loves to play. Now the American Kennel Club is recognizing the Lancashire Healer, making the breed of dog eligible even to compete in shows. They're small dogs that sh have short coats and are often black and tan. They and are cute. cute. And cute. Sure. Next, the Wall Street Journal is reigniting the debate over sleeping with your socks on. Their headline reads, if you sleep with socks on, you're a psychopath. That was just someone's quote, but it shows the passion surrounding the issue. I guess I'm a psychopath. In recent years, more has been written on the benefits of wearing socks to bed. They can increase circulation and blood flow to the feet, which can help lower your body's core temperature, and that helps you sleep. But the journal says all these health tips on the issue are only making couples argue more about it. I'm with you, though, especially when it's cold. Exactly. My feet get cold. And finally, the world's most dangerous pull-up. This daredevil showed off his strength doing his arm workout on the edge of a roof in Turkey. He hanging off the building. At one point, he held on with just one hand. Yikes. I don't care how often you go to the gym. Don't no. do this. No. Top headlines next. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wiener Mobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Checking more top stories for crossings at the southern border will reopen today due to a recent drop in migrant encounters. The ports of entry were closed last month during a record surge of migrant crossings. House Speaker Mike Johnson led a delegation of Republicans to Texas yesterday, calling on Democrats to increase border security in exchange for new aid for Israel and Ukraine. The leaders of Iran are vowing to retaliate for back-to-back -back bombings that killed more than 80 people. The blasts went off minutes apart as crowds gathered and attended a memorial for an Iranian general killed in a U.S. drone strike back in 2020. Iran blames Israel and the U.S. for the bombings. U.S. officials say it was likely ISIS. Finding a job just got harder. New figures show job openings in the U.S. have dropped to their lowest level in two years. Industries with the fewest openings included transportation, utilities, and hospitality. Today's weather, rain and snow along the west coast, up to 14 inches of snow in the Rockies. Rain for Texas and Oklahoma, and a weekend storm may look more wet than white for the I-95 corridor of the northeast. And finally, a whole new way to get rid of your Christmas tree. Here's Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. 
They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now. We just casually have nine goats, Danny. <laughs> As of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas Tree Cleanup Crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> One thing farmers stress, though, is to please make sure all decorations are removed from the tree before you donate it, guys. That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Right now in America this morning, new court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are unsealed. What they reveal about the high-powered people in his orbit, from Bill Clinton to Michael Jackson, and new details about an accusation against Prince Andrew. The reaction this morning. Breaking overnight, two arrests in the killing of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend in Texas on Christmas week. The father and son now charged in their murders, the possible motive, and how police track down the suspects. Growing concerns about a wider conflict in the Middle East after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens killed. The clues as to who may be responsible. The investigation into that deadly airport disaster. A passenger jet bursting into flames after hitting a smaller plane on the runway in Tokyo. What we've now learned about the flight crew. Chaos in the courtroom. Oh what set off this violence in Las Vegas? The judge attacked. Later, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. And the chaos as people try to get their hands on those trendy pink Stanley tumblers. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimber. I'm Andrea Fuji in for Rhiannon. We begin with reaction to the Jeffrey Epstein documents. The names of several people connected to the disgraced financier and sex offenders were unsealed last night. The names in those documents include Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew. This morning, we're learning why attorneys wanted to depose former President Clinton in a now settled defamation case relating to allegations against sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his one-time paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell. We know that Clinton has been publicly associated with Epstein before. The first batch of previously sealed court documents related to Epstein were made public last night. One from a lawsuit filed by Virginia Gouffre. She's one of the women who say they were abused at Epstein's home in Florida, New York, and on a private Caribbean island. Gouffre's attorneys sought to depose Clinton as part of her 2016 lawsuit against Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, because her attorneys argued Clinton is a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Epstein and disapprove Maxwell's claims. This is just the first of what's coming out about these names that have been associated with Jeffrey Epstein for a long time. Gouffre made no allegations of wrongdoing against Clinton, contradicting a previous claim when she said she flew with Clinton and the Secret Service in a helicopter. According to Maxwell's unsealed deposition, she said the allegations that Clinton had dinner on Epstein's private island were 100% false. Without uh, Virginia Gouffre's lawsuit, this stuff wouldn't have been exchanged because it was relevant to the claims. And now the court has decided there's no good basis to keep this stuff under wraps from the public. After Epstein's arrest in 2019, a Clinton spokesperson did denied the former president knew about Epstein's crimes, denied Clinton was ever on Epstein's island, and said Clinton had not communicated with Epstein in more than a decade. Also in the documents, deposition from a witness who said she met Michael Jackson and magician David Copperfield during her time with Epstein. Epstein died in jail while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges in 2019. His death was ruled a suicide. 
Maxwell was convicted of sex trafficking and other crimes for helping Epstein abuse teenage girls. She's serving a 20-year sentence, which she is appealing. In a statement overnight, her lawyer said she has consistently and vehemently maintained her innocence. Breaking overnight, two people have been arrested in connection with the murder of a pregnant teenager from Texas and her boyfriend. The suspects are a father and his 19-year-old son. Police in San Antonio say it appears to have been a drug deal gone bad. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found shot inside a car last week. She disappeared just before she was scheduled to give birth. Police say her cell phone helped them track down the suspects. One of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was um, Savannah's cell phone. With that information, the detective, uh, detectives were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. The police say they believe the son killed the couple and the father helped move the bodies. Turning to the Middle East, major new concerns this morning about a wider conflict in the region after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens of people were killed during a memorial for a top Iranian general. So, who is to blame? This morning we have some clues. ABC's Ike Ajachi is here now with more. Ike, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Officials are still trying to determine exactly how many people died, and some say more than 100. The Biden administration saying it's likely ISIS behind the two explosions, triggering panic on the streets of a crowded Iranian city. The two powerful bombs detonating during a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general Qasem Soleimani, killed four years ago by a U.S. drone strike and considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups that included Hamas and Hezbollah. The scene outside a local hospital, chaotic, as the wounded are frantically lifted down from emergency vehicles and pushed into the hospital on stretchers. Officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks and detonated remotely, the attack killing scores of people and wounding over 200 more, the largest in that country in more than 40 years. Iranian officials immediately accusing Israel and quote criminal America of the attacks, saying Israel will pay the price, U.S. officials denying involvement. I'm not going to speak for another nation. I would just tell you that we have no indication that Israel was in any way involved in this. The attack comes just one day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Saleh al-Aruri, in Lebanon, raising fears of a wider war in the region. We remain uh, incredibly concerned, as we have been from the outset of this conflict, about the risk of the conflict spreading into other fronts. Now, Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. U.S. officials say they were not told in advance of the strike. Andrew, back to you. Ike, thank you. Police in Newark, New Jersey, say the murder of a Muslim leader does not appear to be a hate crime. Imam Hassan Sharif was shot outside his mosque. Neighbors who gathered last night blamed crime in the area. A $25,000 reward is offered for information leading to an arrest. New details about that deadly plane collision in Tokyo this week. Local media reports the passenger jet's cabin crew told the pilots that the plane was on fire after hitting a Coast Guard plane, killing five people. Air traffic control transcripts suggest the Coast Guard plane was not cleared for takeoff. Another potential factor, some runway warning lights were not working. Japan Airlines says the disaster could cost $104 million. Now to the campaign trail and new attacks between the candidates, which is days to go before the Iowa caucuses. Former President Trump overnight released a new attack ad targeting Nikki Haley. What President Trump believes and what he will do and what he will implement works and it will benefit the families that are there. Overnight, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem hitting the campaign trail in Iowa for Donald Trump, urging voters to think of how their lives have changed since Trump left office, stressing grocery costs, gas prices, and the border crisis. Is that what you hear about when you live and talk to your families and your neighbors? Is just how much their way of life has been undermined by everything that Joe Biden has done in the White House? With less than two weeks until the Iowa caucuses, former President Trump leads by 30 points. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was pressed on why he hasn't been more forceful against Trump. Why haven't you gone directly after? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after? I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants 
is is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, yeah, and kind of yeah. do that. That's just not how I roll. In New Hampshire, polls show former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley pulling into second place. Haley sharing this message with a packed town hall. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. Overnight, the Trump campaign launching a new ad attacking Haley's stance on the border wall and travel bans. Haley's weakness puts us in grave danger. Meanwhile, Trump is bringing his battle to stay on the ballot in Colorado to the U.S. Supreme Court. After that state's high court disqualified him for his actions on January 6th, 2021. Trump's legal team is appealing, but not asking the justices to expedite consideration. If the court takes its time, Colorado's current ruling calls for Trump to remain on the ballot for the state's March 5th primary. It's unclear when the Supreme Court will decide whether to take up Trump's case. Turning to the weather, a cross-country storm is set to dump significant snow in the Northeast this weekend. Let's check your Thursday forecast. Good morning. We're tracking a cross-country storm bringing some snow to parts of New Mexico, Colorado, into the Texas Panhandle and Kansas Thursday, Thursday night into Friday with drenching rain farther south. That becomes the weekend snowmaker in many parts of the northeast with drenching rain farther southeast. This expands northeast through the night on Saturday into parts of the New England state. Still lingering snow Sunday. A quick look at snowfall forecasts here. One to three inches in the light blue, six plus inches in the dark blue. I'm AccuWeather Meteorologist Jeff Cornish. Coming up, the man arrested for stealing a plane and flying out of state. Also ahead, chaos in court. A man leaping over the bench to attack a judge. But we're learning about the suspect. And later, the new dog breed, now recognized by the American Kennel Club. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. An Idaho man is under arrest, accused of stealing a private plane in Las Vegas. The plane's owner reported that his emergency location transmitter was activated and he wasn't flying it. The FAA tracked it to Barstow, California, where police say the man was arrested trying to run away. Now to the wild scene inside a Nevada courtroom. A man lunging over the bench to attack the judge. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. Disorder in this Las Vegas courtroom. Oh, 
30-year-old Deobra Redden unrestrained lunges over the bench right at District Court Judge Mary Kay Holthus, pinning her against the wall, pummeling her on the floor, knocking the court's American flag over until court staff and sheriff's deputies fight him off. The chaos erupting moments after a relatively calm sentencing. Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but he did not want to go to prison again. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. Judge Holf is reminding Redden of his lengthy rap sheet. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. He still asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation, which apparently set Redden off. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else, because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Nevada, this court... Oh, the judge was injured, her condition being monitored, and a courtroom officer was sent to the hospital. A statement from the court says, we commend the heroic acts of the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. We are reviewing our protocols. In the aftermath, the judge was seen holding her head, but talking and able to walk away. We're also told Redden has a history of mental illness. He now faces multiple new felony charges. Andrew, Andrea. All right, Derek, thank you. The rocket company owned by Elon Musk is accused of illegally firing several employees. A complaint from the National Labor Relations Board claims eight workers at SpaceX were fired after criticizing Musk, circulating a letter accusing him of being an embarrassment. No comment yet from the company. The numbers are in from airports across the country. Flight cancellations in the last year have hit a 10-year low. The TSA says the cancellation rate was just 1.2%. In terms of delays, the airlines that rated best were Delta, Alaska, American, and United Airlines. Coming up, new evidence of the case of convicted killer Alec Murdoch. Also ahead, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> How cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We're back with a fire breaking out at the home of Miami Dolphins all-star wide receiver Tyreek Hill. He returned from football practice to find his family had escaped, but his $7 million mansion had a giant hole in the roof. No word on how the fire started. 
New evidence could boost convicted killer Alec Murdoch's chance of getting a new trial. It centers around a controversial clerk in the South Carolina courthouse. Murdoch's lawyers have submitted two emails, which they say clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Hill has already been accused of jury tampering, which she denies. A hearing on Murdoch's request for a new trial is expected later this month. We turn now to a reality check for people using popular weight loss drugs. More women are coming forward to say the weight is back. This morning, more people are talking about what happened to them after they stopped taking the wildly popular drugs Ozempic and Wagovi. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. Artemis Byandor started taking Wagovi in August 2021. She lost 15 pounds over six months, but once her manufacturer's coupon expired, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover the cost. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi, and since then I probably gained another 15 pounds. We asked experts just how common this type of rebound weight gain is. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. It comes back gradually. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. Novo Nordisk, the maker of Ozempic and Wagovi, says not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes like more exercise and a better diet. One study found when patients stop taking the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight previously lost. Coming up, a big change at Starbucks. Plus, the 16-year-old global phenomenon in the sport of darts. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Our father was the leader of a Mormon religious cult. He used us and groomed us to kill for him. This is when I found out that I was born and raised in a cult. Daughters of the Cult, only on Hulu. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. I'm Kana Whitworth at the Apex Summit in San Francisco. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse. We begin with Starbucks now serving their coffee in your cup. For the first time, the coffee chain is letting customers bring in their own cups, but it's only if you're going through the drive through or ordering on the app. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Meanwhile, Starbucks Stanley travel mugs are flying off the shelves. Take a look at this video. People have been lining up at 3 a.m. to buy special edition of the pink cups sold exclusively at Target. They cost under 50 bucks, but on eBay, they're now selling for upwards of 200 Is that another thing I have to get my kids? Uh-oh. I think so. I like the other <laughs> Stanley cup.
just the normal yeah, the colors. Hockey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> okay, next, a 16-year-old darts phenom. His name is Luke Lindler. His nickname is Luke the Nuke. He shot to fame at the World Darts Championship, where he lost in the final but made $250,000. That's good money for a guy who lives on kebabs and orange soda. There's this video showing him playing in diapers at 18 months old. Luke says he's blown away by his growing number of fans. I've still got a lot of followers now. I've had a message off Luke Shaw from Manchester United, so it's just crazy. It's people who I've looked up to, and especially my, my club, Manchester United, wishing me luck. Well, Luke could meet his heroes. Manchester United just invited him to an upcoming match. Congratulations. Well, next, a new breed of dogs is in the spotlight. Most parents of young kids know of this healer. Take a look. Oh, yes, you have a cat in your belly. How did it get in there? Did you eat one? No. Well, no one really knows how cats get in your belly. They're probably through your belly button. What? Really? That is Bluey Healer from the popular show Bluey, about a six-year-old pup who loves to play. Now the American Kennel Club is recognizing the Lancashire Healer, making the breed of dog eligible even to compete in shows. They're small dogs that sh have short coats and are often black and tan they and cute. They are cute. cute. And cute. Sure. Next, the Wall Street Journal is reigniting the debate over sleeping with your socks on. Their headline reads, if you sleep with socks on, you're a psychopath. That was just someone's quote, but it shows the passion surrounding the issue. I guess I'm a psychopath. In recent years, more has been written on the benefits of wearing socks to bed. They can increase circulation and blood flow to the feet, which can help lower your body's core temperature, and that helps you sleep. But the journal says all these health tips on the issue are only making couples argue more about it. I'm with you, though, especially when it's cold. Exactly. My feet get cold. And finally, the world's most dangerous pull-up. This daredevil showed off his strength doing his arm workout on the edge of a roof in Turkey. He hanging off the building at one point he held on with just one hand yikes i don't care how often you go to the gym don't no. do this no. top headlines next this is abc news live the crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. You have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Checking more top stories for crossings at the southern border will reopen today due to a recent drop in migrant encounters. The ports of entry were closed last month during a record surge of migrant crossings. House Speaker Mike Johnson led a delegation of Republicans to Texas yesterday, calling on Democrats to increase border security in exchange for new aid for Israel and Ukraine. 
The leaders of Iran are vowing to retaliate for back-to-back -back bombings that killed more than 80 people. The blasts went off minutes apart as crowds gathered and attended a memorial for an Iranian general killed in a U.S. drone strike back in 2020. Iran blames Israel and the U.S. for the bombings. U.S. officials say it was likely ISIS. Finding a job just got harder. New figures show job openings in the U.S. have dropped to their lowest level in two years. Industries with the fewest openings included transportation, utilities, and hospitality. Today's weather, rain and snow along the west coast, up to 14 inches of snow in the Rockies. Rain for Texas and Oklahoma, and a weekend storm may look more wet than white for the I-95 corridor of the northeast. And finally, a whole new way to get rid of your Christmas tree. Here's Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. <laughs> well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas Tree Cleanup Crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news, it sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> One thing farmers stress, though, is to please make sure all decorations are removed from the tree before you donate it, guys. That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. It's Thursday, January 4th. Are Jeffrey Epstein's secrets still being revealed? We start here. A judge unseals a trove of documents from an Epstein lawsuit. Some may be people who flew on Epstein's private plane. You're going to be hearing about this all day, but which parts actually matter? We'll break it all down. Israel's being blamed for an airstrike in Lebanon and now for a terror attack in Iran. Remotely controlled bombs, according to the Iranians, that went off in this crowd. As a deadly explosion rips through a crowd at what's likely and what's more far-fetched. And Republicans visit the border in the midst of a swell of migration. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. Now, the politics of 2024 could be defined by it. From ABC News, this is Start Here. I'm Brad Milkey. When Jeffrey Epstein died in a jail cell in 2019, it meant that we might not ever get the full story behind what appears to be prolific sexual abuse. I remember being in a lot of pain. I remember having some bruises. I was in an absolute panic to the point where I was able to get myself up and get out of that room. He'd already been convicted of procuring a minor for prostitution back in 2008, but now he'd been arrested on federal charges that he'd trafficked dozens more. Well, his death meant that case stopped. Prosecutors calling her a serial predator who helped Epstein sexually abuse underage girls. And while his longtime right-hand woman, Ghislaine Maxwell, has since been convicted of aiding these assaults, the list of accusations against Epstein stretched way beyond a single case. There was lawsuit after lawsuit, with some plaintiffs alleging Epstein and Maxwell weren't even the only perpetrators here. We have a lot of work to do in this country in terms of holding people accountable and educating about things like grooming. For years, 
years, some of these court filings have remained under seal, protecting the identities of the victims, protecting innocent bystanders who just happen to be mentioned in depositions. But some critics pointed out this has also protected the identities of Epstein's powerful allies. Some folks have been asking, without much evidence of any wrongdoing, whose names are in these documents anyway? Well, last night, those names started being revealed as vast sections of these document troves are unsealed. Let's start the day with the ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky. Aaron, I feel like this release has been hyped up for weeks, but lots of people still don't seem to be sure what documents are being unsealed. What What is happening right now? Yeah, there's been a lot of speculation that this is the long-awaited client list of, of Jeffrey Epstein, that this will finally reveal uh, what certain powerful people were, were doing, whether they were on his private Caribbean island. I, Brad, it's not really any of that. These documents are part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit filed by Virginia Roberts, who now goes by her married name, Virginia Jufre. It's not how Jeffrey died, but it's how he lived. And we need to get to the bottom of everybody who was involved with that. She lives in Australia now, but she said that back... When she was a teenager, she was a sex slave for Jeffrey Epstein and that both Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell ordered her to have sex on various occasions with powerful men, including Britain's Prince Andrew, a claim that he has denied. She provided a photo of yes. the two of you together. Yes. Your arm was around her waist. Yes. You've seen the photo. I've seen the photograph. How do you explain that? I can't. He also settled a lawsuit with Virginia Dufre. So... Some of the names are people that may have just worked for Jeffrey Epstein and may have seen something or heard something and lawyers wanted to talk to them. Some may be additional victims that lawyers at the time wanted to talk to. Some may be people who flew on Epstein's private plane, people like former President Bill Clinton, who has never been accused of any wrongdoing as part of his association with Jeffrey Epstein, but who became a, something of a contentious figure in Jufre's lawsuit because she claimed that she saw Clinton at Epstein's private Caribbean island, something that a spokesman for Clinton denied, said he didn't know anything about Epstein's crimes and had never visited the island. I see. So this is like a lawsuit where Virginia Jufre is making all these accusations. The judge keeps a bunch of the documents from the case under wraps. Until now, why now, though, Aaron? Like, Why is this the moment where these things are going to come out? These documents have been unsealed on a rolling basis over the last number of years. And, and finally, the judge just decided that there really was no longer a compelling reason to keep them fully sealed any longer. The judge is entertaining some objections from people who do not want their names publicly associated with Jeffrey Epstein. One woman identified as Jane Doe 107 said in the country where she lives, it could get her in a lot of trouble if her name was was out there. But beyond that, the, the judge said it was just time uh, to, to have all of this fully unsealed, uh, in part because of the, the, the public interest in understanding more about Epstein and his monstrous behavior. OK, so so, I mean, what have we seen? Like, what did you see as, the, as these documents started being unsealed last night? Brad, about 40 of the estimated 275 documents have been released and in them we see arguments made by Virginia Jufre's lawyers as to why they wanted to depose former President Clinton. We knew that they had sought to depose him. And, and the, the documents now being unredacted, we understand a bit more why. They thought that former President Clinton could provide information about what they described as his close relationship with Glenn Maxwell and with, with Jeffrey Epstein. And they also said that, you know, Jufre had mentioned President Clinton, had mentioned him being on Epstein's island, uh, and, and they wanted to talk to him about it. Hmm. And, and who else, Aaron? Like, what other names could end up popping up out of all this? There are names that have come up. I saw a reference to actress Cameron Diaz. I saw uh, Al Gore, Tipper Gore. Uh, I saw a reference to Donald Trump. And, and, Brad, none of that means anything. These were just people that lawyers wanted to ask witnesses about during deposition testimony because maybe they had been uh, associated with Epstein or, or their names just simply came up during the course of the lawyer's investigations. There that we've seen so far are no allegations against any of these people doing anything wrong. 
Well, and that's the thing, Aaron. So if this is not some big client list, right? If this is not some smoking gun about people who have been working with Epstein and whatever he's accused of doing, what what is the significance of this? And I guess, what do you have your eye on as this case continues to kind of unfurl? The public fascination about Jeffrey Epstein may best be answered by the federal government, not these documents, you know, because even though we are seeing some more details, um, the broad strokes of, of what they reveal had been largely known over the last couple of years. The, the untapped repository belongs to the federal government. When Jeffrey Epstein was arrested on the tarmac of an airport in New Jersey uh, back in 2019 on uh, the July 4th weekend, the feds simultaneously uh, searched his mansion on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And, and they, they took photos, they took video, they took out a lot of stuff. And much of that has never been publicly revealed. There, there were some things uh, that were searched uh, from Epstein's properties that came out in Maxwell's trial. But by and large, the public has never seen any of that evidence. And, and so that may be the last place where the public could look to understand more about Epstein's crimes. All right. Uh, we'll see what happens next. Aaron Katursky, as he goes through more of these documents, we'll see if more are unsealed today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. Next up on Start Here, on the heels of an alleged assassination by Israel, Iran is hit with even larger explosions. We're back in a bit. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine, Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. As the war rages in Gaza, there are questions reverberating throughout the region, throughout the world. What happens to Gazans? What is the future for Israel and terror groups like Hamas? And will all this crossfire ensnare other countries? Well, those questions only got louder as Iran-backed militias exchanged fire with American service members in recent months. The U.S. has unleashed retaliatory strikes after Iranian-backed forces targeted American troops in both Iraq and Syria. And then again, as a Hamas honcho was killed in Lebanon. Salak al-Aruri, the second in command of Hamas and a senior leader in the West Bank, among at least six people killed, according to Lebanese authorities. Then yesterday, as Iran was marking the anniversary of its own military leader being killed years ago, a pair of bombs went off, killing nearly 100 people, wounding 200 more in what's being called that country's biggest terror attack in decades. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz is in Tel Aviv in Israel right now. Martha, what happened? Because this was a really significant day over in Iran. It, it was. It was commemorating the death of Qasem Soleimani, who was killed by an American drone four years ago to the day yesterday. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel. This was, of course, a, a U.S. drone that took out Soleimani. America should have a lot of fear. What should you do? Was it Soleimani? Was that It created outrage. I happened to be there just days after that attack and walking the streets there where they were shouting death to America. What is your message to Mr. Trump? 
message from you. Don't have any right to kill him. He was a very, very good and brave and kind uh, general. The Iranians are already blaming Israel for this attack. There were two bombs, uh, remotely controlled bombs, according to the Iranians, that went off in this crowd. Israel uh, has said nothing about this, but U.S. officials say they have absolutely no information that Israel was responsible. Yeah, I was going to say, Martha, who would have done this? Because there are foreign governments like Israel that don't like Iran. But, I mean, this seemed almost built, this type of attack, to kill civilians, right? Where you have one bomb go off and then, like, 15 minutes later, after everyone's gathered, the other one goes off. And and that just does not have the mark of Israelis operating uh, within Iran. There right. have certainly been targeted killings in Iran uh, that Israel is believed to be responsible for, nuclear scientists and others, but not mass casualties like that. I think uh, the suspects are ISIS and its affiliate. We forget that ISIS is still active in this area. So that's who they are pointing the blame to. But, Brad, you know, you got to believe, and, and I've covered this region a long time, no matter what the Israelis say, no matter what the U.S. says, uh, the U.S. officials say, the Iranians are going to say it is Israel. Right. Like, this is the enemy, so this enemy must have done it. But I guess if it's less likely for Israel to carry out this type of attack, it would be much more likely for Israel to do, like you said, a targeted strike, which is what we saw happen in Beirut, right? In Lebanon, Israel hasn't really confirmed or denied that attack, Martha, but U.S. officials are now saying they do think Israel was behind the killing of the Hamas leader. I guess my question to you is we've been spending all this time talking about how foreign countries are wary of a wider war. Is Israel worried about a wider war? Like, what, what is their tolerance for, for hitting other countries right now and stoking animosity with their neighbors? I, I, they certainly don't want a wider war, but, you know, just sitting here right now, uh, you're surrounded by countries that are after Israel, that are after the U.S. We've had more than 100 attacks on U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq, one on Christmas Day that was very serious, leaving several U.S. troops uh, wounded, one in critical condition. And, and then you have the Houthis in Yemen who continue to fire on ships in the Red Sea and U.S. naval warships having to shoot down drones uh, that are flying all around the Red Sea from the Houthis. So I right. think that's the place that I would really keep my eye on in this is Yemen. All right. Martha Raddatz there, she landed in Israel to report on this strike and then this whole thing in Iran happened. So covering everything there in the Mideast right now. Thank you. You bet. Every month, the U.S. keeps track of how many migrants are encountered by Customs and Border Protection as they cross the border. Well, recently, sources revealed to ABC News that the count for December was more than 300,000 encounters, the highest ever recorded. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, these crossings are having a big effect, to the point where some Democratic cities are taking new measures to limit the number of new arrivals. And yesterday, Republican lawmakers toured the border to argue for their agenda. ABC's Matt Rivers covers immigration. He's in San Antonio, Texas right now. Matt, what is the difference between 300,000 and, and past months, right? Can you just put into context how overwhelming this has become? So uh, in my family, Brad, we kind of have a joke. My wife always says like a Christmas tradition or a New Year's tradition that I will be spending some time down at the border around this time of year because every year we do see, uh, or almost every year, a spike in the number of crossings around this time of year. When when the temperatures start to go down, people want to get in before the, the new year, you do see numbers go up. Mm. What we have never seen is those kind of numbers. 300,000 plus, that, that is the all-time record month for those figures. We've never seen a single month with numbers that are that high. Now that we should caution, it's preliminary data and that could change. But, you know, even if you change it by 10,000 encounters, you're still talking about an all-time record high month. And this is this new normal that you and I have talked about. We see spikes like we usually do, but the spikes we're seeing are bigger than ever because the amount of people coming north are bigger than ever. And this is going to keep happening. Just look down a little further south in the Darien Gap, that, that strip of jungle between South America and Central America. You have to go through it if you're walking from South America to Central America. 520,000 plus people transited the Darien Gap during the year 2023. That is more than double wow. the previous annual record. That's where people are coming from and they're arriving to the border. So like you said, regardless of your political affiliation and all of this, what is happening at the border, we've never seen before. 
and, and Republicans have said that this is such a priority that they will not fund aid for Ukraine until they see policy changes at the border, right? Like, th- th- this is priority number one. What, I guess what I'm confused by is, is what policy changes would fix this situation, though. What are they saying? Well, so what Republicans generally keep coming back to is they we want a couple of things. We want to change the way America's asylum laws are written to make it harder to apply for asylum in this country. We want to make it easier to deport people. And we want to make it so that more people have to wait outside the United States while they wait to see whether they're going to be let into the United States or not. Those are the three things that you always hear from Republicans. If President Biden wants a supplemental spending bill focused on national security, it better begin by defending America's national security. But even yesterday, you had Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, who led this delegation of House Republicans down to Eagle Pass, Texas, not far from where I am right now. He even said, look, we don't have every single policy prescription. We don't know exactly how to solve this problem because it is extremely complicated. But what Republicans are saying is that they're not willing to do just about anything, including funding Ukraine, Israel, even provide funding for the border itself until... There is some sort of deal struck that is going to change in a substantive way, according to Johnson, the policies at the border. But there's a couple complicated things here. What House Republicans continue to signal, especially the further right members of the Republican caucus, is that they want to see really, really intense, some would even call it draconian changes to the way this country handles immigration. So even though there's a bipartisan negotiation uh, being worked on in the Senate right now, doesn't mean that what the Senate comes out with is necessarily going to be agreed to by House Republicans. And what you've heard from some House Republicans is that they're going to be willing to shut the government down if their sort of policy prescriptions for the border are not enacted. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. And today, we got a firsthand look at the damage and the chaos the border catastrophe is causing in all of our communities. So this is a very, very complicated uh, situation. But look, this is the line in the sand that Republicans are drawing. In the beginning of an election year, what's the first thing that House Republicans do in a 2024 election year? 64 of them go down to the border and say, this is where we're drawing the line in the sand. It tells you what the rest of this year is going to look like. Republicans are going to campaign on this. And I think it's going to make the next couple weeks and months in terms of these negotiations back and forth in Washington, D.C., something that will be very fraught and something we need to pay attention to very closely. It's, that's really interesting that even like these House Republicans are thinking they're, they're Republican colleagues in the Senate might not be going far enough. But well, then if, if we're looking at that kind of political divide, you look up to cities like New York, where Mayor Eric Adams appeared to say he didn't want to consider New York a sanctuary city anymore. He's since kind of rolled that back. But I- Illinois suburbs are now fining bus companies for dropping people off without any plan. Of where they, I mean, what, what tools do these northern cities, I guess, have at their disposal? Because it seems like they are getting very frustrated by the number of people coming into their cities. I mean, it's New York, it's Chicago, it's a, it's a town like Edison, New Jersey, which is not that far from where I grew up that's now dealing with this. I mean, this is the kind of thing that as Republican governors like Texas Governor Greg Abbott continue to bus migrants away from the border to these Democratic cities, this is something that these cities have to continue to confront. And what they're seeing is that it is very, very expensive. We do not have the staff, the expertise, or the money and that may not be the ideal. We may all wish it was something different, but the rea- that's the reality. You're talking about housing people. You're talking about feeding people. You're talking about giving people medical care. This is an incredibly difficult thing that cities, you know, when they were planning their fiscal budgets in 22 and 23 and 24, they weren't thinking, oh, we should also add in, you know, feeding and housing 150,000 people in the case of New York, more or less. This is new territory, and we are looking um, over every authority that we have. That is the kind of reality that these cities are having to deal with, and they just don't have a ton of resources readily available to deal with that kind of thing. And what you hear down along the border, and you actually hear this from Democrats as well down here, not just Republicans, but I was having a conversation with a Democratic mayor down here not that long ago who was telling me, look, it's about time that New York and Chicago uh, have to deal with these sorts of issues. We want to treat these people humanely. We don't want to treat people poorly, but we also know that this ultimately comes down to an issue of dollars and cents when you're talking about municipalities, and that is very, very difficult. Are migrants being used as political pawns by some of these Republican governors? Yes, absolutely they are. But the effect that it is having, it is changing the conversation, I think, in some of these Democratic cities to talk about migration in a way that I don't think a lot of these places have had to deal with in in the past. 
Yeah, like to that point, New York City has a law that says that there needs to be a shelter bed for every unhoused person on the street, that no one should go the night without a bed. Eric Adams has said he wants to roll that back specifically because of migrants who find themselves without homes for weeks and months at a time. All right, uh, Matt Rivers, they're at the border in Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, one more quick break. When we come back, what's the biggest sport of 2024 going to be? Did you say darts? Well, you might have been right on target. One last thing is next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Our father was the leader of a Mormon religious cult. He used us and groomed us to kill for him. This is when I found out that I was born and raised in a cult. Daughters of the Cult, only on Hulu. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. And that's why at Good Morning America, we're right here. And we got you. We got you. We got you. Reporting from the Labor Department in Washington, I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And one last thing. The most exciting athlete on the planet this week might be a 16-year-old who eats pizza on game day. It's just, I've still got a lot of followers now. Luke Littler is from Northern England. He's got the wispy beginnings of a beard. He doesn't look like he's chiseled out of marble or anything, but that's okay because he plays darts. There's just, there's no pressure. Like I've said, it's my first, my first time being here. This week, in his first ever appearance at the World Darts Championship, he made his way to the final. So here's what you got to know. Darts is weirdly popular in the UK and Ireland. It's product of pub culture, of course, but promoters have turned it into a spectacle. Yes, they got one To the point where they rent out arenas, sell beer by the leader, and get thousands of people singing songs for their favorite dart throwers. These athletes have walk-up songs, like something you'd see in pro wrestling. I can't overstate how insane this all is. There are pyrotechnics involved. The best players can make millions a year. Which brings us to 16-year-old Luke Littler, now known as Luke the Nuke. And he does! Luke the Nuke with another 170 for the tournament. This was his first world championship. It was televised on Sky Sports. And like an English Tiger Woods, he started just destroying the competition. Bullseye by bullseye. The Nuke explodes on the Ali Pali stage. As he took down former world champs, you could see him finding his swagger. At one point, he asked the crowd which target he should aim at and eventually found his way to last night's final. I say whatever Luke Littler turns up, he turns up. And so far, it's been so far so good in this tournament. In the span of just a week, he's become a superstar. Because think about it, darts players remind us of the pro athlete we'd like to be, right? Talented, maybe, but none of us eating salads on Christmas Eve stuff. The workday starts around noon latest, you go to the bar, and even then, all you gotta keep in shape is your forearm. In fact, Luke the Nuke described how his pregame routine is a ham and cheese omelet in the morning, and if he wins, he treats himself to a kebab. He lost last night to a fellow Englishman named Luke Humphreys, which might have been just as well. If he wanted to celebrate his win with a pint, we still not old enough to legally drink it. Illegal drinking age in Britain, 18 years old. By the way, poor Luke Humphreys, he won the thing. He got 500,000 pounds, and he's got the cooler nickname. He's got Cool Hand Luke, and all anyone can talk about is the 16-year-old darts phenom. But man, count me in. I'm watching these dart championships every year from now on. Hey, I'm off tomorrow because I'm doing something equally nerdy. I'm going to be in a backgammon tournament. You didn't know your boy Brad was that into board games. And Flaherty will be in for the last day of the week. I'll talk to you later.
much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Our father was the leader of a Mormon religious cult. He used us and groomed us to kill for him. This is when I found out that I was born and raised in a cult. Daughters of the Cult, only on Hulu. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting in Las Vegas at the UNLV shootings, I'm Jacqueline Lave. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Right now in America this morning, new court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are unsealed. What they reveal about the high-powered people in his orbit, from Bill Clinton to Michael Jackson, and new details about an accusation against Prince Andrew. The reaction this morning. Breaking overnight, two arrests in the killing of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend in Texas on Christmas week. The father and son now charged in their murders, the possible motive, and how police tracked down the suspects. Growing concerns about a wider conflict in the Middle East after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens killed. The clues as to who may be responsible. The investigation into that deadly airport disaster. A passenger jet bursting into flames after hitting a smaller plane on the runway in Tokyo. What we've now learned about the flight crew. Chaos in the courtroom. Oh what set off this violence in Las Vegas? The judge attacked. Later, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. And the chaos as people try to get their hands on those trendy pink Stanley tumblers. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. Good Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Andrew Dimberg. I'm Andrea Fujii in for Rhiannon. We begin with reaction to the Jeffrey Epstein documents. The names of several people connected to the disgraced financier and sex offenders were unsealed last night. The names in those documents include Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew. This morning, we're learning why attorneys wanted to depose former President Clinton in a now settled defamation case relating to allegations against sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his one-time paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell. And we know that Clinton has been publicly associated with Epstein before. The first batch of previously sealed court documents related to Epstein were made public last night. 
One from a lawsuit filed by Virginia Gouffre. She's one of the women who say they were abused at Epstein's home in Florida, New York, and on a private Caribbean island. Gouffre's attorneys sought to depose Clinton as part of her 2016 lawsuit against Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, because her attorneys argued Clinton is a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Epstein and disapprove Maxwell's claims. This is just the first of what's coming out about these names that have been associated with Jeffrey Epstein for a long time. Gouffre made no allegations of wrongdoing against Clinton, contradicting a previous claim when she said she flew with Clinton and the Secret Service in a helicopter. According to Maxwell's unsealed deposition, she said the allegations that Clinton had dinner on Epstein's private island were 100% false. Without uh, Virginia Giffre's lawsuit, this stuff wouldn't have been exchanged because it was relevant to the claims. And now the court has decided there's no good basis to keep this stuff under wraps from the public. After Epstein's arrest in 2019, a Clinton spokesperson did denied the former president knew about Epstein's crimes, denied Clinton was ever on Epstein's island, and said Clinton had not communicated with Epstein in more than a decade. Also in the documents, deposition from a witness who said she met Michael Jackson and magician David Copperfield during her time with Epstein. Epstein died in jail while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges in 2019. His death was ruled a suicide. Maxwell was convicted of sex trafficking and other crimes for helping Epstein abuse teenage girls. She's serving a 20-year sentence, which she is appealing. In a statement overnight, her lawyers said she has consistently and vehemently maintained her innocence. Breaking overnight, two people have been arrested in connection with the murder of a pregnant teenager from Texas and her boyfriend. The suspects are a father and his 19-year-old son. Police in San Antonio say it appears to have been a drug deal gone bad. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found shot inside a car last week. She disappeared just before she was scheduled to give birth. Police say her cell phone helped them track down the suspects. One of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was um, Savannah's cell phone. With that information, the detective, uh, the detectives were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. The police say they believe the son killed the couple and the father helped move the bodies. Turning to the Middle East, major new concerns this morning about a wider conflict in the region after twin bombings inside Iran. Dozens of people were killed during a memorial for a top Iranian general. So, who is to blame? This morning we have some clues. ABC's Ike Jachi is here now with more. Ike, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Officials are still trying to determine exactly how many people died, and some say more than 100. The Biden administration saying it's likely ISIS behind the two explosions, triggering panic on the streets of a crowded Iranian city. The two powerful bombs detonating during a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general Qasem Soleimani, killed four years ago by a U.S. drone strike and considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups that included Hamas and Hezbollah. The scene outside a local hospital, chaotic, as the wounded are frantically lifted down from emergency vehicles and pushed into the hospital on stretchers. Officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks and detonated remotely, the attack killing scores of people and wounding over 200 more, the largest in that country in more than 40 years. Iranian officials immediately accusing Israel and quote criminal America of the attacks, saying Israel will pay the price. U.S. officials denying involvement. I'm not going to speak for another nation. I would just tell you that we have no indication that Israel was in any way involved in this. The attack comes just one day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Saleh al-Aruri, in Lebanon, raising fears of a wider war in the region. We remain uh, incredibly concerned, as we have been from the outset of this conflict, about the risk of the conflict spreading into other fronts. Now, Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. U.S. officials say they were not told in advance of the strike. Andrew, back to you.
Ike, thank you. Police in Newark, New Jersey say the murder of a Muslim leader does not appear to be a hate crime. Imam Hassan Sharif was shot outside his mosque. Neighbors who gathered last night blamed crime in the area. A $25,000 reward is offered for information leading to an arrest. New details about that deadly plane collision in Tokyo this week. Local media reports the passenger jet's cabin crew told the pilots that the plane was on fire after hitting a Coast Guard plane, killing five people. Air traffic control transcripts suggest the Coast Guard plane was not cleared for takeoff. Another potential factor, some runway warning lights were not working. Japan Airlines says the disaster could cost $104 million. Now to the campaign trail and new attacks between the candidates, which is days to go before the Iowa caucuses. Former President Trump overnight released a new attack ad targeting Nikki Haley. What President Trump believes and what he will do and what he will implement works and it will benefit the families that are there. Overnight, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem hitting the campaign trail in Iowa for Donald Trump, urging voters to think of how their lives have changed since Trump left office, stressing grocery costs, gas prices, and the border crisis. Is that what you hear about when you live and talk to your families and your neighbors? Is just how much their way of life has been undermined by everything that Joe Biden has done in the White House? With less than two weeks until the Iowa caucuses, former President Trump leads by 30 points. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was pressed on why he hasn't been more forceful against Trump. Why haven't you gone directly at him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, and kind of do that. That's just not how I roll. In New Hampshire, polls show former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley pulling into second place. Haley sharing this message with a packed town hall. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. Overnight, the Trump campaign launching a new ad attacking Haley's stance on the border wall and travel bans. Haley's weakness puts us in grave danger. Meanwhile, Trump is bringing his battle to stay on the ballot in Colorado to the U.S. Supreme Court. After that state's high court disqualified him for his actions on January 6, 2021. Trump's legal team is appealing, but not asking the justices to expedite consideration. If the court takes its time, Colorado's current ruling calls for Trump to remain on the ballot for the state's March 5th primary. It's unclear when the Supreme Court will decide whether to take up Trump's case. Turning to the weather, a cross-country storm is set to dump significant snow in the Northeast this weekend. Let's check your Thursday forecast. Good morning. We're tracking a cross-country storm bringing some snow to parts of New Mexico, Colorado, into the Texas Panhandle in Kansas Thursday, Thursday night into Friday with drenching rain farther south. That becomes the weekend snowmaker in many parts of the northeast with drenching rain farther southeast. This expands northeast through the night on Saturday into parts of the New England state. Still lingering snow Sunday. A quick look at snowfall forecasts here. One to three inches in the light blue, six plus inches in the dark blue. I'm AccuWeather Meteorologist Jeff Cornish. Coming up, the man arrested for stealing a plane and flying out of state. Also ahead, chaos in court. A man leaping over the bench to attack a judge. But we're learning about the suspect. And later, the new dog breed, now recognized by the American Kennel Club. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. I 
just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. ABC, Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, The Impact by Nightline Special, Friday night on ABC. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. An Idaho man is under arrest, accused of stealing a private plane in Las Vegas. The plane's owner reported that his emergency location transmitter was activated and he wasn't flying it. The FAA tracked it to Barstow, California, where police say the man was arrested trying to run away. Now to the wild scene inside a Nevada courtroom, a man lunging over the bench to attack the judge. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. Disorder in this Las Vegas courtroom. <laughs> 30-year-old Deobra Redden, unrestrained, lunges over the bench right at District Court Judge Mary Kay Holthus, pinning her against the wall, pummeling her on the floor, knocking the court's American flag over until court staff and sheriff's deputies fight him off. The chaos erupting moments after a relatively calm sentencing. Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but he did not want to go to prison again. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. Judge Holth is reminding Redden of his lengthy rap sheet. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. He still asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation, which apparently set Redden off. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else, because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of this court... Oh, 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 hey, oh, oh, oh. The judge was injured, her condition being monitored, and a courtroom officer was sent to the hospital. A statement from the court says, we commend the heroic acts of the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. We are reviewing our protocols. In the aftermath, the judge was seen holding her head, but talking and able to walk away. We're also told Redden has a history of mental illness. He now faces multiple new felony charges. Andrew, Andrea? All right, Derek, thank you. The rocket company owned by Elon Musk is accused of illegally firing several employees. A complaint from the National Labor Relations Board claims eight workers at SpaceX were fired after criticizing Musk, circulating a letter accusing him of being an embarrassment. No comment yet from the company. The numbers are in from airports across the country. Flight cancellations in the last year have hit a 10-year low. The TSA says the cancellation rate was just 1.2%. In terms of delays, the airlines that rated best were Delta, Alaska, American, and United Airlines. Coming up, new evidence of the case of convicted killer Alec Murdoch. Also ahead, a reality check for some people using popular weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. 
traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We're back with a fire breaking out at the home of Miami Dolphins all-star wide receiver Tyreek Hill. He returned from football practice to find his family had escaped, but his $7 million mansion had a giant hole in the roof. No word on how the fire started. New evidence could boost convicted killer Alec Murdoch's chance of getting a new trial. It centers around a controversial clerk in the South Carolina courthouse. Murdoch's lawyers have submitted two emails, which they say clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Hill has already been accused of jury tampering, which she denies. A hearing on Murdoch's request for a new trial is expected later this month. We turn now to a reality check for people using popular weight loss drugs. More women are coming forward to say the weight is back. This morning, more people are talking about what happened to them after they stopped taking the wildly popular drugs Ozempic and Wagovi. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. Artemis Byandor started taking Wagovi in August 2021. She lost 15 pounds over six months, but once her manufacturer's coupon expired, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover the cost. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi, and since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. We asked experts just how common this type of rebound weight gain is. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. It comes back gradually. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. Novo Nordisk, the maker of Ozempic and Wagovi, says not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes like more exercise and a better diet. One study found when patients stop taking the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight previously lost. Coming up, a big change at Starbucks. Plus, the 16-year-old global phenomenon in the sport of darts. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Our father was the leader of a Mormon religious cult. He used us and groomed us to kill for him. This is when I found out that I was born and raised in a cult. Daughters of the Cult, only on Hulu. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. 
From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I just walked in, and she's laying on the bathroom floor, and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Reporting from New York, I'm Gio Benitez. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Time to check the pulse. We begin with Starbucks now serving their coffee in a York cup. For the first time, the coffee chain is letting customers bring in their own cups, but it's only if you're going through the drive through or ordering on the app. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Meanwhile, Starbucks Stanley travel mugs are flying off the shelves. Take a look at this video. People have been lining up at 3 a.m. to buy special edition of the pink cups sold exclusively at Target. They cost under 50 bucks, but on eBay, they're now selling for upwards of 200 Is that another thing I have to get my kids? Uh-oh. I think so. I like the other <laughs> Stanley cup. Just the normal yeah, the colors. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> okay, next, a 16-year-old darts phenom. His name is Luke Lindler. His nickname is Luke the Nuke. He shot to fame at the World Darts Championship where he lost in the final but made $250,000. That's good money for a guy who lives on kebabs and orange soda. There's this video showing him playing in diapers at 18 months old. Luke says he's blown away by his growing number of fans. I've still got a lot of followers now. I've had a message off Luke Shaw for Manchester United. So it's just crazy. It's people who I've looked up to, and especially my, my club, Manchester United, wishing me luck. Well, Luke could meet his heroes. Manchester United just invited him to an upcoming match. Congratulations. Well, next, a new breed of dogs is in the spotlight. Most parents of young kids know of this healer. Take a look. Oh, yes, you have a cat in your belly. How did it get in there? Did you eat one? No. Well, no one really knows how cats get in your belly. They're probably through your belly button. What? Really? That is Bluey Healer from the popular show Bluey, about a six-year-old pup who loves to play. Now the American Kennel Club is recognizing the Lancashire Healer, making the breed of dog eligible even to compete in shows. They're small dogs that sh have short coats and are often black and tan. They and are cute. cute. And cute. Sure. Next, the Wall Street Journal is reigniting the debate over sleeping with your socks on. Their headline reads, if you sleep with socks on, you're a psychopath. That was just someone's quote, but it shows the passion surrounding the issue. I guess I'm a psychopath. In recent years, more has been written on the benefits of wearing socks to bed. They can increase circulation and blood flow to the feet, which can help lower your body's core temperature, and that helps you sleep. But the journal says all these health tips on the issue are only making couples argue more about it. I'm with you, though, especially when it's cold. Exactly. My feet get cold. And finally, the world's most dangerous pull-up. This daredevil showed off his strength doing his arm workout on the edge of a roof in Turkey. He hanging off the building. At one point, he held on with just one hand. Yikes. I don't care how often you go to the gym. Don't no. do this. No. Top headlines next. This is ABC News Live. The crushing the families trunk. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. 
All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. We have really good news. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand. These were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions. Their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Raya alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Checking more top stories for crossings at the southern border will reopen today due to a recent drop in migrant encounters. The ports of entry were closed last month during a record surge of migrant crossings. House Speaker Mike Johnson led a delegation of Republicans to Texas yesterday, calling on Democrats to increase border security in exchange for new aid for Israel and Ukraine. The leaders of Iran are vowing to retaliate for back-to-back -back bombings that killed more than 80 people. The blasts went off minutes apart as crowds gathered and attended a memorial for an Iranian general killed in a U.S. drone strike back in 2020. Iran blames Israel and the U.S. for the bombings. U.S. officials say it was likely ISIS. Finding a job just got harder. New figures show job openings in the U.S. have dropped to their lowest level in two years. Industries with the fewest openings included transportation, utilities, and hospitality. Today's weather, rain and snow along the west coast, up to 14 inches of snow in the Rockies. Rain for Texas and Oklahoma, and a weekend storm may look more wet than white for the I-95 corridor of the northeast. And finally, a whole new way to get rid of your Christmas tree. Here's Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one, actually, and now... We just casually have nine goats, Danny. <laughs> well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas Tree Cleanup Crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did creme brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> One thing farmers stress, though, is to please make sure all decorations are removed from the tree before you donate it, guys. That's what's making news in America this morning. Have a great Thursday, everyone. It's Thursday, January 4th. Are Jeffrey Epstein's secrets still being revealed? We start here. A judge unseals a trove of documents from an Epstein lawsuit. Some may be people who 
flew on Epstein's private plane. You're going to be hearing about this all day, but which parts actually matter? We'll break it all down. Israel's being blamed for an airstrike in Lebanon and now for a terror attack in Iran. Remotely controlled bombs, according to the Iranians, that went off in this crowd. As a deadly explosion rips through a crowd at what's likely and what's more far-fetched. And Republicans visit the border in the midst of a swell of migration. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. Now, the politics of 2024 could be defined by it. From ABC News, this is Start Here. I'm Brad Milkey. When Jeffrey Epstein died in a jail cell in 2019, it meant that we might not ever get the full story behind what appears to be prolific sexual abuse. I remember being in a lot of pain. I remember having some bruises. I was in an absolute panic to the point where I was able to get myself up and get out of that room. He'd already been convicted of procuring a minor for prostitution back in 2008, but now he'd been arrested on federal charges that he'd trafficked dozens more. Well, his death meant that case stopped. Prosecutors calling her a serial predator who helped Epstein sexually abuse underage girls. And while his longtime right-hand woman, Ghislaine Maxwell, has since been convicted of aiding these assaults, the list of accusations against Epstein stretched way beyond a single case. There was lawsuit after lawsuit, with some plaintiffs alleging Epstein and Maxwell weren't even the only perpetrators here. We have a lot of work to do in this country in terms of holding people accountable and educating about things like grooming. For years, some of these court filings have remained under seal, protecting the identities of the victims, protecting innocent bystanders who just happen to be mentioned in depositions. But some critics pointed out this has also protected the identities of Epstein's powerful allies. Some folks have been asking, without much evidence of any wrongdoing, whose names are in these documents anyway? Well, last night, those names started being revealed as vast sections of these document troves are unsealed. Let's start today with the ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky. Aaron, I feel like this release has been hyped up for weeks, but lots of people still don't seem to be sure what documents are being unsealed. What What is happening right now? Yeah, there's been a lot of speculation that this is the long-awaited client list of, of Jeffrey Epstein, that this will finally reveal... Uh, what certain powerful people were, were doing, whether they were on his private Caribbean island. I, Brad, it's not really any of that. These documents are part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit filed by Virginia Roberts, who now goes by her married name, Virginia Jufre. It's not how Jeffrey died, but it's how he lived. And we need to get to the bottom of everybody who was involved with that. She lives in Australia now, but she said that back... When she was a teenager, she was a sex slave for Jeffrey Epstein and that both Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell ordered her to have sex on various occasions with powerful men, including Britain's Prince Andrew, a claim that he has denied. She provided a photo of the yes. two of you together. Yes. Your arm was around her waist. Yes. You've seen the photo. I've seen the photograph. How do you explain that? I can't. He also settled a lawsuit with Virginia Dufre. So... Some of the names are people that may have just worked for Jeffrey Epstein and may have seen something or heard something and lawyers wanted to talk to them. Some may be additional victims that lawyers at the time wanted to talk to. Some may be people who flew on Epstein's private plane, people like former President Bill Clinton, who has never been accused of any wrongdoing as part of his association with Jeffrey Epstein, but who became a, something of a contentious figure in Jufre's lawsuit because she claimed that she saw Clinton at Epstein's private Caribbean island, something that a spokesman for Clinton denied, said he didn't know anything about Epstein's crimes and had never visited the island. I see. So this is like a lawsuit where Virginia Jufre is making all these accusations. The judge keeps a bunch of the documents from the case under wraps. Until now, why now, though, Aaron? Like, Why is this the moment where these things are going to come out? These documents have been unsealed on a rolling basis over the last number of years. And, and finally, the judge just decided that there really was no longer a compelling reason to keep them fully sealed any longer. The judge is entertaining some objections from people who do not want their names publicly associated with Jeffrey Epstein. One woman identified as Jane Doe 107 said in the country where she lives, it could get her in a lot of trouble if her name was, was out there. B but beyond that, the, the judge said it was just time uh, to, to have all of this fully unsealed. Uh, 
in part because of the, the, the public interest in understanding more about Epstein and his monstrous behavior. Okay, so, so I mean, what have we seen? Like, what did you see as, the, as these documents started being unsealed last night? Brad, about 40 of the estimated 275 documents have been released. And in them, we see arguments made by Virginia Giuffre's lawyers as to why they wanted to depose former President Clinton. We knew that they had sought to depose him. And, and the, the documents now being unredacted, we understand a bit more why. They thought that former President Clinton could provide information about what they described as his close relationship with Glenn Maxwell and with, with Jeffrey Epstein. And they also said that, you know, Jufre had mentioned President Clinton, had mentioned him being on Epstein's island, uh, and, and they wanted to talk to him about it. Mm. And, and who else, Aaron? Like, what other names could end up popping up out of all this? There are names that have come up. I saw a reference to actress Cameron Diaz. I saw uh, Al Gore, Tipper Gore. Uh, I saw a reference to Donald Trump. And, and Brad, none of that means anything. These were just people that lawyers wanted to ask witnesses about during deposition testimony because maybe they had been uh, associated with Epstein or, or their names just simply came up during the course of the lawyers' investigations. There that we've seen so far are no allegations against any of these people doing anything wrong. Well, and that's the thing, Aaron. So if this is not some big client list, right? If this is not some smoking gun about people who have been working with Epstein and whatever he's accused of doing, what what is the significance of this? And I guess, what, what do you have your eye on as this case continues to kind of unfurl? The public fascination about Jeffrey Epstein may best be answered by the federal government, not these documents, you know, because even though we're, we are seeing some more details, um, the broad strokes of, of what they reveal had been largely known over the last couple of years. The, the untapped repository belongs to the federal government. When Jeffrey Epstein was arrested on the tarmac of an airport in New Jersey uh, back in 2019 on uh, the July 4th weekend, the feds simultaneously uh, searched his mansion on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And, and they, they took photos, they took video, they took out a lot of stuff. And much of that has never been publicly revealed. There, there were some things uh, that were searched uh, from Epstein's properties that came out in Maxwell's trial. But by and large, the public has never seen any of that evidence. And, and so that may be the last place where the public could look to understand more about Epstein's crimes. All right. Uh, we'll see what happens next. Aaron Katursky, as he goes through more of these documents, we'll see if more are unsealed today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. Next up on Start Here, on the heels of an alleged assassination by Israel, Iran is hit with even larger explosions. We're back in a bit. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I just walked in, and she's laying on the bathroom floor, and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. The 
As the war rages in Gaza, there are questions reverberating throughout the region, throughout the world. What happens to Gazans? What is the future for Israel and terror groups like Hamas? And will all this crossfire ensnare other countries? Well, those questions only got louder as Iran-backed militias exchanged fire with American service members in recent months. The U.S. has unleashed retaliatory strikes after Iranian-backed forces targeted American troops in both Iraq and Syria. And then again, as a Hamas honcho was killed in Lebanon. Salak al-Aruri, the second in command of Hamas and a senior leader in the West Bank, among at least six people killed, according to Lebanese authorities. Then yesterday, as Iran was marking the anniversary of its own military leader being killed years ago, a pair of bombs went off, killing nearly 100 people, wounding 200 more in what's being called that country's biggest terror attack in decades. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz is in Tel Aviv in Israel right now. Martha, what happened? Because this was a really significant day over in Iran. It, it was. It was commemorating the death of Qasem Soleimani, who was killed by an American drone four years ago to the day yesterday. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel. This was, of course, a, a U.S. drone that took out Soleimani. America should have a lot of fear. What should you do? It created outrage. I happened to be there just days after that attack and walking the streets there where they were shouting death to America. What is your message to Mr. Trump? Mr. Trump, you don't have any right to kill him. He was a very, very good and brave and kind uh, general. The Iranians are already blaming Israel for this attack. There were two bombs, uh, remotely controlled bombs, according to the Iranians, that went off in this crowd. Israel uh, has said nothing about this, but U.S. officials say they have absolutely no information that Israel was responsible. Yeah, I was going to say, Martha, who would have done this? Because there are foreign governments like Israel that don't like Iran. But, I mean, this seemed almost built, this type of attack, to kill civilians, right? Where you have one bomb go off and then, like, 15 minutes later, after everyone's gathered, the other one goes off. And, and that just does not have the mark of Israelis operating uh, within Iran. There right. have certainly been targeted killings in Iran uh, that Israel is believed to be responsible for, nuclear scientists and others, but not mass casualties like that. I think uh, the suspects are ISIS and its affiliate. We forget that ISIS is still active in this area. So that's who they are pointing the blame to. But Brad, you know, you got to believe, and, and I've covered this region a long time, no matter what the Israelis say, no matter what the U.S. says, uh, the U.S. officials say, the Iranians are going to say it is Israel. Right. Like this is the enemy. So this enemy must have done it. But I guess if it's less likely for Israel to carry out this type of attack, it would be much more likely for Israel to do, like you said, a, a targeted strike, which is what we saw happen in Beirut, right, in Lebanon. Israel hasn't really confirmed or denied that attack, Martha, but U.S. officials are now saying they do think Israel was behind the killing of the Hamas leader. I guess my question to you is we've been spending all this time talking about how foreign countries are wary of a wider war. Is Israel worried about a wider war like what what is their tolerance for for hitting other countries right now and stoking animosity with their neighbors I, I, they certainly don't want a wider war, but, you know, just sitting here right now, uh, you're surrounded by countries that are after Israel, that are after the U.S. We've had more than 100 attacks on U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq, one on Christmas Day that was very serious, leaving several U.S. troops uh, wounded, one in critical condition. And, and then you have the Houthis in Yemen who continue to fire on ships in the Red Sea and U.S. naval warships having to shoot down drones uh, that are flying all around the Red Sea from the Houthis. So I right. think that's the place that I would really keep my eye on in this is Yemen. All right. Martha Raddatz there. She landed in Israel to report on this strike and then this whole thing in Iran happened. So covering everything there in the Mideast right now. Thank you. You bet. 
Every month, the U.S. keeps track of how many migrants are encountered by Customs and Border Protection as they cross the border. Well, recently, sources revealed to ABC News that the count for December was more than 300,000 encounters, the highest ever recorded. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, these crossings are having a big effect, to the point where some Democratic cities are taking new measures to limit the number of new arrivals. And yesterday, Republican lawmakers toured the border to argue for their agenda. ABC's Matt Rivers covers immigration. He's in San Antonio, Texas right now. Matt, what is the difference between 300,000 and, and past months, right? Can you just put into context how overwhelming this has become? So uh, in my family, Brad, we kind of have a joke. My wife always says like a Christmas tradition or a New Year's tradition that I will be spending some time down at the border around this time of year because every year we do see, uh, or almost every year, a spike in the number of crossings around this time of year. When when the temperatures start to go down, people want to get in before the, the new year, you do see numbers go up. Mm. What we have never seen is those kind of numbers. 300,000 plus, that, that is the all-time record month for those figures. We've never seen a single month with numbers that are that high. Now that we should caution, it's preliminary data and that could change. But, you know, even if you change it by 10,000 encounters, you're still talking about an all-time record high month. And this is this new normal that you and I have talked about. We see spikes like we usually do, but the spikes we're seeing are bigger than ever because the amount of people coming north are bigger than ever. And this is going to keep happening. Just look down a little further south in the Darien Gap, that, that strip of jungle between South America and Central America. You have to go through it if you're walking from South America to Central America. 520,000 plus people transited the Darien Gap during the year 2023. That is more than double the previous annual record. That's where people are coming from and they're arriving to the border. So like you said, regardless of your political affiliation and all this, what is happening at the border, we've never seen before. And, and Republicans have said that this is such a priority that they will not fund aid for Ukraine until they see policy changes at the border, right? Like th th this is priority number one. What, I guess what I'm confused by is, is what policy changes would fix this situation, though. What are they saying? Well, so what Republicans generally keep coming back to is they we want a couple of things. We want to change the way America's asylum laws are written to make it harder to apply for asylum in this country. We want to make it easier to deport people. And we want to make it so that more people have to wait outside the United States while they wait to see whether they're going to be let into the United States or not. Those are the three things that you always hear from Republicans. If President Biden wants a supplemental spending bill focused on national security, it better begin by defending America's national security. But even yesterday, you had Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who led this delegation of House Republicans down to Eagle Pass, Texas, not far from where I am right now. He even said, look, we don't have every single policy prescription. We don't know exactly how to solve this problem because it is extremely complicated. But what Republicans are saying is that they're not willing to do just about anything, including funding Ukraine, Israel, even provide funding for the border itself until... There is some sort of deal struck that is going to change in a substantive way, according to Johnson, the policies at the border. But there's a couple complicated things here. What House Republicans continue to signal, especially the further right members of the Republican caucus, is that they want to see really, really intense, some would even call it draconian changes to the way this country handles immigration. So even though there's a bipartisan negotiation uh, being worked on in the Senate right now, doesn't mean that what the Senate comes out with is necessarily going to be agreed to by House Republicans. And what you've heard from some House Republicans is that they're going to be willing to shut the government down if their sort of policy prescriptions for the border are not enacted. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. And today we got a firsthand look at the damage and the chaos the border catastrophe is causing in all of our communities. So this is a very, very complicated uh, situation. But look, this is the line in the sand that Republicans are drawing. In the beginning of an election year, what's the first thing that House Republicans do wow. in a 2024 election year? 64 of them go down to the border and say, this is where we're drawing the line in the sand. It tells you what the rest of this year is going to look like. Republicans are going to campaign on this. And I think it's going to make the next couple weeks and months in terms of these negotiations back and forth in Washington, D.C., something that will be very fraught and something we need to pay attention to very closely. It's, it's really interesting that even like, these House Republicans are thinking they're, they're – Republican colleagues in the Senate might not be going far enough. But well, then if, if we're looking at that kind of political divide, you look up to cities like New York, 
where Mayor Eric Adams appeared to say he didn't want to consider New York a sanctuary city anymore. He's since kind of rolled that back. But I- Illinois suburbs are now fining bus companies for dropping people off without any plan. Of where they, I mean, what, what tools do these northern cities, I guess, have at their disposal? Because it seems like they are getting very frustrated by the number of people coming into their cities. I mean, it's New York, it's Chicago, it's a, it's a town like Edison, New Jersey, which is not that far from where I grew up that's now dealing with this. I mean, this is the kind of thing that as Republican governors like Texas Governor Greg Abbott continue to bus migrants away from the border to these Democratic cities, this is something that these cities have to continue to confront. And what they're seeing is that it is very, very expensive. We do not have the staff, the expertise, or the money And that may not be the ideal. We may all wish it was something different, but that's the reality. You're talking about housing people. You're talking about feeding people. You're talking about giving people medical care. This is an incredibly difficult thing that cities, you know, when they were planning their fiscal budgets in 22 and 23 and 24, they weren't thinking, oh, we should also add in, you know, feeding and housing 150,000 people in the case of New York, more or less. This is new territory, and we are looking um, over every authority that we have. That is the kind of reality that these cities are having to deal with, and they just don't have a ton of resources readily available to deal with that kind of thing. And what you hear down along the border, and you actually hear this from Democrats as well down here, not just Republicans, but I was having a conversation with a Democratic mayor down here not that long ago who was telling me, look, it's about time that New York and Chicago uh, have to deal with these sorts of issues. We want to treat these people humanely. We don't want to treat people poorly, but we also know that this ultimately comes down to an issue of dollars and cents when you're talking about municipalities, and that is very, very difficult. Are migrants being used as political pawns by some of these Republican governors? Yes, absolutely they are. But the effect that it is having, it is changing the conversation, I think, in some of these Democratic cities to talk about migration in a way that I don't think a lot of these places have had to deal with in in the past. Yeah, like to that point, New York City has a law that says that there needs to be a shelter bed for every unhoused person on the street, that no one should go the night without a bed. Eric Adams has said he wants to roll that back specifically because of migrants who find themselves without homes for weeks and months at a time. All right, uh, Matt Rivers, they're at the border in Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, one more quick break. When we come back, what's the biggest sport of 2024 going to be? Did you say darts? Well, you might have been right on target. One last thing is next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Raya alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. And that's why at Good Morning America, we're right here. And we got you. We got you. We got you. I'm Mola Lenghi in Beirut, Lebanon. And wherever the story goes, we'll take you there. You're watching ABC News Live. And one last thing. The most exciting athlete on the planet this week might be a 16-year-old who eats pizza on game day. It's just, I've still got a lot of followers now. Luke Littler is from Northern England. He's got the wispy beginnings of a beard. He doesn't look like he's chiseled out of marble or anything, but that's okay because he plays darts. There's just, there's no pressure. Like I've said, it's my first, my first time being here. This week, in his first ever appearance at the World Darts Championship, he made his way to the final. So here's what you got to know. Darts is weirdly popular in the UK and Ireland. It's product of pub culture, of course, but promoters have turned it into a spectacle. Yes, they got... 
to the point where they rent out arenas, sell beer by the liter, and get thousands of people singing songs for their favorite dart throwers. These athletes have walk-up songs, like something you'd see in pro wrestling. Like, I can't overstate how insane this all is. There are pyrotechnics involved. The best players can make millions a year. Which brings us to 16-year-old Luke Littler, now known as Luke the Nuke. This was his first world championship. It was televised on Sky Sports, and like an English Tiger Woods, he started just destroying the competition. Bullseye by bullseye. The nuke explodes on the Ali Pali stage. As he took down former world champs, you could see him finding his swagger. At one point, he asked the crowd which target he should aim at, and eventually found his way to last night's final. I say, whatever Luke Littler turns up, he turns up. And so far, it's been so far so good in this tournament. In the span of just a week, he's become a superstar. Because think about it, darts players remind us of the pro athlete we'd like to be, right? Talented, maybe, but none of us eating salads on Christmas Eve stuff. The workday starts around noon latest, you go to the bar, and even then, all you gotta keep in shape is your forearm. In fact, Luke the Nuke described how his pregame routine is a ham and cheese omelet in the morning, and if he wins, he treats himself to a kebab. He lost last night to a fellow Englishman named Luke Humphreys, which might have been just as well. If he wanted to celebrate his win with a pint, we still not old enough to legally drink it. Illegal drinking age in Britain, 18 years old. By the way, poor Luke Humphreys, he won the thing. He got 500,000 pounds, and he's got the cooler nickname. He's got Cool Hand Luke, and all anyone can talk about is the 16-year-old darts phenom. But man, count me in. I'm watching these dart championships every year from now on. Hey, I'm off tomorrow because I'm doing something equally nerdy. I'm going to be in a backgammon tournament. You didn't know your boy Brad was that into board games. And Flaherty will be in for the last day of the week. I'll talk to you later. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News live. Hi, I'm Diane Macedo. Today on ABC News Live First, the newly unsealed court documents connected to Jeffrey Epstein, what they reveal about the high-powered people in his orbit, and new details about an accusation against Prince Andrew. House Speaker Mike Johnson is demanding action on the migrant crisis. After visiting the southern border, why he says America is at a breaking point, and what he and fellow Republicans are now calling on President Biden to do. The deadly twin blasts in Iran leaving nearly 100 people dead. What we know about the attack with the region already on edge. 
Plus, the Stanley Cup craze, how social media is fueling the hype, and why hundreds rush to Target stores to get an exclusive drop. We begin with the newly unsealed documents connected to late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. A New York federal court has released 40 previously secret documents stemming from a defamation lawsuit brought by one of Epstein's victims. Among other things, the documents reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Clinton. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Newly unsealed court records reinforce the association of presidents, even the king of pop, with Jeffrey Epstein, the sex offender who killed himself in a New York City jail while awaiting trial. The documents were part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit one of Epstein's victims, Virginia Giuffre, filed against his former paramour, Glenn Maxwell. The documents include arguments by Giuffre's lawyers, who sought testimony from former President Bill Clinton, calling him a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Mr. Epstein. Giuffre never accused Clinton of wrongdoing, but claimed she had dinner with him on Epstein's private Caribbean island. Maxwell called that a lie, and the documents show her attorney said each and every part of plaintiff's claims regarding President Clinton has conclusively been proven false. Clinton was never deposed. After Epstein's arrest, his spokesman denied Clinton was ever on the island. After Giuffre's allegations became public, the documents also show Epstein emailed Maxwell seeming to offer advice. You can issue a reward to any of Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family that come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner. Giuffre claims she was a teen sex slave for Epstein and directed by him and Maxwell to have sex with powerful men, as she described in a 2019 interview with the Miami Herald. The training started immediately. How to be quiet, be subservient, give Jeffrey what he wants. A lot of this training came from Guilin herself. Giuffre claimed Epstein ordered her to have sex on three occasions with Britain's Prince Andrew, which he has denied. He said he could not recall meeting her, and he told the BBC, This photo of the two of them could be fake. I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Andrew settled a lawsuit with Giuffre in 2022. The documents include testimony from Johanna Joburg, one of Epstein's accusers, who said she was seated next to Giuffre at Epstein's New York City mansion when Andrew groped her breast. But when asked, do you have any knowledge about whether Virginia is telling the truth about whether Glenn Maxwell directed her to have sex with Prince Andrew, Joburg answered, no, only based on what I've read in the media. When asked about meeting other famous people, she said she met Michael Jackson at Epstein's house in Palm Beach. And when she was asked, did you ever massage Donald Trump? Schoberg responded, no. And senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, thank you. We will have much more on these unsealed documents coming up in our next half hour. Meanwhile, the East Coast is bracing for some messy winter weather. Ten states are now under snow and wind alerts as a storm moves across the country. ABC News chief meteorologist Ginger Z is tracking it all for us. Ginger? Diane. So let's talk about the storm that's already put up to 15 inches of snow down in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So they got that snow to help out their snow drought, but they're still below average in a lot of those places. Soda Springs cleaning it up there, but now it's moved into the Southern Rockies. So New Mexico above 8,000 feet, you could end up with eight to 12 inches. Some of the lower elevations will get less. Uh, you know, Panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma, Guymon included, the plains of Western Kansas, you'll end up with an inch to three inches, just enough to create problems on the roads. Then this thing slides across. Look at Friday, 4 p.m., it's about late afternoon for New Orleans. You're going to erupt into some thunderstorms. Some of them could have tornadoes, damaging wind, and definitely some heavy rain blasting through with this before the next one next week. The big part of the storm in the northeast and the mid-Atlantic begins Saturday. So Saturday morning, it is now faster and it is warmer. So pay attention here. It's ice in Appalachia, but it's snow to start in a lot of places and then quickly transitions to rain at the coast. So if you're I-95, you might see some snowflakes, but it would be transitioning to a sloppy, then heavy rain situation. If you're away from Boston, like Worcester or say Albany, Northern Hudson Valley, Poconos, that's where you're gonna see the heavy snow Saturday evening, through early Sunday morning before this thing jets out of here. We do have another storm that we're going to be watching, but boy, this thing is warm, and our ocean temperatures, right, are three to even five degrees above normal. That is playing part of a factor in uh, not allowing this to be snow at the coast. 
Diane. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z, thank you. And House Speaker Mike Johnson is calling on President Biden to take immediate action on the migrant crisis. Johnson visited the Texas border with dozens of Republican lawmakers, calling the trip an eye-opener and saying America is at a breaking point. Now the Department of Justice is suing Texas over the state's new immigration law. ABC's Matt Rivers is in Eagle Pass, Texas with more. The Department of Justice is suing the state of Texas attempting to block a tough new immigration law from taking effect this March. The new law would give state officials the right to detain and deport migrants suspected of entering the state illegally. But the DOJ says only the federal government has that right, calling the Texas law unconstitutional. Republican Governor Greg Abbott firing back online saying, quote, I like my chances. Texas is the only government in America trying to stop illegal immigration. This as several key border crossings are reopening from California to South Texas, weeks after record numbers of migrant crossings prompted federal officials to close four different ports of entry. Numbers of daily migrant encounters are lower in recent days, but the overall picture is unprecedented. Sources telling ABC News more than 302,000 migrant encounters were registered last month, the highest ever monthly number. One thing is absolutely clear. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. House Speaker Mike Johnson leading a delegation of some 64 House Republicans to Eagle Pass, Texas Wednesday. Their New Year's resolution? Demanding tougher border security policies laid out in a bill the House passed last year. H.R. 2 is the necessary ingredient. Why? Because it has provisions that fix each of these problems. The White House calling Johnson's border trip a political stunt, saying House Republicans have rejected requests for more funding at the border multiple times. And then you can see this international bridge once again open after weeks of being shut. Meanwhile, Republicans saying that without new border security measures, they will not support any new funding requests for Ukraine, Israel, or even the border itself. We know a bipartisan group of senators negotiating once again today to try and reach a framework for a deal. Diane? Matt Rivers in Eagle Pass, Texas. Thank you. Former President Trump is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to keep him on the Republican primary ballot in Colorado. A ruling from the high court could impact several challenges to his eligibility in multiple states. ABC News senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott is in Des Moines, Iowa, where the first votes are less than two weeks away. The Supreme Court is weighing whether to take up Donald Trump's appeal in an unprecedented case that could decide whether Trump stays on the ballot in Colorado. It comes just days after a lower court disqualified the former president for his actions on January 6th, pointing to the 14th Amendment, which bans any officer of the United States who swore an oath to the Constitution and engaged in insurrection from holding office. Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection against the Constitution, and therefore under the Constitution, he cannot be our president again. But Trump's lawyers insisting that January 6th was not insurrection, and Trump in no way engaged in insurrection. The former president still 30 points ahead of his rivals here in Iowa, with the caucuses now just 11 days away. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis asked by one voter why he isn't going after Trump harder. Why haven't you gone directly after Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on it. Is your strategy working? Do you need to draw a clear so contrast? So here's the thing. Um, let's have a debate. Let's get up on the stage. There are clear contrasts, and I think the biggest contrast is just simply, I deliver. That voter, not impressed. Were you satisfied by his answer? To me? No. Not at all. Not at all. Why? I, well, he skipped over it. He, he just, you know, typical political answer. Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis now neck and neck for second place here in Iowa. Haley trying to downplay expectations, hoping for a much stronger finish in New Hampshire. As for Trump's appeal, it's unclear when the Supreme Court will decide whether or not they plan to weigh in. Diane. Rachel Scott in Iowa, thank you. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken is traveling to the Middle East amid growing fears of a wider conflict in the region. The trip comes after a pair of deadly bombings in Iran killed at least 84 people at a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general. 
Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. U.S. officials saying it was the terror group ISIS that was likely behind the deadliest attack Iran has seen in more than 40 years. Two powerful bombs detonated on a crowded Iranian street during a commemoration ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general, Qasem Soleimani, killed by a U.S. drone strike four years ago. Crowds desperately fleeing after the first bomb blast, the second exploding minutes later. Iranian officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks, detonated remotely. Soleimani, considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups, including Hamas and Hezbollah, is considered a hero in Iran, where tens of thousands gathered for his funeral procession in Iran in 2020. This procession so packed you can barely move, but the emotion is everywhere. People have a very strong message for America. They chanted death to America, a chant now echoed after this most recent attack on civilians. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi accusing Israel and America of the attacks, warning Israel will pay the price. But U.S. officials say there is no evidence they were involved. Can you rule out that Israel had anything to do with this? We have no indication at this time at all that Israel was involved in any way whatsoever. The attack coming a day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Salah al-Aruri, in Lebanon. Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. The U.S. saying it was not told in advance of the strike. And there are also reports that an Iranian-backed Iraqi commander was killed in Baghdad by an airstrike today. Diane? All right, Martha Raditz in Starot, Israel, thank you. And pilots of the passenger jet that collided with a Coast Guard plane in Japan are expected to speak to investigators today. This comes as the investigation shows warning lights on the runway were not working at the time of the crash. ABC News foreign correspondent James Longman has the latest. Yeah, hi, Diane. It's now emerged that warning lights on the runway at Haneda Airport that tell pilots whether or not it's safe to land were not working the night that Japan Airlines flight crashed into a Coast Guard aircraft. There was an alert issued back on December 27th telling all pilots that those lights would be out for the foreseeable future. It's not clear whether or not it had anything to do with the crash, but clearly that'll be part of the uh, investigation. Meantime, transcripts of the communication between air traffic control and the pilots uh, has now been released. It shows that they did not at any time tell the pilots uh, to abort their landing. Also seems to suggest that uh, air traffic control was not aware of the Coast Guard's plane making its way onto the runway, that they did not ask for clearance to do that. Uh, but the uh, pilots of the plane say they didn't see anything as they were coming into land. They have spoken today to air crash investigators. Meantime, the fallout from that horrific earthquake uh, is also ongoing. The search for survivors continues. 30,000 people are still living in shelters. There are so many people people who are still without fuel, without power, without internet connections. Entire communities are still cut off because of landslides, uh, smashing roads and blocking access. So uh, a lot of people are still completely cut off. Japan is hoping uh, that more survivors will be found very soon. Diane. All right, James Longman, thank you. And a Connecticut woman with cancer is reportedly set to become the first non-resident to die under Vermont's medical aid in dying law. Linda Bluestein reached a settlement with the state to allow her to end her life there. Now she's expected to take a lethal dose of medication at 10 a.m. Eastern. Her son and caretaker call it a gift. Coming up, masking mandates are back at some hospitals. Why the precaution is being reinstated across the country. Also ahead, disorder in the court. Why this man attacked a judge in the middle of a hearing and why the court now says it's reviewing its protocols. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. 
with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Raya alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is what would you do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, hospitals in at least nine states are once again requiring people to wear masks. They say it's an attempt to curb an increase of respiratory illnesses, including COVID, RSV, and the flu. ABC News Ariel Reshef is outside one of the hospitals now masking up here in New York. Ariel? This is one of 11 hospitals here in New York City to reinstate masking. Some hospitals from coast to coast taking that step, given the rise in respiratory illnesses like flu, COVID, and RSV. 31 states and Washington, D.C. now reporting high or very high respiratory activity. When it comes to COVID-19, hospitalizations have been climbing for the past seven weeks with 30,000 new admissions in just the past week alone. The CDC estimating that 4,500 people have died from the flu so far this season that is certainly stoking concern here in New York hospitals say that they are not overwhelmed and they're reinstating masking as a proactive step to protect their patients and staff Diane Ariel Rasha thank you and a Nevada man is facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing video shows him flying over the bench at Judge Mary Kay Holthus and then pummeling her on the floor now the judge and a courtroom marshal are recovering ABC Derek Dennis has the latest. Disorder in this Las Vegas courtroom. 30-year-old oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Deobra Redden, unrestrained, hey. lunges over the bench right at District Court Judge Mary Kay Holthus, pinning her against the wall, pummeling her on the floor, knocking the court's American flag over until court staff and sheriff's deputies fight him off. Oh, the chaos erupting moments after a relatively calm sentencing. Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but he did not want to go to prison again. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. Judge Holf is reminding Redden of his lengthy rap sheet. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. He still asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation, which apparently set Redden off. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else, because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Nevada, this court... Oh, the judge was injured, her condition being monitored, and a courtroom officer was sent to the hospital. A statement from the court says, we commend the heroic acts of the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. We are reviewing our protocols. In the aftermath, the judge was seen holding her head, but talking and able to walk away. Our thanks to Derek Dennis for that report. We're told the man who attacked the judge has a history of mental illness. He now faces multiple new felony charges. Coming up, new evidence in the push for a new trial for a convicted killer, Alec Murdoch. What his legal team just submitted to the court. But first, signs of love in Lewiston, Maine, after a mass shooting took 18 lives. How the small town is now uniting through strength and sign language.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families front. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I just walked in, and she's laying on the bathroom floor, and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime, we'll take you there. Streaming free on ABC News Live. Our father was the leader of a Mormon religious cult. He used us and groomed us to kill for him. This is when I found out that I was born and raised in a cult. Daughters of the Cult, only on Hulu. Reporting from the Federal District Courthouse in Washington, D.C., I'm Terry Moran. Wherever the news is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. Residents of Lewiston, Maine, say they're now relying on each other to recover from October's mass shooting that killed 18 people. The town's deaf community has been hit especially hard after losing members and facing communication hurdles. ABC's Kira Phillips traveled to Lewiston to meet with the deaf survivors and family members and to learn how they're inspiring others around them. Josh prioritized family. He was a family man. He did everything with us. But he also cared about the deaf community and helping people. He was the director for an interpreting agency, and so he was always helping to make sure that people could have access to their communication needs. We're learning details about what officials are calling a mass casualty event playing out in Lewiston, Maine. 18 people are now deceased. I didn't find out until the next day around noon when the police came to my door and told me the tragic news. He was with a group of deaf people on Wednesday night to enjoy a game of cornhole at Schmengi's Bar. We were calling hospitals, and the hospitals would not allow interpreters. What's it been like losing your partner in the business, doing this on your own? I never imagined it, losing somebody like that. He was my right hand, and now I'm trying to figure out how to do it without him. Schmengi's was, you know, the site of one of the worst mass shootings in our country, yet the deaf community that was affected wants to come here to your other restaurant to heal, to be together. What does that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot to me. I enjoyed having them there. I couldn't sign with them, um, but I could communicate with them. We had our ways. If you look around, the community, they understand, I love you. I remember at the vigil in Lewiston a few days after that happened, Kevin Bolin was a speaker at that vigil. Please with me, and I love you to those we lost. And to see that entire cathedral fill with those I love yous. And that was such a touching moment to recognize how much the community recognizes that we're in it together. 
Yes, and I feel like it was a quick connection between the deaf and the hearing communities, bringing us all together. It was there, we saw it, we felt it, and, and we see it. The waterfall, right, you and dad dove into the water, and it was very cold. How do they feel, dad, now? Oh, they still feel very connected with their father. It may seem odd for others, but we, I have a spiritual belief. You know, I have a light in the basement that still flickers, and one day I went down there, and it adjusted just at the right time, and so I, you know, I talked to Josh, and I said, you're watching us, and, you know, the light came on, just as I had said that. Where's Dad now? He's in my heart. <sighs> and he's watching over us. And also, he's downstairs, we see him in the light. You can feel his love here, right now. Always. Kira Phillips, thank you. Coming up, the newly unsealed court documents connected to Jeffrey Epstein, what they reveal about the high-powered people in his orbit and the fallout this morning. Also ahead, the new Valentine's Day must-have, the craze at Target over a new exclusive drop. Plus, holiday deals in January? Is it too late to find good prices now? You asked Alexis, and she has the answer. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> People need to understand, these were wanted babies. 18 women facing life and death medical conditions, their lives now out of their control. I felt like I was going to die. Our lives and our health are debatable. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, On the Brink, now streaming on Hulu. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live.
Welcome back to ABC News Live First. Thanks for streaming with us. You are looking at New York City on this Thursday, and we have a lot of news to get to. Here's the rundown right now. Two suspects are in custody in the murders of a pregnant Texas teen and her boyfriend. San Antonio police say they've arrested a father and 19-year-old, adding the murders appear to be a drug deal gone bad. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found shot inside a car last week, just before Savannah was expected to give birth. Police say her cell phone helped them track down the suspects. Christopher Preciado is charged with capital murder, and his father, Ramon, is charged as an accomplice. We're learning new details about that deadly plane collision in Tokyo this week. Japan's transport ministry says transcripts suggest the Coast Guard plane was not cleared for takeoff when it collided with the jet, killing five people. Investigators also say some runway warning lights were not working at the time of the crash. The pilots have said they couldn't see the plane as they came in to land. They'll be interviewed today by crash investigators. A Nevada man is facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing. Video shows the defendant suddenly flying over the bench, attacking the judge. That triggered a brawl as court staff then tried to restrain him. The judge was not injured, but uh, was injured rather, but not hospitalized. A courtroom marshal suffered a gash on his forehead and a dislocated shoulder. Meanwhile, more documents are expected to be made public today connected to late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. This comes after New York federal court released a first batch of previously secret documents stemming from a defamation lawsuit brought by one of Epstein's victims. Among other things, the documents reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Clinton. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Newly unsealed court records reinforce the association of presidents, even the king of pop, with Jeffrey Epstein, the sex offender who killed himself in a New York City jail while awaiting trial. The documents were part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit one of Epstein's victims, Virginia Giuffre, filed against his former paramour, Glenn Maxwell. The documents include arguments by Giuffre's lawyers, who sought testimony from former President Bill Clinton calling him a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Mr. Epstein. Giuffre never accused Clinton of wrongdoing, but claimed she had dinner with him on Epstein's private Caribbean island. Maxwell called that a lie, and the documents show her attorney said each and every part of plaintiff's claims regarding President Clinton has conclusively been proven false. Clinton was never deposed. After Epstein's arrest, his spokesman denied Clinton was ever on the island. After Giuffre's allegations became public, the documents also show Epstein emailed Maxwell seeming to offer advice. You can issue a reward to any of Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family that come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner. Giuffre claims she was a teen sex slave for Epstein and directed by him and Maxwell to have sex with powerful men, as she described in a 2019 interview with the Miami Herald. The training started immediately. How to be quiet, be subservient, give Jeffrey what he wants. A lot of this training came from Guilin herself. Giuffre claimed Epstein ordered her to have sex on three occasions with Britain's Prince Andrew, which he has denied. He said he could not recall meeting her, and he told the BBC, This photo of the two of them could be fake. I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Andrew settled a lawsuit with Giuffre in 2022. The documents include testimony from Johanna Joburg, one of Epstein's accusers, who said she was seated next to Giuffre at Epstein's New York City mansion when Andrew groped her breast. But when asked, do you have any knowledge about whether Virginia is telling the truth about whether Glenn Maxwell directed her to have sex with Prince Andrew, Joburg answered, no, only based on what I've read in the media. When asked about meeting other famous people, she said she met Michael Jackson at Epstein's house in Palm Beach. And when she was asked, did you ever massage Donald Trump? Schoberg responded, no. And senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky and ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley join me now for more on this. Aaron, these documents are from a court case settled with one of Epstein's victims in 2017. So why release them now and what in them stuck out to you? They released under court order. The judge finally said there was no reason to keep anything associated with that litigation sealed. And, and there have been documents produced over the years. Uh, this is probably going to be the final batch because most of the redactions are now gone. And the, the judge, I think, had an interest in uh, some kind of transparency here because people, as Virginia Giuffre's lawyers put it, are interested, fascinated in Jeffrey Epstein's vast global sex trafficking network and how he managed to get away with it for so long. 
Kim, from a legal standpoint, is it surprising that more high-profile people didn't try to block the release of their names? Well, they might have. Uh, the, the, the question is, do they have a basis for uh, blocking that? There's, it's a balancing test, and they have to have a good reason once it's on the public record in this case. Um, you know, court documents, the exception of grand jury material and other uh, standards that are met in civil cases, generally are on the public record and, uh, and are available for the media and others to, to look at. And that's really where we are now. So, Kim, could we see any charges from this? Well, presumably, the and charges would come from either the federal uh, Department of Justice or a state prosecutor. Uh, these records could have been subpoenaed by a grand jury separately. So all of that could have been ongoing, notwithstanding, and at simultaneous with this with this civil litigation, they wouldn't necessarily one follow from the other. So if we haven't seen charges, it, it, I would expect they were probably not going to see them. But it's also possible that this perks the interest of a prosecutor somewhere, and they start uh, following up and investigating some of these public allegations now. Aaron, more documents are expected to be released today. What are you watching for there? Yeah, I, I, we're not sure what else there could be. We, we have a sense because, uh, as Kim says, so much of this has already been released. And, and more importantly, the prosecutors, the lawyers associated with, with all these Jeffrey Epstein-related cases, they know most of what exists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure there's going to be anything that will push the case forward. There is, though, Diane, an untapped repository of Jeffrey Epstein information, and that's with the federal government. Uh, the, the federal prosecutors in Manhattan, after Je Jeffrey Epstein's arrest, they raided his Upper East Side mansion. They uh, took video, they took photos, they took a lot of electronics, They and, and all of those items may help shed light on Epstein's crimes, but none of that so far has seen the light of day. All right, Senior Investigative Correspondent Aaron Katursky, ABC News Legal Contributor Kim Whaley, thank you. Meanwhile, the first alleged member of the Atlanta-based YSL gang has testified in the trial against rapper Young Thug. Trontavious Stevens told a jury yesterday that Young Thug co-founded the gang, but that it was about music, not committing crimes. Young Thug is accused of gang-related racketeering for his alleged involvement in the gang and has been in prison since his arrest in 2022. ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd joins me now for more on this. Shauna, Stevens' testimony is part of a plea deal to Kim, keep him out of prison. So how much weight does his testimony hold and how damning could this be for Young Thug's case? His testimony is still going to carry weight with the jury despite the plea deal because he was someone who was close to him. He knew the inner workings of what was happening. And so although they may take it with a grain of salt, they're still going to place emphasis on his testimony and the jury's going to listen very carefully. Now, Young Thug has pleaded not guilty, claiming that YSL is just his record label. But a judge ruled that some of his lyrics can actually be used as evidence in that case. So what does the defense need to do to show reasonable doubt here and what happens next? The defense is going to be looking to show that these are creative um, hyperbole that was used in these songs. They're going to be showing that these lyrics are not directly correlated with real life actions or crimes that were being committed at that time. So that's what they're going to do with the lyrics. What they have to show for reasonable doubt is really that the, what they're alleging, this entire criminal conspiracy, that he was not a part of it. There was no conspiracy. There was no overarching group that was organized to to for further criminal activity. And so if they can show reasonable doubt with that, he should be acquitted. And Shana, that aspect of this case, the fact that they are allowing lyrics to be used as evidence, how carefully does the judge have to navigate how that evidence is used and what impact could that have on the music industry in general? I mean, the fact that it was allowed in in this trial is likely going to have a very chilling effect on the rap industry because now that hyperbole can later be used against you whether or not it was factual. So that's going to have a very chilling effect on the music industry. Also, the judge is walking a very tight line because there's also freedom of speech. You can say things and they not necessarily be true, especially under creative liberties. So there's going to be a very fine line that he's going to walk when determining which lyrics can be admitted and for what purpose. All right, ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd, thank you. And the court clerk in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is facing new allegations from Murdoch's attorneys. The defense now claims Becky Hill forwarded two emails to prosecutors during the trial. 
The lawyers are now using those claims in their attempt to get Murdoch a new trial. ABC News' Eva Pilgrim has the latest. New evidence in the push for a new trial for disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's legal team submitting to the court two emails court clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill read the verdict when Murdoch was found guilty of murdering his wife and son. Murdoch's team now accusing her of tampering with the jury. There's going to be an evidentiary hearing about what Becky Hill did and did not do. And obviously, if the prosecutors received emails uh, from Becky Hill, they are witnesses. They are witnesses to her conduct. The defense arguing Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. That book now pulled discontinued after Hill's co-author recently discovered she'd plagiarized one section. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I was sad. Hill has since admitted she plagiarized but denied allegations of jury tampering in a sworn affidavit. She was seen discussing the case in the Netflix docuseries Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that women's intuition. The attorney general's office overnight telling ABC News, we're not commenting outside of the court filings and comments inside the courtroom. All right, thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. An evidentiary hearing is scheduled for the end of the month. That's where the judge will examine if there's any proof of jury tampering and if there will be a retrial. Coming up, the Stanley Cup craze, how social media is fueling the hype and why hundreds rush to Target stores to get an exclusive drop. Also ahead, Ryan Gosling is now a Grammy nominee. But does he have the Kennergy to bring home the win? Well, Gans has the tea. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's concert series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own reusable cups at drive throughs and in mobile orders. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Gio Benitez explains how it works. That morning cup of joe might start looking a lot different this year. For the first time, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own personal cups in drive throughs and when ordering on the app. The company saying its goal is to reduce waste by 50% by 2030. 
Okay, so I brought my clean cup, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the app to order my coffee right now. I'm just gonna get something pretty simple. We've got the featured blonde roast right here. You wanna customize it. And then when you go all the way to the bottom, it'll show you personal cup. You hit that, done customizing, add to order. Now I grab my cup and I bring it over here to the mobile pickup. Hey, I have you? your blonde roast. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go, we got it. And if you're at a drive through you order your drink as usual and just let the barista know that you brought your own cup. At the pickup window, they'll use that same contactless container to ensure your personal cup stays clean. Starbucks says it doesn't even matter what kind of drink you're ordering. I'll just take that and All I have right. your special latte coming right up. Thank you. The only requirement, your cup just needs to be clean. It's so strange to see the Starbucks drizzle and all of that in my own cup from home. All right, drink up. All right, enjoy, Gio, and thanks to Gio Benitez for that report. You can also get a 10-cent discount for each personal cup order. Just make sure to tap that personal cup option in the app. And speaking of coffee cups, if you're looking to get the new special edition Stanley Travel Mug, you've got some competition. Across the country, people lined up at Target stores as early as 3 a.m. to try to get their hands on one. The mugs cost less than $50, but on eBay, they're now selling for up to 200 bucks. Stanley Cups have become a viral sensation and one of the most popular gifts this holiday season. ABC's Will Gans and business reporter Alexis Christophers are here with more on the craze and what's behind it. Will, I didn't know this until we looked at this story, but Stanley's been making these mugs since 1913, <laughs> so why the obsession now? Well, it's interesting. I was looking to see what came first, the NHL Stanley Cup or the Stanley Cup <laughs> right, Stanley right. Cup, and the NHL came only slightly before. But yeah, it's been around for 100 years, but only recently have we seen this explosion in popularity, yeah. especially on TikTok, of course. Back in 2017, a group of moms featured it on a blog, and since then, the brand has sort of been leaning into that virality kind of creating some more pastel type colors, you know, trendy options, things like that. Stanley Cup now has 6.7 billion with a B views on TikTok. <laughs> it's incredible. Wow. Uh, yeah. Alexis, what does this say about the impact of social media on businesses and the uh, economy in general? I mean, if you want to put this in dollar terms, so the, they call these the Stanley Cup quenchers. They actually came out in 2016, but it went viral in 2020. And the company had sales of $74 million in 2019. It now has sales of $750 million wow. oh just four years later. And a big reason why is leadership at the company. So the president, Terrence Riley, uh, the president of Stanley Cup, was the president of Crocs. Uh, before this, I think before 2019. Which and also had a new surge yeah. in popularity. Well, that, and he was part of that. So wow. he understands the, you know, collabing with with companies like Starbucks and Target and leaning into the influencers and, and trying to build social media following because this was a company that basically sold camping type goods mm -hmm. and now he made it hip wow. and cool. So, well, what is it about the cups? Is it just everyone wants one because everyone else has one or is there more to it than that? Well, there's that? certainly a little bit of that. The other thing too is that they work really well. They were designed to last outdoors. Mm -hmm. There was recently a video that went viral of a car catching on fire but the Stanley Cup inside I did see stayed that. intact and the drink inside stayed cold and you know Stanley actually turned around and bought that woman a new, a new car. car yes but there is something to be said about the quality of the cups I mean if you're paying $50 for a quencher it better work I, I wanted also, to keep my stuff cold yeah is there also something to the fact that it's this giant cup but it still fits in the cup holder yeah I think you're right on that it kind of tapers down <laughs> mm -hmm. We're now analyzing the construction of the Stanley Cup. Um, Alexis, based on data history, is this the kind of thing that continues to be popular or is this just a fad? You know, it's been now three or four years where this thing has really been in demand and we just saw what happened at Target. I mean, they sold out in minutes with that special edition cup. As long as they can still have it be unique in some way, exclusive, um, you know, people are going to want it where it's not so easy to get. But I would caution against spending 200 bucks on a cup. Think about what's driving you to buy it because if you're buying it as a collectible which by the way they're reusable so collecting a bunch of them sort of defeats the purpose mm. but you know if you're going to invest in this you might want to think twice because we're not so sure it's going to hold on to its value and something can be put up on ebay for 200 bucks doesn't mean it's selling for 200 dollars that's a big distinction so buy the cup if you really want the cup not because you think you're going to be able to resell exactly. it later yes all right abc's will gans business support alexis christophorus 
Thank you both. Need our Stanley Cups. <laughs> we'll hang on. We'll hang on to our ABC News Live mugs for now. Uh, by the way, our control room is also uh, obsessed with their Stanleys, though a big oh. rivalry over who has the real ones and who has the fake ones. Apparently, yeah. are there knockoff Stanley Cups there flying Dukes around? Out there. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Coming up, a Suits reunion is set to happen this weekend, and fans are wondering if Meghan Markle will show up. Well, Gans is sticking around. He's got the tea for us, not in a Stanley Cup. <laughs> This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is what would you do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Our father was the leader of a Mormon religious cult. He used us and groomed us to kill for him. This is when I found out that I was born and raised in a cult. Daughters of the Cult, only on Hulu. Reporting from a flood-ravaged Montpelier, Vermont, I'm Trevor Alt. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. It is time for the tea, where we break down some of the buzzy stories people are talking about. Our friend Will Gans is here to help us out. Spill that tea, Will. I'm still thinking about how much caffeine Gio had while shooting that piece. <laughs> he must be bouncing off the walls this morning, but I am bouncing off the walls because it is award season, people, and the Kennergy is strong. Ryan Gosling has scored a Grammy nomination for I'm Just Ken from the Barbie soundtrack, and the song was just shortlisted for the Oscars, also for Best Original Song. But will Ryan Gosling perform it live? Only if there's a god. <laughs> the actor opening up to W Magazine saying, well, I haven't been invited, but now it's all I'm going to think about. Spe <laughs> Many are speculating that Ryan will pick up a Best Supporting Actor nomination as well for Barbie. But the actor is still focused on the potential performing gig, asking the questions, do you get paid to sing at the Oscars? And do you have to drive yourself there? <laughs> I feel this is a tease. We make it a little surprise. I feel I like think. even if that song is not nominated for Best Original Song, they should still have him perform just because people will tune right, in Right, it'll watch be fun, it. yeah. Yeah, exactly, with the big fur coat and, you know, the abs, you, all of it. Yeah, the I, abs are a prerequisite. The abs are a prerequisite. All right, speaking of award show, a Suits reunion is coming to the Golden Globes, you guys. Gabriel Mox and Patrick, Ad Patrick Adams, who portrayed Harvey Specter and Michael Ross in the series about a law firm, will be presenting together at the 81st Annual Golden Globe Awards. This is coming on the heels of Suits' wildly popular return to air on Netflix this year. Sources tell Variety that other cast members have been invited as well. So, could this mean a Meghan Markle appearance? Ooh. We'll find out on Sunday night. Predictions? I honestly wouldn't be shocked. She's been popping up on social media kind of in a more fun way lately, so maybe she's 
letting her hair down a little okay, bit. Okay, I right. would love it. I would be surprised, but Rachel I'd be Zane. Into it. I mean, she could always bring. Wasn't she a, one of the models? On oh, we'll bring one of the suitcases. <laughs> yeah, deal or no deal, that would be a real shocker. All right, following the success of Parasite at the Oscars three years ago, its leading man is coming back to the small screen. Uncle Sam Sick is a new series following an ambitious idealist played by Parasite's Song Kang Ho, who teams up with a shady fixer to make it big, make a lot of money. The series will debut on Disney Plus and on Hulu, both from our parent company Disney, sometime soon. Very fun. I know. I hope it gives similar vibes. It is a drama, but it's going to be hard to follow Parasite. It really is. That movie was so great. All right, finally, your chance to live like the Roy family, if you want to. <laughs> Heritage Auctions is currently selling off goods from Succession, including Roman Roy's checkbook, the index cards. Oh, this scene was so hard to watch. The index cards from his failed funeral speech. We've got Kendall's suit up for auction as well. And then this one actually would be really cool to have, the blender that was used in the finale. It was titled Meal Fit for a King, of course. We also have the huge Burberry bag that's currently going for $1,600. The auction ends on January 13th. Does the checkbook also come with an account full of money? Yeah, it, direct access to the Roy's bank account. I don't I don't think so. By the way, uh, some of the cast is going to be on GMA3 a little bit later this afternoon, so check your local listings for that. Also, little fun fact that probably re reflects poorly on my parenting. My son, if you ask him five years old what his favorite song is, he will tell you the Succession theme song. Not because we let him watch the show, but because <laughs> he used to hear it as he went to bed, because as soon as he went to bed, we would turn the show on. Oh my god. And gosh. every now and then he would come out and say, Mommy, I love that song, can you play it again? And so the other day he said, Mommy, what was the song from the movie that you used to watch when I went to bed? It took a little investigating, but we finally figured out the Succession theme song. And now that he knows what it's called, he tells Alexa to play it all the time. Hey, I don't think it's bad parenting. I think it just means that your son has great taste. Great taste in music, right? Right. There That's we go. Exactly Maybe it. a future of music here. <laughs> well, again, thank you, friend. Cheers. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7 straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. 
Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Harvard University, I'm Selena Way. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Macedo, we have breaking news. Police in Iowa say they're responding to a shooting at Perry High School about 25 miles outside of Des Moines. A city official tells ABC News there's been an active situation at the school and City Hall is on lockdown as a precaution. The official did not know if the situation is still active. Our reporting team is headed to the scene and we will bring you more updates as we learn them. Meanwhile, House Speaker Mike Johnson is calling on President Biden to take immediate action on the migrant crisis. Johnson visited the Texas border with dozens of Republican lawmakers, calling the trip an eye-opener and saying America is at a breaking point. Now the Department of Justice is suing Texas over the state's new immigration law. ABC's Matt Rivers is in Eagle Pass, Texas with more. The Department of Justice is suing the state of Texas attempting to block a tough new immigration law from taking effect this March. The new law would give state officials the right to detain and deport migrants suspected of entering the state illegally. But the DOJ says only the federal government has that right, calling the Texas law unconstitutional. Republican Governor Greg Abbott firing back online saying, quote, I like my chances. Texas is the only government in America trying to stop illegal immigration. This as several key border crossings are reopening from California to South Texas, weeks after record numbers of migrant crossings prompted federal officials to close four different ports of entry. Numbers of daily migrant encounters are lower in recent days, but the overall picture is unprecedented. Sources telling ABC News more than 302,000 migrant encounters were registered last month, the highest ever monthly number. One thing is absolutely clear. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. House Speaker Mike Johnson leading a delegation of some 64 House Republicans to Eagle Pass, Texas Wednesday. Their New Year's resolution? Demanding tougher border security policies laid out in a bill the House passed last year. H.R. 2 is the necessary ingredient. Why? Because it has provisions that fix each of these problems. The White House calling Johnson's border trip a political stunt, saying House Republicans have rejected requests for more funding at the border multiple times. And ABC's Matt Rivers joins me now from Eagle Pass, Texas for more. Matt, you're at a port of entry right along the border. So what's happening there now? Yeah, so for the first time in weeks, Diane, we're seeing this is uh, International Bridge 1 here leading from the U.S. side where we are over to Piedras Negras, Mexico, and it's actually open for the first time in weeks. This had been closed by CBP because of the amount of migrants that I mentioned in the piece there. Uh, tens of thousands of migrants were crossing over the course of the month of December, and it forced CBP to divert resources normally assigned to process people at this port of entry, just people who are crossing back and forth on a day-to-day -day basis, to that migrant crisis. That is what we were seeing during December. Right now, the number of people crossing daily, the number of migrant encounters has gone down significantly, but it doesn't mean that any of this is solved. It just means that what happens at the border is that it ebbs and flows in terms of the amount of crossings, and right now, uh, we're not seeing as many as we were seeing in December. So what did House Speaker Johnson and these other Republicans see on their trip to the border? 
Yeah, I mean, they came down and they were right over there. They were right down at the border behind me. Frankly, I don't think they saw very much. I think they came down here for the backdrop. I don't think they were here to really learn all that much in terms of what they were finding out in terms of new things at the border. A lot of those Congress people had been here before. I think it was more about the backdrop, but the messaging from House Republicans was very much that they are not going to sign on to any new funding requests for Ukraine, for Israel, or even for the border itself unless they get some of these new border security measures that they're pushing for codified into law. Whether that actually happens, though, remains to be seen. We know that the Senate has a bipartisan group of senators that continues to negotiate the framework of a deal that might get new Ukraine funding as well as new border security measures. But even, Diane, if those senators manage to get a deal, even if the Senate passes it, it's unclear if Hardline Republicans in the House will approve of that deal if it doesn't go far enough in their minds. Now, Speaker Johnson called the border crisis a disaster of the president's own design. How's the Biden administration reacting to these accusations and these calls for action from Republicans? What you hear from the White House is that everything you saw here from Speaker Johnson yesterday was a political stunt, stunt designed to score political points in an election year. Clearly, the Republicans are making this a big campaign issue. What's the first thing they did in one of the most pivotal election years in recent memory? They came down to the border. That's clearly the way they're going. What the White House says is that it's all about politics, that they have asked for more funding for more Border Patrol agents. They've asked for more funding for more asylum processing officials, and Republicans are stonewalling it as they see more border security measures. So what the president is saying is, meet me here, let's actually get things done, let's not come down here and do political stunts with the Republicans saying, we're coming down here to put pressure on the White House because if we don't do that, the White House isn't going to take action on this issue. All right, Matt Rivers in Eagle Pass, Texas. Matt, thank you. Former President Trump is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to keep him on the Republican primary ballot in Colorado. A ruling from the high court could impact several challenges to his eligibility in multiple states. ABC News senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott is in Des Moines, Iowa, where the first votes are less than two weeks away. The Supreme Court is weighing whether to take up Donald Trump's appeal in an unprecedented case that could decide whether Trump stays on the ballot in Colorado. It comes just days after a lower court disqualified the former president for his actions on January 6th, pointing to the 14th Amendment, which bans any officer of the United States who swore an oath to the Constitution and engaged in insurrection from holding office. Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection against the Constitution, and therefore under the Constitution, he cannot be our president again. But Trump's lawyers insisting that January 6th was not insurrection, and Trump in no way engaged in insurrection. The former president still 30 points ahead of his rivals here in Iowa, with the caucuses now just 11 days away. I know the momentum in Iowa, the momentum in New Hampshire, they want something different. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis asked by one voter why he isn't going after Trump harder. Why haven't you gone directly after Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after? I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on it. Is your strategy working? Do you need to draw a clear so contrast? So here's the thing. Um, let's have a debate. Let's get up on the stage. Um, there are clear contrasts, and I think the biggest contrast is just simply, I deliver. That voter, not impressed. Were you satisfied by his answer? To me, no. Not at all. Not at all. Why? I, well, he skipped over it. He, he just, you know, typical political answer. Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis now neck and neck for second place here in Iowa. Haley trying to downplay expectations, hoping for a much stronger finish in New Hampshire. As for Trump's appeal, it's unclear when the Supreme Court will decide whether or not they plan to weigh in. Diane. All right, Rachel Scott in Iowa, thank you. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken is traveling to the Middle East amid growing fears of a wider conflict in the region. The trip comes after a pair of deadly bombings in Iran killed at least 84 people at a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general. Chief Global Affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. U.S. officials saying it was the terror group ISIS that was likely behind the deadliest attack Iran has seen in more than 40 years. <laughs> Two powerful bombs detonated on a crowded Iranian street during a commemoration ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general, Qasem Soleimani, killed by a U.S. drone strike four years ago. 
Crowds desperately fleeing after the first bomb blast, the second exploding minutes later. Iranian officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks, detonated remotely. Soleimani considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups, including Hamas and Hezbollah, is considered a hero in Iran, where tens of thousands gathered for his funeral procession in Iran in 2020. This procession so packed you can barely move, but the emotion is everywhere. People have a very strong message for America. They chanted death to America, a chant now echoed after this most recent attack on civilians. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi accusing Israel and America of the attacks, warning Israel will pay the price. But U.S. officials say there is no evidence they were involved. Can you rule out that Israel had anything to do with this? We have no indication at this time at all that Israel was involved in any way whatsoever. The attack coming a day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Salah al-Aruri, in Lebanon. Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. The U.S. saying it was not told in advance of the strike. And there are also reports that an Iranian-backed Iraqi commander was killed in Baghdad by an airstrike today. Diane? Martha Raditz, Insta wrote Israel, thank you. And pilots of the passenger jet that collided with a Coast Guard plane in Japan are expected to speak to investigators today. This comes as the investigation shows warning lights on the runway were not working at the time of the crash. ABC News foreign correspondent James Longman has the latest. Yeah, hi, Diane. It's now emerged that warning lights on the runway at Haneda Airport that tell pilots whether or not it's safe to land were not working the night that Japan Airlines flight crashed into a Coast Guard aircraft. There was an alert issued back on December 27th telling all pilots that those lights would be out for the foreseeable future. It's not clear whether or not it had anything to do with the crash, but clearly that'll be part of the uh, investigation. Meantime, transcripts of the communication between air traffic control and the pilots uh, has now been released. It shows that they they did not at any time tell the pilots uh, to abort their landing. Also seems to suggest that uh, air traffic control was not aware of the Coast Guard's plane making its way onto the runway, that they did not ask for clearance to do that. Uh, but the uh, pilots of the plane say they didn't see anything as they were coming into land. They have spoken today to air crash investigators. Meantime, the fallout from that horrific earthquake uh, is also ongoing. The search for survivors continues. 30,000 people are still living in shelters. There are so many people who are still without fuel, without power, without internet connections. Entire communities are still cut off because of landslides, uh, smashing roads and blocking access. So uh, a lot of people are still completely cut off. Japan is hoping uh, that more survivors will be found very soon. Diane. All right, James Longman, thank you. Meanwhile, the East Coast is bracing for some messy winter weather. Ten states are under snow and wind alerts as storms move across the country. ABC News chief meteorologist is tracking it all for us. Hi, Ginger. Diane. So let's talk about the storm that's already put up to 15 inches of snow down in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So they got that snow to help out their snow drought, but they're still below average in a lot of those places. Soda Springs cleaning it up there, but now it's moved into the Southern Rockies. So New Mexico above 8,000 feet, you could end up with eight to 12 inches. Some of the lower elevations will get less. Uh, you know, Panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma, Guymon included, the plains of Western Kansas, you'll end up with an inch to three inches, just enough to create problems on the roads. Then this thing slides across. Look at Friday, 4 p.m., it's about late afternoon for New Orleans. You're going to erupt into some thunderstorms. Some of them could have tornadoes, damaging wind, and definitely some heavy rain blasting through with this before the next one next week. The big part of the storm in the northeast and the mid-Atlantic begins Saturday. So Saturday morning, it is now faster and it is warmer. So pay attention here. It's ice in Appalachia, but it's snow to start in a lot of places and then quickly transitions to rain at the coast. So if you're I-95, you might see some snowflakes, but it would be transitioning to a sloppy, then heavy rain situation. If you're away from Boston, like Worcester, or say Albany, northern Hudson Valley, Poconos, that's where you're going to see the heavy snow Saturday evening, through early Sunday morning before this thing jets out of here. We do have another storm that we're going to be watching, but boy, this thing is warm, and our ocean temperatures, right, are three to even five degrees above normal. That is playing part of a factor in uh, not allowing this to be snow at the coast. Diane? 
Coming up, Ginger Z, thank you for that. Coming up, mask mandates are back at some hospitals, why the precaution is being reinstated across the country. Also ahead, the new popular, the new warning rather about popular weight loss drugs. What some people say happened when they stopped taking them and their warning to others. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough. I know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back. We are following breaking news. Police in Iowa say they're responding to a shooting at Perry High School about 25 miles outside Des Moines. A city official tells ABC News there has been an active situation at the school and City Hall is on lockdown as a precaution. The official did not know if the situation is still active. Police are set to hold a press conference at 11 and we will bring that to you live when it happens. Meanwhile, hospitals in at least nine states are once again requiring people to wear masks. They say it's an attempt to curb an increase in respiratory illnesses, including COVID, RSV, and the flu. ABC News' Ariel Reshef is outside one of those hospitals, now masking up here in New York. Ariel? This is one of 11 hospitals here in New York City to reinstate masking. Some hospitals from coast to coast taking that step, given the rise in respiratory illnesses like flu, COVID, and RSV. 31 states and Washington, D.C. now reporting high or very high respiratory activity. When it comes to COVID-19, hospitalizations have been climbing for the past seven weeks with 30,000 new admissions in just the past week alone. The CDC estimating that 4,500 people have died from the flu so far this season that is certainly stoking concern here in New York hospitals say that they are not overwhelmed and they're reinstating masking as a proactive step to protect their patients and staff Diane all right Ariel Reshef thank you and a big question for people using popular weight loss drugs is what happens when you stop now some patients are warning others about the weight they've gained since going off the drugs and taking those prescription medications ABC News Eva Pilgrim has the details my weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started with OB. Slim down regret. Some who've used one of the hottest trends in weight loss, those new prescription medications, reporting that like with other weight loss interventions, the weight came back when they stopped taking the drugs. Within a month, I could feel how different my appetite was, how 
lethargic I was becoming again, all of those things. Artemis Bayendor was having difficulty shedding the tough to lose baby weight and after talking to her doctor started taking Wigovi in August 2021, losing 15 pounds over six months. But once her manufacturer's coupon ran out, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover it. The pharmacy called me and said, you've been paying the coupon price for six months for $25 and now the price has gone up to like it's $1,300. That's when the weight came back and then some. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi. And since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. The active ingredient in Wagovi is semaglutide, a drug first approved for treating type 2 diabetes. In June 2021, the FDA approved its use for chronic weight management in adults who are overweight or obese. A 2022 study finding once patients go off the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two thirds of the total weight lost. Novo Nordisk, the makers of Ozempic and Wegovi, saying in a statement, not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding obesity is a chronic disease that requires long term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes with exercise and food. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. Our thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. The FDA is announcing it's looking into some new possible Ozempic side effects, including hair loss and suicidal thoughts. Coming up, holiday deals in January. Is it too late to find good prices now? You asked Alexis and she has the answer. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the auto workers picket lines in Michigan, I'm Faith Abube. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, it is time now for our weekly segment, Ask Alexis, where business reporter Alexis Christophorus shares financial advice on topics that matter most to you. And today she's here to answer your questions on when to buy a certificate of deposit and what to add to your January shopping list. All right, Alexis, let's start with Loretta from Michigan. Loretta asks, I keep hearing that interest rates are going to fall this year. If that's the case, should I lock in a CD now? 
Loretta, excellent question. Glad you're on top of this because the Federal Reserve has signaled it will start cutting interest rates this year after raising them for two and a half years to bring down inflation. So you want to take advantage of those current higher rates while they last. Locking in a CD or a certificate of deposit now is one way to do that. So you can still find a lot of CDs offering 5% or more on your money. But you want to ask yourself, when will you need access to the money? Because a three-year CD may have an attraction attractive interest rate, but if you're going to need the money in the next year, it's not the CD for you. And of course, the good thing about a CD is that the rate is fixed, meaning if interest rates drop, you're still going to earn the amount of interest you were receiving before rates fell. And of course, on the flip side, if rates rise, then you're locked into that lower rate uh, with your CD. And, and of course, with any investment, you want to focus on your time horizon and how much risk you're willing to take. CDs are generally pretty risk-free. All right, now let's go to Pam from New Jersey. Pam wants to know, what are the best things to buy in January now that the holidays are over? Yes, look, there are still plenty of deals out there to be had uh, in January. Just look at your inbox. I'm getting flooded with them. You might not be in the mood to shop holiday decor right now, but it is the time to score some big discounts on things like fake Christmas trees, lights, other holiday decorations for next year. Some stores like Home Depot and Lowe's are now having sales up to 75% off. Uh, January is also a great time to save money on items for your home. We're talking sheets, blankets, towels. I was looking online, I saw Macy's has a flash sale on bedding from 30 to 60% off. It's also a good time of the year to buy jewelry before those prices spike in the weeks leading up to Valentine's Day. K Jewelers, for example, offering 20 to 50% off. That is on select clearance items. And since getting healthier is a popular New Year's resolution, you'll find gym memberships are the lowest this month. Don't be afraid to negotiate your initiation fee, right? The worst I'll do is say no. M meantime, read the fine print there because a lot of gyms have strict cancellation rules. And most importantly, if you're going to buy a gym membership, Diane, what do you need to do? Use it because otherwise you're losing money. But Back it, to you. if you just buy the membership, then doesn't that automatically make you all fit and trim? Oh, how I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Alexis, thank you. And if you want to ask Alexis any personal finance questions, leave a message on her Instagram feed uh, at ABC News Live. She might answer your question right here on Thursday. And if you're ready to take down your holiday decorations, U.S. farmers have a unique way to get rid of your Christmas tree. In what's becoming a national tradition, farmers across the country are encouraging people to send them their trees so they can feed them to their goats. ABC's Danny New has the details. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. Well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas Tree Cleanup Crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year, thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> all right, Danny New, thanks for that. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back.
ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, The Impact by Nightline Special, Friday night on ABC. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. To ABC News Live first. Thanks for streaming with us. We have breaking news. You are looking live at Perry, Iowa, where multiple law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, are responding to a shooting, a shooting at Perry High School, where officials say at least one victim has been killed and two more were injured. A city official tells ABC News there has been an active situation at the school. City Hall is on lockdown as a precaution. The official did not know if the situation is still active. Our reporting team is headed to the scene. We'll bring you more updates as we get them. Meanwhile, two suspects are in custody in the murders of a pregnant Texas teen and her boyfriend. San Antonio police say they've arrested a father and his 19-year-old son, adding that the murders appear to be a drug deal gone bad. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found shot inside a car last week, just before Savannah was expected to give birth. Police say her cell phone helped them track down the suspects. Christopher Preciado is charged with capital murder, and his father, Ramon, is charged as an accomplice. We're learning new details about that deadly plane collision in Tokyo this week. Japan's transport ministry says transcripts suggest the Coast Guard plane was not cleared for takeoff when it collided with the jet, killing five people. Investigators also say some runway warning lights were not working at the time of the crash. Pilots of the commercial airliners say they couldn't see the plane as they came in to land. 
They'll be interviewed today by crash investigators. And a Nevada man is facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing. Video shows the defendant flying over the judge's bench and attacking her. That triggered a brawl as court staff then tried to restrain him. The judge was injured but not hospitalized. A courtroom marshal suffered a gash to the forehead and a dislocated shoulder. Meanwhile, more documents are expected to be made public today connected to late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. This comes after New York federal court released a first batch of previously secret documents stemming from a defamation lawsuit brought by one of Epstein's victims. Among other things, the documents reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Clinton. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Newly unsealed court records reinforce the association of presidents, even the king of pop, with Jeffrey Epstein, the sex offender who killed himself in a New York City jail while awaiting trial. The documents were part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit one of Epstein's victims, Virginia Giuffre, filed against his former paramour, Glenn Maxwell. The documents include arguments by Giuffre's lawyers, who sought testimony from former President Bill Clinton calling him a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Mr. Epstein. Giuffre never accused Clinton of wrongdoing, but claimed she had dinner with him on Epstein's private Caribbean island. Maxwell called that a lie, and the documents show her attorney said each and every part of plaintiff's claims regarding President Clinton has conclusively been proven false. Clinton was never deposed. After Epstein's arrest, his spokesman denied Clinton was ever on the island. After Giuffre's allegations became public, the documents also show Epstein emailed Maxwell seeming to offer advice. You can issue a reward to any of Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family that come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner. Giuffre claims she was a teen sex slave for Epstein and directed by him and Maxwell to have sex with powerful men, as she described in a 2019 interview with the Miami Herald. The training started immediately. How to be quiet, be subservient, give Jeffrey what he wants. A lot of this training came from Guilin herself. Giuffre claimed Epstein ordered her to have sex on three occasions with Britain's Prince Andrew, which he has denied. He said he could not recall meeting her, and he told the BBC, This photo of the two of them could be fake. I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Andrew settled a lawsuit with Giuffre in 2022. The documents include testimony from Johanna Schoberg, one of Epstein's accusers, who said she was seated next to Giuffre at Epstein's New York City mansion when Andrew groped her breast. But when asked, do you have any knowledge about whether Virginia is telling the truth about whether Glenn Maxwell directed her to have sex with Prince Andrew, Schoberg answered, no, only based on what I've read in the media. When asked about meeting other famous people, she said she met Michael Jackson at Epstein's house in Palm Beach. And when she was asked, did you ever massage Donald Trump? Schoberg responded, no. And senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky and ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley join me now for more on this. Aaron, these documents are from a court case settled with one of Epstein's victims in 2017. So why release them now and what in them stuck out to you? They released under court order. The judge finally said there was no reason to keep anything associated with that litigation sealed. And, and there have been documents produced over the years. Uh, this is probably going to be the final batch because most of the redactions are now gone. And and the, the judge, I think, had an interest in uh, some kind of transparency here because people, as Virginia Giuffre's lawyers put it, are interested, fascinated in Jeffrey Epstein's vast global sex trafficking network and how he managed to get away with it for so long. Kim, from a legal standpoint, is it surprising that more high profile people didn't try to block the release of their names? Well, they might have. Uh, the, the, the question is, do they have a basis for uh, blocking that? There's, it's a balancing test, and they have to have a good reason once it's on the public record in this case. Um, you know, court documents, the exception of grand jury material and other uh, standards that are met in civil cases generally are on the public record and, uh, and are available for the media and others to, to look at, and that's really where we are now. So, Kim, could we see any charges from this? 
Well, presumably, the and charges would come from either the federal uh, Department of Justice or a state prosecutor. Uh, these records could have been subpoenaed by a grand jury separately. So all of that could have been ongoing, notwithstanding, and at simultaneous with this with this civil litigation, they wouldn't necessarily one follow from the other. So if we haven't seen charges, it, it, I would expect they were probably not going to see them. But it's also possible that this perks the interest of a prosecutor somewhere, and they start uh, following up and investigating some of these public allegations now. Aaron, more documents are expected to be released today. What are you watching for there? Yeah, I, I, we're not sure what else there could be. We, we have a sense because, uh, as Kim says, so much of this has already been released. And, and more importantly, the prosecutors, the lawyers associated with, with all these Jeffrey Epstein-related cases, they know most of what exists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure there's going to be anything that will push the case forward. There is, though, Diane, an untapped repository of Jeffrey Epstein information, and that's with the federal government. Uh, the, the federal prosecutors in Manhattan, after Je Jeffrey Epstein's arrest, they raided his Upper East Side mansion. They uh, took video, they took photos, they took a lot of electronics, They and, and all of those items may help shed light on Epstein's crimes, but none of that so far has seen the light of day. All right, senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley, thank you. Meanwhile, the first alleged member of the Atlanta-based YSL gang has testified in the trial against rapper Young Thug. Trontavia Stevens told a jury yesterday that Young Thug co-founded the gang, but that it was about music, not committing crimes. Young Thug is accused of gang-related racketeering for his alleged involvement in the gang and has been in prison since his arrest in 2022. ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd joins me now for more on this. Shauna, Stevens' testimony is part of a plea deal to Kim, keep him out of prison. So how much weight does his testimony hold and how damning could this be for Young Thug's case? His testimony is still going to carry weight with the jury despite the plea deal because he was someone who was close to him. He knew the inner workings of what was happening. And so although they may take it with a grain of salt, they're still going to place emphasis on his testimony and the jury's going to listen very carefully. Now, Young Thug has pleaded not guilty, claiming that YSL is just his record label, but a judge ruled that some of his lyrics can actually be used as evidence in that case. So what does the defense need to do to show reasonable doubt here, and what happens next? The defense is going to be looking to show that these are creative um, hyperbole that was used in these songs. They're going to be showing that these lyrics are not directly correlated with real life actions or crimes that were being committed at that time. So that's what they're going to do with the lyrics. What they have to show for reasonable doubt is really that the, what they're alleging, this entire criminal conspiracy, that he was not a part of it. There was no conspiracy. There was no overarching group that was organized to to for further criminal activity. And so if they can show reasonable doubt with that, he should be acquitted. And Shana, that aspect of this case, the fact that they are allowing lyrics to be used as evidence, how carefully does the judge have to navigate how that evidence is used and what impact could that have on the music industry in general? I mean, the fact that it was allowed in in this trial is likely going to have a very chilling effect on the rap industry because now that hyperbole can later be used against you whether or not it was factual. So that's going to have a very chilling effect on the music industry. Also, the judge is walking a very tight line because there's also freedom of speech. You can say things and they not necessarily be true, especially under creative liberties. So there's going to be a very fine line that he's going to walk when determining which lyrics can be admitted and for what purpose. All right, ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd, thank you. And the court clerk in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is facing new allegations from Murdoch's attorneys. The defense now claims Becky Hill forwarded two emails to prosecutors during the trial. The lawyers are now using those claims in their attempt to get Murdoch a new trial. ABC News Eva Pilgrim has the latest. New evidence in the push for a new trial for disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's legal team submitting to the court two emails court clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill read the verdict when Murdoch was found guilty of murdering his wife and son. Murdoch's team now accusing her of tampering with the jury. There's going to be an evidentiary hearing about what Becky Hill did and did not do, 
And obviously, if the prosecutors received emails uh, from Becky Hill, they are witnesses. They are witnesses to her conduct. The defense arguing Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. That book now pulled discontinued after Hill's co-author recently discovered she'd plagiarized one section. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I was sad. Hill has since admitted she plagiarized but denied allegations of jury tampering in a sworn affidavit. She was seen discussing the case in the Netflix docuseries Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that women's intuition. The attorney general's office overnight telling ABC News, we're not commenting outside of the court filings and comments inside the courtroom. All right, thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. An evidentiary hearing is scheduled for the end of the month. That's where the judge will examine if there's any proof of jury tampering and if there will be a retrial. Coming up, the Stanley Cup craze, how social media is fueling the hype and why hundreds rush to Target stores to get an exclusive drop. Also ahead, Ryan Gosling is now a Grammy nominee, but does he have the Kennergy to bring home the win? Well, Gans has the tea. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Hit me with them good vibes. Bitches on my phone locks. Everything is so fine. Little bit of sunshine. Dance more, just a little bit. Breathe more, just a little bit. Smile a little more in a minute. Ah, 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 ah. America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own reusable cups at drive throughs and in mobile orders. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Gio Benitez explains how it works. That morning cup of joe might start looking a lot different this year. For the first time, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own personal cups in drive throughs and when ordering on the app. The company saying its goal is to reduce waste by 50% by 2030. Okay, so I brought my clean cups. So I'm going to go ahead and use the app to order my coffee right now. I'm just going to get something pretty simple. We've got the featured blonde roast right here. You want to customize it. And then when you go all the way to the bottom, it'll show you personal cup. You hit that, done customizing, add to order. Now I grab my cup and I bring it over here to the mobile pickup. Thank you. Hey, I have your blonde rose. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. We got it. 
And if you're at a drive-thru, you order your drink as usual and just let the barista know that you brought your own cup. At the pickup window, they'll use that same contactless container to ensure your personal cup stays clean. Starbucks says it doesn't even matter what kind of drink you're ordering. Thank you. The only requirement, your cup just needs to be clean. It's so strange to see the Starbucks drizzle and all of that in my own cup from home. All right, drink up. All right, enjoy, Gio, and thanks to Gio Benitez for that report. You can also get a 10-cent discount for each personal cup order. Just make sure to tap that personal cup option in the app. And speaking of coffee cups, if you're looking to get the new special edition Stanley Travel Mug, you've got some competition. Across the country, people lined up at Target stores as early as 3 a.m. to try to get their hands on one. The mugs cost less than $50, but on eBay, they're now selling for up to 200 bucks. Stanley Cups have become a viral sensation and one of the most popular gifts this holiday season. ABC's Will Gans and business reporter Alexis Christophers are here with more on the craze and what's behind it. Well, I didn't know this until we looked at this story, but Stanley's been making these mugs since 1913, so <laughs> why the obsession now? Well, it's interesting. I was looking to see what came first, the NHL Stanley Cup or the Stanley Cup <laughs> right, Stanley right. Cup, and the NHL came only slightly before. But yeah, it's been around for 100 years, but only recently have we seen this explosion in popularity, yeah. especially on TikTok, of course. Back in 2017, a group of moms featured it on a blog, and since then, the brand has sort of been leaning into that virality kind of creating some more pastel type colors, you know, trendy options, things like that. Stanley Cup now has 6.7 billion with a B views on TikTok. <laughs> it's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Alexis, what does this say about the impact of social media on businesses and the economy uh, in general? I mean, if you want to put this in dollar terms, so the, they call these the Stanley Cup quenchers. They actually came out in 2016, but it went viral in 2020. And the company had sales of $74 million in 2019. It now has sales of $750 million wow. just four years later. And a big reason why is leadership at the company. So the president, Terrence Riley, uh, the president of Stanley Cup, was the president of Crocs. Uh, before this, I think before 2019. Which and also had a new surge yeah. in popularity. Well, that, and he was part of that. So wow. he understands the, you know, collabing with with companies like Starbucks and Target and leaning into the influencers and, and trying to build social media following because this was a company that basically sold camping type goods mm -hmm. and now he made it hip wow. and cool. So, well, what is it about the cups? Is it just everyone wants one because everyone else has one or is there more to it than well, that? Well, there's certainly a little bit of that. The other thing too is that they work really well. They were designed to last outdoors. There was recently a video that went viral of a car catching on fire, but the Stanley Cup inside I did see stayed that. intact and the drink inside stayed cold. And, you know, Stanley actually turned around and bought that woman a new, a new car. car. Yes. But there is something to be said about the quality of the cups. I mean, if you're paying $50 for a quencher, it better work. I, I wanted to keep my stuff cold. Yeah. <laughs> is there also something to the fact that it's this giant cup and it still fits in the cup holder? Yeah. I think you're right on that. It kind of tapers down. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're now analyzing the construction of the Stanley Cup. Um, Alexis, based on data history, is this the kind of thing that continues to be popular or is this just a fad? You know, it's been now three or four years where this thing has really been in demand and we just saw what happened at Target. I mean, they sold out in minutes with that special edition cup. As long as they can still have it be unique in some way, exclusive, um, you know, people are going to want it where it's not so easy to get. But I would caution against spending 200 bucks on a cup. Think about what's driving you to buy it because if you're buying it as a collectible which by the way they're reusable so collecting a bunch of them sort of defeats the purpose mm. but you know if you're going to invest in this you might want to think twice because we're not so sure it's going to hold on to its value and something can be put up on ebay for 200 bucks doesn't mean it's selling for 200 dollars that's a big distinction so buy the cup if you really want the cup not because you think you're going to be able to resell exactly. it later yes all right abc's will gans business support alexis christophorus Thank you both. Need our Stanley Cups. <laughs> we'll hang out. We'll hang out to our ABC News Live mugs for now. Uh, by the way, our control room is also uh, obsessed with their Stanleys. Though a big oh. rivalry over who has the real ones and who has the fake ones, apparently. Are there knockoff Stanley Cups there flying around? Apparently there there. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Coming up, a Suits reunion is set to happen this weekend, and fans are wondering if Meghan Markle will show up. Well, Gans is sticking around. He's got the tea for us. Not in a Stanley Cup. <laughs> Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember
that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, the Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers. It's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable. And this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough. You know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Reporting from the Fulton County Courthouse in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Olivia Rubin. Wherever the story goes, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. We have breaking news. Multiple law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, are responding to a shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa, where officials say at least one victim has been killed and two more injured. FBI, ATF, and medical staff are on site, and a city official tells ABC News City Hall is on lockdown as a precaution. Officials are set to hold a press conference shortly. We will bring that to you live as it happens right now. I want to go to ABC's Alex Prache, who's in Perry, Iowa, along with ABC News contributors Robert Boyce, former NYPD chief of detectives, and former FBI agent Brad Garrett for more. Alex, what are you hearing from officials there right now? Hey, Diane, so we know that this uh, active shooting situation broke out just before 8 a.m. here, and you can see behind me, uh, this place is on lockdown. We've got a huge law enforcement response from uh, state agencies, local authorities. Also, uh, one of the uh, state troopers here told me that the FBI is also on scene. Of course, we're expecting this update from police around 10 a.m., but uh, a short time ago, I actually got a chance to speak with the stepmom of two students here. Uh, she says that one of her... Uh, uh, her, her kids was actually hit in the back and on the arm. Thankfully, he is okay. And that uh, his brother actually knew this shooter. Take a listen uh, to what she had to say about learning that uh, her, her, her kids were involved. One of the worst moments in my entire life, but the best phone call I got was saying that they were okay. Thank I'm God. glad that they're okay. Overwhelming. The pain in your heart is just overwhelming. Diane, Diane, you can imagine, uh, you know, getting that phone call or in her case, that text message, um, but certainly some relief there. But still a lot of unknown questions here. We don't know how many uh, uh, shooters were, were involved. We don't know the scope of the injuries or the fatalities here just yet. Uh, we do know ABC has been able to confirm that there is at least one fatality, but don't know the total scope of that. Hoping to get some updates uh, in a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, Brad, obviously still a lot of questions left to be answered, as uh, Alex points out. But what stands out to you from what we know so far? So you've got a rural high school uh, and a situation where you both have injuries and people deceased, apparently. But the real questions are the following. What information was out there prior to this shooting occurring? In other words, obviously, this the shooter got a weapon into the school. How did he or she do that? What information had he said or she said to other students or talked about online or said to their parents? What change in behavior has there been in him or her? 
in recent uh, days or weeks, uh, dark thoughts, acquiring weapons, talking about hurting people, um, substance abuse issues. You want to go through all of those things. Clearly, trying to look for something that might have popped up that could have stopped this. And Robert, we can see the large police presence there. Now, obviously, there are multiple agencies on the scene. How are officers trained to respond to situations like this, especially if you are one of the first to arrive? So if you're first to arrive, your immediate um, assignment is to confront the shooter, find and confront the shooter, and terminate that attack, or certainly negate it. So that's the first thing you do. It really usually requires a stack on a door with other officers where you go inside. We've seen it happen before. Unfortunately, these protocols are, are, uh, are necessary because they keep happening. But this seems to be a really rapid and coordinated uh, uh, response and could have saved lives easily by doing so. So right now, as Brad says, we'll peel it back and find out what's going on. But that response by law enforcement is so necessary. It needs training, it needs exercises. And that's what we're seeing here today. We're seeing a coordinated response where it gives people a better sense of things and security if, if in, this, in this world that we live in right now. So again, we're following this breaking news out of Perry, Iowa, a school shooting with at least one person dead, according to officials. We're expecting to hear uh, from officials there in just a few moments. We will bring that press conference to you live when it happens right after this quick break. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America, tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Boston, I'm Whit Johnson. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. We have breaking news. Multiple law enforcement agencies are responding to a shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa, where officials say at least one victim has been killed and two more injured. FBI, ATF, and medical staff are all on site, and a city official tells ABC News City Hall is on lockdown as a precaution. Officials are set to hold a press conference shortly. We will bring that to you live when it happens. And we're listening in right now. You can see officials there in Perry, Iowa are getting ready. Everybody got a good to get sound started lower. there. The in the meantime, I want to go over to our ABC News contributor, Robert Boyce, former NYPD chief of detectives and former FBI agent Brad Garrett for more. Uh, Brad, while we wait to hear from the officials there, it looks like they're not quite ready to get started yet. What are you listening for in terms of the kind of details they might release? As, as much as they're willing to talk about, for example, uh, was this shooter, was he a known entity? This is a small community, as I mentioned earlier, Diane, so everybody sort of knows everybody else. It makes it on some levels more difficult to keep secrets. Uh, and because of the age of the shooter, 
they have probably talked to somebody. They have probably changed their, their dress or their behavior or their general actions of doing worse in school, uh, issues potentially of substance abuse. There'll be changes typically because that's what happens in these shooters because the whole thing is driven by anger, revenge, and feeling powerless. And so for whatever reason, the shooter decided to take it into his own hands today. Um, and so we'll see. Robert, unfortunately, we have seen situations like this where the initial information that comes out from law enforcement ends up not matching what they later say happen. How careful do officials need to be at this point in an investigation when they're initially giving these details? So, Diane, you always say it's preliminary and it's subject to change. And you're right, it often changes all the time. So they don't have a lot right now, most likely. If they have identified the shooter, they'll immediately go to the residence and see if there's any notes or anything like that, anything that would suggest why he did this or she did this. Also, the social media scrub, find out what's going on. Should we have picked up on this earlier? So that's what we're going through right now. But the big thing is now, it's a, it's a quick press conference. So that obviously, they have the situation in hand. So let's see what, how much information they have, and we can go forward into the day. Uh, it looks like this is a quickly moving uh, uh, situation here. So that's good to put the parents uh, of, uh, and students at some kind of rest, knowing that it's been resolved. Uh, Brad, what does it tell you that they are planning to hold a press conference now in terms of where this situation stands? Well, it, it strikes me that they resolve this quickly. If the shooting occurred their time around 8 o'clock, that means at the beginning of school. Um, law enforcement, as Bob mentioned, quickly responded, uh, got the shooter in custody, or he, maybe the person's deceased. We'll have to find out. But the, the, it's resolved, I think, in their mind, uh, that there's no other active shooters. There's no threat to the school. Um, I don't uh, haven't heard anything that would indicate that they're, like, searching additional parts of the school. Maybe they've already done that, hopefully. Um, my guess is if they haven't gotten a search warrant, they will they have are getting a search warrant to go to wherever the shooter lives to see what else they can glean from, you know, electronics and their parents, whomever it might be. Uh, officials are also now saying that the scene is secured. Uh, Robert, what does that mean to you when you hear that? Well, it means they've already done their job in securing that location. Now they have to go to the school if it's not already done. So those students who are sheltering in place, remember, it's just before the school hour. So I think children were still showing up at that point. So it's it's less of a search than normal. Could su suggest why they're having this quick press conference, which I salute them for. <clears throat> you really want to put this out in the community, that this is resolved and, <clears throat> and, it's, a, and it's not a fluid situation anymore. So it's kudos to them for a quick press conference. It means a lot. Uh, Brad, you've got FBI, ATF, uh, state police, it looks like there, probably some local law enforcement as well. Um, how do you coordinate a scene like this when there are multiple agencies there? It looks like we're seeing the fire department as well. Well, hopefully they have practiced having a situation like this, where at least, at the very least, the FBI office that's assigned to this part of Iowa, the ATF office assigned, uh, e even emergency and medical folks uh, along with obviously the county sheriff, city police, if it's relevant, um, and the state police. All of them, they at least had some conversations, maybe had uh, practical exercises to sort of test how they would do this. Because typically, Diane, in a rural area, they don't have all the bells and whistles that we have in large cities as far as big command buses and so forth. I mean, basically, I think you're going to hear the sheriff, I assume, talk in a few minutes. And there won't be sort of a lot of of fancy stuff around him. He'll just stand there and talk. Uh, and so as a result, it may be, be done in a much more informal way, but the key is communication. Does the sheriff have a relationship, I assume he does, with the FBI, with ATF? I've worked in rural parts of this country as an FBI agent. It's a whole different uh, dynamic in getting cooperation. You can do it if you work at it. And so when you show up at a scene like this, if you've had those conversations, or even if you've practiced together, then it seems to go together. But the sheriff will run the show. This was so quick. My guess is that ATF and FBI were just there to help them sort of after the fact to, to, to gather things, maybe run a weapon, et cetera. Um, and, you know, the whole thing went together, obviously, in pretty short order.
And Robert, we don't know the details on this school and the kind of drills they run, but so many schools now run active shooter drills with the students, with the teachers, with the staff. How much does that make a difference when something like this actually becomes a reality? Diana saves lives. Everybody has to know where to go and immediately close that door and lock it. We see the tragedy of Uvalde. Uh, we don't want to see that again. We've seen it since that time, some, some really tight responses and protocols. And that goes kudos to those law enforcement who does that and coordinates. It's not done uh, willy-nilly. It's done through exercises and training, tabletops and that, that type of thing. Here's very important. You saw to see that, uh, that individual with a police thing on his back. Everybody response must be immediately um, apparent they're part of the police response. They cannot wear just plain clothes. It's an important point. And it looks like those officials in Perry, Iowa, are getting ready to give an update now on that shooting again. So far, they have told us one person is dead at this shooting in Perry, Iowa. Very few details released other than that so far. Let's listen into what My police name is are Sheriff saying now. Adam Infante, I N F A N T E. I'm the sheriff here in Dallas County. I'm joined by our state, local, and federal partners here at the Perry High School. Uh, this morning at approximately 7.37 a.m., we had a Sears radio activation at the high school, which indicated an active shooter situation. Uh, an officer first arrived within seven minutes of that activation uh, and located multiple gunshot victims. Uh, we're still unclear of exactly how many are injured uh, or what the extent of those are, but we're working on that right now. There is no further danger to the public. The community is safe. Uh, we're just now working backwards, trying to figure out everything that happened and make notifications. Um, there'll be another update later on today. Uh, we're, it's still very early. This happened at approximately 7.37 this morning. School didn't start yet, luckily, uh, so there was very few students and faculty in the building, uh, which I think contributed to uh, a good outcome in that sense. But we'll have more information later on this afternoon. We will not be releasing any more information in the meantime. Uh, so please be patient with us so that we can talk with these victims and their families and try and figure out what happened. We won't be answering any questions today either or right now. Uh, we'll let you know later on this afternoon, uh, afternoon, what time we'll be meeting back with you again and we hope to provide more detail then. So can we, just, just to be clear, you don't have a number of people who were injured in this? Season? We're still working on that. Have you identified the shooter? Yes. What's their current status? Are they alive or? Oh, we'll get to that later on this afternoon. Can you confirm if the shooter was a student at the school? I can't confirm that right now. Can you confirm any, any deaths? Is there no, a reunif not right now. reunification center for families and students right now? Great point. Uh, the reunification center has already been established. Uh, and at most of those, I think all the kids have been reunified already. Uh, so we're good in that in that area. Thank you. Are there any faculty members that were hurt? I uh, can't answer that question yet. Have you made any apprehensions or arrests? Can't answer that question yet either. We'll take no further questions at this yeah. time. We'll Wait, see you this afternoon. Sorry, just want to make sure. I will let you know. Okay. I, I we don't would, know. Iowa Department of Public Safety will push out a, a message as far as location and time of the next press conference. Okay. So if you go to the Iowa Department of Public Safety website, it'll be posted there probably shortly within, afternoon. Shortly after noon. Available? I'm sorry. Any surveillance video available? There's nothing more that we're going to yeah, be able to you. answer right now. We'll thank be you. Back. That was Dallas County Sheriff Infante giving an update on a shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa. Previously, officials had said one person was killed in that shooting. We did not hear the sheriff confirm that, but he did confirm multiple gunshot victims. He says the shooting happened at 737 or around 737 in the morning. That is when the radio signal came in signifying an active shooter. Seven minutes later, an officer arrived at the scene finding multiple gunshot victims. They still are not reporting the number of people injured, saying they don't know yet, but they do say that this happened before school was in session, so fewer students and teachers in the building than would have been a little later in the day. Uh, and police are now stressing that there is no future danger to the public, but would not reveal if the shooter uh, is alive or dead or has been taken into custody. They do say they ID'd the shooter, 
but have not revealed what that identity is. I want to go over to our Alex Perche, who's there in Perry, Iowa. Uh, Perry, police are still playing this very close to the vest. Alex. Yes, they, they absolutely are. Actually, they said that uh, they weren't going to take any questions. They got questions anyway, but we didn't learn uh, too much from them. I particularly asked, you know, had they made any any arrests or apprehensions? You know, it might give an indication as to the status of uh, any suspect in this shooting. Uh, they did not answer that, but we are expecting another update and also a press release uh, later on uh, today. You're, what you're seeing right now is uh, uh, behind me. It looks like a, a, a random journalist who's... Uh, trying to get questions answered from the state troopers but obviously I mean they've already said that they're not going to be taking any more questions but uh, Dallas County Sheriff Adam Infante he did say that this uh, they got what they called a, a Sears radio activation around 737 this morning that's just before class has started and, and also Diane mind you this is the first day back from winter break for these students uh, they said that officers were on a scene in about seven minutes uh, and as soon as they entered uh, the building Building, they uh, saw in uh, multiple gunshot victims. He doesn't know how many people uh, were, were, were injured, uh, but uh, but they do say that there is no further danger to the public. And I, I, I got a chance to talk to a stepmom of a couple of the students here. Uh, one of her kids was hit twice uh, in the back and, and on the arm. He thankfully is okay. Uh, she says her other son actually knew this, uh, this alleged shooter in some capacity, that he had classes with him. Uh, this is a very tight-knit community here in Perry, Iowa. There's some uh, roughly uh, 570 students at this high school, is our understanding. So it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not unfathomable that, that a lot of these students would actually know uh, either victims or, or this alleged uh, shooter as we learn more details. But uh, you can imagine uh, the drop in her heart hearing the news that her kids were involved, uh, but also that relief uh, learning that they were ultimately okay. And I want to bring in uh, our former NYPD chief of detectives, ABC's contributor Robert Boyce as well. Robert, do you find it unusual that they are saying that they did, that they have identified the shooter, but aren't releasing that identity yet? No, I, that's not unusual at all, because you have to go down, talk to his parents, go to his house. There's a lot of work here, social media, as I described before. Some good reporting by Alex, who tells us that um, it's probably a student, uh, from what he's been able to determine from his from his interview. So that's what we're go looking at right now. Um, so he's not reporting enough to Sheriff, and I, I understand that. They don't want to mis misstate something. So right now, it's still active. You're still talking to parents. You're still talking to friends, social media, things of that, to determine exactly why this person would do that. Again, it's important to note that it's before school. So that helped probably save lives. And that's 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 a good thing for this morning. Uh, Brad, what do you make of that timing for a, a shooter to come into a school and open fire, um, but to arrive there before school was fully in session? Well, it might suggest that he knew he was who he was going to shoot, that this was not a, I'm just gonna go into school and shoot anybody, I don't really care to a targeted individual or group that he chose to, to, to shoot. Uh, I mean, that would make the most sense. Did he walk into school after making the decision he was gonna do this and, and sort of felt like he could pull it off at that moment? So he did it at that moment, but it does suggest a little bit in my mind that it might be that he was going after particular kids. It'll be interesting to see because this is a rural community. Uh, I've lived in rural communities. You ride a bus to school. Did he even ride to school on a bus with the people he ended up shooting? We'll have to see. But, um, you know, these small communities, as I mentioned previously, the, everyone knows everyone else, including in law enforcement, by the way. And that's why you get this great response because they're used to being called to scenes that maybe in a big city, you wouldn't get called because the departments, et cetera, can handle it. A rural sheriff in the middle of nowhere needs the FBI, ATF, and fill in the blank law enforcement to come running when something happens, and that's clearly what happened today.
All right, so again, just a, a recap for anyone just joining us. We're following this breaking news out of Perry, Iowa, of a school shooting at a high school there. Uh, the officials uh, have said that one person was killed in the shooting. We did not hear that confirmed in the press conference they just held, but we did just hear from the sheriff that the shooting happened around 7.37 in the morning before school was fully in session and that the first officer on the scene encountered multiple gunshot victims, but it's still not clear how many people were injured here. Uh, the shooter has been ID'd, but they are not yet revealing that identity, and they stress there's no future danger to the public. We will have continuing updates on this story throughout the day here on ABC News Live. So keep it right here. We'll be right back with more of the day's top stories. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine, Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome back. A U.S. official tells ABC News the U.S. conducted a strike in Baghdad, Iraq. Reports from Iraqi officials say an Iranian-backed militia was targeted and one of its commanders was killed. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore has the latest. Well, hi, Diane. A U.S. official tells ABC News that the U.S. is continuing to take action to protect U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria in the midst of constant strikes from militia groups in the region. And today's strike killed the commander of an Iranian-backed group and was retaliation for an attack on a U.S. base on Christmas Day in Erbil. And among those injured was a pilot who is in critical condition today. Now, Iraq's prime minister called the strike a, a blatant violation of the country's sovereignty saying that it's an act that is no different than a terrorist act. Of course, all of this is adding to the tension following the uh, twin bombings yesterday in Iran. One of the officials say was a suicide bombing and also the airstrike that we've reported on that killed a top Hamas leader in Beirut earlier this week. Of course, the ground operation continues in Gaza as well, where Diane, the death toll has topped 22,000. All right, foreign correspondent Marcus Moore in Tel Aviv, Israel, thank you. And with the first votes less than two weeks away in Iowa, former President Trump's campaign is hitting Nikki Haley with a new TV ad in New Hampshire. The ad places Haley side by side with President Biden, comparing her to Biden when it comes to border policies. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins me now for more on that. Rick, what does this ad tell you about Trump's campaign strategy? Well, this is the first real sign from the campaign directly that they're worried about Nikki Haley. For the most part, uh, they have been focused on Ron DeSantis, and they've been trying to pick apart his record and attack him on air uh, in campaign speeches. Uh, but this suggests that there's a, a bit of a different, uh, a different competitor in the mix, and it tracks with public and private polling to see that Nikki Haley is now potentially the, the, closest, uh, the closest rival to Donald Trump, particularly in New Hampshire. The location important here. Uh, Nikki Haley has put a lot more emphasis on the state of New Hampshire than she has Iowa. DeSantis 
Texas is more the threat there. So it tells you that, that the Trump team is starting to engage with the resources that they have marshaled over many, many months. Now, at an event in Iowa, a voter actually criticized Florida Governor Ron DeSantis directly, saying that he thought he was too soft on Trump. Take a look at that moment. Why haven't you gone directly after him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on him. I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is, is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally and kind of do that. That's just not how I roll. So is that strategy working for DeSantis, say, you know, sort of I'm taking the high road, that's not how I roll, as he approaches these final days before the first votes are cast in Iowa? Yeah, Diane, it was a striking moment because it seemed to encapsulate so many of the concerns that have been raised about his campaign, not just among members of the media, but uh, many of his own donors, uh, and now even Republican voters who are confronting him directly on it. Uh, they've wanted him to get more aggressive with Trump. They've wanted him to, to show that he is the one who can stand up. They know what Trump does to his rivals. Uh, and I think DeSantis was pretty honest in saying, look, that's, not just, that's just not who I am. And now the question for voters in a couple weeks is whether they want him anyway or whether they still view this as a, as a, as a campaign, an active campaign campaign. Uh, at that when Trump is his head as, as, as much as he is. It isn't clear that another strategy would have worked, but there is some frustration that DeSantis didn't uh, go a little bit harder against Trump from the start. All right, political director Rick Klein, always great to have you, Rick. Thank you. You bet. Thanks. Coming up, disorder in the court, why this man attacked a judge in the middle of a hearing and why the court now says it's reviewing its protocols. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live First. A Nevada man is facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing. Video shows the defendant fly over the bench at Judge Mary Kay Holthus, then pummeling her on the floor. Now the judge and a courtroom marshal are recovering. ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky has that story. A judge attacked in a Nevada courtroom. Chaos erupting moments after what appeared to be a calm sentencing. Deobra Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but argued to Judge Mary Kay Hothis he did not deserve another trip to prison. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. The judge reminded Redden of his lengthy criminal record. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. Still, he asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Addis Court. Oh, oh, hey. Moments later, Redden leapt over the defense table and the bench, landed on top of the judge, and sparked a brawl with court officers and attorneys. Courthouse officials telling ABC News Judge Hothis experienced some injuries and her condition is being monitored. The marshal sustained injuries and has been transported to the hospital. But this, this video, sadly, is, is a great example of how vulnerable judges are. If they would have had any information that he was going to do something this outrageous and violent, they either would have restrained him or even done this remotely. 
Back in October, Maryland Judge Andrew Wilkinson was found with gunshot wounds in his driveway following a targeted attack. Wilkinson was rushed to the hospital but later died of his injuries. According to authorities, a document appearing to be Wilkinson's final court order revealed the 52-year-old judge had issued a decision in a divorce believed to involve the alleged shooter. Judges, in my view, many of them feel vulnerable, and rightly so. I think this case will bring to light the whole idea of how vulnerable judges are in their own courtroom. Our thanks to Aaron Katursky for that report. The court said it is reviewing its security procedures and will do whatever necessary to protect judges. We'll be right back with more of the day's top stories. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. ABC News, America's number one news source. Welcome back. We're following breaking news. Law enforcement officials say the scene is secure after a shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa. At a press conference earlier, officials said they arrived seven minutes after shots were reported and found multiple gunshot victims. They would not confirm a number of people injured, but sources previously told ABC News at least one victim had been killed and two more injured. I want to bring in ABC's Alex Perche in Perry, Iowa. For more, Alex, what's the latest? Hey, Diane, so we just got a briefing uh, from the Dallas County Sheriff, Adam Infante. He told us that that call, uh, that officers were alerted around 737. This is uh, just before class was supposed to begin about an active shooting situation here at Perry High School. It's a it's a high school of about 570 students. Uh, they say that officer officers were on scene within seven minutes, and immediately upon entering that building, they encountered uh, uh, victims that had been shot. He was unsure. The sheriff here was unsure of just how many victims uh, that they have today. But I, I did get a chance to talk to uh, the stepmother of, of 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 one of these victims. Her her son was shot in the back and in the arm. Thankfully, he is OK. Uh, and she says that her other son actually uh, had class and, 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 and knew this alleged shooter. Uh, but you can imagine as a parent, you know, getting that text about an active shooting happening at your your, your kid's high school. School, but also, you know, that elation and that relief that comes uh, actually knowing that they're both okay. Alex, the police say they will be giving a press conference later this afternoon. What kind of information are you looking to hear from them then? 
Well, I, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, getting more information on this alleged shooter or shooters. I mean, was it one person? Was it multiple people? Uh, uh, what's their status? Are, are they are they still with us? You know, they, they said that there is no longer a danger to the public. Well, what exactly does that mean? I, I think also getting a better scope as to the injuries or uh, any additional fatalities that may have happened. Now, we know uh, that one of the reasons that, uh, you know, they're playing their cards kind of close to the vest is they still are trying to get in touch with uh, parents of, of those involved. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to, to get some more details later on this afternoon. All right, Alex Prechet and Perry Iowa for us. Alex, thank you. Meanwhile, more documents are expected to be made public today connected to late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. This comes after New York federal court released a first batch of previously secret documents stemming from a defamation lawsuit brought by one of Epstein's victims. Among other things, the documents reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Clinton. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Newly unsealed court records reinforce the association of presidents, even the king of pop, with Jeffrey Epstein, the sex offender who killed himself in a New York City jail while awaiting trial. The documents were part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit one of Epstein's victims, Virginia Giuffre, filed against his former paramour, Glenn Maxwell. The documents include arguments by Giuffre's lawyers, who sought testimony from former President Bill Clinton calling him a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Mr. Epstein. Giuffre never accused Clinton of wrongdoing, but claimed she had dinner with him on Epstein's private Caribbean island. Maxwell called that a lie, and the documents show her attorney said each and every part of plaintiff's claims regarding President Clinton has conclusively been proven false. Clinton was never deposed. After Epstein's arrest, his spokesman denied Clinton was ever on the island. After Giuffre's allegations became public, the documents also show Epstein emailed Maxwell seeming to offer advice. You can issue a reward to any of Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family, but come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner. Giuffre claims she was a teen sex slave for Epstein and directed by him and Maxwell to have sex with powerful men, as she described in a 2019 interview with the Miami Herald. The training started immediately. How to be quiet, be subservient, give Jeffrey what he wants. A lot of this training came from Ghislaine herself. Giuffre claimed Epstein ordered her to have sex on three occasions with Britain's Prince Andrew, which he has denied. He said he could not recall meeting her, and he told the BBC, This photo of the two of them could be fake. I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Andrew settled a lawsuit with Giuffre in 2022. The documents include testimony from Johanna Schoberg, one of Epstein's accusers, who said she was seated next to Giuffre at Epstein's New York City mansion when Andrew groped her breast. But when asked, do you have any knowledge about whether Virginia is telling the truth about whether Glenn Maxwell directed her to have sex with Prince Andrew, Schoberg answered, no, only based on what I've read in the media. When asked about meeting other famous people, she said she met Michael Jackson at Epstein's house in Palm Beach. And when she was asked, did you ever massage Donald Trump? Schoberg responded, no. And senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky and ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley join me now for more on this. Aaron, these documents are from a court case settled with one of Epstein's victims in 2017. So why release them now and what in them stuck out to you? They released under court order. The judge finally said there was no reason to keep anything associated with that litigation sealed. And, and there have been documents produced over the years. Uh, this is probably going to be the final batch because most of the redactions are now gone. And the, the judge, I think, had an interest in uh, some kind of transparency here because people, as Virginia Giuffre's lawyers put it, are interested, fascinated in Jeffrey Epstein's vast global sex trafficking network and how he managed to get away with it for so long. Kim, from a legal standpoint, is it surprising that more high profile people didn't try to block the release of their names? Well, they might have. Uh, the, the, the question is, do they have a basis for uh, blocking that? There's, it's a balancing test, and they have to have a good reason once it's on the public record. In this case, um, you know, court documents, the exception of grand jury material and other uh, standards that are met in civil cases, generally are on the public record and uh, and are available for the media and others to to look at. And that's really where we are now. So, Kim, could we see any charges from this? 
Well, presumably, the um, charges would come from either the federal uh, Department of Justice or a state prosecutor. Uh, these records could have been subpoenaed by a grand jury separately. So all of that could have been ongoing, notwithstanding, and at simultaneous with this with this civil litigation, they wouldn't necessarily one follow from the other. So if we haven't seen charges, it, it, I would expect they were probably not going to see them. But it's also possible that this perks the interest of a prosecutor somewhere, and they start uh, following up and investigating some of these public allegations now. Aaron, more documents are expected to be released today. What are you watching for there? Yeah, I, I, we're not sure what else there could be. We, we have a sense because, uh, as Kim says, so much of this has already been released. And, and more importantly, the prosecutors, the lawyers associated with, with all these Jeffrey Epstein-related cases, they know most of what exists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure there's going to be anything that will push the case forward. There is, though, Diane, an untapped repository of Jeffrey Epstein information, and that's with the federal government. Uh, the, the federal prosecutors in Manhattan, after Jeff Jeffrey Epstein's arrest, they raided his Upper East Side mansion. They uh, took video, they took photos, they took a lot of electronics, They and, and all of those items may help shed light on Epstein's crimes, but none of that so far has seen the light of day. All right, senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley, thank you. Meanwhile, the first alleged member of the Atlanta-based YSL gang has testified in the trial against rapper Young Thug. Trontavious Stevens told a jury yesterday that Young Thug co-founded the gang, but that it was about music, not committing crimes. Young Thug is accused of gang-related racketeering for his alleged involvement in the gang and has been in prison since his arrest in 2022. ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd joins me now for more on this. Shauna, Stevens' testimony is part of a plea deal to Kim, keep him out of prison. So how much weight does his testimony hold, and how damning could this be for Young Thug's case? His testimony is still going to carry weight with the jury despite the plea deal because he was someone who was close to him. He knew the inner workings of what was happening. And so although they may take it with a grain of salt, they're still going to place emphasis on his testimony and the jury's going to listen very carefully. Now, Young Thug has pleaded not guilty, claiming that YSL is just his record label. But a judge ruled that some of his lyrics can actually be used as evidence in that case. So what does the defense need to do to show reasonable doubt here, and what happens next? The defense is going to be looking to show that these are creative um, hyperbole that was used in these songs. They're going to be showing that these lyrics are not directly correlated with real life actions or crimes that were being committed at that time. So that's what they're going to do with the lyrics. What they have to show for reasonable doubt is really that the, what they're alleging, this entire criminal conspiracy, that he was not a part of it. There was no conspiracy. There was no overarching group that was organized to to for further criminal activity. And so if they can show reasonable doubt with that, he should be acquitted. And Shana, that aspect of this case, the fact that they are allowing lyrics to be used as evidence, how carefully does the judge have to navigate how that evidence is used and what impact could that have on the music industry in general? I mean, the fact that it was allowed in in this trial is likely going to have a very chilling effect on the rap industry because now that hyperbole can later be used against you whether or not it was factual. So that's going to have a very chilling effect on the music industry. Also, the judge is walking a very tight line because there's also freedom of speech. You can say things and they not necessarily be true, especially under creative liberties. So there's going to be a very fine line that he's going to walk when determining which lyrics can be admitted and for what purpose. All right, ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd, thank you. And the court clerk in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is facing new allegations from Murdoch's attorneys. The defense now claims Becky Hill forwarded two emails to prosecutors during the trial. The lawyers are now using those claims in their attempt to get Murdoch a new trial. ABC News' Eva Pilgrim has the latest. New evidence in the push for a new trial for disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's legal team submitting to the court two emails court clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill read the verdict when Murdoch was found guilty of murdering his wife and son. Murdoch's team now accusing her of tampering with the jury. There's going to be an evidentiary hearing about what Becky Hill did and did not do. 
And obviously, if the prosecutors received emails uh, from Becky Hill, they are witnesses. They are witnesses to her conduct. The defense arguing Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. That book, now pulled, discontinued after Hill's co-author recently discovered she'd plagiarized one section. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I was sad. Hill has since admitted she plagiarized but denied allegations of jury tampering in a sworn affidavit. She was seen discussing the case in the Netflix docuseries Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that women's intuition. The Attorney General's office overnight telling ABC News, we're not commenting outside of the court filings and comments inside the courtroom. All right, thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. An evidentiary hearing is scheduled for the end of the month. That's where the judge will examine if there's any proof of jury tampering and if there will be a retrial. Coming up, the Stanley Cup craze, how social media is fueling the hype and why hundreds rush to Target stores to get an exclusive drop. Also ahead, Ryan Gosling is now a Grammy nominee, but does he have the Kennergy to bring home the win? Well, Gans has the tea. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own reusable cups at drive throughs and in mobile orders. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Gio Benitez explains how it works. That morning cup of joe might start looking a lot different this year. For the first time, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own personal cups in drive throughs and when ordering on the app. The company saying its goal is to reduce waste by 50% by 2030. Okay, so I brought my clean cup, so I'm going to go ahead and use the app to order my coffee right now. I'm just going to get something pretty simple. We've got the featured blonde roast right here. You want to customize it. And then when you go all the way to the bottom, it'll show you personal cup. You hit that, done customizing, add to order. Now I grab my cup and I bring it over here to the mobile pickup. Hey, hey, I have your phone, Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. We got it. 
And if you're at a drive-thru, you order your drink as usual and just let the barista know that you brought your own cup. At the pickup window, they'll use that same contactless container to ensure your personal cup stays clean. Starbucks says it doesn't even matter what kind of drink you're ordering. Thank you. The only requirement, your cup just needs to be clean. It's so strange to see the Starbucks drizzle and all of that in my own cup from home. All right, drink up. All right, enjoy, Gio, and thanks to Gio Benitez for that report. You can also get a 10-cent discount for each personal cup order. Just make sure to tap that personal cup option in the app. And speaking of coffee cups, if you're looking to get the new special edition Stanley Travel Mug, you've got some competition. Across the country, people lined up at Target stores as early as 3 a.m. to try to get their hands on one. The mugs cost less than $50, but on eBay, they're now selling for up to 200 bucks. Stanley Cups have become a viral sensation and one of the most popular gifts this holiday season. ABC's Will Gans and business reporter Alexis Christophers are here with more on the craze and what's behind it. Well, I didn't know this until we looked at this story, but Stanley's been making these mugs since 1913, <laughs> so why the obsession now? Well, it's interesting. I was looking to see what came first, the NHL Stanley Cup or the Stanley Cup <laughs> right, Stanley right. Cup, and the NHL came only slightly before. But yeah, it's been around for 100 years, but only recently have we seen this explosion in popularity, yeah. especially on TikTok, of course. Back in 2017, a group of moms featured it on a blog, and since then, the brand has sort of been leaning into that virality kind of creating some more pastel type colors, you know, trendy options, things like that. Stanley Cup now has 6.7 billion with a B views on TikTok. <laughs> it's incredible. Wow. Uh, yeah. Alexis, what does this say about the impact of social media on businesses and the uh, economy in general? I mean, if you want to put this in dollar terms, so the, they call these the Stanley Cup quenchers. They actually came out in 2016, but it went viral in 2020. And the company had sales of $74 million in 2019. It now has sales of $750 million wow. just four years later. And a big reason why is leadership at the company. So the president, Terrence Riley, uh, the president of Stanley Cup, was the president of Crocs uh, before this. I think before 2019. Which and also had a new surge yeah. in popularity. Well, that, and he was part of that. So wow. he understands the, you know, collabing with with companies like Starbucks and Target and leaning into the influencers and, and trying to build social media following because this was a company that basically sold camping type goods mm -hmm. and now he made it hip wow. and cool. So, well, what is it about the cups? Is it just everyone wants one because everyone else has one or is there more to it than that? Well, there's that? certainly a little bit of that. The other thing too is that they work really well. They were designed to last outdoors. Mm -hmm. There was recently a video that went viral of a car catching on fire but the Stanley Cup inside stayed intact and the drink inside stayed cold and you know Stanley actually turned around and bought that woman a new, a new car. car yes but there is something to be said about the quality of the cups I mean if you're paying $50 for a quencher it better work I, I wanted to keep my stuff cold yeah <laughs> is there also something to the fact that it's this giant cup but it still fits in the cup holder yeah I think you're right on that it kind of tapers down <laughs> mm -hmm. We're now analyzing the construction of the Stanley Cup. Um, Alexis, based on data history, is this the kind of thing that continues to be popular or is this just a fad? You know, it's been now three or four years where this thing has really been in demand and we just saw what happened at Target. I mean, they sold out in minutes with that special edition cup. As long as they can still have it be unique in some way, exclusive, um, you know, people are going to want it where it's not so easy to get. But I would caution against spending 200 bucks on a cup. Think about what's driving you to buy it because if you're buying it as a collectible which by the way they're reusable so collecting a bunch of them sort of defeats the purpose mm. but you know if you're going to invest in this you might want to think twice because we're not so sure it's going to hold on to its value and something can be put up on ebay for 200 bucks doesn't mean it's selling for 200 dollars. that's a big distinction so buy the cup if you really want the cup not because you think you're going to be able to resell exactly. it later yes all right abc's will gans business support alexis christophorus Thank you both. Need our Stanley Cups. <laughs> we'll hang on. We'll hang on to our ABC News Live mugs for now. Uh, by the way, our control room is also uh, obsessed with their Stanleys. Though a big oh. rivalry over who has the real ones and who has the fake ones, apparently. Yeah. Are there knockoff Stanley apparently Cups there flying around? Apparently there are dupes out there. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Coming up, a Suits reunion is set to happen this weekend, and fans are wondering if Meghan Markle will show up. Well, Gans is sticking around. He's got the tea for us, not in a Stanley Cup. <laughs>
ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. You're watching America's number one streaming news, ABC News Live. Breaking news, exclusives, live reporting across the globe. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Reporting from the Gulf Coast of Florida, covering Hurricane Adalia. I'm Mike Ajachi. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. It is time for the tea where we break down some of the buzzy stories people are talking about. Our friend Will Gans is here to help us out. Spill that tea, Will. I'm still thinking about how much caffeine Gio had while shooting that piece. <laughs> he must be bouncing off the walls this morning, but I am bouncing off the walls because it is award season, people, and the Kennergy is strong. Ryan Gosling has scored a Grammy nomination for I'm Just Ken from the Barbie soundtrack, and the song was just shortlisted for the Oscars also for Best Original Song. But will Ryan Gosling perform it live? Yeah. Only if there's a god. <laughs> the actor opening up to W Magazine saying, well, I haven't been invited, but now it's all I'm going to think about. Spe <laughs> Many are speculating that Ryan will pick up a Best Supporting Actor nomination as well for Barbie, but the actor is still focused on the potential performing gig, asking the questions, do you get paid to sing at the Oscars? And do you have to drive yourself there? <laughs> <laughs> I feel this is a tease. We make it a little surprise. I feel I like even if that song is not nominated for Best Original Song, they should still have him perform just because people people will tune right, in Right, it'll be it. fun, yeah. Yeah, exactly, with the big fur coat and, you know, the abs, You're, all of it. Yeah, the abs are a prerequisite. The abs are a prerequisite. All right, speaking of award show, a Suits reunion is coming to the Golden Globes, you guys. Gabriel Mox and Patrick, Ad Patrick Adams, who portrayed Harvey Specter and Michael Ross in the series about a law firm, will be presenting together at the 81st Annual Golden Globe Awards. This is coming on the heels of Suits' wildly popular return to air on Netflix this year. Sources tell Variety that other cast members have been invited as well. So, could this mean a Meghan Markle appearance? Ooh. We'll find out on Sunday night. Predictions? I honestly wouldn't be shocked. She's been popping up on social media kind of in a more fun way lately, so maybe she's letting her hair down a little okay, bit. Okay, I right. would love it. I would be surprised, but Rachel I'd be Zane. into it. I mean, she could always bring, wasn't she a, a, one of the models on? Oh, we'll bring one of the suitcases? <laughs> yeah, deal or no deal. That would be a real shocker. All right, following the success of Parasite at the Oscars three years ago, its leading man is coming back to the small screen. Uncle Sam Sick is a new series following an ambitious idealist played by Parasite's Song Kang Ho, who teams up with a shady fixer to make it big, make a lot of money. The series will debut on Disney Plus and on Hulu, both from our parent company Disney, sometime soon. Very fun. I know. I hope it gives similar vibes. It is a drama, but it's going to be hard to follow Parasite. It really is. That movie was so great. All right, finally, your chance to live like the Roy family, if you want to. <laughs> Heritage Auctions is currently selling off goods from Succession, including Roman Roy's checkbook. 
the index cards. Oh, this scene was so hard to watch. The index cards from his failed funeral speech. We've got Kendall's suit up for auction as well. And then this one actually would be really cool to have. The blender that was used in the finale. It was titled Meal Fit for a King, of course. We also have the huge Burberry bag that's currently going for $1,600. The auction ends on January 13th. Does the checkbook also come with an account full of money? Yeah, it, direct access to the Roy's bank account? I don't think so. By the way, uh, some of the cast is going to be on GMA3 a little bit later this afternoon, so check your local listings for that. Also, little fun fact that probably re reflects poorly on my parenting. My son, if you ask him five years old what his favorite song is, he will tell you the Succession theme song. Not because we let him watch the show, but because he used to hear it as he went to bed because as soon as he went to bed, we would turn the show on. Oh, my god. And gosh. every now and then he would come out and say, Mommy, I love that song. Can you play it again? And so the other day he said, Mommy, what was the song from the movie that you used to watch when I went to bed? It took a little investigating, but we finally figured out the Succession theme song, and now that he knows what it's called, he tells Alexa to play it all the time. Hey, I don't think it's bad parenting. I think it just means that your son has great taste. Great taste in music, right? Right, There That's we go. Exactly Maybe it. a future in music here. <laughs> well, again, thank you, friend. Cheers. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Raya alive. The all new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Bedminster, New Jersey, I'm Mary Bruce. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome to ABC News Live First. I'm Diane Macedo. We are following breaking news. Law enforcement officials say the scene is secure after a shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa. At a press conference earlier, officials said they arrived seven minutes after shots were reported and found multiple gunshot victims. 
They haven't yet confirmed a number, but sources previously told ABC News at least one victim has been killed and two more injured. I want to bring in ABC's Alex Prashay in Perry, Iowa, along with ABC News contributors Robert Boyce, the former NYPD chief of detectives, and former FBI agent Brad Garrett for more. Alex, what's the latest? Hey, Diane. So we had a briefing uh, a little while ago from the Dallas County Sheriff, uh, Adam Infante, and he gave us kind of a TikTok as to what happened this morning. He says that around 737, that's when officers were first alerted uh, to an active shooting here. He says that they were on scene about seven minutes later and immediately encountered uh, uh, folks that uh, uh, had gunshot wounds inside the high school here. Now, just to kind of orient you, Perry is about, it's about a 40-minute uh, drive from downtown Des Moines. Uh, this the student body here at the high school it's about 570 students roughly and now we, we still don't know uh, the full scope of these injuries we have been able to confirm at least one fatality but uh, 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 Sheriff Infante uh, was not able to tell us just how many people uh, but we are expecting another briefing later on this afternoon but I can tell you that you know we've been talking to folks here in the community you talk to a, a, a stepmother of two boys uh, who go here uh, one of her kids was was shot in the the back and in the arm and you know you can imagine just like what she was going through also just got a chance to speak uh, to uh, a woman who works at the middle school which is conjoined here and you know a lot of these folks you know they've grown up here so they know the students that have come from the elementary school to the middle school to that high school uh, she actually has a couple of relatives uh, that were at this high school uh, one who was actually in uh, the cafeteria when this shooting broke out she says that that young lady was able to actually hear the gun fire that she called her mom scared and the mom just told her that she needed to run and she bolted uh, to safety but I mean that's that's what this community is kind of dealing with and right now I mean there is a, re a reunification center uh, where a lot of these parents are able to uh, uh, come back together with uh, with their uh, with their uh, young ones but still a lot of unknown questions here including the status of uh, this alleged shooter or shooters and also the scope of those injuries uh, for the victims. Brad, the sheriff says this happened at 737 in the morning before school was fully in session. How important is that timing? Well, it may end up being important. Think about this. It's a rural school. The kids either drove themselves, if they're of age, uh, or they rode a bus. Uh, it's early enough, did this shooter ride to school with the people he ultimately ended up shooting? We'll have to see. Uh, but it it... it Obviously, the shooter is not waiting for a maximum number of kids to be at the school, which may suggest, Diane, that he targeted an individual or certain individuals. Robert, they have ID'd the shooter, uh, but police aren't releasing that identity yet. Uh, they also haven't said if the shooter is alive or dead or in custody. What do you make of that? It's unclear right now. There's a lot of information leaking out right now, but it's unconfirmed. So we really have to wait for the uh, for the press conference coming forward. Don't know exactly where we are. Chances are it is a student. Um, chances are was he in that, that he went in there early for a specific reason, uh, knowing the school is, still hasn't uh, opened up yet. Was he targeting someone? And that's what we're going to find out in the coming hours today. What was this about? Was he being bullied? We don't know. Was it a mental health issue? We don't know. So this will come forward in the, in the, in the coming hours. Again, speaking with the parents, finding out how he got the gun, he or she got the gun, will tell us more in the coming hours. All right. Uh, Robert Boyce, Brad Garrett, Alex Prashay, thank you all. And I want to bring in Juan Miraz, father of two Perry, Iowa, high school students. He's joining me now uh, for more on this on the phone. Juan, you say your family is safe, but that others are not. What have you heard so far? Well, the thing is, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning, you know, usually do my usually things, you know, get up, get them ready, and try to go to school. Uh, well, my daughters, I, I took them down to school and everything, and um, <clears throat> I was turning around and headed to work when she called me very panicky and uh, um, kind of frustrated and stuff like that. And there were, uh, she heard some gunshots, and she called me that she was in the bleacher uh, with her sister, and um, that the, she was just calling me to let me know that they were, you know, shooting and that they were by the bleachers. Uh, one of the first thing that came into my head was turn around, because like I said, I was going to work. I turned around, and I just saw chaos and vehicles driving out of high school. Um, 
like trying to speed out of there and and people were just like wondering what's you know what was going on and, well, what uh, went through your head when you're when you got that phone call from your daughter saying she was hearing gunshots at school and then to turn around and see that scene at the high school when you got there my heart went down my stomach and i was hoping for for nothing bad um i just went numb and I just started going that way to to their high school, middle school. And when I got there and I saw the whole scene, it looked from a from from a movie, you know, like like you you don't expect that in a in a ten thousand population town, you know, it's a small town. You don't expect that, and so uh, it was it was very nerve wracking. I was you know I had Jesus in my name, hoping that. Uh, Everything was, everybody was safe, including my kids, you know. But uh, as soon as I got there, like I said, I saw this whole uh, traffic jamming and stuff. I saw the cops going in and now nobody directing traffic. So I, I do a lot of part uh, of the community here. I, I help out in the community here. And so I, my first thing was park my vehicle and, and help them out with the traffic, you know. And uh, as soon as I stepped in the traffic, I could hear one of the boys say, I got shot, and he fell on the floor. And when I looked to the left, there was a girl with the, with one of the teacher staff helping her out, that she had blood all over her neck and hair. Juan, have you spoken to any other parents? You said, you said some are not. Have you spoken to other families um, whose kids were affected here? Yes, I I did. Uh, I actually had a neighbor that her kid was sent to the hospital down of Mercy. Uh, she didn't know what was going on. Uh, what I know, what I know right now is that they are taking a lot of the kids and taking them down to the rec center. So every person, every parent that is looking for their kids, they did take them to the rec center, to the Rainbow facilities, and some of them were at Casey's uh, down on Willis. Juan, have you seen your daughters yet? And if so, what was that moment like? Yes, uh, like I said, I was kind of in the middle of all the cops' cars, so I could even if I wanted to come out, I couldn't come out. But I stayed there to help them out until I can. And so I just got home about five minutes ago, and the first thing I did was make sure they were okay, and I gave them a hug, and we all started crying. I can't even imagine. It's 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 something I didn't expect. That, you know, I I live from I I, came, I moved to from California 20 years ago to to be uh, to to have a better life. And you hear this kind of stuff, you know, different places, but never imagined that it will hit my town. Uh, and this was the first day back at school after break. How are people reacting to this? Everywhere you go right now, left to right, it's a small community town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody says hi to everybody. At a time of need, everybody helps out everybody. So seeing everybody crying and, and just uh, sad and, and, and angry about this, you know, it, it, it's, it's tormenting. It's, it's very sad to see my, my community in pain right now. And Juan, do you make anything of the timing here? Police are saying that this happened around 7.37 in the morning before school was even fully in session. And they are right, because uh, I did drop my kids about 7.32, 7.33, uh, because I was thinking, you know, I'm going to go home, get a little bit of snack or something. But as soon as I left, I left there about that time, yes, my daughter called me, let me know what was going on. Want anything you want the public, people who aren't there in Perry, Iowa, to know right now? Well, I just want the people in Perry, Iowa, and the whole Iowa state, you know, if they could help out, you know, these people, and they could bring some uh, some snacks and just prayers, and uh, you know, um, just know that 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 they're here for these people, you know. I just want them to know we're all here to help each other out. Juan, I'm so sorry that you and your community are going through this, but so glad that your daughters are okay. Juan Moraz, father of two students from Perry, Iowa. Juan, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Meanwhile, a U.S. official tells ABC News the U.S. conducted a strike in Baghdad, Iraq. Reports from Iraqi officials say an Iranian-backed militia was targeted and one of its commanders was killed. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore has the latest.
Well, hi, Diane. A U.S. official tells ABC News that the U.S. is continuing to take action to protect U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria in the midst of constant strikes from militia groups in the region. And today's strike killed the commander of an Iranian-backed group and was retaliation for an attack on a U.S. base on Christmas Day in Erbil. And among those injured was a pilot who is in critical condition today. Now, Iraq's prime minister called the strike a, a blatant violation of the country's sovereignty, saying that it's an act that is no different than a terrorist act. Of course, all of this is adding to the tension following the uh, twin bombings yesterday in Iran. One of the officials say was a suicide bombing. And also the airstrike that we've reported on that killed a top Hamas leader in Beirut earlier this week. Of course, the ground operation continues in Gaza as well, where Diane, the death toll has topped 22,000. Foreign correspondent Marcus Moore in Tel Aviv, Israel, thank you. First votes less than two weeks away in Iowa, former President Trump's campaign is hitting Nikki Haley with a new TV ad in New Hampshire. The ad places Haley side by side with President Biden, comparing her to Biden when it comes to border policies. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins me now for more on that. Rick, what does this ad tell you about Trump's campaign strategy? Well, this is the first real sign from the campaign directly that they're worried about Nikki Haley. For the most part, uh, they have been focused on Ron DeSantis, and they've been trying to pick apart his record and attack him on air uh, in campaign speeches. Uh, but this suggests that there's a, a bit of a different, um, a different competitor in the mix, and it tracks with public and private polling to see that Nikki Haley is now potentially the, the closest, uh, the, the closest rival to Donald Trump, particularly in New Hampshire. The location important here. Uh, Nikki Haley has put a lot more emphasis on the state of New Hampshire than she has Iowa. DeSantis this is more the threat there. So it tells you that, that the Trump team is starting to engage with the resources that they have marshaled over many, many months. Now, at an event in Iowa, a voter actually criticized Florida Governor Ron DeSantis directly, saying that he thought he was too soft on Trump. Take a look at that moment. Why haven't you gone directly after him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally and kind of do that. That's just not how I roll. So is that strategy working for DeSantis say, you know, sort of I'm taking the high road, that's not how I roll as he approaches these final days before the first votes are cast in Iowa? Yeah, Diane, it was a striking moment because it seemed to encapsulate so many of the concerns that have been raised about his campaign, not just among members of the media, but uh, many of his own donors uh, and now even Republican voters who are confronting him directly on it. Uh, they've wanted him to get more aggressive with Trump. They've wanted him to, to show that he is the one who can stand up. They know what Trump does to his rivals. Uh, and I think DeSantis was pretty honest in saying, look, that's not just that's just not who I am. And now the question for voters in a couple weeks is whether they want him anyway or whether they still view this as a, as a, as a campaign, an active campaign campaign. Uh, at that when Trump is his head as, as, as much as he is. It isn't clear that another strategy would have worked, but there is some frustration that DeSantis didn't uh, go a little bit harder against Trump from the start. All right, political director Rick Klein, always great to have you, Rick. Thank you. You bet. Thanks. Coming up, masking mandates are back at some hospitals, while the precaution is being reinstated across the country. Also ahead, the new warning about popular weight loss drugs, what some people say happened when they stopped taking them. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. 
a sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Hi, how cute. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Hospitals in at least nine states are once again requiring people to wear masks. They say it's an attempt to curb an increase in respiratory illnesses, including COVID, RSV, and the flu. ABC News' Ariel Reshef is outside one of those hospitals now masking up here in New York. Ariel? This is one of 11 hospitals here in New York City to reinstate masking. Some hospitals from coast to coast taking that step, given the rise in respiratory illnesses like flu, COVID, and RSV. 31 states and Washington, D.C. now reporting high or very high respiratory activity. When it comes to COVID-19, hospitalizations have been climbing for the past seven weeks with 30,000 new admissions in just the past week alone. The CDC estimating that 4,500 people have died from the flu so far this season that is certainly stoking concern here in New York hospitals say that they are not overwhelmed and they're reinstating masking as a proactive step to protect their patients and staff Diane all right Ariel Reshef thank you and a big question for people using popular weight loss drugs is what happens when you stop now some patients are warning others about the weight they've gained since going off the drugs and taking those prescription medications ABC News Eva Pilgrim has the details my weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started with Ovi. Slim down regret. Some who've used one of the hottest trends in weight loss, those new prescription medications, reporting that like with other weight loss interventions, the weight came back when they stopped taking the drugs. Within a month, I could feel how different my appetite was, how lethargic I was becoming again, all of those things. Artemis Bayendor was having difficulty shedding the tough to lose baby weight. And after talking to her doctor, started taking Wigovi in August 2021, losing 15 pounds over six months. But once her manufacturer's coupon ran out, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover it. The pharmacy called me and said, you've been paying the coupon price for six months for $25. And now the price has gone up to like, it's $1,300. That's when the weight came back and then some. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi. And since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. The active ingredient in Wagovi is semaglutide, a drug first approved for treating type 2 diabetes. In June 2021, the FDA approved its use for chronic weight management in adults who are overweight or obese. A 2022 study finding once patients go off the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight lost. Novo Nordis, the makers of Ozempic and Wegovi, saying in a statement, not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding, obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes with exercise and food. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. Our thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. The FDA is announcing it's looking into some new possible osempic side effects, including hair loss and suicidal thoughts. Coming up, holiday deals in January. Is it too late to find good prices now? You asked Alexis and she has the answer. This is ABC News Live.
with the crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series, sponsored by Planet Fitness. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Stream ABC News Live, counting down every day to the most consequential election of our lifetime. Now just one year away. If it's politics in 2024, ABC News Live will take you there. Streaming free wherever you stream your news. Reporting from the front lines of the war in Israel, I'm Ian Panel. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, it is time now for our weekly segment, Ask Alexis, where business reporter Alexis Christophorus shares financial advice on topics that matter most to you. And today she's here to answer your questions on when to buy a certificate of deposit and what to add to your January shopping list. All right, Alexis, let's start with Loretta from Michigan. Loretta asks, I keep hearing that interest rates are going to fall this year. If that's the case, should I lock in a CD now? Loretta, excellent question. Glad you're on top of this because the Federal Reserve has signaled it will start cutting interest rates this year after raising them for two and a half years to bring down inflation. So you want to take advantage of those current higher rates while they last. Locking in a CD or a certificate of deposit now is one way to do that. So you can still find a lot of CDs offering 5% or more on your money. But you want to ask yourself, when will you need access to the money? Because a three-year CD may have an attraction attractive interest rate, but if you're going to need the money in the next year, it's not the CD for you. And of course, the good thing about a CD is that the rate is fixed, meaning if interest rates drop, you're still going to earn the amount of interest you were receiving before rates fell. And of course, on the flip side, if rates rise, then you're locked into that lower rate uh, with your CD. And, and of course, with any investment, you want to focus on your time horizon and how much risk you're willing to take. CDs are generally pretty risk-free. All right, now let's go to Pam from New Jersey. Pam wants to know, what are the best things to buy in January now that the holidays are over? Yes, look, there are still plenty of deals out there to be had uh, in January. Just look at your inbox. I'm getting flooded with them. You might not be in the mood to shop holiday decor right now, but it is the time to score some big discounts on things like fake Christmas trees, lights, other holiday decorations for next year. Some stores like Home Depot and Lowe's are now having sales up to 75% off. Uh, January is also a great time to save money on items for your home. We're talking sheets, blankets, towels. I was looking online, I saw Macy's has a flash sale on bedding from 30 to 60% off. It's also a good time of the year to buy jewelry before those prices spike in the weeks leading up to Valentine's Day. K Jewelers, for example, offering 20 to 50% off. That is on select clearance items. And since getting healthier is a popular New Year's resolution, you'll find gym memberships are the lowest this month. Don't be afraid to negotiate your initiation fee, right? The worst I'll do is say no. M meantime, read the fine print there because a lot of gyms have strict cancellation rules. And most importantly, if you're going to buy a gym membership, Diane, what do you need to do? Use it because otherwise you're losing money. But Back it, to you. if you just buy the membership, then doesn't that automatically make you all fit and trim? Oh, how I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Alexis, thank you. And if you want to ask Alexis any personal finance questions, leave a message on our Instagram feed uh, at ABC News Live. She might answer your question right here on Thursday.
And if you're ready to take down your holiday decorations, U.S. farmers have a unique way to get rid of your Christmas tree. In what's becoming a national tradition, farmers across the country are encouraging people to send them their trees so they can feed them to their goats. ABC's Danny New has the details. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. Well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas tree cleanup crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year, thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> all right, Danny New, thanks for that. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news context and analysis. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. ABC Friday Night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. You're watching America's number one streaming news, ABC News Live. Breaking news, exclusives, live reporting across the globe. Keep streaming with ABC News Live. Welcome back. We're following breaking news. Law enforcement officials say the scene is secure after a shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa. At a press conference earlier, officials said they arrived seven minutes after shots were reported and found multiple gunshot victims. They would not confirm a number of people injured, but sources previously told ABC News at least one victim had been killed. 
and two more injured. I want to bring in ABC's Alex Perche in Perry, Iowa for more. Alex, what's the latest? Hey, Diane. So we just got a briefing uh, from the Dallas County Sheriff, Adam Infante. He told us that that call, uh, that officers were alerted around 737. This is uh, just before class was supposed to begin about an active shooting situation here at Perry High School. It's a it's a high school of about 570 students. Uh, they say that officer, officers were on scene within seven minutes, and immediately upon entering that building, they encountered uh, uh, victims that had been been shot. He was unsure. The sheriff here was unsure of just how many victims uh, that they have today. But I, I did get a chance to talk to uh, the stepmother of, of 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 one of these victims. Her her son was shot in the back and in the arm. Thankfully, he is okay. Uh, and she says that her other son actually uh, had class and, and 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 knew this alleged shooter. Uh, but you can imagine, as a parent, you know, getting that text about an active shooting happening at your 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 kid's high school. School, but also, you know, that elation and that relief that comes uh, actually knowing that they're both okay. Alex, uh, please say they will be giving a press conference later this afternoon. What kind of information are you looking to hear from them then? Well, I, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, getting more information on this alleged shooter or shooters. I mean, was it one person? Was it multiple people? Uh, well, uh, What's their status? Are, are, they, are they still with us? So, you know, they, they said that there is no longer a danger to the public. Well, what exactly does that mean? I, I think also getting a better scope as to the injuries or uh, any additional fatalities that may have happened. Now, we know uh, that one of the reasons that, uh, you know, they're playing their cards kind of close to the vest is they still are trying to get in touch with uh, parents of, of those involved. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to, to get some more details later on this afternoon. All right, Alex Perche and Perry Iowa for us. Alex, thank you. Meanwhile, more documents are expected to be made public today connected to late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. This comes after New York federal court released a first batch of previously secret documents stemming from a defamation lawsuit brought by one of Epstein's victims. Among other things, the documents reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Clinton. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. Newly unsealed court records reinforce the association of presidents, even the king of pop, with Jeffrey Epstein, the sex offender who killed himself in a New York City jail while awaiting trial. The documents were part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit one of Epstein's victims, Virginia Giuffre, filed against his former paramour, Glenn Maxwell. The documents include arguments by Giuffre's lawyers, who sought testimony from former President Bill Clinton calling him a key person who can provide information about his close relationship with Maxwell and Mr. Epstein. Giuffre never accused Clinton of wrongdoing, but claimed she had dinner with him on Epstein's private Caribbean island. Maxwell called that a lie, and the documents show her attorney said each and every part of plaintiff's claims regarding President Clinton has conclusively been proven false. Clinton was never deposed. After Epstein's arrest, his spokesman denied Clinton was ever on the island. After Giuffre's allegations became public, the documents also show Epstein emailed Maxwell seeming to offer advice. You can issue a reward to any of Virginia's friends, acquaintances, family that come forward and help prove her allegations are false. The strongest is the Clinton dinner. Giuffre claims she was a teen sex slave for Epstein and directed by him and Maxwell to have sex with powerful men, as she described in a 2019 interview with the Miami Herald. The training started immediately. How to be quiet, be subservient, give Jeffrey what he wants. A lot of this training came from Ghislaine herself. Giuffre claimed Epstein ordered her to have sex on three occasions with Britain's Prince Andrew, which he has denied. He said he could not recall meeting her, and he told the BBC, This photo of the two of them could be fake. I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Andrew settled a lawsuit with Giuffre in 2022. The documents include testimony from Johanna Schoberg, one of Epstein's accusers, who said she was seated next to Giuffre at Epstein's New York City mansion when Andrew groped her breast. But when asked, do you have any knowledge about whether Virginia is telling the truth about whether Glenn Maxwell directed her to have sex with Prince Andrew, Schoberg answered, no, only based on what I've read in the media. When asked about meeting other famous people, she said she met Michael Jackson at Epstein's house in Palm Beach. And when she was asked, did you ever massage Donald Trump? Schoberg responded, no. 
And senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky and ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley join me now for more on this. Aaron, these documents are from a court case settled with one of Epstein's victims in 2017. So why release them now and what in them stuck out to you? They released under court order. The judge finally said there was no reason to keep anything associated with that litigation sealed. And, and there have been documents produced over the years. Uh, this is probably going to be the final batch because most of the redactions are now gone. And and the, the judge, I think, had an interest in uh, some kind of transparency here because people, as Virginia Dufresne's lawyers put it, are interested, fascinated in Jeffrey Epstein's vast global sex trafficking network and how he managed to get away with it for so long. Kim, from a legal standpoint, is it surprising that more high profile people didn't try to block the release of their names? Well, they might have. Uh, the, the, the question is, do they have a basis for uh, blocking that? There's, it's a balancing test, and they have to have a good reason once it's on the public record. In this case, um, you know, court documents, the exception of grand jury material and other uh, standards that are met in civil cases, generally are on the public record and uh, and are available for the media and others to to look at. And that's really where we are now. So, Kim, could we see any charges from this? Well, presumably, the and charges would come from either the federal uh, Department of Justice or a state prosecutor. Uh, these records could have been subpoenaed by a grand jury separately. So all of that could have been ongoing, notwithstanding, and at simultaneous with this with this civil litigation, they wouldn't necessarily one follow from the other. So if we haven't seen charges, it, it, I would expect they were probably not going to see them. But it's also possible that this perks the interest of a prosecutor somewhere, and they start uh, following up and investigating some of these public allegations now. Aaron, more documents are expected to be released today. What are you watching for there? Yeah, I, I, we're not sure what else there could be. We, we have a sense because, uh, as Kim says, so much of this has already been released. And, and more importantly, the prosecutors, the lawyers associated with, with all these Jeffrey Epstein-related cases, they know most of what exists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure there's going to be anything that will push the case forward. There is, though, Diane, an untapped repository of Jeffrey Epstein information, and that's with the federal government. Uh, the, the federal prosecutors in Manhattan, after Jeff Jeffrey Epstein's arrest, they raided his Upper East Side mansion. They uh, took video, they took photos, they took a lot of electronics, They and, and all of those items may help shed light on Epstein's crimes, but none of that so far has seen the light of day. All right, Senior Investigative Correspondent Aaron Katursky, ABC News legal contributor Kim Whaley, thank you. Meanwhile, the first alleged member of the Atlanta-based YSL gang has testified in the trial against rapper Young Thug. Trontavious Stevens told a jury yesterday that Young Thug co-founded the gang, but that it was about music, not committing crimes. Young Thug is accused of gang-related racketeering for his alleged involvement in the gang and has been in prison since his arrest in 2022. ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd joins me now for more on this. Shauna, Stevens' testimony is part of a plea deal to Kim, keep him out of prison. So how much weight does his testimony hold, and how damning could this be for Young Thug's case? His testimony is still going to carry weight with the jury despite the plea deal because he was someone who was close to him. He knew the inner workings of what was happening. And so although they may take it with a grain of salt, they're still going to place emphasis on his testimony and the jury's going to listen very carefully. Now, Young Thug has pleaded not guilty, claiming that YSL is just his record label. But a judge ruled that some of his lyrics can actually be used as evidence in that case. So what does the defense need to do to show reasonable doubt here, and what happens next? The defense is going to be looking to show that these are creative um, hyperbole that was used in these songs. They're going to be showing that these lyrics are not directly correlated with real life actions or crimes that were being committed at that time. So that's what they're going to do with the lyrics. What they have to show for reasonable doubt is really that the, what they're alleging, this entire criminal conspiracy, that he was not a part of it. There was no conspiracy. There was no overarching group that was organized to for further criminal activity. And so if they can show reasonable doubt with that, he should be acquitted. And Shana, that aspect of this case, the fact that they are allowing lyrics to be used as evidence, how carefully does the judge have to navigate how that evidence is used and what impact could that have on the music industry in general? 
I mean, the fact that it was allowed in in this trial is likely going to have a very chilling effect on the rap industry because now that hyperbole can later be used against you whether or not it was factual. So that's going to have a very chilling effect on the music industry. Also, the judge is walking a very tight line because there's also freedom of speech. You can say things and they not necessarily be true, especially under creative liberties. So there's going to be a very fine line that he's going to walk when determining which lyrics can be admitted and for what purpose. All right, ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd, thank you. And the court clerk in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is facing new allegations from Murdoch's attorneys. The defense now claims Becky Hill forwarded two emails to prosecutors during the trial. The lawyers are now using those claims in their attempt to get Murdoch a new trial. ABC News' Eva Pilgrim has the latest. New evidence in the push for a new trial for disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's legal team submitting to the court two emails court clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill read the verdict when Murdoch was found guilty of murdering his wife and son. Murdoch's team now accusing her of tampering with the jury. There's going to be an evidentiary hearing about what Becky Hill did and did not do. And obviously, if the prosecutors received emails uh, from Becky Hill, they are witnesses. They are witnesses to her conduct. The defense arguing Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. That book now pulled discontinued after Hill's co-author recently discovered she'd plagiarized one section. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I was sad. Hill has since admitted she plagiarized but denied allegations of jury tampering in a sworn affidavit. She was seen discussing the case in the Netflix docuseries Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that women's intuition. The attorney general's office overnight telling ABC News, we're not commenting outside of the court filings and comments inside the courtroom. All right, thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that report. An evidentiary hearing is scheduled for the end of the month. That's where the judge will examine if there's any proof of jury tampering and if there will be a retrial. Coming up, the Stanley Cup craze, how social media is fueling the hype and why hundreds rush to Target stores to get an exclusive drop. Also ahead, Ryan Gosling is now a Grammy nominee. But does he have the Kennergy to bring home the win? Well, Gans has the tea. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good Morning America, tomorrow. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Welcome back to ABC News Live. First, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own reusable cups at drive throughs and in mobile orders. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Gio Benitez explains how it works. 
that morning cup of joe might start looking a lot different this year. For the first time, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own personal cups in drive throughs and when ordering on the app. The company saying its goal is to reduce waste by 50% by 2030. Okay, so I brought my clean cup, so I'm going to go ahead and use the app to order my coffee right now. I'm just going to get something pretty simple. We've got the featured blonde roast right here. You want to customize it, and then when you go all the way to the bottom, it'll show you personal cup. You hit that, done customizing, add to order. Now I grab my cup, and I bring it over here to the mobile pickup. Thank you. Hey, I have here. your blonde roast. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. We got it. And if you're at a drive through you order your drink as usual and just let the barista know that you brought your own cup. At the pickup window, they'll use that same contactless container to ensure your personal cup stays clean. Starbucks says it doesn't even matter what kind of drink you're ordering. I'll just take that and I have right. your special that's coming right up. Thank you. The only requirement, your cup just needs to be clean. It's so strange to see the Starbucks drizzle and all of that in my own cup from home. All right, drink up. All right, enjoy, Gio, and thanks to Gio Benitez for that report. You can also get a 10 cent discount for each personal cup order. Just make sure to tap that personal cup option in the app. And speaking of coffee cups, if you're looking to get the new special edition Stanley Travel Mug, you've got some competition. Across the country, people lined up at Target stores as early as 3 a.m. to try to get their hands on one. The mugs cost less than $50, but on eBay, they're now selling for up to 200 bucks. Stanley Cups have become a viral sensation and one of the most popular gifts this holiday season. ABC's Will Gans and business reporter Alexis Christophorus are here with more on the craze and what's behind it. Will, I didn't know this until we looked at this story, but Stanley's been making these mugs since 1913, so <laughs> why the obsession now? Well, it's interesting. I was looking to see what came first, the NHL Stanley Cup or the Stanley Cup <laughs> right, Stanley right. Cup, and the NHL came only slightly before. But yeah, it's been around for 100 years, but only recently have we seen this explosion in popularity, yeah. especially on TikTok, of course. Back in 2017, a group of moms featured it on a blog, and since then, the brand has sort of been leaning into that virality kind of creating some more pastel type colors, you know, trendy options, things like that. Stanley Cup now has 6.7 billion with a B views on TikTok. <laughs> it's incredible. Wow. Uh, yeah. Alexis, what does this say about the impact of social media on businesses and the economy uh, in general? I mean, if you want to put this in dollar terms, so the, they call these the Stanley Cup quenchers. They actually came out in 2016, but it went viral in 2020. And the company had sales of $74 million in 2019. It now has sales of $750 million wow. oh just four years later. And a big reason why is leadership at the company. So the president, Terrence Riley, uh, the president of Stanley Cup, was the president of Crocs uh, before this. I think before 2019. Which and also had a new surge yeah. in popularity. Well, that, and he was part of that. So wow. he understands the, you know, collabing with with companies like Starbucks and Target and leaning into the influencers and, and trying to build social media following because this was a company that basically sold camping type goods mm -hmm. and now he made it hip wow. and cool. So, well, what is it about the cups? Is it just everyone wants one because everyone else has one or is there more to it than well, that? Well, there's certainly a little bit of that. The other thing too is that they work really well. They were designed to last outdoors. Mm -hmm. There was recently a video that went viral of a car catching on fire but the Stanley Cup inside I did see that. stayed intact and the drink inside stayed cold and you know Stanley actually turned around and bought that woman a new, a new car. car yes but there is something to be said about the quality of the cups I mean if you're paying $50 for a quencher it better work I, I wanted also, to keep my stuff cold yeah <laughs> is there also something to the fact that it's this giant cup but it still fits in the cup holder yeah I think you're right on that it kind of tapers down <laughs> mm -hmm. We're now analyzing the construction of the Stanley Cup. Um, Alexis, based on data history, is this the kind of thing that continues to be popular or is this just a fad? You know, it's been now three or four years where this thing has really been in demand and we just saw what happened at Target. I mean, they sold out in minutes with that special edition cup. As long as they can still have it be unique in some way, exclusive, um, you know, people are going to want it where it's not so easy to get. But I would caution against spending 200 bucks on a cup. Think about 
what's driving you to buy it because if you're buying it as a collectible which by the way they're reusable so collecting a bunch of them sort of defeats the purpose mm. but you know if you're going to invest in this you might want to think twice because we're not so sure it's going to hold on to its value and something can be put up on ebay for 200 bucks doesn't mean it's selling for 200 dollars. that's a big distinction so buy the cup if you really want the cup not because you think you're going to be able to resell exactly. it later yes all right abc's will gans business support alexis christophorus Thank you both. Need our Stanley Cup. <laughs> we'll hang on. We'll hang on to our ABC News Live mugs for now. Uh, by the way, our control room is also uh, obsessed with their Stanleys. Though a big oh. rivalry over who has the real ones and who has the fake ones, apparently. Yeah. Are there knockoff Stanley Cups flying around? Apparently there are out there. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Coming up, a Suits reunion is set to happen this weekend, and fans are wondering if Meghan Markle will show up. Well, Gans is sticking around. He's got the tea for us. Not in a Stanley Cup. Wow, wow. <laughs> Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought, my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all? That's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here. And we got you. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. <laughs> Welcome back. It is time for the tea, where we break down some of the buzzy stories people are talking about. Our friend Will Gans is here to help us out. Spill that tea, Will. I'm still thinking about how much caffeine Gio had while shooting that piece. <laughs> he must be bouncing off the walls this morning, but I am bouncing off the walls because it is award season, people, and the Kennergy is strong. Ryan Gosling has scored a Grammy nomination for I'm Just Ken from the Barbie soundtrack, and the song was just shortlisted for the Oscars, also for Best Original Song. But will Ryan Gosling perform it live? Only if there's a god. <laughs> the actor opening up to W Magazine saying, well, I haven't been invited, but now it's all I'm going to think about. Spe <laughs> Many are speculating that Ryan will pick up a Best Supporting Actor nomination as well for Barbie. But the actor is still focused on the potential performing gig, asking the questions, do you get paid to sing at the Oscars? And do you have to drive yourself there? <laughs> <laughs> I feel this is a tease. We make it a little surprise. I feel I like think. even if that song is not nominated for Best Original Song, they should still have him perform just because people will tune right, in to it'll watch be fun, it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. With the big fur coat and, you know, the abs, you, all of it. Yeah, the I, abs are a prerequisite. The abs are a prerequisite. All right, speaking of award show, a Suits reunion is coming to the Golden Globes, you guys. Gabriel Mox and Patrick, Ad Patrick Adams, who portrayed Harvey Specter and Michael Ross in the series about a law firm, will be presenting together at the 81st Annual Golden Globe Awards. This is coming on the heels of Suits' wildly popular return to air on Netflix this year. Sources tell Variety that other cast members have been invited as well. So, could this mean a Meghan Markle appearance? We'll find out on Sunday night. Predictions? 
I honestly wouldn't be shocked. She's been popping up on social media kind of in a more fun way lately, so maybe she's letting her hair down a little okay, bit. Okay, I right. would love it. I would be surprised, but Rachel I'd be Zane. into it. I mean, she could always bring, wasn't she a, one of the models? On? Oh, we'll bring one of the suitcases? <laughs> yeah, deal or no deal. That would be a real shocker. All right, following the success of Parasite at the Oscars three years ago, its leading man is coming back to the small screen. Uncle Sam Sick is a new series following an ambitious idealist played by Parasite's Song Kang Ho, who teams up with a shady fixer to make it big, make a lot of money. The series will debut on Disney Plus and and on Hulu, both from our parent company, Disney, sometime soon. Very fun. I know. I hope it gives similar vibes. It is a drama, but it's going to be hard to follow Parasite. It really is. That movie was so great. All right, finally, your chance to live like the Roy family, if you want to. <laughs> Heritage Auctions is currently selling off goods from Succession, including Roman Roy's checkbook, the index cards, oh, this scene was so hard to watch. The index cards from his failed funeral speech. We've got Kendall's suit up for auction as well. And then this one actually would be really cool to have. The blender that was used in the finale. It was titled Meal Fit for a King, of course. We also have the huge Burberry bag that's currently going for $1,600. The auction ends on January 13th. Um, does the checkbook also come with an account full of money? Yeah, it, direct access to the Roy's bank account. I don't I don't think so. By the way, uh, some of the cast is going to be on GMA3 a little bit later this afternoon, so check your local listings for that. Also, little fun fact that probably re reflects poorly on my parenting. My son, if you ask him five years old what his favorite song is, he will tell you the Succession theme song. Not because we let him watch the show, but because he used to hear it as he went to bed, because as soon as he went to bed, we would turn the show on. Oh, my god. And gosh. every now and then, he would come out and say, Mommy, I love that song. Can you play it again? And so the other day, he said, Mommy, what was the song from the movie that you used to watch when I went to bed? It took a little investigating, but we finally figured out the Succession theme song. And now that he knows what it's called, he tells Alexa to play it all the time. Hey, I don't think it's bad parenting. I think it just means that your son has great taste. Great taste in music, right? Right. There That's we go. Exactly Maybe it. a future in music here. <laughs> well, again, thank you, friend. Cheers. And thank you for streaming with us. I'm Diane Macedo. ABC News Live is here for you anytime with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on streaming services, the ABC News app, and of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America, tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the daily news podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here. ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Miami, I'm Victor Okendo. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live.
right now on ABC News Live. Breaking news, a deadly school shooting where gunfire erupts at a high school in Iowa, leaving at least one person dead. What we're learning about the suspected shooter this hour. Inside an intrigue, new court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein now unsealed. What we know about the famous people within his orbit. Massive storm, a powerful weather system crisscrossing the country. The state's now under alert and where the storm is right now. And Cup Craze, the new way to get your morning Java on the go. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. We do begin with that deadly shooting at a high school in Iowa. A gunman opening fire on campus at the start of the school day. Students and faculty panicked and afraid. Victim seen actually carried away in stretchers. Police say at least one person is now confirmed dead. Multiple victims injured. Their conditions unknown at this time. One student even texting her mother as the terrifying ordeal was unfolding. That mom saying it was one of the worst moments of her entire life. Our Alex Prochet is following the late breaking details for us in Perry, Iowa. So Alex, what more are we learning about what happened here? Well, Kira, so we're expecting an update shortly this afternoon, but I can tell you that uh, officers first received a, a notice of an active shooting situation here at Perry High School around 737 a.m. They say that uh, officers were on uh, on on scene here about seven minutes later and immediately saw gunshot victims inside. Now, mind you, this was the first day back for these students uh, post winter break. And so uh, 737, it's just before classes were supposed to start around 8 8 a.m. We know that a number of the kids had already gathered uh, in, in, inside. What we don't know right now is the number of victims. We do know uh, at least one confirmed fatality, uh, but uh, the Dallas County Sheriff was not able to tell us the scope of the number of victims uh, or or give us any details on any any suspect or alleged shooter uh, here in this situation. They do. They did say that they actually have identified that person, uh, but they were not releasing that name just yet. Uh, something else that uh, we, you know, we've got a chance to talk to at least a couple of, of parents here. Uh, one actually was a uh, uh, worked at the middle school, which is conjoined here uh, and, and had a, a niece and a cousin that goes to this high school. And she talked to us about uh, getting those harrowing texts, learning that uh, her family was actually inside. Take a listen. It's it's different whenever it happens in your backyard. It is. It's very different yeah. because that's your community. That's what you know. And that's where you live. You don't think. Oh, yeah, Perry's a town of 7,000 people, but, you know, it's a small, quiet town. You aren't as big as, like, Waukee and Des Moines. You would think maybe it would happen at the bigger schools, not our school. Well, and so you hear her talk about this tight-knit small community, only about 570 kids uh, in this high school. And so if you live in this area, chances are that you know the kids that go to the middle school, you know the kids that go to the high school. Uh, and so, you know, as we learn more and uh, get the identity of this suspected shooter, uh, chances are there are a lot of folks here that are going to know that person, uh, which only kind of reverberates and makes this a little bit harder to deal with, Kira. So anything more about the identities of, of some of these folks and just the conditions of the three that were injured? So we, we don't have uh, any names uh, or identities. I, I can tell you, though, that I did speak to the mother of two boys uh, who are uh, students here, and she said that one of her sons who actually was injured. Uh, he was, uh, was shot in, uh, in, in the back and in the arm. Uh, thankfully, he is OK. Uh, she says that her other son uh, actually had classes uh, with this uh, alleged shooter, that the son was familiar with, with who he was. Uh, but Again, uh, we, we, we don't have a lot of details or identities uh, for, for, for the others. All right. Well, can continue to follow the story with you, Alex, throughout the afternoon. Appreciate it. Well, the long-awaited release of court documents related to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his longtime business partner and girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, is finally over. After the fifth batch of 41 court filings were unsealed, unraveling a long list of names of well-known people with some connection to the disgraced financier. Those names include late pop icon Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, and Naomi Campbell. The documents also reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Bill Clinton. Our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, has been digging through all those documents and all the names as well. Uh, we also are joined by our legal contributor and trial attorney, Brian Buckmeyer. So, Aaron, 
what are your biggest takeaways from what you have learned from all these documents so far? Well, those names that you mentioned, uh, Kira, certainly bold-faced, and there are many more where that came from. Uh, as these documents get unsealed and these names are, are now unredacted, we learn about all of these people that may have had associations with, with Jeffrey Epstein. But the documents do not give specifics. Some of these people were mentioned as potential witnesses, people who might have known Epstein and might be able to offer something as part of a civil lawsuit from where these documents come. Others uh, were just mentioned in deposition transcripts. Uh, an Epstein victim asked, hey, did you ever meet this person in Jeffrey Epstein's company? What about that person? Did you ever massage Donald Trump? No. Uh, did you meet David Copperfield? Yes. Uh, it, so the, the, the names are mentioned, but none of them are accused of any wrongdoing. A and, and it just reinforces, I think, Kira, the idea that this strange financier with a you know mysterious origin story about how he made his money was able to keep uh, some some rather influential company. So it's been five years, Brian, uh, since the defamation case was brought by Virginia Jufre, who settled outside of court. Why the release of these names now? Well, Kira, there seems to be a process by which these cases operate in the sense that some of the information was kept for privacy rights, and as time goes on and the judge gave the opportunity for everyone whose name was mentioned in these documents to come forward and say, hey, if you have a legal basis by which your privacy rights may be infringed, then I would stop the release of your name. And we saw that at least with two Jane Doe's. But as Aaron points out, a lot of these names are just, did you speak with this person? Did you go here? And there's no real privacy right there. So as this case was resolved some years ago and kind of goes throughout the process in the years, there becomes less and less of a reason to hold their names and they're just slowly getting released out. So, Brian, what are the possible consequences, you know, for these people named within the documents? At this point, I think it's more questions than any kind of legal, whether it be criminal or, or civil repercussions. It's just maybe like, why were you there? Why did you travel here? Uh, a lot of these documents, don't forget, come from a civil case where attorneys are trying to investigate any probable cause or potential liability for other participants who might have known Jeffrey Epstein. So simply knowing him is not cause for a criminal case or for civil liability. And so I don't think we're going to see any real actions. This information is just the public learning. If there's any kind of criminal impropriety, I would have thought that law enforcement and the federal government would have gotten there much, much long time ago, and they would have done an investigation well before we learned about these names now. So I'm not really anticipating any big movement. So, Aaron, when we look at the names like Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, Naomi Campbell, are any of these individuals or anyone from Michael Jackson's estate or family members responding to the fact that these names are out there? Uh, not that we've seen so far, and, and, and frankly, Kira, that may be because there's nothing necessarily to respond to, you know, other than at one point or other, some other person linked to Jeffrey Epstein was asked whether Epstein ever knew this person, um, probably because Virginia Giuffre had uh, made an allegation at one point or other that Glenn Maxwell, uh, who she was suing for defamation at the time, uh, said was a, was a lie. So we don't know that there's anything for these people to really respond to. And, and, and really, Kira, we'll see more documents come out uh, today and, and, and in subsequent days that will probably contain additional names. There are more than 150 people who are identified in court records right now as Jane and John Doe's, uh, numbers, you know, one through whatever. And, and their, their names are, are likely to be exposed, too. But many of these people, Kira, had already been publicly associated with Epstein, and uh, most, if not all of them, have never been accused of wrongdoing. Got it. Aaron, Brian, thanks guys so much. Appreciate it. Well, a powerful winter storm is sweeping across the country, threatening millions of people right now with rain, snow, and ice. The storm already dumping more than a foot of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Ten states now under snow and wind alerts from California all the way to Kansas. That storm is now headed east, too, targeting the northeast. It's expected to be the first substantial snow event in that part of the country in two years. Our meteorologist Melissa Griffin is tracking the storm for us. All right, so time it all out, Melissa.
Hey, Kara, we got to start with where the storm is right now, and that's over in the southern Rockies, making its way into the southern plains. So that's why we have these winter weather advisories stretching now into parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. That's where about two to five inches of snow can fall throughout the day today and into tomorrow. Now, by tomorrow evening, it makes its way out of the plains into the deep south. The Gulf Coast, I'm concerned with flooding. Very heavy rain from Memphis back through Jackson, Mississippi, into New Orleans. Snow on the backside of this, but nothing too severe in the way of snow for parts of the Ohio Valley, maybe about one to two inches there from Cincinnati up through Chicago. But then it's that heavy rain in the southeast. That's where they could see flooding from Jacksonville up into the Carolinas, a mix of rain, snow and sleet and ice starting in the mid-Atlantic there. And then it reaches the northeast. This is Saturday at 6 p.m. Sleet turning to heavy rain for places like D.C. up through Philly. And then it's going to start as a wet snow for New York before transitioning to rain as well. Much of the interior northeast is going to stay snow. That's why we're going to see the higher amounts there instead of the coast, Boston could see a couple of inches as well. Here's your snow total forecast. As you can see here in the pink, that's where we expect six to 12 inches of snow, even possibly over a foot in that dark purple there in the higher elevations. Across the coast, though, it's mainly going to be just rain, maybe up to two inches in some parts of the coastline, but really not a big snow event for the major cities. We we'll, might just have to wait a little bit longer for that one, Kara. All right, Melissa Griffin, thank you so much. Well, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is traveling to the Middle East amid growing fears of a wider conflict now in that region. The trip comes as the Islamic State now claims responsibility for those deadly bombings in Iran yesterday. The attack killed at least 84 people at a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general. Our chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest for us. <laughs> U.S. officials saying it was the terror group ISIS that was likely behind the deadliest attack Iran has seen in more than 40 years. <laughs> Two powerful bombs detonated on a crowded Iranian street during a commemoration ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general Qasem Soleimani, killed by a U.S. drone strike four years ago. Crowds desperately fleeing after the first bomb blast, the second exploding minutes later. Iranian officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks, detonated remotely. Soleimani, considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups, including Hamas and Hezbollah, is considered a hero in Iran, where tens of thousands gathered for his funeral procession in Iran in 2020. This procession so packed you can barely move, but the emotion is everywhere. People have a very strong message for America. They chanted death to America, a chant now echoed after this most recent attack on civilians. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi accusing Israel and America of the attacks, warning Israel will pay the price. But U.S. officials say there is no evidence they were involved. Can you rule out that Israel had anything to do with this? We have no indication at this time at all that Israel was involved in any way whatsoever. The attack coming a day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top Hamas official, Salah al-Aruri, in Lebanon. Hezbollah's top leader calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. The U.S. saying it was not told in advance of the strike. And there are reports this morning that an Iranian-backed militia commander in Iraq was also killed by an airstrike today. Kira? All right, Martha Raditz, thanks so much. Well, pilots of the passenger jet that collided with a Coast Guard plane in Japan are expected to speak to investigators today. This comes as the investigation shows warning lights on the runway were not working at the time of the crash. Our foreign correspondent, James Longman, has the latest. It's now emerged that warning lights on the runway at Haneda Airport that tell pilots whether or not it's safe to land were not working the night that Japan Airlines flight crashed into a Coast Guard aircraft. There was an alert issued back on December 27th telling all pilots that those lights would be out for the foreseeable future. It's not clear whether or not it had anything to do with the crash, but clearly that'll be part of the uh, investigation. Meantime, transcripts of the communication between air traffic control and the pilots uh, has now been released. It shows that they did not at any time 
time, tell the pilots uh, to abort their landing, also seems to suggest that uh, air traffic control was not aware of the Coast Guard's plane making its way onto the runway, that they did not ask for clearance to do that. Uh, but the uh, pilots of the plane say they didn't see anything as they were coming into land. They have spoken today to air crash investigators. Meantime, the fallout from that horrific earthquake uh, is also ongoing. The search for survivors continues. 30,000 people are still living in shelters. There are so many people who are still without fuel, without power, without internet connections. Entire communities are still cut off because of landslides uh, smashing roads and blocking access. So uh, a lot of people are still completely cut off. Japan is hoping uh, that more survivors will be found very soon. All right, James Longman, thank you so much, James. Well, coming up, a Nevada judge clearly caught off guard as she's attacked on the bench by a convicted felon. What happened next when we return? Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Glad you're streaming with us. Well, it happened so fast, it took even the court security by surprise. A convicted felon vaulting the bench and attacking the judge in a Nevada courtroom. That judge physically attacked by the defendant, and then it sparked a bloody brawl. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holt, as you'll see, was sentencing that man to prison for a felony battery case. But before she could even strike the gavel, as you see, he just soared across the defense table and landed on her. Our Morgan Norwood is on the story for us. So, Morgan, just tell us more about this defendant and the verbal exchange that led to the attack. You know, Kira, it is just incredible and chaotic video there. And, you know, the irony of it all, which is what I want to lean into, is that just moments before this attack, uh, you know, the defendant in this case, Diobra Redden, had pleaded guilty to, to felony battery and was really pleading with the judge there for, you know, freedom, freedom wanting leniency. Um, you know, she was saying, like, hey, essentially, you need to be in jail. She was going over his rap sheet. He has a violent criminal history. And it was at that moment where he leaps over the bench. It almost seems like he flew there. You see it there. Um, you know, seconds later, you see, you know, court marshals also jumping in as well. But, you know, it seemed like it happened so fast. But in the moment, I, I guess to a lot of folks who were there, it, it seemed like slow motion there. Um, so as for what happens next, we do know that, you know, several people are uh, were injured in that a court martial as well. You saw the judge. She was got up and, hold, and held her head. Um, you know, she is expected to be okay. 
So my guess is um, he's not going to see uh, freedom anytime soon. <laughs> so what happens to him now? Yeah, he almost certainly sealed his fate there with jumping over, you know, the bench there. It, it, he really proved the judge's point, right, in terms of his violent criminal history. He does face new felony charges uh, related to that particular attack, but he also has to serve the sentence that she handed down, um, you know, for the felony battery case that he was originally in court for, Kira. So I'm curious, are they going to change their security uh, procedures now? Yeah, you know, this almost certainly, you know, uh, we're, we're leaning into to the whole issue of judge safety. It's, it's no secret that we've seen over the past, you know, several years that, you know, judges have been targeted, right? You know, we saw a situation last year in which a judge was killed. I think what makes this situation a little bit different, Kira, is that this was supposed to be a controlled environment, right? You had, you know, uh, several police officers, I'd imagine bailiffs there, um, a controlled environment. This should have never happened. So you see uh, what we're hearing from the court right now is that they commend the heroic acts of, you know, the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. But they also say that they're reviewing all of our pro protocols. So again, this was a controlled environment and something like this should have never happened. So I imagine they're going to be going over, um, you know, everything to see how they can prevent this from happening in the future. Kira? Yeah, they definitely lost control, that's for sure. All right, Morgan Norwood, thank you. Well, the court clerk in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is facing even more allegations now of misconduct from Murdoch's lawyers. The defense now claims that Becky Hill forwarded two emails to prosecutors during Murdoch's double murder trial. The lawyers are now using these claims in their attempt to get him a new trial. Our Eva Pilgrim has more. New evidence in the push for a new trial for disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's legal team submitting to the court two emails court clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill read the verdict when Murdoch was found guilty of murdering his wife and son. Murdoch's team now accusing her of tampering with the jury. There's going to be an evidentiary hearing about what Becky Hill did and did not do. And obviously, if the prosecutors received emails uh, from Becky Hill, they are witnesses. They are witnesses to her conduct. The defense arguing Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. That book, now pulled, discontinued after Hill's co-author recently discovered she'd plagiarized one section. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I was sad. Hill has since admitted she plagiarized but denied allegations of jury tampering in a sworn affidavit. She was seen discussing the case in the Netflix docuseries Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that women's intuition. The attorney general's office overnight telling ABC News, we're not commenting outside of the court filings and comments inside the courtroom. All right, thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that. Well, coming up, conservation by cup. Starbucks launching BYOC. Why the coffee chain wants you to bring your own jug for Java next. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know,
know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Reporting on the flooded streets of Treasure Island, I'm Ginger Z. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Some other top headlines we're tracking for you this hour here on ABC News Live. Police in San Antonio arresting a father and son in connection with the death of a pregnant 18-year-old Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra. Soto and Guerra were found dead in a car in an apartment complex after she was scheduled to be induced and didn't show up. Police say it appeared to be a narcotics deal gone wrong. Former Olympic and Paralympic runner Oscar Pistorius set to be released from a South African prison tomorrow. The Olympian was jailed after being convicted of killing his then-girlfriend Reva Steenkamp. Pistorius shot the South African model through a bathroom door in the middle of the night saying he thought she was an intruder. 37-year-old Pistorius will be on parole until 2029 and spend that remaining time living at his uncle's home near Pretoria, South Africa. Well, a Connecticut woman has become the first non-resident of Vermont to use the state's medical aid in dying law, passing away this morning. 76-year-old Linda Blustein suffered from ovarian and fallopian tube cancer, conditions that have a 31% survival rate. She and a doctor actually sued the state of Vermont and got a waiver to access the medical aid in dying. She told the AP that she watched her own mother die of cancer and didn't want her kids to see her sick. Well, Starbucks is now telling customers to BYOC. The coffee chain is allowing customers to use their own reusable cups at drive throughs and with mobile orders. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Our Gio Benitez explains how it works. That morning cup of joe might start looking a lot different this year. For the first time, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own personal cups in drive throughs and when ordering on the app. The company saying its goal is to reduce waste by 50% by 2030. Okay, so I brought my clean cup, so I'm going to go ahead and use the app to order my coffee right now. I'm just going to get something pretty simple. We've got the featured blonde roast right here. You want to customize it. And then when you go all the way to the bottom, it'll show you personal cup. You hit that, done customizing, add to order. Now I grab my cup and I bring it over here to the mobile pickup. Thank you. Hey, I have your bond, bro. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. We got it. And if you're at a drive-thru, you order your drink as usual and just let the barista know that you brought your own cup. At the pickup window, they'll use that same contactless container to ensure your personal cup stays clean. Starbucks says it doesn't even matter what kind of drink you're ordering. I'm just take that. And I have right. a special latte coming right up. Thank you. The only requirement, your cup just needs to be clean. It's so strange to see the Starbucks drizzle and all of that in my own cup from home. All right, drink up. <laughs> Our thanks to Gio for that. You can also, by the way, get a 10% discount for each personal cup order. Just make sure to tap on that personal cup option on the app. That was like a free commercial, wasn't it? Thanks for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips from Breaking News to all the stories that matter to you. You can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We'll be right back. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. 
From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, Reed? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all? That's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here. And we got gotcha. you. Right now on ABC News Live, breaking news, a deadly school shooting where gunfire erupts at a high school in Iowa. Moments ago, police confirming the shooter is dead. What we're learning about the investigation this hour. Inside an intrigue, new court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein now unsealed. What we know about the famous people in Epstein's orbit. Massive storm, a powerful weather system crisscrossing the country. The state's now under alert and where the storm is right now. And Cup Craze, the new way to get your morning Java on the go. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. We do begin with that deadly shooting at a high school in Iowa. A gunman opening fire on campus at the start of the school day. Police now confirming that the shooter is dead. Multiple victims injured. Their conditions right now unknown. Students and faculty panicked and afraid. Scene actually carried away in stretchers. One student texting her mother as the terrifying ordeal unfolded. That mom saying it was one of the worst moments of her entire life. Our Alex Perche is following the breaking details for us in Perry, Iowa. So Alex, we did just learn the shooter is dead. What more are police telling us now about the investigation? Well, Kira, I mean, we're expecting an update in uh, a, about an hour and a half from now, roughly, where we hope to get more details about that shooter and certainly the number of folks uh, injured here. Uh, we had reported uh, before the news about this shooter that at least there was one, at least one fatality here, a number of injured. Uh, but I'm going to actually have my cameraman pan here. I mean, you can see, still see the, the emergency lights going off inside of this is the Perry Middle School, which is attached to Perry High School, but still going off inside of, of these conjoined buildings here. Uh, but this uh, shooting, police were alerted to it around 7.37 uh, this morning. That's just before school was supposed to start. Kids were just coming back from winter break. Uh, we know that police were on scene uh, less than 10 minutes later, and immediately upon entering, uh, they, were, uh, uh, they, they came across uh, gunshot victims. Again, we don't know the total number, uh, but this is a small community here. Only about 570 students at this uh, this high school, which is about 40 minutes outside of Des Moines. So a lot of the folks that we've talked to in the surrounding areas, they, they either have gone here, or either work here, or, or certainly have uh, loved ones that attend here. And, uh, you know, this is something that uh, that has this community really reeling today. So when it comes to the multiple victims that you mentioned that were hurt, do we know anything more about their conditions, who they are? So we don't know names right now, Kira. Um, uh, I can tell you that I, I got a chance to speak with the mother at le of at least one of, of, of these injured uh, students. Um, he uh, is a, 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 a high schooler here. He was shot in the back and in the arm. Um, but I mean, as we were talking to his mom, uh, he was being checked out by medics and, 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 and appears to be okay. Uh, they let him go back home today. But as for the others, uh, still, still no word. 
Any any idea when we might learn who the suspected uh, shooter was, a student or somebody else familiar with the school? Well, so and again, we have we have that update coming uh, later on this afternoon, probably about an hour and a half from now. Um, but. Uh, uh, we, we we are hearing uh, that uh, somehow there, there there might be some social media uh, that's involved in this investigation in, in, in some capacity. Uh, we've heard from a number of, of, of students and, and also some of the parents uh, that they were aware of of, 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 of stuff. And so we're, we're also hopeful to get an update uh, from law enforcement on that front as well. All right. Appreciate it, Alex. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Well, the long-awaited release of court documents related to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his longtime business partner and girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, is finally over. After the fifth batch of 41 court filings were unsealed, unraveling a long list of names of well-known people with some connection to the disgraced financier. Those names include late pop icon Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, Naomi Campbell. The documents also reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Bill Clinton. Our senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has been digging through all those documents and all the names as well. Uh, we also are joined by our legal contributor and trial attorney Brian Buckmeyer. So Aaron, what are your biggest takeaways from what you have learned from all these documents so far? Well, those names that you mentioned, uh, Kira, certainly bold-faced, and there are many more where that came from uh, as these documents get unsealed and these names are, are now unredacted. We learn about all of these people that may have had associations with, with Jeffrey Epstein, but the documents do not give specifics. Some of these people were mentioned as potential witnesses, people who might have known Epstein and might be able to offer something as part of a civil lawsuit from where these documents come. Others uh, were just mentioned in deposition transactions. Scripts, uh, an Epstein victim asked, hey, did you ever meet this person in Jeffrey Epstein's company? What about that person? Did you ever massage Donald Trump? No. Uh, did you meet David Copperfield? Yes. Uh, it, so the, the, the names are mentioned, but none of them are accused of any wrongdoing. A and, and it just reinforces, I think, Kira, the idea that this strange financier with a you know mysterious origin story about how he made his money was able to keep uh, some some rather influential company. So it's been five years, Brian, uh, since the defamation case was brought by Virginia Jufre, who settled outside of court. Why the release of these names now? Well, Kira, there seems to be a process by which these cases operate in the sense that some of the information was kept for privacy rights, and as time goes on and the judge gave the opportunity for everyone whose name was mentioned in these documents to come forward and say, hey, if you have a legal basis by which your privacy rights may be infringed, then I would stop the release of your name. And we saw that at least with two Jane Doe's, but as Aaron points out, a lot of these names are just, did you speak with this person? Did you go here? And there's no real privacy right there. So as this case was resolved some years ago and kind of goes throughout the process in the years, there becomes less and less of a reason to hold their names and they're just slowly getting released out. So, Brian, what are the possible consequences, you know, for these people named within the documents? At this point, I think it's more questions than any kind of legal, whether it be criminal or, or civil repercussions. It's just maybe like, why were you there? Why did you travel here? Uh, a lot of these documents, don't forget, come from a civil case where attorneys are trying to investigate any probable cause or potential liability for other participants who might have known Jeffrey Epstein. So simply knowing him is not cause for a criminal case or for civil liability. And so I don't think we're going to see any real actions. This information is just the public learning. If there's any kind of criminal impropriety, I would have thought that law enforcement and the federal government would have gotten there much, much long time ago, and they would have done an investigation well before we learned about these names now. So I'm not really anticipating any big movement. So, Aaron, when we look at the names like Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, Naomi Campbell, are any of these individuals or anyone from Michael Jackson's estate or family members responding to the fact that these names are out there? 
Uh, not that we've seen so far, and, and, and frankly, Kira, that may be because there's nothing necessarily to respond to, you know, other than at one point or other, some other person linked to Jeffrey Epstein was asked whether Epstein ever knew this person, um, probably because Virginia Giuffre had uh, made an allegation at one point or other that Glenn Maxwell, uh, who she was suing for defamation at the time, uh, said was a, was a lie. So we don't know that there's anything for these people to really respond to. And, and, and really, Kira, we'll see more documents come out uh, today and, and, and in subsequent days that will probably contain additional names. There are more than 150 people who are identified in court records right now as Jane and John Doe's uh, numbers, you know, one through whatever. And, and their, their names are, are likely to be exposed too. But many of these people, Kira, had already been publicly associated with Epstein. And uh, most, if not all of them, have never been accused of wrongdoing. Got it. Aaron, Brian, thanks guys so much. Appreciate it. Well, a powerful winter storm is sweeping across the country, threatening millions of people right now with rain, snow, and ice. The storm already dumping more than a foot of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Ten states now under snow and wind alerts from California all the way to Kansas. That storm is now headed east, too, targeting the northeast. is expected to be the first substantial snow event in that part of the country in two years. Our meteorologist, Melissa Griffin, is tracking the storm for us. All right, so time it all out, Melissa. Hey, Kara, we got to start with where the storm is right now, and that's over in the southern Rockies, making its way into the southern plains. That's why we have these winter weather advisories stretching now into parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. That's where about two to five inches of snow can fall throughout the day today and into tomorrow. Now, by tomorrow evening, it makes its way out of the plains into the deep south. The Gulf Coast, I'm concerned with flooding. Very heavy rain from Memphis back through Jackson, Mississippi into New Orleans. Snow on the backside of this, but nothing too severe in the way of snow for parts of the Ohio Valley. Maybe about one to two inches there from Cincinnati up through Chicago, but then it's that heavy rain in the southeast. That's where they could see flooding from Jacksonville up into the Carolinas, a mix of rain, snow, and sleet and ice starting in the mid-Atlantic there, and then it reaches the northeast. This is Saturday at 6 p.m. Sleet turning to heavy rain for places like D.C. up through Philly, and then it's going to start as a wet snow for New York before transitioning to rain as well. Much of the interior northeast is going to stay snow. That's why we're going to see the higher amounts there instead of the coast. Boston could see a couple of inches as well. Here Here's your snow total forecast. As you can see here in the pink, that's where we expect 6 to 12 inches of snow, even possibly over a foot in that dark purple there in the higher elevations. Across the coast, though, it's mainly going to be just rain, maybe up to 2 inches in some parts of the coastline, but really not a big snow event for the major cities. We we'll, might just have to wait a little bit longer for that one, Kara. All right. Melissa Griffin, thank you so much. Well, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is traveling to the Middle East amid growing fears of a wider conflict now in that region. The trip comes as the Islamic State now claims responsibility for those deadly bombings in Iran yesterday. The attack killed at least 84 people at a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general. Our chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz has the latest for us. <laughs> U.S. officials saying it was the terror group ISIS that was likely behind the deadliest attack Iran has seen in more than 40 years. <laughs> Two powerful bombs detonated on a crowded Iranian street during a commemoration ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general, Qasem Soleimani, killed by a U.S. drone strike four years ago. Crowds desperately fleeing after the first bomb blast, the second exploding minutes later. Iranian officials say the bombs were placed in backpacks, detonated remotely. Soleimani, considered the mastermind behind an Iranian-backed network of militia groups, including Hamas and Hezbollah, is considered a hero in Iran, where tens of thousands gathered for his funeral procession in Iran in 2020. This procession so packed you can barely move, but the emotion is everywhere. People have a very strong message for America. They chanted death to America, a chant now echoed after this most recent attack on civilians. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi accusing Israel and America of the attacks, warning Israel will pay the price. But U.S. officials say there is no evidence they were involved. Can you rule out that Israel had anything to do with this? We have no indication at this time at all that Israel was involved in any way whatsoever. The attack coming a day after officials say an Israeli drone targeted and killed a top high.
Hamas official Salah al aruri in Lebanon, Hezbollah's top leader, calling the strike a serious and heinous crime that will not go without punishment. The U.S. saying it was not told in advance of the strike. And there are reports this morning that an Iranian-backed militia commander in Iraq was also killed by an airstrike today. Kira? All right, Martha Raditz, thanks so much. Well, pilots of the passenger jet, jet that collided with a Coast Guard plane in Japan are expected to speak to investigators today. This comes as the investigation shows warning lights on the runway were not working at the time of the crash. Our foreign correspondent, James Longman, has the latest. It's now emerged that warning lights on the runway at Haneda Airport that tell pilots whether or not it's safe to land were not working the night that Japan Airlines flight crashed into a Coast Guard aircraft. There was an alert issued back on December 27th telling all pilots that those lights would be out for the foreseeable future. It's not clear whether or not it had anything to do with the crash, but clearly that'll be part of the uh, investigation. Meantime, transcripts of the communication between air traffic control and the pilots uh, has now been released. It shows that they did not at any time Time, tell the pilots uh, to abort their landing also seems to suggest that uh, air traffic control was not aware of the Coast Guard's plane making its way onto the runway that they did not ask for clearance to do that uh, but the uh, pilots of the plane say they didn't see anything as they were coming into land they have spoken today to air crash investigators meantime the fallout from that horrific earthquake uh, is also ongoing the search for survivors continues 30,000 people are still living in shelters there are so many people who are still without fuel, without power, without internet connections. Entire communities are still cut off because of landslides, uh, smashing roads and blocking access. So uh, a lot of people are still completely cut off. Japan is hoping uh, that more survivors will be found very soon. All right, James Longman, thank you so much, James. Well, coming up, a Nevada judge clearly caught off guard as she's attacked on the bench by a convicted felon. What happened next when we return? wherever news breaks. It's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. The magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Glad you're streaming with us. Well, it happened so fast, it took even the court security by surprise. A convicted felon vaulting the bench and attacking the judge in a Nevada courtroom. That judge physically attacked by the defendant, and then it sparked a bloody brawl. Clark County District Judge Mary Kay Holt, as you'll see, was sentencing that man to prison for a felony battery case. But before she could even strike the gavel, as you see, he just soared across the defense table and landed on her. Our Morgan Norwood is on the story for us. So, Morgan, just tell us more about this defendant and the verbal exchange that led to the attack. 
you know, Kira, it is just incredible and chaotic video there. And, you know, the irony of it all, which is what I want to lean into, is that just moments before this attack, uh, you know, the defendant in this case, Diober Redden, had pleaded guilty to, to felony battery and was really pleading with the judge there for, you know, freedom, freedom wanting leniency. Um, you know, she was saying, like, hey, essentially, you need to be in jail. She was going over his rap sheet. He has a violent criminal history. And it was at that moment where he leaps over the bench. It almost seems like he flew there. You see it there. Um, you know, seconds later, you see, you know, court marshals also jumping in as well. But, you know, it seemed like it happened so fast. But in the moment, I, I guess to a lot of folks who were there, it, it seemed like slow motion there. Um, so as for what happens next, we do know that, you know, several people are uh, were injured in that a court martial as well. You saw the judge. She was got up and, hold, and held her head. Um, you know, she is expected to be okay. So my guess is um, he's not going to see uh, freedom anytime soon. <laughs> so what happens to him now? Yeah, he almost certainly uh, sealed his fate there with jumping over, you know, the bench there. It, it, he really proved the judge's point, right, in terms of his violent criminal history. He does face new felony charges uh, related to that particular attack, but he also has to serve the sentence that she handed down, um, you know, for the felony battery case that he was originally in court for, Kira. So I'm curious, are they going to change their security uh, procedures now? Yeah, you know, this almost certainly, you know, uh, we're, we're leaning into to the whole issue of judge safety. It's, it's no secret that we've seen over the past, you know, several years that, you know, judges have been targeted, right? You know, we saw a situation last year in which a judge was killed. I think what makes this situation a little bit different, Kira, is that this was supposed to be a controlled environment, right? You had, you know, uh, several police officers, I'd imagine bailiffs there, a um, controlled environment. This should have never happened. So you see uh, what we're hearing from the court right now is that they commend the heroic acts of, you know, the judge's staff, law enforcement, and all others who subdued the defendant. But they also say that they're reviewing all of our pro protocols. So again, this was a controlled environment and something like this should have never happened. So I imagine they're going to be going over, um, you know, everything to see how they can prevent this from happening in the future. Kira? Yeah, they definitely lost control, that's for sure. All right, Morgan Norwood, thank you. Well, the court clerk in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is facing even more allegations now of misconduct from Murdoch's lawyers. The defense now claims that Becky Hill forwarded two emails to prosecutors during Murdoch's double murder trial. The lawyers are now using these claims in their attempt to get him a new trial. Our Eva Pilgrim has more. New evidence in the push for a new trial for disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's legal team submitting to the court two emails court clerk Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during the double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill read the verdict when Murdoch was found guilty of murdering his wife and son. Murdoch's team now accusing her of tampering with the jury. There's going to be an evidentiary hearing about what Becky Hill did and did not do. And obviously, if the prosecutors received emails uh, from Becky Hill, they are witnesses. They are witnesses to her conduct. The defense arguing Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. That book, now pulled, discontinued after Hill's co-author recently discovered she'd plagiarized one section. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I was sad. Hill has since admitted she plagiarized but denied allegations of jury tampering in a sworn affidavit. She was seen discussing the case in the Netflix docuseries Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that woman's intuition. The attorney general's office overnight telling ABC News, we're not commenting outside of the court filings and comments inside the courtroom. All right, thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that. Well, coming up, conservation by cup. Starbucks launching BYOC. Why the coffee chain wants you to bring your own jug for Java next. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. 
they literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, The Impact by Nightline Special, Friday night on ABC. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Reporting from the border of Texas and Mexico, I'm Mireya Villargal. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Some other top headlines we're tracking for you this hour here on ABC News Live. Police in San Antonio arresting a father and son in connection with the death of a pregnant 18-year-old Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra. Soto and Guerra were found dead in a car in an apartment complex after she was scheduled to be induced and didn't show up. Police say it appeared to be a narcotics deal gone wrong. Former Olympic and Paralympic runner Oscar Pistorius set to be released from a South African prison tomorrow. The Olympian was jailed after being convicted of killing his then-girlfriend Riva Steenkamp. Pistorius shot the South African model through a bathroom door in the middle of the night saying he thought she was an intruder. 37-year-old Pistorius will be on parole until 2029 and spend that remaining time living at his uncle's home near Pretoria, South Africa. Well, a Connecticut woman has become the first non-resident of Vermont to use the state's medical aid in dying law, passing away this morning. 76-year-old Linda Vlastein suffered from ovarian and fallopian tube cancer, conditions that have a 31% survival rate. She and a doctor actually sued the state of Vermont and got a waiver to access the medical aid in dying. She told the AP that she watched her own mother die of cancer and didn't want her kids to see her sick. Well, Starbucks is now telling customers to BYOC. The coffee chain is allowing customers to use their own reusable cups at drive throughs and with mobile orders. It's part of the company's effort to cut waste in half by 2030. Our Gio Benitez explains how it works. That morning cup of joe might start looking a lot different this year. For the first time, Starbucks is now allowing customers to use their own personal cups in drive throughs and when ordering on the app. The company saying its goal is to reduce waste by 50% by 2030. Okay, so I brought my clean cups. So I'm going to go ahead and use the app to order my coffee right now. I'm just going to get something pretty simple. We've got the featured blonde roast right here. You want to customize it. And then when you go all the way to the bottom, it'll show you personal cup. You hit that, done customizing, add to order. Now I grab my cup and I bring it over here to the mobile pickup. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. We got it. And if you're at a drive through you order your drink as usual and just let the barista know that you brought your own cup. At the pickup window, they'll use that same contactless container to ensure your personal cup stays clean. Starbucks says it doesn't even matter what kind of drink you're ordering. I'm Good. Just take that, and All I have right. a special latte coming right up. Thank you. The only requirement, your cup just needs to be clean. It's so strange to see the Starbucks drizzle and all of that in my own cup from home. All right, drink up. <laughs> Our thanks to Gio for that. You can also, by the way, get a 10% discount for each personal cup order. Just make sure to tap on that personal cup option on the app. That was like a free commercial, wasn't it? Thanks for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips from Breaking News to all the stories that matter to you. You can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and of course on abcnews.com. News never stops. We'll be right back. Tonight
night with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. I just walked in, and she's laying on the bathroom floor, and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. ABC, Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I'm Matt Gutman reporting in Gaza City right next to Al-Shifa Hospital. Wherever the news is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Right now on ABC News Live, breaking news, gunfire erupts at a high school in Iowa. The shooter now confirmed dead. The new details we're learning about the investigation this hour. Digging through the documents, new court papers unsealed in connection with sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, the prominent figures who were named and why they're being released now. On the move, a powerful storm sweeping across the country, the biggest threats and where the storm is headed next. Plus, return of the mass, the new mandates back in effect at hospitals in the nation's largest cities. Hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. But we do begin with that deadly shooting at a high school in Iowa. A gunman opening fire on campus at the start of the school day. Police now confirming the shooter is dead. Multiple victims were injured, though. Their condition unknown. Students and faculty panicked and were afraid. You can even see them carrying away in stretchers. One student actually texting her mom as the terrifying ordeal was unfolding. That mom saying it was one of the worst moments of her entire life. Our Alex Prochet following the breaking news details is in Perry, Iowa for, for us. So uh, we should hear more from police soon, right? That's right. We're expecting a press conference this afternoon, Kira, where we hope to get more details potentially about uh, the suspected shooter and also maybe some of these victims. Uh, but what we can tell you is that we do know uh, that there was an alarm, uh, an active shooter alarm that went off around 737 this morning. Now, mind you, this was before class was supposed to start. And Kira, just for reference, this was the first day back for these students uh, post winter break. Uh, but uh, the police arriving on scene about seven minutes later and immediately encountering gunshot victims uh, inside the high school here. This high school at Perry uh, holds, uh, it has about a population of 570. It's a tight knit group, uh, but know that uh, there were numerous uh, gunshot victims, according to police here. Uh, the, also, the law enforcement response has been massive. We've seen uh, state and localities uh, on scene, as well as the ATF and the FBI. Uh, the uh, Attorney General has been brief, as has uh, Governor Kim Reynolds here, uh, as we are anticipating that you know she's going to be at this presser later on today. But I, we've gotten a chance to talk to some of the community here, uh, teachers uh, at the middle school, and also uh, at least one parent who had two children in this high school. She says well, one of her one of her kids was actually hit. He was shot uh, in the back and and also grazed uh, in the elbow. Take a listen to what she said when she heard the news that her kids were actually involved. One of the worst moments in my entire life, but the best phone call I got was saying that they were okay. Thank I'm God. glad that they're okay. 
overwhelming. Like, the pain in your heart is just overwhelming. Well, and, and Kira, I mean, you get this, but I mean, like, for, for a mom to, to get that text that, uh, you know, your, your kids are, are, in, are involved, you know, the, the lump that's, that's got to be uh, in, in, in her throat, uh, hearing that news, but certainly some relief there. Uh, but also an understanding that, you know, there are some families here that aren't as lucky, at least uh, early reports saying that at least one confirmed fatality today. Uh, and that was before we got the news about the shooter. Uh, so, I mean, this is a community that definitely is, is, is reeling today. And so at the press conference, is it possible we could learn if the shooter indeed was a student? And also, do we know anything more about the victims that were hurt? Well, Kira, so some early indications point that he may, that, that that shooter may have been a student here. I can tell you that um, we know that going forward, this investigation is going to center around social media posts. That's something that uh, our, our, our sources uh, back in New York have been telling us. And also uh, we've been hearing on the ground here that social media uh, is something that, uh, that, that that may have played a role uh, and, and it will be an integral into that investigation, possibly in, in determining determining a motive, but as for now, um, we do not know more about those victims, but hopefully, hopefully when that presser happens, we'll, we'll, we'll get some more details. All right, we'll talk soon. Alex Brechet, thanks so much. Well, the long-awaited release of court documents now related to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his longtime business partner and girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, is finally over. After 41 court filings were unsealed, it unraveled a long list of names of well-known people connected to the disgraced financier. Those names spotted among the documents include late pipe pop icon Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, and Naomi Campbell. Documents also reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Bill Clinton. Our senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kontursky joins me now along with our legal contributor Shauna Lloyd. So Aaron, these are some pretty big names clearly listed in those docs, but that doesn't necessarily infer guilt. Oh, not at all, Kira. It doesn't infer any accusation of, of even wrongdoing, let alone guilt. Uh, these are names that uh, may have been associated with Epstein through uh, casual acquaintances, friendships. Uh, alleged victims may have mentioned seeing them in the company of Epstein or meeting them while in the company of Epstein. And since these documents are part of a defamation lawsuit long settled, uh, it, it some of these names also surfaced on, on potential witness lists that lawyers wanted to talk to to see if they knew anything or saw anything about the alleged sex trafficking that, that Epstein was accused of. So just being named in the documents in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. Uh, the context matters. Uh, and, and it's important to say that a lot of the names have been associated with Epstein for, for a long time, and it, and it sort of adds to the, the curiosity about how somebody with a you know, who didn't graduate from high school, who had a $6 million fortune with a kind of a shady origin, managed to keep contact and, and, and friendship with all of these famous people. Well, we know how he rolled in all the exact accusations that have been made against him um, and how he kind of developed that Rolodex. It's interesting, though, that so far those names that we've mentioned uh, that were in the documents, they haven't put out any statements or responded, right? Yeah, and, and, and maybe because, Kira, there's nothing to respond to. As I say, they're not accused of anything. Uh, and, and just being, you know, surfacing, having a name surface in a court document in and of itself doesn't necessarily require any kind of a response. We did seek comment from Prince Andrew, there are some new details about a groping allegation. Uh, the, he did not respond. We uh, heard from attorneys for Glenn Maxwell, who's of course named in the lawsuit that, that was settled by Virginia Giuffre, and she's still trying to fight her conviction on charges of aiding Epstein's sex trafficking. She maintains her innocence there. But we did hear from Virginia Giuffre's lawyer herself, who said that this is all part of a uh, an effort to try and end sex trafficking, that there was a big network of people around Jeffrey Epstein that uh, Jufre says enabled him. That's largely been exposed now. And hopefully, she says, the, 
uh, the, the documents will help satisfy some of the public curiosity about how Epstein was able to get away with this for so long. And Chana, there's nothing that leads law enforcement to believe that any wrongdoing was done by those folks named in the documents, right? So why even release them right now? Well, we have to remember that most of our court proceedings and filings are typically public information. These were sealed, and so now that the case has been resolved, the court has probably received some Freedom of Information Act um, request, has likely reviewed it, determined that there's no longer a need to protect this information, and has now released it to the public. So, Aaron, there's still, what, more than 200 documents uh, set to be released? I mean, what can we get, expect from those? I think we're going to see them in the over the course of several days. They may not all come out at once. There may be more bold-face names that, that are included for one reason or another. Uh, and I think uh, some of the things we're also going to be looking for are these uh, depositions that were taken as part of this lawsuit. We're seeing a couple of them so far in full. Previously, they'd been redacted, and they do, you know, add a little bit more to the to the story about Jeffrey Epstein and his lurid world. All right, Aaron, Shauna, thanks so much. Stand by for more documents. Well, a powerful winter storm sweeping across the country now, threatening millions of people with rain, snow, and ice. That storm already dumping more than a foot of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Ten states under snow and wind alerts now, from California all the way to Kansas. It's headed east, too, targeting the northeast. It's expected to be the first substantial snow event in that part of the country in two years. Meteorologist Melissa Griffin tracking it for us. So time it all out for us, Melissa. And Kira, we're going to start with the storm because it is in the southern plains right now, and that's where we have winter weather alerts across parts of Kansas, Nebraska, all the way down to Texas. That's where they could see a couple of inches of snow over the next 24 hours or so before that quickly moves through. This is a quick moving storm, so even the heavy rain across parts of the Gulf Coast, it could be quite heavy at times, but because it moves so quickly, we're not really anticipating too much flooding. There could be some embedded thunderstorms in there as well. By Saturday morning, that's when it's really reaching the East Coast, so that heavy rain Rain stretching across the southeast, Jacksonville, Florida, up to the Carolinas, and then that mixing beginning. You have sleet, ice, potentially some snow mixed in. On top of these roadways, you're going to see very slick roads across parts of the mid-Atlantic. This is Saturday morning, but it's Saturday evening that we're watching it reach parts of the northeast. You can see there the interior parts of the northeast, all snow. That's where we could see potentially 6 to 12 inches of snow. But it's the coast. D.C. to Philadelphia, maybe starting a little bit of snow, transitioning quickly to rain, as well as New York. There you see 6 o'clock, it is still snow moves to rain and it moves very quickly out. So I'm thinking those coastal cities will only see about a trace to up to an inch or two of snow. Boston could see one to two inches and interior Northeast and New England could see those blockbuster totals from six to 12 plus inches. It's not just the snow, Kira, but it's also the rain. We have one storm bringing heavy rain all the way to the Southeast. We have a second cross country storm right after this one. It's going to bring heavy rain up the East Coast. So flooding a big factor with this one as well. Very active storm pattern right through next week, Kira. All right, Melissa, thank you. Now, the race for the White House, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley campaigning in Iowa today in a last-ditch effort to sway those voters in their way before the Iowa caucuses. We're talking two weeks now, and former President Donald Trump still holds a large lead over all his Republican rivals. Our deputy political director, Avery Harper, joins me now. So Nikki Haley is facing uh, some backlash for downplaying the results of Iowa and saying New Hampshire voters were correct. You know, the caucuses, it seems like she's already moved on from Iowa. Right. I, I think it's more of the fact that she understands that this is an important contest, and the Haley team definitely wants to finish strong there. Uh, but I think her comments uh, were more of an indication of how she thinks she is going to fare in Iowa. Uh, look, she knows that uh, Ron DeSantis has collected important endorsements in the state. He's running slightly ahead of her when you look at polling uh, in that state of Iowa. Uh, while she has uh, gotten a lot of important endorsements in New Hampshire, and she's running second to only Trump. Trump uh, in New Hampshire. So I think that's kind of where those comments came from. All right. Well, at a campaign event in Iowa, a voter actually criticized Ron DeSantis directly for being too soft on Trump. Let's take a listen. We've got it on tape. Why haven't you gone directly after him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really. Hard. What do you mean by going directly after? I mean, you're, you're, uh, 
in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on it. I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, and yeah, kind yeah. of do that. I'm That's not just not how I roll. So what do you think is not how he rolls, going to roll with regard to uh, keeping votes or gaining votes here? Well, I think the strategy has been largely ineffective. While uh, DeSantis has succeeded in, in not alienating Trump supporters uh, from him by uh, being reluctant to talking about him, I don't think that it's uh, gotten a lot of Trump supporters to come his way either. Uh, the fact is, when you look at this field, uh, most of the, fo the field, uh, with the exception of uh, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, uh, have all been reluctant to uh, speak about and directly attack former President Trump. Uh, and I think that's just reflective of the fact that it is uh, generally not popular in this current Republican Party to be anti-Trump. All right, and for the first time, Trump's campaign has actually directly hit Nikki, Nikki Haley with this television ad that criticizes her views. What do you make of this move? Right. I think it could be a little bit of uh, the Trump campaign feeling a little bit threatened uh, when you look at how Nikki Haley is performing. Uh, this ad is running specifically in New Hampshire. And like I mentioned before, uh, Nikki Haley is gaining ground on Trump when you look at polling in that state. Uh, she's only about uh, 15 points behind him. Uh, and there's an important dynamic at play in the state of New Hampshire. It's an open primary. Uh, that means independents can participate in that contest. And so it is very possible possible that that is the way that the Nikki Haley campaign is looking to run up the score. All right, Avery Harper, thank you. Thank Coming you. up, the new warning about popular weight loss drugs, what some people say happens when they stop taking them. Stick around. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough. I know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Glad you're streaming with us. Well, people around the country have been raving about Ozempic and Wagovi for weight loss, but what happens when you stop taking those drugs? Yeah, you know where this is going. Our Eva Pilgrim has the details pound per pound. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. Slim down regret. Some who've used one of the hottest trends in weight loss, those new prescription medications, reporting that like with other weight loss interventions, the weight came back when they stopped taking the drugs. Within a month, I could feel how different my appetite was, how 
lethargic I was becoming again, all of those things. Artemis Bayendor was having difficulty shedding the tough to lose baby weight. And after talking to her doctor, started taking Wigovi in August 2021, losing 15 pounds over six months. But once her manufacturer's coupon ran out, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover it. The pharmacy called me and said, you've been paying the coupon price for six months for $25. And now the price has gone up to like, it's $1,300. That's when the weight came back and then some. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi. And since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. The active ingredient in Wagovi is semaglutide, a drug first approved for treating type 2 diabetes. In June 2021, the FDA approved its use for chronic weight management in adults who are overweight or obese. A 2022 study finding once patients go off the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight lost. Novo Nordisk, the makers of Ozempic and Wegovi, saying in a statement, not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding, Obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes with exercise and food. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. And our thanks to Eva for that. Now, the FDA is announcing that it's looking into some new possible Ozempic side effects also, including hair loss and suicidal thoughts. Well, they're back. <laughs> Hospitals in multiple states now requiring people to wear masks. Officials say that it's an attempt to curb an increase of respiratory illnesses, including COVID, the flu, and RSV. The CDC is reporting tens of thousands of people have been admitted to hospitals once again for respiratory illnesses each week this season. Our favorite doctor, Alok Patel, joining us now. Oh, boy. All right, so are you seeing more masks around your hospital? What, what's going on for you personally? And do you think it's a good idea right now? Well, Kira, foremost, Happy New Year to you. I'm honored by having the title of your favorite doctor. I don't take that light. So I and my colleagues who work in hospitals throughout the country are absolutely seeing an increase in respiratory illness, including hospitalizations from COVID. In fact, over the past week, we've seen increases, especially on the East Coast, and some states reporting a 30% increase, some a 60% increase. We're definitely seeing more masks. And I want to remind everyone out there that in a healthcare setting, when you already have an overstaffed hospital, staff shortages, you have patients who are already high risk, and you have several patients who might be in an emergency department or a waiting room who have symptoms, who haven't yet tested positive for anything, You've got a setup where you want to protect yourself. So we're seeing plenty of masks, and we wear masks anyway around any patients who may have respiratory illness because we don't want to spread it. anything to any other patients. We want to keep ourselves safe as well. Do we know why we're seeing an increase now again? You know, it's likely due to what happens in a typical cold and flu season care with respect to the colder temperatures, natural viral patterns, and the fact that a lot of people are indoors, especially during holidays, and we see those spikes afterwards. And so it's not that surprising that we're seeing more than 30 states report a high or very high level of respiratory illnesses. But it is important to remind people that we're in a better place with COVID than we were last year. It's still yet to see what's going to happen with influenza and what the trends look like for this flu season. All right. Great to see you, Doc. Wish you were here in D.C. You're My too advice. far away. <laughs> Coming up, disgraced lawyer Alec Murdoch pushing for a new trial. We'll tell you why next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news.
Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. GMA Tuesday morning. You're going to love this. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series, sponsored by Planet Fitness. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I'm Lindsay Davis reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Some top headlines we're tracking for you this hour on ABC News Live. Disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alex Murdoch pushing for a new trial as lawyers say they have new evidence of wrongdoing by the court clerk. Lawyers submitted two emails they say Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during that double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Murdoch's team also accuses her of tampering with the jury, the defense arguing that Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to, quote, secure herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen if the event of a mistrial. A Nevada man facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing. Check out that defendant coming in hot with no warning and vaulting the bench, landing right on the judge. It triggered a brawl and court staff tried to restrain him. They did. The judge fell against the wall, though, but said she wasn't seriously hurt. Three-time felon now faces new charges, no surprise, and more prison time. Well, the founder of Lululemon slamming the company that he no longer controls for its efforts to make the brand more diverse and inclusive. In an interview with Forbes, billionaire Chip Wilson says that the well-known athletic brand that he created more than 25 years ago should, quote, be clear that you don't want certain customers coming in. Well, Wilson stepped down from leading that company nearly a decade ago. Probably can see why. All right, forget tossing your tree to the curb. Just make it cud. It's what's becoming a national tradition now. Farmers encouraging all of you to just send them their trees so they can feed them to their goats. Let's digest that with Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. Well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas Tree Cleanup Crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it, but sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after, and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? 
I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> And thanks to Danny for that. What a great story. And thanks for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We've got a lot more ahead. Don't go far. ABC Friday Night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, The Impact by Nightline Special, Friday night on ABC. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Right now on ABC News Live, breaking news, gunfire erupts at a high school in Iowa. The shooter now confirmed dead. The new details we're learning about the investigation this hour. Digging through the documents, new court papers unsealed in connection with sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, the prominent figures who were named and why they're being released now. On the move, a powerful storm sweeping across the country, the biggest threats and where the storm is headed next. Plus, return of the mass, the new mandates, back in effect at hospitals in the nation's largest cities. Hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. But we do begin with that deadly shooting at a high school in Iowa, a gunman opening fire on campus at the start of the school day. Police now confirming the shooter is dead. Multiple victims were injured, though, their condition unknown. Students and faculty panicked and were afraid. You can even see them carrying away in stretchers. One student actually texting her mom as the terrifying ordeal was unfolding. That mom saying it was one of the worst moments of her entire life. Our Alex Prochet following the breaking news details in in Perry, Iowa for, for us. So uh, we should hear more from police soon, right? That's right. We're expecting a press conference this afternoon, Kira, where we hope to get more details potentially about uh, the suspected shooter and also maybe some of these victims. Uh, but what we can tell, tell you is that we do know uh, that there was an alarm, uh, an active shooter alarm that went off around 737 this morning. Now, mind you, this was before class was supposed to start. And Kira, just for reference, this was the first day back for these students uh, post winter break. Uh, but uh, police arriving on scene about seven minutes later and immediately encountering gunshot victims uh, inside the high school here. This high school at Perry uh, holds, uh, it has about a population of 570. It's a tight knit group, uh, but know that uh, there were numerous uh, gunshot victims, according to police here. Uh, the, also, the law enforcement response has been massive. We've seen uh, state and localities uh, on scene, as well as the ATF and the FBI. Uh, the uh, Attorney General has been briefed, as has uh, Governor Kim Reynolds here, uh, as we are anticipating that you know she's going to be at this presser later on today. But I, we've gotten a chance to talk to some of the community here, uh, teachers uh, at the middle school, and also uh, at least one parent who had two children in this high school. She says well, one of her one of her kids was actually hit. He was shot uh, in the back and and also grazed uh, in the elbow. Take a listen to what she said when she heard the news that her kid were actually involved. One of the worst moments in my entire life, but the best phone call I got was saying that they were okay. Thank I'm God. glad that they're okay. Overwhelming. The pain in your heart is just overwhelming. 
Well, and, and Kira, I mean, you get this, but I mean, like, for for a mom to to get that text that, uh, you know, your your kids are are, in, are involved, you know, the, the lump that's that's got to be uh, in 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 her throat, uh, hearing that news, but certainly some relief there, uh, but also. And understanding that you know there are some families here that aren't as lucky. At least uh, early reports saying that at least one confirmed fatality today, uh, and that was before we got the news about the shooter. Uh, so I mean, this is a community that definitely is, is is reeling today. And so at the press conference, is it possible we could learn if the shooter indeed was a student? And also, do we know anything more about the victims that were hurt? Well, Kira, so some early indications point that he may, that, that that shooter may have been a student here. I can tell you that um, we know that going forward, this investigation is going to center around social media posts. That's something that uh, our, our, our sources uh, back in New York have been telling us. And also uh, we've been hearing on the ground here that social media uh, is something that's, uh, that, that, that may have played a role uh, and, and it will be an integral into that investigation, possibly in determining determining a motive, but as for now, um, we do not know more about those victims, but hopefully, hopefully when that presser happens, we'll, we'll, we'll get some more details. All right, we'll talk soon. Alex Brashe, thanks so much. Well, the long-awaited release of court documents now related to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his longtime business partner and girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, is finally over. After 41 court filings were unsealed, it unraveled a long list of names of well-known people connected to the disgraced financier. Those names spotted among the documents include late pipe pop icon Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, and Naomi Campbell. Documents also reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Bill Clinton. Our senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kontursky joins me now along with our legal contributor Shauna Lloyd. So Aaron, these are some pretty big names clearly listed in those docs, but that doesn't necessarily infer guilt. Oh, not at all, Kira. It doesn't infer any accusation of, of even wrongdoing, let alone guilt. Uh, these are names that uh, may have been associated with Epstein through uh, casual acquaintances, friendships. Uh, alleged victims may have mentioned seeing them in the company of Epstein or meeting them while in the company of Epstein. And since these documents are part of a defamation lawsuit long settled, uh, it, it some of these names also surfaced on, on potential witness lists that lawyers wanted to talk to to see if they knew anything or saw anything about the alleged sex trafficking that, that Epstein was accused of. So just being named in the documents in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. Uh, the context matters. Uh, and, and it's important to say that a lot of the names have been associated with Epstein for, for a long time, and it, and it sort of adds to the, the curiosity about how somebody with a you know, who didn't graduate from high school, who had a $6 million fortune with a kind of a shady origin, managed to keep contact and, and, and friendship with all of these famous people. Well, we know how he rolled in all the exact accusations that have been made against him um, and how he kind of developed that Rolodex. It's interesting, though, that so far those names that we've mentioned uh, that were in the documents, they haven't put out any statements or responded, right? Yeah, and, and, and maybe because, Kira, there's nothing to respond to. As I say, they're not accused of anything. Uh, and, and just being, you know, surfacing, having a name surface in a court document in and of itself doesn't necessarily require any kind of a response. We did seek comment from Prince Andrew, there are some new details about a groping allegation. Uh, the, he did not respond. We uh, heard from attorneys for Glenn Maxwell, who's, of course, named in the lawsuit that, that was settled by Virginia Giuffre, and she's still trying to fight her conviction on charges of aiding Epstein's sex trafficking. She maintains her innocence there. But we did hear from Virginia Giuffre's lawyer herself, who said that this is all part of a... Uh, an effort to try and end sex trafficking, that there was a big network of people around Jeffrey Epstein that uh, Jufre says enabled him. That's largely been exposed now, and hopefully, she says, the, uh, the, the documents will help satisfy some of the public curiosity about how Epstein was able to get away with this for so long. 
And Shana, there's nothing that leads law enforcement to believe that any wrongdoing was done by those folks named in the documents, right? So why even release them right now? Well, we have to remember that most of our court proceedings and filings are typically public information. These were sealed, and so now that the case has been resolved, the court has probably received some Freedom of Information Act um, request, has likely reviewed it, determined that there's no longer a need to protect this information, and has now released it to the public. So, Erin, there's still, what, more than 200 documents uh, set to be released? I mean, what can we get, expect from those? I think we're going to see them in the over the course of several days. They may not all come out at once. There may be more bold-faced names that, that are included for one reason or another. Uh, and I think uh, some of the things we're also going to be looking for are these uh, depositions that were taken as part of this lawsuit. We're seeing a couple of them so far in full. Previously, they'd been redacted, and they do, you know, add a little bit more to the to the story about Jeffrey Epstein and his lurid world. All right, Aaron, Shauna, thanks so much. Stand by for more documents. Well, a powerful winter storm sweeping across the country now, threatening millions of people with rain, snow, and ice. That storm already dumping more than a foot of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Ten states under snow and wind alerts now, from California all the way to Kansas. It's headed east, too, targeting the northeast. It's expected to be the first substantial snow event in that part of the country in two years. Meteorologist Melissa Griffin tracking it for us. So time it all out for us, Melissa. And Kara, we're going to start with the storm because it is in the southern plains right now, and that's where we have winter weather alerts across parts of Kansas, Nebraska, all the way down to Texas. That's where they could see a couple of inches of snow over the next 24 hours or so before that quickly moves through. This is a quick moving storm, so even the heavy rain across parts of the Gulf Coast, it could be quite heavy at times, but because it moves so quickly, we're not really anticipating too much flooding. There could be some embedded thunderstorms in there as well. By Saturday morning, that's when it's really reaching the East Coast, so that heavy rain stretching across the southeast, Jacksonville, Florida, up to the Carolinas, and then that mixing beginning. You have sleet, ice, potentially some snow mixed in. On top of these roadways, you're going to see very slick roads across parts of the mid-Atlantic. This is Saturday morning, but it's Saturday evening that we're watching it reach parts of the northeast. You can see there the interior parts of the northeast, all snow. That's where we could see potentially 6 to 12 inches of snow, but it's the coast. D.C. to Philadelphia, maybe starting a little bit of snow, transitioning quickly to rain, as well as New York. There you see 6 o'clock, it is still snow moves to rain and it moves very quickly out. So I'm thinking those coastal cities will only see about a trace to up to an inch or two of snow. Boston could see one to two inches and interior Northeast and New England could see those blockbuster totals from six to 12 plus inches. It's not just the snow, Kira, but it's also the rain. We have one storm bringing heavy rain all the way to the Southeast. We have a second cross country storm right after this one. It's going to bring heavy rain up the East Coast. So flooding a big factor with this one as well. Very active storm pattern right through next week, Kira. All right, Melissa, thank you. Now, the race for the White House, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley campaigning in Iowa today in a last-ditch effort to sway those voters in their way before the Iowa caucuses. We're talking two weeks now, and former President Donald Trump still holds a large lead over all his Republican rivals. Our deputy political director, Avery Harper, joins me now. So Nikki Haley is facing uh, some backlash for downplaying the results of Iowa and saying New Hampshire voters were correct. You know, the caucuses, it seems like she's already moved on from Iowa. Right. I, I, I think it's more of uh, the fact that she understands that this is an important contest, and the Haley team definitely wants to finish strong there. Uh, but I think her comments uh, were more of an indication of how she thinks she is going to fare in Iowa. Uh, look, she knows that uh, Ron DeSantis has collected important endorsements in the state. He's running slightly ahead of her when you look at polling uh, in that state of Iowa. Uh, while she has uh, gotten a lot of important endorsements in New Hampshire, and she's running second to only Trump. Trump uh, in New Hampshire. So I think that's kind of where those comments came from. All right. Well, at a campaign event in Iowa, a voter actually criticized Ron DeSantis directly for being too soft on Trump. Let's take a listen. We've got it on tape. Why haven't you gone directly after him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on him. I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants 
is is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, and yeah, kind yeah. of do that. That's just not how I roll. So what do you think is not how he rolls, going to roll with regard to uh, keeping votes or gaining votes here? Well, I think the strategy has been largely ineffective. While uh, DeSantis has succeeded in, in not alienating Trump supporters uh, from him by uh, being reluctant to talking about him, I don't think that it's uh, gotten a lot of Trump supporters to come his way either. Uh, the fact is, when you look at this field, uh, most of the, fo the field, uh, with the exception of uh, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, uh, have all been reluctant to uh, speak about and directly attack former President Trump. Uh, and I think that's just reflective of the fact that it is uh, generally not popular in this current Republican Party to be anti-Trump. All right, and for the first time, Trump's campaign has actually directly hit Nikki, Nikki Haley with this television ad that criticizes her views. What do you make of this move? Right. I think it could be a little bit of uh, the Trump campaign feeling a little bit threatened uh, when you look at how Nikki Haley is performing. Uh, this ad is running specifically in New Hampshire. And like I mentioned before, uh, Nikki Haley is gaining ground on Trump when you look at polling in that state. Uh, she's only about uh, 15 points behind him. Uh, and there's an important dynamic at play in the state of New Hampshire. It's an open primary. Uh, that means independents can participate in that contest. And so it is very possible possible that that is the way that the Nikki Haley campaign is looking to run up the score. All right, Avery Harper, thank you. Thank Coming you. up, the new warning about popular weight loss drugs, what some people say happens when they stop taking them. Stick around. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America, tomorrow. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis, weeknights on ABC News Live. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Glad you're streaming with us. Well, people around the country have been raving about Ozempic and Wagovi for weight loss, but what happens when you stop taking those drugs? Yeah, you know where this is going. Our Eva Pilgrim has the details pound per pound. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. Slim down regret. 
some who've used one of the hottest trends in weight loss, those new prescription medications, reporting that like with other weight loss interventions, the weight came back when they stopped taking the drugs. Within a month, I could feel how different my appetite was, how lethargic I was becoming again, all of those things. Artemis Bayendor was having difficulty shedding the tough to lose baby weight and after talking to her doctor started taking Wigovi in August 2021, losing 15 pounds over six months. But once her manufacturer's coupon ran out, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover it. The pharmacy called me and said, you've been paying the coupon price for six months for $25 and now the price has gone up to like, it's $1,300. That's when the weight came back and then some. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi. And since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. The active ingredient in Wagovi is semaglutide, a drug first approved for treating type 2 diabetes. In June 2021, the FDA approved its use for chronic weight management in adults who are overweight or obese. A 2022 study finding once patients go off the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two thirds of the total weight lost. Novo Nordisk, the makers of Ozempic and Wegovi, saying in a statement, not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding, Obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes with exercise and food. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. And our thanks to Eva for that. Now, the FDA is announcing that it's looking into some new possible Ozempic side effects also, including hair loss and suicidal thoughts. Well, they're back. Hospitals in multiple states now requiring people to wear masks. Officials say that it's an attempt to curb an increase of respiratory illnesses, including COVID, the flu, and RSV. The CDC is reporting tens of thousands of people have been admitted to hospitals once again for respiratory illnesses each week this season. Our favorite doctor, Alok Patel, joining us now. Oh boy. All right. So are you seeing more masks around your hospital? What, what's going on for you personally? And do you think it's a good idea right now? Well, Kira, foremost, Happy New Year to you. I'm honored by having the title of your favorite doctor. I don't take that light. So I and my colleagues who work in hospitals throughout the country are absolutely seeing an increase in respiratory illness, including hospitalizations from COVID. In fact, over the past week we've seen increases especially on the east coast and some states reporting a 30 percent increase some a 60 percent increase we're definitely seeing more masks and i want to remind everyone out there that in a healthcare setting when you already have an overstaffed hospital staff shortages you have patients who are already high risk and you have several patients who might be in an emergency department or a waiting room who have symptoms who haven't yet tested positive for anything You've got a setup where you want to protect yourself. So we're seeing plenty of masks, and we wear masks anyway around any patients who may have respiratory illness because we don't want to spread it. anything to any other patients. We want to keep ourselves safe as well. Do we know why we're seeing an increase now again? You know, it's likely due to what happens in a typical cold and flu season care with respect to the colder temperatures, natural viral patterns, and the fact that a lot of people are indoors, especially during holidays, and we see those spikes afterwards. And so it's not that surprising that we're seeing more than 30 states report a high or very high level of respiratory illnesses. But it is important to remind people that we're in a better place with COVID than we were last year. It's still yet to see what's going to happen with influenza and what the trends look like for this flu season. All right. Great to see you, Doc. Wish you were here in D.C. You're My too advice. far away. <laughs> Coming up, disgraced lawyer Alec Murdoch pushing for a new trial. We'll tell you why next. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. 
Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought, my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. National forests are good places to get away. But sometimes bad things happen in good places. It's the stuff of nightmares. All I could see was their feet sticking up. My knees went weak. This is a human skull. We were definitely against the clock. How many more victims are out there? Wild Crime, Blood Mountain. Now streaming only on Hulu. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. And that's why at Good Morning America, we're right here. And we got you. We got you. We got you. Reporting from the FBI, I'm Pierre Thomas. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Some top headlines we're tracking for you this hour on ABC News Live. Disgraced South Carolina lawyer Alex Murdoch pushing for a new trial as lawyers say they have new evidence of wrongdoing by the court clerk. Lawyers submitted two emails they say Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during that double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Murdoch's team also accuses her of tampering with the jury, the defense arguing that Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to, quote, secure herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen if the event of a mistrial. A Nevada man facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing. Check out that defendant coming in hot with no warning and vaulting the bench, landing right on the judge. It triggered a brawl and court staff tried to restrain him. They did. The judge fell against the wall, though, but said she wasn't seriously hurt. Three-time felon now faces new charges, no surprise, and more prison time. Well, the founder of Lululemon slamming the company that he no longer controls for its efforts to make the brand more diverse and inclusive. In an interview with Forbes, billionaire Chip Wilson says that the well-known athletic brand that he created more than 25 years ago should, quote, be clear that you don't want certain customers coming in. Well, Wilson stepped down from leading that company nearly a decade ago. Probably can see why. All right, forget tossing your tree to the curb. Just make it cud. It's what's becoming a national tradition now. Farmers encouraging all of you to just send them their trees so they can feed them to their goats. Let's digest that with Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. Well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas tree cleanup crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it, but sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after, and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. 
poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did creme brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Paulina are going to be all set for next year, thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> and thanks to Danny for that. What a great story. And thanks for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We've got a lot more ahead. Don't go far. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America, tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Brownsville, Texas, I'm John Quinones. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Right now on ABC News Live, breaking news, a gunman opens fire at a high school in Iowa. That shooter now dead. The new details we're learning about the investigation. Inside an intrigue, new court documents connected to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein now unsealed what we're learning about the famous people in Epstein's orbit. Massive storms, a powerful weather system crisscrossing the country. The state's now under alert and where the storm is right now. And disorder in the court. A convicted criminal vaults the bench, attacking a judge during sentencing. We'll tell you what happened. Hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. We begin with that deadly shooting, though, at a high school in Iowa. A gunman opening fire on campus at the start of the school day. Police now confirming that that shooter is dead. Multiple victims were injured. Their conditions still unknown. Students and faculty panicked and afraid. Seen here, carried away in stretchers. One student even texting her mom as the terrifying ordeal unfolded. That mother saying it was one of the worst moments of her entire life. Our Alex Perche has been there following all the breaking details for us in Perry, Iowa. So, Alex, what more are police telling you about this investigation? Well, Kira, I mean, you can see they're setting up the podium for this afternoon press conference. Behind me, we're expecting Governor Kim Reynolds to be on hand for that. But right now, uh, uh, authorities are keeping their cards kind of close to the vest on this. We know that that suspected shooter is uh, dead uh, due to a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We also uh, have heard from multiple sources that the principal at Perry High School uh, was injured in this shooting. But uh, kind of giving you a little bit of a tick-tock of what happened today, 
uh, police got a active shooter alert around 737 this morning. They say they were on scene about seven minutes later uh, and upon entering the Perry High School here, which again, keep in mind, this was the uh, first day back from winter break, but officers immediately saw uh, wounded uh, folks inside that high school. We right now don't have a count as to just how many people were wounded. They do say they have a, an identity of the suspected gunman. Uh, they have not released that yet. We're hoping to get a little bit more information this afternoon, uh, but uh, still a lot of unknown uh, questions here. Do we know anything more about the victims? Uh, how intense the injuries were, were uh, the conditions, uh, even the principal, anything about them? So uh, officially, no. What I can tell you is that the medical response here was massive. Uh, helicopters uh, 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 airlifting at least uh, uh, some folks away. Uh, and on the drive over, we saw uh, uh, at least two ambulances uh, booking it back towards Des Moines, which is where I was coming from on, on my way here. Uh, so have an understanding that uh, some of these injuries were fairly severe, but in terms of, of who who was who was injured outside of the principal and and one other uh, one other mother that we talked to who said that her son was shot in the back and and also uh, grazed on his arm. He is OK. He was checked out by uh, 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 some medical teams over here uh, earlier this afternoon. But outside of that, uh, we, we, we don't have any updates. All right. Well, as soon as that press conference starts, we'll take it. See you then, Alex. Thank you so much. So the long-awaited release of court documents related to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his longtime business partner and girlfriend Elaine Maxwell is finally over. After 41 court filings were unsealed, it unraveled a long list of names of well-known people, some with a connection or to the disgraced financier. Those names actually included Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, Naomi Campbell. The documents also reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and also an effort to depose former President Bill Clinton. Our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, has been digging through all the documents um, and looking at all the names mentioned. Also, our legal contributor and trial attorney, Brian Buckmeyer, joins us once again to sort of decipher all of this. So, Aaron, we've been talking all day about the names of those listed in the documents, uh, but there's 16 individuals who actually challenged the court to have their names redacted, right? What more can you tell us about that? Some of them were minors when they were victimized by Jeffrey Epstein and allegedly by Ghislaine Maxwell. And the judge agreed that those names do not need to be released publicly because they've never gone public about the accusations and they've tried to protect their anonymity. Uh, there are others who are still petitioning the court, including one identified as Jane Doe number 107, who says the country that she lives in would make it dangerous for her if her name were to be publicly associated with somebody like Jeffrey Epstein. So uh, the judge is considering her objection uh, to, to being outed in these documents. But by and large, Kira, many of these names have been out there before, maybe not in such a public way, but they've been out there in court filings previously uh, and, and were subsequently redacted. Now that's all sort of coming out, the judge ha has said that th there's nothing lurid here. There is no... Uh, uh, accusation of wrongdoing by and large in these documents and so there was no reason she said to keep them sealed any longer. So Brian are you surprised that such a small number of people actually fought to have their names redacted? Uh, yes and no and, and the reason why I say yes is because I would have thought that these documents might have had more potential Jane Doe's and I understand why Jane Doe's are coming forward as Aaron outlined to say hey I don't want my name out there I, I don't want uh, to be associated with Jeffrey Epstein. I'm a victim here, and, and so don't bring up my name. But in terms of the no, when we look at the vast majority of the names here, like Aaron said, there's nothing really there. And so, so what if an attorney asked if, hey, did you see this person when you went to Jeffrey Epstein's island, and there's no criminal or civil liability from saying, yes, I saw that person. I don't see a legal reason to say no, and I don't see a reason why even in the court of public opinion, you would say, hey, I, I don't want people to know that I was asked about even though I didn't do anything wrong. There being no legal basis to keep their name out, I see no reason why they would fight it. 
And so, Aaron, there's still more documents to be released. What do you think we can expect from those? We expect another tranche as soon as this afternoon and uh, maybe more tonight or, or the next day. There are about 275 documents all told, so hundreds and hundreds of, of pages total. And we're not sure what additional names there might be, but again, there are no accusations that these people did anything wrong. They were perhaps just asked about in a deposition or, or uh, were mentioned as a potential witness, as someone that had some kind of a, an association with Epstein that might know something about his sex trafficking. Because in the end, uh, Kira, that's what the lawyers uh, were, were hoping to do, was to expose Epstein's vast global sex trafficking network uh, and, and have the public sort of question how he was able to get away with it for so long. And part of the reason that the lawyers believe he was able to get away with it is because he had this network of, of influential friends. Big banks were, uh, were funding it, and they've won a settlement from big banks. So the accountability has started, uh, and they believe that the unsealing of all these documents is, is, is only going to further the justice that they say the victims deserve. And I'm curious, Brian, for you, I mean, what questions do you still have surrounding these documents and also the names that have been mentioned? I mean, the major question I have is, who's next? I, I mean, last night we saw a number of these documents released, I think around 6, 6.30. And so I think for the most part, we're all kind of looking around the same time today to say, are we going to get a, a similar situation as we did yesterday? And, and in terms of the names, who's going to be named? What association did they have? Or was their name simply brought up because this was a, a, an investigatory kind of questioning of who was there and who knew what? Or is it going to be, a, was this person doing this or this person doing uh, that? But I think for the most part, we can assume that if there was any kind of criminal or civil impropriety, that law enforcement would have had the opportunity to subpoena those documents and we would have seen cases come forward. Uh, but I know some people are saying like, hey, like, what about Prince Andrew? Why aren't we looking more into that? And so I I'm kind of curious about those things. Aaron, Brian, thanks so much. Stay tuned for the next uh, stack of documents there. Well, a powerful winter storm sweeping across the country now, threatening millions of people with rain, snow, and ice. It's already dumping more than a foot of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains and California, 10 states now under snow and wind alerts from there to Kansas. It's also headed east, targeting the northeast specifically, and expected to be the first substantial snow event there in nearly two years. Meteorologist Melissa Griffin is tracking it for us. Uh, so what do we think? Where is it now? Where is it headed? Well, Kara, I've been waiting all day for these new weather models to update this afternoon. We finally got some new information on your snow total forecast for the Northeast. But first, let's start where the storm is now. It's in the Southern Rockies, making its way into the Southern Plains. We have winter weather advisories from Texas up to Nebraska for two to five inches of snow. That's through Friday. You could see the storm progressing over the Gulf Coast. That's where areas of heavy rain could develop. New Orleans, you're in there, up through Memphis. And then that continues to move across the Southeast to Florida, up through Atlanta. Atlanta. Very heavy rain as you wake up on Saturday morning. Some areas of snow as well in the Ohio River Valley. But then it's the mid-Atlantic starting to transition into that mix of sleet, ice, and snow. And here by Saturday at 6 p.m., that's when the storm reaches the northeast. Quickly from D.C. to Philly, a sleet to start, but then transitioning to very heavy rain. But all over the interior northeast is mostly snow. New York, you're going to start a snow as well. And then the question is, do you transition to rain quickly or not? That's going to cause either even more snow than what we originally anticipated. Boston, all snow as well as we head through Sunday morning. Now, this is the snow forecast. Everywhere in the dark blue, that's 6 to 12 inches. And you can see that's a pretty widespread area. From southeastern Boston all the way back through Springfield, Massachusetts, into upstate Hudson Valley, New York, back through Pennsylvania. And then along the coast, that's where we're still trying to see. Will New York get in that 3 to 6 range or just that trace to 3-inch range? Philly and D.C., I'm thinking you're going to be on the lower end of that accumulation. Kara will be watching it very closely over the next 24 hours. All right, Melissa, thank you so much. Now the race for the White House, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley campaigning in Iowa today in a last-ditch effort to try and sway those voters into their direction for the Iowa caucuses. Less than two weeks away now, and former President Donald Trump still holds, holds a pretty strong lead over all his Republican rivals. Let's bring in our political director, Rick Klein, for more now. So, Rick, both DeSantis and Haley are holding town halls in Iowa today. So what do you think? What do they need to say? What do they need to do in order to move the needle? Or do you think it's just too late? 
Well, the needle has been stuck for about a year now, so they need to move something pretty quickly. And of course, when the voting actually happens, particularly in a caucus, unexpected things can, can happen. So how you close is extraordinarily important. But they've been so frustrated for the better part of, of, of a year since their campaigns began, to, it, it, how they can break through, how they can make news, how they can make themselves into the intriguing choice. And so much of their attention has been focused, frankly, on each other, when, of course, Donald Trump is the, big, the biggest factor in the race and the person that is likely to, to blow the competition away in Iowa and maybe New Hampshire and beyond after that. So I think we're beyond a time of just thinking you can change a narrative. They've got to do something pretty dramatic and hope to be the last one standing. So Ron DeSantis is polling fourth now, 8% in New Hampshire. If he doesn't perform well in Iowa, well, what do you think? Is that it for him? Yeah, look, there's a lot of people asking that question around DeSantis, that if he comes in third or even a distant third in, in Iowa, uh, then then he may he may not even get through to New Hampshire a week plus later. Now, his team points out that they've got a more robust national operation than the other candidates, and that they're well positioned in New Hampshire. But given the way that he's been falling a bit, and Nikki Haley's been rising, and Chris Christie's even overtaken him in New Hampshire, his best shot almost certainly is Iowa. You contrast that with Haley, who looks at New Hampshire. And it's not just the states. There are different types of voters you're talking about. DeSantis, very key to to more conservative evangelical voters, uh, Nikki Haley trying to reach out more to independents who are a much larger share of the New Hampshire electorate. So that is reflected in the strategy right now. But I think the urgency in Iowa uh, belongs to Ron DeSantis. All right, Rick Klein, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Well, White House for Sale, that's the name of a new report put out by House Oversight Committee Democrats saying that former President Donald Trump's businesses received millions of dollars from foreign entities located in 20 different countries during his presidency. The 156 pages actually highlight payments by governments, including China, Saudi Arabia, and others during Trump's presidency. Senior reporter Catherine Falders has the details now on this report. So do these payments actually violate the Constitution's foreign uh, monuments clause? Yeah, Karen, and what this report is claiming is $7.8 million from these foreign governments. On its face, it would appear that it violates the emoluments clause, which essentially says that federal officials, including the president, can't accept gifts or money from foreign governments without the approval of Congress. But it's important to point out here that this wasn't fully tested during Trump's administration. Remember, he was sued for allegedly violating the emoluments clause when he was president. This didn't really uh, progress in the courts, and the Supreme Court ultimately uh, decided not to take up one of those cases. But it's certainly something that you will continue to hear from members of Congress, from these investigative committees, the House Oversight Committee, especially as we get closer to the election. So while we have you, the U.S. Supreme Court is expected to take up this Colorado State Supreme Court decision. We've been tracking this, of course. Uh, it should disqualify Trump from the 2024 ballot under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. When do you think we could actually see a decision on this? Yeah, it's a good question, and we're learning a bit of an incremental update, which is that the Supreme Court has just acknowledged receipt of Trump's appeal. It is docketed on the Supreme Court docket. And what we know, of course, is that the justices will meet and conference tomorrow on, on Friday for their first conference of the year, where they will essentially discuss uh, any votes and votes on petitions. But I think it's worth pointing out here, Kira, just how rare this is. The Supreme Court has never ruled on this provision in the 14th Amendment. So this could be consequential across the country, because it's not just Colorado. There are dozens of other states who are pursuing similar laws. So at the end of the day, when the court takes this up, obviously we still don't know. It's to be determined, but it could have a consequential effect down the road. Well, we'll follow it. Catherine Falders, thanks. And coming up, coming in hot like a flying squirrel. That's a convicted felon right there vaulting the bench and landing right on top of the judge. What happened next right after this? Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with 
with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines, from southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Glad you're streaming with us. Well, it happened so fast, court security was even caught off guard. A convicted felon didn't like what the judge was telling him, so he vaulted the bench, landing right on top of her. Our Aaron Katursky takes it from there. A judge attacked in a Nevada courtroom. Chaos erupting moments after what appeared to be a calm sentencing. Dioba Redden, a repeat offender, had pleaded guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm, but argued to Judge Mary Kay Hothis he did not deserve another trip to prison. I feel like I should be given a shot because I'm in a better place than I was. The judge reminded Redden of his lengthy criminal record. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. Still, he asked for leniency. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. But the judge denied his request for probation. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Addis Court. Oh, oh, hey. Moments later, Redden leapt over the defense table and the bench, landed on top of the judge, and sparked a brawl with court officers and attorneys. Courthouse officials telling ABC News Judge Hothis experienced some injuries and her condition is being monitored. The marshal sustained injuries and has been transported to the hospital. But this, this video sadly is, is a great example of how vulnerable judges are. If they would have had any information that he was going to do something this outrageous and violent, they either would have restrained him or even done this remotely. Back in October, Maryland judge Andrew Wilkinson was found with gunshot wounds in his driveway following a targeted attack. Wilkinson was rushed to the hospital but later died of his injuries. According to authorities, a document appearing to be Wilkinson's final court order revealed the 52-year-old judge had issued a decision in a divorce believed to involve the alleged shooter. Judges, in my view, many of them feel vulnerable and rightly so. I think this case will bring to light the whole idea of how vulnerable judges are in their own courtroom. And our thanks to Aaron Katursky for that. Redden was set to appear before a judge today to hear new charges related to this attack, but he refused to appear in court. Redden is expected back in court for a bail hearing on Tuesday. A Connecticut woman has now become the first non-resident of Vermont to use the state's medical aid in dying law as she passed away this morning. 76-year-old Linda Bluestein suffered from ovarian and fallopian tube cancer, conditions that have about a 31% survival rate. She and a doctor actually sued the state of Vermont and eventually reached a settlement that gave her a waiver to access the medical aid in dying. She told the AP that she watched her own mother die of cancer and just didn't want her kids to see her sick. Our Morgan Norwood is on the story. Let's break down Linda's case for us. How did we get to this point? 
Yeah, well, as you mentioned, Kira, you know, she was 76 years old, Linda Bluestein from, um, you know, Connecticut coming to Vermont wanting this procedure done. I want to back up here because, you know, this is a really interesting case with a lot of wide ranging implications. So I want to break this down. Suffering from terminal ovarian and fallopian tube cancer, as you mentioned, their survivor weight, 31%, according to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Um, how we got here is, you know, she's from Connecticut. She and her doctor sued the state of Vermont in 2022. They claimed uh, that the residency requirement uh, violated the state's constitution. They settled in March. She was able to have this procedure, right? She said that, you know, she watched her own mother suffer, you know, from cancer. She didn't want her kids to see that as well. Um, you know, but I will say, Kira, the fact that she fought for this particular outcome is what some advocates say, you know, this case is all about. For patients who are suffering, um, to have that sort of agency to decide um, how they, they want to pass away and, and to be able to make these calls on their own, Kira. So Oregon was the only state that allowed terminally ill non-residents to seek physician-assisted suicide for years. What other states have this law now? And does this actually set a legal precedent for other states to follow Vermont? Yeah, great question. So we're actually looking at a map there. You see California, you see Washington, Oregon, uh, a number of other states, you know, even New Jersey, which is close by here in, in New York, a neighboring state, nine other states aside from Vermont where medical aid and dying is legal. legal. Up until recently, as you mentioned, Oregon was the only state. Um, I, I want to expand this a little bit wider because, again, we talked about the implications here. This is legal in, in several other countries, but it still does remain a point of, of contention here in the U.S. Um, you know, for many, people think that this is, is an issue of ethics. Some say it's morality. Some say it's scientific. Uh, but again, you know, as I said before, you know, it's about agency. Uh, and, and many are on the fence about it. A 2018 Gallup poll, you're looking at the results of that, um, found that 72 percent believe that doctors should be able to help terminally ill patients to die 54% uh, believe that it is morally acceptable. Bottom line, though, this certainly expands the conversation, not only about who qualifies for medical aid uh, in dying from a scientific standpoint, but also geographically where they can do so, but then also the ethics of this. And so, you know, nine states have, have made a decision on this. And I'd imagine um, that as we, um, you know, continue with the year, there are a number of bills on the table as well, uh, considering uh, this sort of uh, procedure as well. Um, this is going to be a, a top of of mine and, and, and a topic of conversation for um, you know 2024 as this year continues on. Kira, we'll follow it. Morgan, thank sure. you. Coming up, the United Nations warning about a planned execution of a man on death row. We've got the details straight ahead. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News Live Prime, winner of the Gracie Award for Best News Program in All of Television. Stream ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Weeknights on ABC News Live. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. 
Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're gonna take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Some other headlines we're tracking for you this hour on ABC News Live. Former Olympic and Paralympic runner Oscar Pistorius set to be released from a South African prison tomorrow. The Olympian was jailed after being convicted of killing his then girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. Pistorius shot the South African model through a bathroom door in the middle of the night, saying that he thought she was an intruder. The 37-year-old will be on parole until 2029 and spend the remaining parole time living at his uncle's home near Pretoria, South Africa. A warning from the United Nations. Officials say they are alarmed by plans in Alabama to use an untested method of execution on a man on death row. The prison says it intends to deprive Kenneth Eugene Smith of oxygen by using a face mask connected to a cylinder of nitrogen. The UN says that using this untested nitrogen method may subject him to cruel, inhumane treatment, even torture. Smith was convicted in a murder-for-hire plot in 1988 and has been on death row for three decades. Prison officials say they tried to execute him once before through lethal injection, but couldn't find a vein. Actress Glennis Johns, best known for her role here in Mary Poppins, has passed away. Oh, yeah. Brings back memories, doesn't it? Johns played Mrs. Winifred Banks in the 1964 movie and was also nominated for an Oscar in The Sundowners. She was 100 years old. Thanks so much for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips from Breaking News to all the stories that matter to you. You can always find us on various streaming services, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops, neither do we. We'll be right back. More news ahead. news breaks it's so important to always remember that lives are changed here in london in buffalo uvalde texas edinburgh scotland reporting from rolling fork mississippi ukrainian refugees here in warsaw we're heading to a small community outside of mexico city getting you behind the stories as it happened abc news live prime we'll take you there stream abc news live weeknights wherever you stream your news only on abc news live Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough. You know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> How cute. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Right now on ABC News Live, breaking news, gunfire erupts at a high school in Iowa. The shooter now confirmed dead. The new details we're learning about the investigation this hour. Digging through the documents, new court papers unsealed in connection with sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, the prominent figures who were named and why they're being released now. On the move, a powerful storm sweeping across the country, the biggest threats and where the storm is headed next. Plus, return of the mass, the new mandates, back in effect at hospitals in the nation's largest cities. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. But we do begin with that deadly shooting at a high school in Iowa. A gunman opening fire on campus at the start of the school day. Police now confirming the shooter is dead. Multiple victims were injured, though. Their condition unknown. Students and faculty panicked and were afraid. You can even see them carrying away in stretchers. One student actually texting her mom as the terrifying ordeal was unfolding. That mom saying it was one of the worst moments of her entire life. Our Alex Prochet following the breaking news details in Perry, Iowa for, for us. So uh, we should hear more from police soon, right? That's right. We're expecting a press conference this afternoon, Kira, where we hope to get more details potentially about uh, the suspected shooter and also maybe some of these victims. Uh, but what we can tell, tell you is that we do know uh, that there was an alarm, uh, an active shooter alarm that went off around 737 this morning. Now, mind you, this was before class was supposed to start. And Kira, just for reference, this was the first day back for these students uh, post winter break. Uh, but uh, police arriving on scene about seven minutes later and immediately encountering gunshot victims uh, inside the high school here. This high school at Perry uh, holds, uh, it has about a population of 570. It's a tight knit group, uh, but know that uh, there were numerous uh, gunshot victims, according to police here. Uh, the, also, the law enforcement response has been massive. We've seen uh, state and localities uh, on scene, as well as the ATF and the FBI. Uh, the uh, Attorney General has been brief, as has uh, Governor Kim Reynolds here, uh, as we are anticipating that you know she's going to be at this presser later on today. But I, we've gotten a chance to talk to some of the community here, uh, teachers uh, at the middle school, and also uh, at least one parent who had two children in this high school. She says one of her one of her kids was actually hit. He was shot uh, in the back and and also grazed uh, in the elbow. Take a listen to what she said when she heard the news that her kids were actually involved. One of the worst moments in my entire life, but the best phone call I got was saying that they were okay. Thank I'm God. glad that they're okay. Overwhelming. The pain in your heart is just overwhelming. Well, and, and Kira, I mean, you get this, but I mean, like for, for a mom to, to get that text that, uh, you know, your your kids are, are, in, are involved, you know, the, the lump that's that's got to be uh, in, in, in her throat, uh, hearing that news, but certainly some relief there. Uh, but also an understanding that, you know, there are some families here that aren't as lucky, at least uh, early reports saying that at least one confirmed fatality today. Uh, and that was before we got the news about the shooter. Uh, so, I mean, this is a community that definitely is, is, is reeling today. And so at the press conference, is it possible we could learn if the shooter indeed was a student? And also, do we know anything more about the victims that were hurt? Well, Kira, so some early indications point that he may, that that, that shooter may have been a student here. I can tell you that um, we know that going forward, this investigation is going to center around social media posts. That's something that uh, our, our, our sources uh, back in New York have been telling us. And also uh, we've been hearing on the ground here that social media uh, is something that's, uh, that, that, that may have played a role uh, and, and it will be an integral into that investigation, possibly in determining determining a motive. But as for now, um, we do not know more about those victims. But hopefully, hopefully when that presser happens, we'll, we'll, we'll get some more details. All right, we'll talk soon. Alex Brashe, thanks so much. Well, the long-awaited release of court documents now related to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and his longtime business partner and girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, is finally over. After 41 court filings were unsealed, it unraveled a long list of names of well-known people connected to the disgraced financier. Those names spotted among the documents include late pipe pop icon Michael Jackson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Stephen Hawking, and Naomi Campbell. Documents also reveal new details about an old groping accusation against Prince Andrew and an effort to depose former President Bill Clinton. Our senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kontursky joins me now along with our legal contributor Shauna Lloyd. So Aaron, these are some pretty big names clearly listed in those docs, but that doesn't necessarily infer guilt. Oh, not at all, Kira. It doesn't infer any accusation of, of even wrongdoing, let alone guilt. Uh, these are names that uh, may have been 
associated with Epstein through uh, casual acquaintances, friendships, uh, alleged victims may have mentioned seeing them in the company of Epstein or meeting them while in the company of Epstein. And since these documents are part of a defamation lawsuit long settled, uh, it, it, some of these names also surfaced on, on potential witness lists that lawyers wanted to talk to to see if they knew anything or saw anything about the alleged sex trafficking that, that Epstein was accused of. So just being named in the documents in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. Uh, the context matters. Uh, and, and it's important to say that a lot of the names have been associated with Epstein for, for a long time, and it, and it sort of adds to the, the curiosity about how somebody with a, you know, who didn't graduate from high school, who had a $6 million fortune with a kind of a shady origin, managed to keep contact and, and, and friendship with all of these famous people. Well, we know how he rolled in all the exact accusations that have been made against him um, and how he kind of developed that Rolodex. It's interesting, though, that so far those names that we've mentioned uh, that were in the documents, they haven't put out any statements or responded, right? Yeah, and, and, and maybe because, Kira, there's nothing to respond to. As I say, they're not accused of anything. Uh, and, and just being, you know, surfacing, having a name surface in a court document in and of itself doesn't necessarily require any kind of a response. We did seek comment from Prince Andrew. There are some new details about a groping allegation. Uh, the, he did not respond. We uh, heard from attorneys for Glenn Maxwell, who's, of course, named in the lawsuit that, that was settled by Virginia Giuffre, and she's still trying to fight her conviction on charges of aiding Epstein's sex trafficking. She maintains her innocence there. But we did hear from Virginia Giuffre's lawyer herself, who said that this is all part of a... Uh, uh, an effort to try and end sex trafficking, that there was a big network of people around Jeffrey Epstein that uh, Jufre says enabled him. That's largely been exposed now, and hopefully, she says, the, uh, the, the documents will help satisfy some of the public curiosity about how Epstein was able to get away with this for so long. And, Chana, there's nothing that leads law enforcement to believe that any wrongdoing was done by those folks named in the documents, right? So why even release them right now? Well, we have to remember that most of our court proceedings and filings are typically public information. These were sealed, and so now that the case has been resolved, the court has probably received some Freedom of Information Act um, request, has likely reviewed it, determined that there's no longer a need to protect this information, and has now released it to the public. So, Aaron, there's still, what, more than 200 documents uh, set to be released? I mean, what can we get, expect from those? I think we're going to see them in the over the course of several days. They may not all come out at once. There may be more bold-faced names that, that are included for one reason or another. Uh, and I think uh, some of the things we're also going to be looking for are these uh, depositions that were taken as part of this lawsuit. We're seeing a couple of them so far in full. Previously, they'd been redacted, and they do, you know, add a little bit more to the to the story about Jeffrey Epstein and his lurid world. All right, Aaron, Shauna, thanks so much. Stand by for more documents. Well, a powerful winter storm sweeping across the country now, threatening millions of people with rain, snow, and ice. That storm already dumping more than a foot of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Ten states under snow and wind alerts now, from California all the way to Kansas. It's headed east, too, targeting the northeast. It's expected to be the first substantial snow event in that part of the country in two years. Meteorologist Melissa Griffin tracking it for us. So time it all out for us, Melissa. And Kara, we're going to start with the storm because it is in the southern plains right now, and that's where we have winter weather alerts across parts of Kansas, Nebraska, all the way down to Texas. That's where they could see a couple of inches of snow over the next 24 hours or so before that quickly moves through. This is a quick moving storm, so even the heavy rain across parts of the Gulf Coast, it could be quite heavy at times, but because it moves so quickly, we're not really anticipating too much flooding. There could be some embedded thunderstorms in there as well. By Saturday morning, that's when it's really reaching the East Coast, so that heavy rain stretching across the southeast, Jacksonville, Florida, up to the Carolinas, and then that mixing beginning. You have sleet, ice, 
potentially some snow mixed in. On top of these roadways, you're going to see very slick roads across parts of the mid-Atlantic. This is Saturday morning, but it's Saturday evening that we're watching it reach parts of the Northeast. You can see there the interior parts of the Northeast, all snow. That's where we could see potentially 6 to 12 inches of snow, but it's the coast. D.C. to Philadelphia, maybe starting a little bit of snow, transitioning quickly to rain, as well as New York. There you see 6 o'clock, it is still snow moves to rain and it moves very quickly out. So I'm thinking those coastal cities will only see about a trace to up to an inch or two of snow. Boston could see one to two inches and interior Northeast and New England could see those blockbuster totals from six to 12 plus inches. It's not just the snow, Kira, but it's also the rain. We have one storm bringing heavy rain all the way to the Southeast. We have a second cross country storm right after this one. It's going to bring heavy rain up the East Coast. So flooding a big factor with this one as well. Very active storm pattern right through next week, Kira. All right, Melissa, thank you. Now, the race for the White House, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley campaigning in Iowa today in a last-ditch effort to sway those voters in their way before the Iowa caucuses. We're talking two weeks now, and former President Donald Trump still holds a large lead over all his Republican rivals. Our deputy political director, Avery Harper, joins me now. So Nikki Haley is facing uh, some backlash for downplaying the results of Iowa and saying New Hampshire voters were correct. You know, the caucuses, it seems like she's already moved on from Iowa. Right. I, I think it's more of the fact that she understands that this is an important contest, and the Haley team definitely wants to finish strong there. Uh, but I think her comments uh, were more of an indication of how she thinks she is going to fare in Iowa. Uh, look, she knows that uh, Ron DeSantis has collected important endorsements in the state. He's running slightly ahead of her when you look at polling uh, in that state of Iowa. Uh, while she has uh, gotten a lot of important endorsements in New Hampshire, and she's running second to only Trump. Trump uh, in New Hampshire. So I think that's kind of where those comments came from. All right. Well, at a campaign event in Iowa, a voter actually criticized Ron DeSantis directly for being too soft on Trump. Let's take a listen. We've got it on tape. Why haven't you gone directly after him? Polls are down. He's, you know, up really high. What do you mean by going directly after I mean, you're, you're uh, in, in my viewpoint, uh, you're going pretty soft on him. I think the narrative is this. I think what the media wants is is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally yeah, and yeah, kind yeah. of do that. That's just not how I roll. So what do you think is not how he rolls, going to roll with regard to uh, keeping votes or gaining votes here? Well, I think the strategy has been largely ineffective. While uh, DeSantis has succeeded in, in not alienating Trump supporters uh, from him by uh, being reluctant to talking about him, I don't think that it's uh, gotten a lot of Trump supporters to come his way either. Uh, the fact is, when you look at this field, uh, most of the, fo the field, uh, with the exception of uh, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, uh, have all been reluctant to uh, speak about and directly attack former President Trump. Uh, and I think that's just reflective of the fact that it is uh, generally not popular in this current Republican Party to be anti-Trump. All right, and for the first time, Trump's campaign has actually directly hit Nikki, Nikki Haley with this television ad that criticizes her views. What do you make of this move? Right. I think it could be a little bit of uh, the Trump campaign feeling a little bit threatened uh, when you look at how Nikki Haley is performing. Uh, this ad is running specifically in New Hampshire. And like I mentioned before, uh, Nikki Haley is gaining ground on Trump when you look at polling in that state. Uh, she's only about uh, 15 points behind him. Uh, and there's an important dynamic at play in the state of New Hampshire. It's an open primary. Uh, that means independents can participate in that contest. And so it is very possible possible that that is the way that the Nikki Haley campaign is looking to run up the score. All right, Avery Harper, thank you. Thank Coming you. up, the new warning about popular weight loss drugs, what some people say happens when they stop taking them. Stick around. This is ABC News Live. 
is the crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Merle Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. GMA Tuesday morning. You're going to love this. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday, only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Glad you're streaming with us. Well, people around the country have been raving about Ozempic and Wagovi for weight loss, but what happens when you stop taking those drugs? Yeah, you know where this is going. Our Eva Pilgrim has the details pound per pound. My weight is actually about 15 to 20 pounds higher now than it was before I ever even started Wagovi. Slim down regret. Some who've used one of the hottest trends in weight loss, those new prescription medications, reporting that like with other weight loss interventions, the weight came back when they stopped taking the drugs. Within a month, I could feel how different my appetite was, how lethargic I was becoming again, all of those things. Artemis Bayendor was having difficulty shedding the tough to lose baby weight and after talking to her doctor started taking Wigovi in August 2021, losing 15 pounds over six months. But once her manufacturer's coupon ran out, she had to stop because her insurance wouldn't cover it. The pharmacy called me and said, you've been paying the coupon price for six months for $25 and now the price has gone up to like it's $1,300. That's when the weight came back and then some. I gained the 15 pounds back within the next six months of being off of Wagovi. And since then, I probably gained another 15 pounds. The active ingredient in Wagovi is semaglutide, a drug first approved for treating type 2 diabetes. In June 2021, the FDA approved its use for chronic weight management in adults who are overweight or obese. A 2022 study finding once patients go off the medication, the average weight gain rebound is about two-thirds of the total weight lost. Novo Nordisk, the makers of Ozempic and Wagovi, saying in a statement, not unexpectedly, patients experience weight regain once they stop taking the medication, adding, obesity is a chronic disease that requires long-term management, much like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Experts stress these drugs should be used in combination with lifestyle changes with exercise and food. If you stop taking a medicine that's working on your weight, your weight's going to start to come back. Some people can maintain the weight loss, but not everybody can. And our thanks to Eva for that. Now, the FDA is announcing that it's looking into some new possible Ozempic side effects also, including hair loss and suicidal thoughts.
Well, they're back. <laughs> Hospitals in multiple states now requiring people to wear masks. Officials say that it's an attempt to curb an increase of respiratory illnesses, including COVID, the flu, and RSV. The CDC is reporting tens of thousands of people have been admitted to hospitals once again for respiratory illnesses each week this season. Our favorite doctor, Alok Patel, joining us now. Oh boy. All right, so are you seeing more masks around your hospital? What, what's going on for you personally? And do you think it's a good idea right now? Well, Kira Formos, Happy New Year to you. I'm honored by having the title of your favorite doctor. I don't take that light. So I and my colleagues who work in hospitals throughout the country are absolutely seeing an increase in respiratory illness, including hospitalizations from COVID. In fact, over the past week, we've seen increases, especially on the East Coast, and some states reporting a 30% increase, some a 60% increase. We're definitely seeing more masks. And I want to remind everyone out there that in a healthcare setting, when you already have an overstaffed hospital, staff shortages, you have patients who are already high risk, and you have several patients who might be in an emergency department or a waiting room who have symptoms, who haven't yet tested positive for anything, You've got a setup where you want to protect yourself. So we're seeing plenty of masks, and we wear masks anyway around any patients who may have respiratory illness because we don't want to spread it. anything to any other patients. We want to keep ourselves safe as well. Do we know why we're seeing an increase now again? You know, it's likely due to what happens in a typical cold and flu season care with respect to the colder temperatures, natural viral patterns, and the fact that a lot of people are indoors, especially during holidays, and we see those spikes afterwards. And so it's not that surprising that we're seeing more than 30 states report a high or very high level of respiratory illnesses. But it is important to remind people that we're in a better place with COVID than we were last year. It's still yet to see what's going to happen with influenza and what the trends look like for this flu season. All right. Great to see you, Doc. Wish you were here in D.C. You're My too advice. far away. <laughs> Coming up, disgraced lawyer Alec Murdoch pushing for a new trial. We'll tell you why next. All right. Here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes. It's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. And that's why at Good Morning America, we're right here. And we got you. We got you. We got you. Reporting from near the epicenter of the worst earthquake to hit Morocco, I'm Tom Sufi Burridge. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Some top headlines we're tracking for you this hour on ABC News Live. Disgraced South Carolina lawyer 
Alex Murdoch pushing for a new trial as lawyers say they have new evidence of wrongdoing by the court clerk. Lawyers submitted two emails they say Becky Hill forwarded to the prosecution during that double murder trial, criticizing a defense witness and suggesting what to ask him. Murdoch's team also accuses her of tampering with the jury, the defense arguing that Hill pushed the jury to make a quick decision as a way to, quote, secure herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen if the event of a mistrial. A Nevada man facing new charges after attacking a judge at his sentencing hearing. Check out that defendant coming in hot with no warning and vaulting the bench, landing right on the judge. It triggered a brawl and court staff tried to restrain him. They did. The judge fell against the wall, though, but said she wasn't seriously hurt. The three-time felon now faces new charges, no surprise, and more prison time. Well, the founder of Lululemon slamming the company that he no longer controls for its efforts to make the brand more diverse and inclusive. In an interview with Forbes, billionaire Chip Wilson says that the well-known athletic brand that he created more than 25 years ago should, quote, be clear that you don't want certain customers customers coming in. Well, Wilson stepped down from leading that company nearly a decade ago. Probably can see why. All right, forget tossing your tree to the curb. Just make it cud. It's what's becoming a national tradition now. Farmers encouraging all of you to just send them their trees so they can feed them to their goats. Let's digest that with Danny New. There it is. Now that it's almost time to recycle your Christmas tree, I know someone who will gladly take it off your hands. <laughs> yes, goats. It's becoming more and more of a national tradition as farmers around the country tell their neighbors, hey, leave the pine with us. They have um, lots of vitamins and they also act as a natural dewormer. They, they know being held upside down means food. I spoke with Mike and Paulina in Oregon who became goat farmers in the last year. They started with one actually and now, we just casually have nine goats, Danny. Well, as of last week, now the whole world has met all nine. Mike and Paulina posted this video to Instagram on Christmas morning as they gifted their tree to the goats next to a sign that said Christmas tree cleanup crew. A week later, the video has almost 26 million views. Did you think it was going to get that big? No, that page is like just for like our family and friends. <laughs> Well, their goats clearly enjoyed the tree as much as folks love seeing them eat it. But sadly, the goats didn't get any more donations. We talked to the neighbors right after and they said they totally wanted to, but none of them had real trees. Poor Marco and Polo, yes, those are the real names, didn't get any extra Christmas trees. Nor did Creme Brulee here. Yes, that's also a real name. But good news. It sounds like Mike and Pauline are going to be all set for next year thanks to how many direct messages they've received from strangers offering their trees. How many of those have you gotten? I don't know. We lost count. I don't even check my DMs anymore. <laughs> And thanks to Danny for that. What a great story. And thanks for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips. From breaking news to all the stories that matter to you, you can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. We've got a lot more ahead. Don't go far. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. 
Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter. And it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting on Capitol Hill, I'm Devin Dwyer. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. Our top headlines that we're following for you right now on ABC News Live this hour. We want to take you straight to that uh, press conference in Iowa where that shooting was earlier this morning, where that gunman opened fire right at the beginning of the school day. Let's go ahead and listen in. And I want this community to know that every Iowan stands with you. It's impossible to understand why anything like this happens. But again, I want you to know that we'll work tirelessly to get the answers so that we can prevent it from happening again. I want to take a moment this afternoon to recognize the immediate and courageous response of local law enforcement today and the incredible coordination between local police, first responders, the Dallas County Sheriff's Office, the Iowa State Patrol, DCI, ATF, and the FBI and multiple health care providers. I had the opportunity a few moments ago to speak with some of the officers involved. And in a situation like this, as we all know, every minute counts. And their heroic actions today, we can say, saved lives. The response was tremendous, and we're extremely grateful. The full resources of the state government will be available to assist in the response and, of course, the community's recovery from this tragic event. The mental health region uh, has social workers that are embedded in the school district and will provide counseling services for the students, the families, and the staff. As you all know, this is an ongoing investigation, so law enforcement will brief you only on what they can at this time and they will provide additional information as it becomes available. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Chief, to the Chief. Thank you. I'm Chief Eric Vaughn from the Perry Police Department. I want to thank the quick actions of the Dallas County dispatchers who handled and dispatched the calls regarding this traffic, tragic event this morning. I also want to recognize the initial officers from the Perry and Dallas County Sheriff's Office and their actions on scene. Thank you to the massive response from agencies throughout the area, including EMS, for their assistance today. It is truly amazing to see first responders work together in these crisis situations. And I cannot forget to recognize the teachers, faculty, and students involved who acted bravely and heroically in this tragic situation. Thank you to the community support we have seen and we will continue to need in the future. All of our condolences to the victims and their families. They need your thoughts and prayers as well as time and space to process and to grieve. This community has been through tough times before and have rallied together. I'm sure this time will be no different. Thank you. I Mitch Mortvet. Yes. Thank you, Chief. My name's Mitch Mortvet. I'm an assistant director with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. At 7.37 a.m., <clears throat> excuse me, on January 4th, 2024, the Perry Police Department responded to an active shooter event at Perry High School. 
Meanwhile, Dallas County Communications was also receiving multiple 911 calls of an active shooter at the high school. Perry police officers responded within minutes. They immediately made entry and witnessed students and faculty either sheltering in place or running from the school. <clears throat> Once inside, they located multiple individuals with gunshot wounds. Officers immediately attempted to locate the source of the threat and quickly found what appeared to be the shooter with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. As additional officers responded, a systematic approach search of the school took place. Officers located during the search of the school an improvised explosive device. The state fire marshal and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms rendered the device safe. Numerous officers from multiple agencies were able to secure the school and verify no additional threats. At the same time, first responders were rendering aid to the victims who were later transported to area hospitals. The shooter has been identified as 17-year-old Dylan Butler, a student at Perry High School. Butler was armed with a pump action shotgun and a small caliber handgun. Butler also made a number of social media posts in and around the time of the shooting. Law enforcement is working to secure those pieces of evidence. All evidence thus far suggests that Butler acted alone. There are six victims, one of them who is deceased. That individual was a sixth grade student at Perry Middle School. The other five are being treated at area hospitals. Four of the surviving student, four of the victim, surviving victims are students, and the fifth is a school administrator. The law enforcement response was swift and immediate. Roughly 150 officers from local, state, and federal agencies responded within the hour. The investigation in today's tragedy is ongoing. The Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation is serving as the lead investigative agency with assistance from the Perry Police Department, the Dallas County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, the ATF, and the Dallas County Attorney's Office. At this time, we will take a few questions. Uh, Mitch, uh, Phil Jones from the Register. Yeah. Um, I was told by the father of a student who was shot that his son witnessed Principal Dan Barberger be shot. Is he the administrator and what is his condition? The investigation's ongoing and we're not releasing any other names other than Dylan Butler's name at this time. Can you give us any indication as to motive for this? I know this is ongoing. But... Anything into the background of him is part of the investigation and we're obviously going to take a deep dive into that, but there's nothing that we can release at this time. Yeah, could you give us the status of the other uh, five uh, who were in the hospital? Are they stable? Are they critical? It, at this time, it's my understanding as of about, an, I should say, as of about an hour ago, one was in critical condition but appeared not to be life-threatening, and the other four are stable. Is any racial motivation in this shooting, and are there any Latino victims? As far as the ethnicity of the victims, I'm not sure. Um, and there's nothing to indicate at this time that it had anything to do with race. Um, as far as motive, again, that's part of the background investigation, and that's something that we're continuing to look into. Sir, excuse me, there's a video online. Is there any uh, any credibility to this video naming this man as the shooter? I haven't seen the video, and that I don't know at this time, but we are, law enforcement is working to secure um, those pieces of evidence, as I mentioned in the statement, so there's nothing more that we can comment on about that. This is the first time that we've heard uh, someone from the middle school being involved in the shooting. Do you have an idea as to the path this, uh, this suspect took? It, it, all, it all happened in the uh, Perry High School, and it was before school started, so there were not many students, and it's our understanding that there was a breakfast program going on, so there may have been students of, of different grades, if you will, in the school at that time but it all was contained in the Perry High School, not in any of the other buildings. How many shots were fired from these weapons? That's still part of the investigation. We're trying to determine that. How sophisticated was the IED? The explosive device? I'm, so, I'm sorry, one of you? The explosive device? Yes. What else can you tell us? Uh, not much about it, other than it was uh, pretty rudimentary and it was rendered safe by, like I said, the state fire marshal and the ATF. Can I ask a question of the governor? Um, given that the investigation is ongoing and this is a local 
in the state matter. You know, however, the eyes of the world are on Iowa uh -huh. over the next 11 days. How should the candidates running for president talk about what happened today? Well, I'll let and them. The issue of schools yeah, violence generally. I'll let them decide how they're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to focus on the investigation. And we're going to focus on making sure that we provide the resources that the community, the teachers, the staff, those that are involved, the families, that we're providing the resources that they need during this difficult time. So that's what I'm going to be focused on, the state of Iowa is going to be focused on, and I'll let the candidates decide what they're going to focus on. Do you worry they Thank might you. politicize it? Governor. We're going to take no more questions at this time. What, what does the school, Thank you. for school safety for other schools in the area that we're looking at this year, what does school safety look like going forward here in Iowa? I mean, as as it was commented on um, by the chief, that and by the governor as well, that uh, um, you know everybody reacted the way they should, and, and it's obvious that training, first of all, at the school level, you know, with faculty and students, um, everybody reacted absolutely appropriately the way they should, as well as law enforcement as they are entering the building. You said the suspect had himself looked at gunshot wounds. Is the suspect dead? Thank you. Is the suspect dead? How the school safety bureau responds? Is the suspect deceased? Well, after about more than 10 hours of waiting for information, what we just heard is just heartbreaking. As you heard authorities there from the sheriff, the police chief, even the governor of Iowa there in Perry, Iowa, holding a press conference where we finally learned the details of that school shooting at Perry High School in Perry, Iowa. The gunman, they believe to be 17-year-old Dylan Butler, a student at that high school. He had a pump-action shotgun and a handgun, according to authorities there, when he entered the high school very early. Early this morning on the first day back at school, you'll hear that one student was indeed killed, a sixth grade student. Yes, this did happen at a high school, but apparently there was some type of breakfast going on with all grades uh, when uh, Dylan Butler entered the high school. Five other victims being treated right now, four kids, one administrator, uh, all expected to survive. Let's bring in our Alex Brashay there in Perry, Iowa, along with our uh, ABC News contributor and former FBI agent. Brad Garrett. So, Alex, wow, uh, a lot of information given at that press conference. They really were tight-lipped all throughout the morning, all throughout the afternoon. It's heart-wrenching to hear that this was a student that they believe uh, was the shooter and that one sixth grader has died. Well, absolutely, Kira, and, and, and certainly I mean, you were bringing up the fact that a, uh, there's a sixth grader involved here. Um, well, this high school is conjoined with the Perry Middle School, and so our understanding is that there was a breakfast program going on just before school was set to start again. This was going to be the first day back for these students from winter break, and so they had congregated in that cafeteria uh, when the shooting uh, started, and that's also uh, congruent with some of the uh, 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 heard from, from members of this community, uh, other folks who, uh, other students who were actually in that cafeteria to ring out. Uh, but as you mentioned, six victims, that one sixth grader that was killed, four other students, and then the one school administrator who we have learned is uh, the principal uh, that was also shot, that was confirmed uh, by ABC News. Uh, the other thing that was a, a, a huge takeaway was that that improvised explosive device that this suspect allegedly left behind. Uh, law enforcement here saying that uh, they were able to uh, they were able to uh, render it useless uh, fairly quickly. Uh, but that's just another an, another part of this that uh, is going to be a part of this ongoing investigation. Last thing that I got for you, Kira, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the, the multiple uh, social media posts. We've seen uh, a, a couple that uh, belong to this alleged uh, shooting but they're going to be looking through those, scouring for, through those for some sort of motive here. Any idea what those social media posts said? Were you able to see any of those, Alex, or just what was mentioned there at that press conference? So one that uh, that you know, we've we've been able to uh, to, to, to see uh, and kind of points to, and it's also uh, uh, is consistent with things that we've heard from 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 students here. Uh, a bag left in a bathroom near the uh, near the cafeteria where this suspect is is posing selfie style uh, with some writings, uh, basically foreshadowing what's about to uh, unfold that morning. Wow! And that's as we heard Brad. Um, 
uh, Mitch Morfitt there, the assistant director with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. He's the one that gave us all the details that they're looking at all those social media posts, believe that it'll be very strong uh, evidence. And now we know it was a 17-year-old student. A lot of questions, clearly, Brad, how to get his hands on a pump action shotgun, also another handgun. Um, and it, it's heart-wrenching to think if indeed there were social media posts out there where he was talking about what he was about to do, um, they reacted quickly, uh, but not soon enough, unfortunately, to save one of those uh, little kids uh, at that breakfast prior. So we don't know, obviously, the context of his social media posts. Sometimes these would-be shooters talk very explicitly about what they're going to do. Others talk in a rather oblique fashion. So we'll see how that how that part of it, it sorts out. The shotgun and the handgun he lives in a rural community. Weapons are very common in, in farming or rural communities. He may well have gotten them from home. They may have been his own. Uh, we'll have to see, probably have them legally, I would guess, because that typically is the case with most of these shooters. You know, the improvised explosive device is fascinating and where it was located near the cafeteria. Uh, as uh, the investigator was talking about that, I started thinking about Columbine because the two shooters at Columbine also had a number of explosive devices. Fortunately, none of them worked, and they were in or around the cafeteria. So we'll see what relevance that has. I only bring that up is that mass shooters tend to want to copy other mass shooters. So uh, another piece for them to look at. But this fortunately folded together quickly because of law enforcement's response. Uh, the shooter chose to take his own life. And then they find this improvised device before it's able to go off, if in fact it was able to go off. Um, another sad story, maybe it could have been stopped, maybe it couldn't have been stopped. Uh, some of it's going to be, A, what he said, as I mentioned before, and B, when did he post it? Did he post it right, right, right before he did the shooting, like some of these shooters do? We'll see. Alex, appreciate uh, you staying through that press conference with us once again. If you're just uh, joining us, we have more information now from that school shooting that happened at Perry High School in Perry, Iowa, and that is the shooter, 17-year-old uh, Dylan Butler, a student at that high school who took his own life after killing one sixth grade student, five others uh, injured, one being the principal, four other kids and that principal now uh, in stable condition, one in critical at the hospital. We'll continue, of course, to follow uh, the condition of those survivors and this story uh, that happened early this morning. Thanks so much for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips. ABC News Live continues now with GMA3. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
first thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Reporting from Buckingham Palace, I'm James Longman. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Back now with the New Yorker taking ordinary everyday objects like mailboxes, street poles, and even dumpsters and turning them into vivid miniature works of art. He's transforming what was a pandemic hobby into something much more. As a kid, I already knew I loved the background stuff, the brick wall, the fire escapes. So what I would do is I would collect cereal boxes and just tape them all together, paint miniature bricks on the windows. It wasn't something that I wanted to do as an adult or as a career. I was just playing. I was just being a kid. My childhood is inspiration. I made cool miniatures of special era in my life, which is the 80s and 90s, a sort of a nostalgic feeling. We don't take advantage of all the beauty that's around us. So I made this icebox famous. The piece that's very dear to me is the first piece I've made, which started this whole craze, obsession of miniatures. This is the Mona Lisa of this, this room right here. <laughs> This is the bad boy. People from all over the world, when they visit, they come take photographs of this next to this ice box. I never thought I was going to be an artist. I went through a, a tough time. When I was 38, I got in trouble with the law, got a four-year probation. I was in the middle of a divorce. I'm going through all these things. Now we're stuck in a pandemic, so it's, now it's getting darker. Art was my escape. My mom, when she saw me spending a lot of hours and she would see these art pieces getting made in her, her apartment, she said, you should put it on Facebook. So I just posted it up, street pole that I made, it changed my life. In a matter of hours, people asking me how much, how much, how much. I use everything that's around me. I try to match it as, as much as possible from the discarded cigarette, the gum stains on the sidewalk, the stickers. So sometimes I, I'm working on a piece, I'm like, it's too clean. And that's when I have, really have fun, when it's time for the weathering process. What keeps me inspired today is the memories that I'm giving people. If I could give you two, three seconds of nostalgia, I did my job. I try to transport you into a certain period in your life, you know, good nostalgia stuff. <laughs> Ah, and look at him now. Yes, I love that so story. Cool. Yes. All right, so to come, Dr. Jen has the best tips for getting your kids to eat more fruits and vegetables. Oh, Stick I need around this for help. that one. Yes. <laughs> Plus, he plays the ruthless Logan Roy and the HBO hit Succession. Brian Cox is here sharing secrets behind the TV masterpiece. We're back in a moment. Thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start here. Now that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? You do. Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show.
Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good Morning America, tomorrow. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. We are here in Israel, a nation at war. We've seen tank after tank pouring into this area. This is where it all began. Bullet holes all up the wall. Within minutes, the air raid sirens going off. You can hear the sound of an explosion. We are pinned down here. Tonight, Israel waging a fierce bombardment of Gaza. The Israel-Hamas war. For non-stop live coverage, stream ABC News Live. Reporting from southern Israel. From the front lines. In downtown Ramallah. In Beirut. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. ABC News Live. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. And that's why at Good Morning America, we're right here. And we got you. We got you. We got you. All right, we're back now with Dr. Jen. And we are looking at a topic that a lot of us are thinking about this mm -hmm. time of year. How long does it take to get fit again? and to lose any progress that you've made. So this was a really interesting article, got our attention uh, recently in the New York Times. And we are all into our kind of fitness commitments, right? Mm -hmm. We often will do it together. Some of us still go to the gym and some of us Why are you looking at me? Mm -hmm. I, I have been busy. Right, <laughs> she's getting back in the saddle, very, very, uh, tomorrow. But this article and, and this growing body of research talks about how quickly you lose your fitness level in periods of inactivity. Now, we're not talking about a couple of days, but in as early as maybe 12 days, 14 what? days, if you go from working out all the time, <laughs> don't shame her. I'm not. I'm just I feel looking like at her. Just to, looking not, at <laughs> to not doing anything, you have blood plasma changes start to go down. Your VO2 max, which is kind of your efficiency as, as a metabolic fitness machine in terms of yeah. oxygenation, <laughs> starts to deteriorate. Obviously, there are a lot of individual factors here, like your age, your gender, how fit you were before this period of inactivity. Um, but here, look at I mean, you know, in <laughs> her defense, good... she does have a toddler, so, you know, for, right. for working moms So she's moms doing a, a fitness moms. routine quite literally Yeah, I'm, I'm picking up 30 pounds every day. Correct. <laughs> but the good news is, as early as two to three weeks, you can build back. But, but oh. all kidding aside, you know, for people who uh, are in accidents or have illness, mm -hmm. I was on bed rest in one of my pregnancies for four weeks. When I was sprung from bed rest, I could barely walk one city wow. block, and I was young. So it, it's just an awareness. Get fit, but you need to keep okay, it up. Okay, I'll go to the Stay gym with you. Stay in there. Okay. <laughs> all right. You heard it, guys. We're back in a moment. Oh the God. shade. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first-degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all-new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. ABC, Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir.
From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. GMA Tuesday morning. You're going to love this. I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series, sponsored by Planet Fitness. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Hello everyone, I'm Kira Phillips. Some of the top headlines that we're watching for you this hour on ABC News Live, starting with that tragic shooting at a high school in Iowa. A sixth grade student has died. Five others hospitalized after a gunman opened fire on campus. Police now confirming that that shooter was indeed a student, 17-year-old Dylan Butler. Our Alex Perche has been following all the breaking details there in Perry, Iowa for us. Alex, police also confirming when they entered the school, Dylan Butler had taken his own life. That's right, Kira. A lot of updates here. Uh, they say that when they, they entered the school, uh, that suspected gunman, 17-year-old Dylan Butler, had taken his own life. They also were able to locate a number of victims, six in total, that one sixth grader who was uh, killed, and, and then uh, four other students that were uh, shot, and then also that one school administrator that we know uh, is the principal here. And I got a chance to speak with a, a, a couple of students and also uh, some alum of Perry High School. They say this is a principal who has spanned generations, beloved in this community. And so that's cer certainly something uh, that's been uh, difficult for, for, for them. But the other thing that was a takeaway from this news conference, we learned that that suspect, 17-year-old uh, Dylan Butler, had left behind an improvised explosive device we believe uh, near the cafeteria uh, they were able to go systematically uh, through that school perform a search they found that improvised explosive device were able to, to render it useless but that is something else the other thing Kira uh, is that he uh, apparently had a, uh, a, a multiple social posts and so as they continue this investigation that's going to be front and center in trying to figure out some sort of motive here all right, Alex Prochet there in Perry, Iowa. Alex, thank you. And the Pentagon confirms that the U.S. military carried out an airstrike in Baghdad earlier today that targeted an Iraqi militia leader who actively planned attacks on U.S. troops. And finally, I can confirm that on January 4 at approximately 12 p.m. Iraq time, U.S. forces took necessary and proportionate action against Mushtaq Jawad Kazim al-Jawari, a.k.a. Abu Taqwa, who is a Harakat al-Najuba leader, Abu Taqwa was actively involved in planning and carrying out attacks against American personnel. Our senior Pentagon reporter Louis Martinez joining us now. So, Louis, what more do we know? Kara, we know that this is a very significant action by the United States inside of Baghdad, taking out a high-level leader of one of these Iraqi militias that are backed by Iran. These are the militia groups that the United States is blaming for being responsible for now more than 120 attacks against U.S. troops inside of Iraq and Syria. And they're taking action inside of Baghdad itself, and not only against the top militia leader, but also somebody who is affiliated with the Iraqi government, because those militia groups are affiliated as part of the Iraqi Defense Ministry. So very notable that this airstrike has been taken, undertaken here inside of Baghdad. The, what remains to be seen is whether the message will be received by these Iranian-backed militia groups to stop attacking U.S. bases. All right. Louis, appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll continue to follow all the details.
Well, a D.C. U.S. attorney, Matthew Graves, is giving remarks today saying the January 6th attacks on the Capitol is likely the largest single-day mass assault on law enforcement officers in our nation's history. Graves actually had an hour-long press conference today where he talked about approaching the anniversary of the insurrection and noting that the Justice Department's sprawling investigation is far from over. The U.S. attorney adding that prosecutors have led detailed investigations aiming to hold all those who participated in the attack accountable. So far, more than 1,200 people have been charged with the January 6th attack. More than 900 convictions have been made. Well, thank you for streaming with us. I'm Kira Phillips from Breaking News to all the stories that matter to you. ABC News Live is here for you 24-7. You can always find us on your favorite streaming service, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. More GMA3 right now. Hey, Dr. Jen. Just wanted to stop by and give you a big, big, big thank you for helping spread the awareness about learning CPR. As we all know, CPR saved my life and I'll forever be indebted and forever on the mission of helping raise and spread awareness about learning CPR. You never know when it'll be your opportunity to save a life. You never know when you can have the chance to be a superhero. And learning CPR, it gives you that opportunity. So everyone, please take this message seriously and I'll see you when I see you. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. And that's why we call um, her America's favorite yeah. doctor right How there. great of Damara Hamlin yes. to do that. I so did, and, he, and he sent you a kiss. I just mean, <laughs> hearts and kisses. He, he is just so sweet. And, um, you know, when we actually all met him at the same time last spring, and I was so impressed with his commitment mm. to, as our friend Robin Roberts says, he made his mess his message, his message and yeah. he is saving lives mm -hmm. one thousand percent he's saving lives. and a genuine guy out mm -hmm. here oh yeah i mean I, i've now gotten to know him uh through the, the work that we both do with the american heart association and i say to him all the time you are here for a uh, massive reason you are on this planet mm -hmm. for a big big reason and that's Perfect example That's of it. Very Reminding yeah. everyone that Thanks you to too can learn CPR. Yeah. For sure. Oh, gotta love it. Yep. All right, Dr. Janet's taking a look at some of the questions that you guys are asking. And here's one. What are the risks and benefits of seed oils? So it's super popular right now. These are all the vegetable oils, like hemp seed oil, but, it, but any kind of vegetable oil, even sunflower oil, it's made from pressing these seeds. Um, they can be processed. They can contain too many omega-6 fatty acids. They've been linked with certain types of inflammation. Um, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, when these oils become popular or trendy for their purported nutritional benefits. Remember, oil is still oil. The biochemistry does not change. So uh, you have to be careful how much of it you consume um, and you not assume that because something is natural, you can have an unlimited amount of it. Mm. Good reminder yeah. for us. Yeah. Your prescription for wellness. Okay, it has to do with how to get children to eat some more fruits <laughs> and vegetables. I think the world um, is listening. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, and adults. I see a lot of adults without anything any that vegetable. looks like a real vegetable on their plate. That is mm -hmm. correct. My friend Al Michaels, notorious for never touching a vegetable. So, number one, you want to incorporate these greens uh, when you're talking about vegetables in meals from an early age, as early as possible, starting with smaller portions. Don't expect them to eat a whole head of broccoli um, for right out of the gate. Let the children help prepare the foods. I That's like that incredibly idea. helpful and effective. And do not give up on a picky eater. Sometimes it takes decades to evolve your taste buds. My daughter, Chloe, now 24 years old, did not eat anything with color until she was about 13. Mm -hmm. It was a completely white plate. <laughs> Potatoes. Chicken. Chicken. That's it. it. And now... She's really progressed. <laughs> yeah, so and she's hope. brilliantly smart and well adjusted and there's turned hope. out just fine. There's hope for everyone. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, Doc, thank yeah. you. And folks, we would love to hear from you. So hit us up on Instagram with all of your medical questions for Dr. Janet, at ABC GMA3. Also, we love Chloe. Thank yes, you. we do. Yes, I love we do. her too. Next year on GMA3, better call Brian. Everything you need to know about the 14th Amendment and why it matters. Clean, looking good there, Brian. And later, with award season getting into full swing we're gonna hear from one of the top contenders succession star brian cox in the house we're back in the world brian squared yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. GMA Tuesday morning. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. When Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow, more Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. Okay, you know that we think about everybody out there across America who watches GMA every day, just like extended family. Well, now we are looking to celebrate one GMA fan. So, are you the biggest GMA fan out there? Scan this QR code and find out how to submit a video that tells us why and how you watch GMA your way. We can't wait to see your videos. And who knows, maybe you'll end up on GMA. ABC News, America's number one news source. Let's get down, let's get down to business. All right, welcome back to GMA 3. As we enter into the 2024 election season, a former president, Donald Trump, is facing two states ruling him ineligible for the primary ballot, Colorado and Maine. Now, both states are citing what's called the insurrection clause in the 14th Amendment. Former President Trump is appealing both cases, denying all wrongdoing, and luckily... We have a lawyer on retainer for our brand new GMA3 mm -hmm. legal series called Better Call Brian, ABC News contributor Brian Buckmeyer. Thank you so much for being here with us. This is complicated, so yeah. <laughs> I just I need your help kind of breaking this down. Trump issued an appeal saying, and this is a quote, the president isn't an officer of the United States and that, quote, he took a different oath than the one set forth in Section 3. So walk us through all of this mm -hmm. and the big question, will he be on the ballot in Colorado? So right Right now it's kind of on hold, but let me walk you through it. <clears throat> Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, otherwise called the Insurrection Clause, in part says that if you had taken an oath to an office, and it lists some of the offices, vice president, senator, things of that nature, and then you rebel or an insurrectionist, you can't then take back the office. Think of like the Civil War when people fought for the South and then came back to try to get their jobs and said, no, 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 can't come back. What the former president is doing is taking sections of that and saying, I didn't take an oath like a senator or everyone else. That one, I think, is not the strongest argument. He did take an oath to uphold the Constitution. I think that's good enough. But the officer and the hold office, this is something that's never been litigated since the Civil War. So that he might have some legroom to kind of run in this in that it's never really been defined. And Colorado defines it one way. Maine went a different route. A number of states said we're not going to touch it. The Supreme Court looks like they got to get in and resolve this. All right, speaking of Maine, let's talk about Maine Secretary of State uh, Shetta Bellow. She also deemed Trump ineligible for that state's ballot. What's the difference in Maine's case versus Colorado's case? It's all about process, and we are learning about the process of becoming the president of the United States all through this, the, this kind of endeavor. In Colorado, it works its way through the legal system, and that's why we've heard appeals and upon appeals up until the Colorado Supreme Court and now to the highest court of the land because we know that Donald Trump <laughs> has filed a petition to enter into that realm. With Maine, the way they do it is 
any citizen of Maine can make a petition of the Secretary of State and say, for this reason, I don't believe that this person should be on the ballot. And three people did that, or at least three groups of people made that petition, and two of them seem to be valid, and it's up to the Secretary of State of Maine to hear them, litigate them, and decide. And they said, based on what I see here, he's an insurrectionist, he was in office, you're not allowed to be on the ballot for Maine. But they put a hold on that until what we're seeing now, the president or the former president has the ability to appeal that within Maine itself before it gets up to SCOTUS. Mm. So this is not just a Maine and a Colorado issue. Some 30 states have filed similar suits. Some of those have been dismissed. But the question I think for a lot of people is, does the Supreme Court get involved? Will they get involved? So no one really knows behind closed doors what the Supreme Court does in terms of selecting and choosing. But we do know the Supreme Court doesn't like it when different states have different interpretations of the same law. You you have Colorado saying, yes, we can definitely uh, rule on this issue because it's up to our state power to decide who gets on our ballot. Maine says we went through our process and we thought the same thing. But other states are saying, whoa, this is a political question. This is something Congress should decide. Whoa, we don't think he's actually been litigated as an insurrectionist or a rebel. No one's filed a, a federal claim against him. He's not been found guilty. So we don't think we should touch it. All different states are interpreting this a different way, so it's up to SCOTUS to say this is how it should be done. Mm. So if he is deemed ineligible in some states, can he still run for president? Absolutely, because it's a state-by-state state issue. I mean, many people, and I'm not, I'm not a political talking and I'm more on the legal aspect to try to leave the politics out of it, but many people say he wasn't going to win Colorado anyways. Yes, he argues in his petition that he got over a million votes, but people largely believe that Colorado's a blue state and he wouldn't have won it otherwise. Maine, a little different. But throughout the other states, he could still run and potentially win, even if he doesn't win those two states. But you think about the Electoral College, you know, those numbers still add up. Absolutely. And I think that's why he's fighting. He's not going to look at it and just say, you know what, I wasn't going to win Colorado anyway, so I'll just let it go. No. Every vote counts. Every state counts. And that's why he's making these petitions. Okay, let's look at how what all of these cases are sort of pointing to, which is that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. I just want to take a look and read this section. No person shall hold any office under the United States who, having previously taken an oath as an officer of the United States to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot, a lot to read. But <laughs> the question being, how, how do we define that? Has that ever been litigated? Do we have a precedent of how this is going to be laid out? No, even when you look at the Donald Trump's petition, when they have this section of saying, what's the case law that you're relying on? It's pretty quick. It says, there is none. There, there's, for, for this specific issue, it's never been litigated. I think it's maybe been talked about once or twice after the Civil War, but never as it applies to a president or president-elect. And so what we're really looking at are just a few key phrases. What's an officer of the United States? Yes, the office of the president is something that the president sits in, and that makes sense, but is he an officer of the United States? I, for example, am an officer of the court. I have a duty of candor and truthfulness to the courts. Some would say that the president also has a duty to the United States, and so he is of the office as well. But the question also becomes insurrectionist, rebel, who decides that? Congress has done some investigation of their own through the impeachment process, but never really got to that point. And do the individual states get to decide that? Or is it Congress, or someone else, or the people? That's where we're kind of lost right now. When in doubt, better call Brian, huh? Yeah, <laughs> Brian Buckmeyer, thank you so much. Definitely thank a complicated you, issue. Mm -hmm. Very difficult for a lot of people to understand. Thank My you. pleasure. Thanks, guys. Coming up on GMA3, another Brian, succession star Brian Cox. He's a big star, and he's here talking about his approach to being the father of all TV roles. All this as award season starts heating up. Back in a moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. What's good to watch, read? Where can I get a great deal on what I'm just dying to buy? Oh, it's all right here. GMA Life. Get the latest celebrity buzz, deals and steals, and the coolest lifestyle tips from GMA. I love that so much. Streaming weekends on ABC News Live. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, 
This is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Reporting from the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine, I'm Matt Gutman. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. All right, folks, welcome back. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, you surely heard about the success of HBO's hit show, Succession. It was a smash hit, and it recently wrapped up its fourth and, unfortunately, final season. Yeah, the series has racked up several nominations for the upcoming award season, including Best Actor nominations mm -hmm. at this year's Emmys, Golden Globes, and Critics' Choice Awards. For our next guest, who is joining us right now, please help us welcome Emmy Award-winning actor Brian Cox. Brian! <laughs> I told you when I saw you, I got a little nervous just because of who your character is. Um, there's well, you're some... quite right to be nervous. <laughs> so, because so... you never know what's going to happen with you. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Exactly. Yeah. So, so many people are, like, seriously stunned about what happened to your character. Mm. Were you surprised, or did you know this was happening? I, well, it's called succession. <laughs> <laughs> For you a reason. It follows that you have to, something to su success, succession. <laughs> and uh, I knew he was going to go. Uh, and Je I was told very firmly by the writer he was going to go, <laughs> and I knew he would because the show is called Success. You know, people did leave after I died. They left the show, and I said, what are you doing? It's called Succession. You've got to see the bit where it's the succession bit. And, uh, you know, but it, it was... Um, I, 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 I was very impressed by the way they did it. You know, I, 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 I thought... Initially, I thought maybe five episodes in, Three seemed a bit tight, but, <laughs> but it's good because I, always, I said to Jesse, you know, how do we know he's dead? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Is that the him. kind of thing he we would do? Yeah, we never see him again. <laughs> exactly, that's the kind of thing he would do, you know. So, uh, so he may not be dead, <laughs> and they may revive him, you never know. <laughs> well, we hope so. I wouldn't mean the show would continue there. <laughs> uh, it is award season, and congratulations, by the way, on your numerous Best Actor nominations. But you're also going up against some of your castmates, uh, Jeremy Strong and Kieran Culkin, uh, for a few awards in the, uh, the same category. That's got to feel special to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's happened before. I think with Jeremy and I were up before, and, uh, and Kieran, who was absolutely brilliant in the, in the last series, I mean, I think he deserves to be nominated. Uh, so, you know, it's fine. No problem. <laughs> May the best man win. Well, it's, it's, it's not the best. It's the person who, you know, who they feel is the right for that moment, you know, and, and everybody has their moment, and maybe it's not mine. Maybe it's somebody else's, and I'm, I'm cool with that. You've also teamed up with the BBC for their maestro classes. Yeah. Would you mind teaching us a little something? Well, it's very interesting. I was asked to do that with you guys, and I, I think it's very hard, but what you have to remember... <laughs> is that because no, of our lack of sense? No, 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 I'm coming to the point. Uh, what you... Everybody's an actor. I mean, you're acting now. You're not the people that, when you're outside, when you're with your husband or with your partner, you're not... You know, you, you, you come in here and you, there's a performance going on. That's an understandable thing, and that's what we do. And I think that people don't understand that everybody acts. Every, every day you act. You act in one way or another. You go into a shop to buy something. You become playing the customer. Mm. You know, so you, you think, if you think in those terms, acting becomes not as big a complex thing as people make out mm -hmm. it, it's complex in the sense it's actually very simple and it's difficult to be that simple with stuff Follow? Capisce? Well, we learned something there. It's kind of profound. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> was that a suitable enough explanation? I can go further, but and we I haven't got like time. I feel like we've learned something. <laughs> <laughs> we have. Brian, thank you very much, man. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure and best of luck to you as well. And you can catch BBC Maestro Courses now available online. And coming up when we come back, the familiar face in our GMA3 Broadway spotlight. Yeah, star Michael Urie delighting audiences and the hit Spamalot and heading to a new beloved classic. Check him out. We'll find out more when we come back. Stay with us.
ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. A nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. GMA Tuesday morning. You're going to love this. I'm going to love you. I'm going to when Parmalee performs live for you. Tuesday only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by Planet Fitness. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. Start here. Now that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good Morning America, tomorrow. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Fun there. It's got Dr. Jen right here dancing. Welcome back to GMA3. That was a clip from the beloved medieval musical Spamalot. And this award winning show is based on the 1975 satire Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I mean, who didn't love that, right? From the screen to our stage, our next guest stars as the hilarious Sir Robin. And he's joining us now to talk all about it. Please welcome Broadway star and actor Michael Ewing. Michael! Yeah. Having you here. Congratulations you. on this incredible role. You know, it's so interesting because you have said that you had two left feet and you were tone deaf, <laughs> but like you're amazing in this. So, how did really that happen? Amazing. I'm the luckiest man <laughs> in the world. I, 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 I have, um, over the years, weaseled my way into a lot of jobs. This is one of them. I have always loved this show. Of course, the movie, I grew up watching the movie. And then when the original production was on Broadway, I saw it a bunch of times. I loved it. And I said, oh, I could be that guy. He doesn't have to sing too much. He doesn't have to dance too much. And, and, now. and I weaseled my way in. And it turns out I actually have to sing and dance quite a bit, as you can see. <laughs> um, but I learned it. I figured it out. You're not only modest, you're incredibly busy, because later on this month, you're leaving this production and you're going to another one, <laughs> Once Upon a Time, uh, Once Upon a Mattress. Once Upon a Mattress, which is the princess and the pea. And, and um, you're working with Sutton Foster. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to? Well, I'm doing yet another musical. This one's also medieval. <laughs> I don't know what it is. This is from someone who says they can't sing I'm in my yeah. medieval yeah. musical phase. <laughs> tone deaf, two left feet. Well, Sutton Foster, I have worked with before. We did a t She was on this wonderful show, Younger, and I was a guest on it a bunch of times. And she's the nicest person in show business. And she is a musical theater legend. She's won two Tony Awards. She can sing, she can dance. She's like a true triple threat. So I get to be her prince, and I can't wait. It's the F with the wonderful Encore series up at City Center. We only do it for two weeks, so get your tickets now. But um, it's a beautiful show. Hasn't been done in years. So let's talk about another show that I think is phenomenal, Shrinking. Yeah. Aside from not having a beard, uh, your hair is <laughs> longer now. Uh, was it true that this show right here inspired you to take therapy? It is true. Shrinking is about mental health. Uh, it's a show about a therapist and the, their friends and family. And um, I, I kept learning doing the show about different mental health issues. Mm. And it made me want to seek out my own um, mental health treatment. I mean, I was, I was, you know, going through some things. I turned 42 while we were doing the show and, um, and sort of started to think about my life and about, you know, like where I'd been, where I was going. And, and, uh, I, and the show inspired me to 
talk to somebody about it. And it was great. Therapy yeah, is great. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Yuri, everybody, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And the revival of Monty Python's Spamalot is playing now at the St. James Theater. And that is what you need to know for this Thursday. I'm Nina Pilgrim. I'm DeMarco Morgan. And I'm Dr. Jen Ashton. For all of us at ABC News, including Michael Yuri, right here. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all? That's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good Morning America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here, and we got you. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter. And it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the Capitol, I'm Rachel Scott. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. Breaking news now on ABC News Live. The latest on that deadly shooting at a high school in Iowa. Gunfire erupting as students prepare to start their first day back to class after winter break. What investigators are saying about the victims and the gunmen at this hour. And tensions ratcheted up again in the Middle East. The U.S. strike on Iranian-backed militants in Baghdad. Hamas and other Iran-backed proxy groups refusing to back down as the fighting rages in Gaza. And more more documents expected to be released today related to Jeffrey Epstein. What we're already learning about who was allegedly in the billionaire sex offender's orbit. But we begin with that breaking news, the deadly school shooting in Perry, Iowa, about 40 miles outside of Des Moines. Investigators say a sixth grade student is dead and four other students are wounded, as well as the school's principal. This after gunfire erupted at Perry High School before the school day, the first day back from winter break, could even begin. Officers responding in just seven minutes. Video showing people being carried away on stretchers. Police confirm that the suspect was was a student. They say 17-year-old Dylan Butler, seen here, acted alone, and that officers found him dead from what they believe was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Investigators say Butler was armed with a shotgun and a handgun. They also say they found an improvised explosive inside the building. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds speaking at a news conference a short time ago. This strikes at the heart of everything that we hold dear. This senseless tragedy has shaken our entire state to the core. And I want this community to know that every Iowan stands with you. It's impossible to understand why anything like this happens. But again, I want you to know that we'll work tirelessly to get the answers so that we can prevent it from happening again. Live at the scene there for us is ABC's Alex Prache tracking the very latest. Alex, uh, what more are we learning first about the victims and then also about the suspect at this hour? 
Well, let's start with the victims there, Jay. You mentioned those six victims, that sixth grader uh, that was shot and killed, uh, four other students, and then that administrator, which we know is the principal at Perry High School. And just to kind of give you some context here, is you mentioned that this broke out before school was even a, a about uh, able to start uh, that emergency call came in around 7:37 a.m. Well, we know that kids had gathered in the school cafeteria. There was a breakfast program of sorts when that gunfire rang out. And as you mentioned, that 17 year old uh, suspect, uh, his name is Dylan Butler. Uh, students here have dis uh, described him as someone who's quiet and keeps to himself. Uh, but he had that pump action shotgun, also a handgun that he procured somehow. And then uh, we we learned that he had that uh, improvised explosive device. Now, when officers arrived, they say that they uh, encountered numerous victims inside the school. Uh, they say that they found uh, Butler, uh, who had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. They then uh, executed what they called a methodical sweep of that uh, the, the school. That's when they came across that uh, improvised explosive device, that IED. They were able to, to disarm it, uh, thankfully. Uh, but, but the one consistent that we've heard from a lot of uh, law enforcement here is that uh, they're grateful that the response was as rapid as it, could, as it was because this could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I, I want to drill down on that response, Alex, because you, you, you touched on it a hair, but I really want to uh, take another examination at the timeline here. So the first call, if I'm correct, went out to police at, at around 7.30 a.m. Central Time, and then police respond within less than 10 minutes. Is that correct? So uh, what was triggered was something called an active shooter alert, and that went off around 7.37 a.m. Uh, police also say that at that same time, the Dallas County, uh, 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 I guess, emergency response was getting inundated by 911 calls as well. They say that the first police officer was on scene seven minutes later. Seven minutes later, uh, was able to walk in. There were students, they were running out, faculty, administrators, they were running out as that officer was coming in. Uh, uh, and that's when uh, that's when they were able to start that sweep and and got a sense as to just how 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 bad this shooting actually was. Alex, this is something that community after community in this country are now all too familiar with. What are you hearing from those parents and students about what they face today? Well, there's shock, and I, I can tell you that, I mean, this is a small town, right? Uh, I mean, this, this high school has about 570 students in it. Uh, most of those kids know each other, and, and so, uh, and I can tell you the principal here has, has been around for generations. I mean, there, there are students uh, that, that go to this school whose, whose parents have had this same principal, and so, uh, you know, that sent shock waves uh, through this community as well. But listen, I mean, if you had a student who was here today as this one mother that we got a chance to talk to, I mean, it, it, this it, it makes your heart sink uh, to, to know that they were exposed to that or possibly in danger. But take a listen to, uh, to this to this mother. That's one of the worst moments in my entire life, but the best phone call I got was saying that they were okay. Thank I'm God. glad that they're okay. Overwhelming. Like, the pain in your heart is just overwhelming. And so that's a sentiment that we've heard throughout the day. I mean, there have been alums from this high school that have come by because they're trying to get updates. There are people still in this school that they care about. But again, Jay, it is a very tight community. And so uh, they're, they're reeling right now. Alex Perche, when you hear in that mother's own words, Alex, thank you for your time today. We turn now to the Israel-Hamas war and rising concerns over a possible wider conflict in the Middle East. Israeli officials telling the U.S. that diplomatic solutions with the Iran-backed group Hezbollah in Lebanon are running out as Israeli forces and Hezbollah fighters exchange fire across Israel's northern border. Meantime, in Yemen, one leader of the Iran-backed Houthi rebel group is calling for protests tomorrow in support of Palestine. Palestinians. And then in Iran, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the deadly explosion there yesterday that left at least 84 people dead, raising tensions even further. The victims were attending a ceremony marking the death of Iran's former top general Qasem Soleimani, who was killed by a U.S. drone strike in 2020. And then the Pentagon today confirmed that the U.S. carried out an airstrike in Iraq, killing an Iranian-backed militia leader in Baghdad. Pentagon spokesperson Major General Pat Ryder speaking earlier today. 
U.S. forces took necessary and proportionate action against Mushtaq Jawad Kazim al-Jawari, a.k.a. Abu Taqwa, who is a Harakat al-Najuba leader. Abu Taqwa was actively involved in planning and carrying out attacks against American personnel. So to break down all of this for us, we turn to ABC News Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Martha Raddatz live for us in Tel Aviv tonight. Martha, what more can you tell us first about that U.S. strike carried out in Baghdad? Well, we know it was a drone strike. We do know that it was uh, aimed at a vehicle carrying uh, this militia commander that Pat Ryder was talking about and two others as well. It was right in Baghdad. Uh, so this drone strike comes down and basically obliterated that vehicle and everyone inside. These attacks against U.S. forces have been relentless. There have been 120 attacks on U.S. forces uh, since October 7th in Syria, in Iraq, again and again and again. 74 U.S. service members have been injured. One critically uh, did not return to duty and, and has a very difficult life in front of him. We have been in touch with the family of that young pilot uh, who was injured in Erbil on Christmas Day. The others have returned to duty, but there has been some uh, minor traumatic brain injury. So this is something the U.S. has been dealing with every single day. The Pentagon aware of this. Uh, they have done several retaliatory strikes. I believe this is the sixth retaliatory strike. Uh, and this, of, of course, uh, killed what the Pentagon is saying is that militant commander. I want to ask you, too, about this news out of Iran where dozens were killed in an explosion. ISIS, as you heard, has claimed responsibility, but the Iranian president is still blaming the U.S. and Israel, which, as we know from your reporting over the years, is something that's very common in Iran. What, what is the latest there? The latest is that uh, the U.S. officials suspected it was ISIS even yesterday because it has all the hallmarks of an ISIS attack. Uh, ISIS is now saying there were two suicide bombers. Uh, they they uh, gave the names of who they said were the suicide bombers. Originally, Iran said there were bombs, a pair of bombs placed in backpacks and they were detonated remotely. ISIS claims that is not true. Uh, and uh, they are indeed still blaming Israel and America, and that will probably continue, even though ISIS says uh, definit definitively it was them, and the U.S. Uh, believes that. And Martha, one last thing for us here. Secretary of State Antony Blinken heads to the Mideast today, his fourth trip there since the October 7th attacks. What is his focus, as U.S. officials say, that they are increasingly concerned about the rise of tensions in that region? It's exactly what you say, Jay, the, the rise of tensions and the reasons, all the things we have just been talking about. You talk about Yemen, now you talk about Iraq. The Iraqi government is very mad at the U.S. Uh, for carrying out that drone strike. You have what's going on in Iran, and Secretary of State Blinken wants to talk about this, wide, this possibility of a wider war. You, of course, have Lebanon as well uh, and Hezbollah up there. And again, to re-emphasize that, that the U.S. thinks the Israelis should be more careful in their targeting in Gaza. We were overlooking Gaza earlier today, and you could see the smoke rising from the area there. That, that bombing there is simply relentless, Jay. Martha Raddatz, I cannot thank you enough for your time, for your reporting, for your context tonight. Thank you so much. Onwards for us tonight, the first batch of what's expected to be hundreds of court documents related to the late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein are out, with an additional 50 to 60 documents expected to be unsealed today. These are all part of a settled civil defamation lawsuit related to accusations that Epstein's former paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell, facilitated the sexual abuse of one of his victims. Dozens of powerful men and women were alleged to have some kind of connection to the disgraced financier in these newly unsealed documents. Some of the names include former President Donald Trump, as well as actor Kevin Spacey, the late King of Pop, Michael Jackson was listed as well, and supermodel Naomi Campbell. The documents also reveal the attorneys for Virginia Giuffre, the alleged Epstein victim who brought that lawsuit against Maxwell, wanted to depose former President Bill Clinton due to his alleged connections to Epstein. So to break, make sense of all of this, we want to turn to ABC News senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, who's joining me now with more. Aaron, uh, you've been going through these documents now for the better part of a day. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways so far? 
Well, I think the, the, the names, many of them have already been uh, connected to, to Jeffrey Epstein in, in one way or another. We're, there were a couple of surprises. Michael Jackson seemingly came out of nowhere. His name came up in a deposition, and, and uh, another of Epstein's victims said that she met Jackson at Epstein's Palm Beach estate. Uh, but broadly, to me, Jay, it adds to the curiosity of how this strange man amassed all this money and kept the company that he seemingly did um, all the while r running a vast global sex trafficking network. Uh, and, and really, the documents don't do anything to advance any accusations of wrongdoing or, or to, to, to say that these people knew something. Um, but it, it, it does show that, that he did have a lot of, a lot of famous people that, that he was seemingly in communication with or, or, or in physical contact with uh, for, for a number of years. So, Aaron, we say that these names come out of these documents. Help us unpack exactly what we're talking about there. They're from alleged Epstein victims and other former associates and others who are recounting in depositions, uh, people that they knew to be close or in some way have some kind of connection with the financier. Is that right? Well, some had a known connection. The former presidents, Clinton, Trump, uh, the, the magician, David Copperfield, uh, the, the actor, Kevin Spacey, Naomi Campbell, they had all had some kind of a, a link to, to, to Jeffrey Epstein. Um, but some of them are, are just mentioned as potential witnesses in the, the defamation lawsuit from which the documents come. They were asked about uh, in depositions from other witnesses. Did you know this person? Had you met this person? And it's really just the sum total of people that lawyers wanted to potentially talk to, whether they had a specific connection or, or allegation or, or not. And I think that's the important thing, Jay, though some of the names are being made public for the first time, people deeply involved in the Epstein cases have known about them for a long time. Aaron Katursky, thank you as always for your time breaking it all down for us. Coming up for us tonight in the countdown to the first in the nation caucuses, we'll hit the campaign trail with the candidates making their final pitches and show you how this sometimes crazy process of picking a presidential nominee all works. That is after the break. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yay! Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough. I know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back. For months, you've probably heard people like me tell you that the Republican White House hopefuls 
are in crunch time to make their pitches to people in those early voting states like Iowa and New Hampshire. And it's true, this GOP field has been under pressure every single day to try to pick up votes. But now it's really crunch time. Iowa's caucuses are less than two weeks out, and New Hampshire's primary is days after that. So how is this all going to play out, and how much do these early states really matter? I caught up with voters there and even some candidates, too, on the campaign trail to find out. Enjoy your breakfast. Take care. If you've never interrupted somebody's meal at a diner in New Hampshire or flipped pork, <laughs> steps away from the butter cow at the Iowa State Fair, then chances are... I'm Vivek. I'm running for U.S. president. You've I'm never run okay. for president. This month, Republicans in Iowa will hold their caucuses. In New Hampshire, they'll go to the polls for their primary, meaning in just a few weeks, the path to who will win the 2024 GOP nomination is expected to be a lot clearer. In this crunch time, the thinning field of White House hopefuls are going voter to voter. Debbie? Nice to see you. Trying to pick Susan, up momentum. While former President Donald Trump facing 91 criminal charges across four state and federal cases still dominates in the polls. Those of us who believe that you get ahead in this country. At a town hall in New Hampshire with Vivek Ramaswamy, we met voters who wanted to hear what the entrepreneur turned candidate had to say, but largely had their minds made up. I'm still probably going to vote for Trump unless something happens. You know? Why is that? He's already gone through everything they can throw at him, and he's still alive. I mean, he's in numbers that are just, I mean, I think it's, it's really his to lose uh, at this stage of the game. I think Trump's going to win. What about the other candidates? That Haley's, no. DeSantis? Haley I do not like. DeSantis I like, uh, but his personality, he needs more of a personality, I guess. Get used to this face. I'm going to keep showing back up. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley has been surging in the polls, picking up a key endorsement from New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu. Hello, New Hampshire. I'm thrilled to be back in your beautiful state. But like every candidate, she's still trailing Trump by double digits, telling our Jonathan Carl on ABC's This Week. I think this election is important for Republicans and Democrats. I mean, you see Democrats are just as worried. You've got 75 percent of America that say they don't want a Trump-Biden rematch. In Iowa, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is pouring nearly every dollar his campaign has into outperforming expectations there. Whip up some more votes for us, thank you. He's endorsed by the Hawkeye State's Governor Kim Reynolds. A solid second place since announcing his candidacy, the Florida governor has recently sagged to third in some polls, but vows to fight on. But Iowa doesn't technically have a primary. Voters there caucus. To pick their candidate, Republicans in Iowa gather in school gyms like this one. Others go to places of worship. Some go to private homes. Unlike a primary in a state like New Hampshire, the polls aren't open for most of the day in Iowa. Voters have to show up on time at 7 p.m. They first listen to speeches on behalf of the various candidates, and then they write down who their choice is on paper ballots. But they do it in a big room that's full of their friends and neighbors. So peer pressure is a real factor. Those paper ballots then get counted on site and the results are reported to the state Republican Party. Polling in the single digits, candidates like Ramaswamy, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson are under pressure to drop out. How you doing, sir? You serving in the Rochester police? Back in one of those classic New Hampshire diners, meeting table after table, Ramaswamy told us he's not going anywhere anytime soon. A lot of people came up to me afterwards and said that they, were, they changed their mind. They were unsure when they came in, but they came out as vehement supporters precisely because of what they said was that disconnect between who the they see on the TV. Stage, yeah, and there's a, a little aggressive. I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I Absolutely. And, and I think you need a president who can be a fighter, who's not going to roll over when they're hit. My own teaching that came from, from my parents is you have to be strong enough to protect your kindness. And I think that, I think some of that inside doesn't come across necessarily on a 30-second TV hit. Or yeah, when people watch you on the debate the stage, the word kindness doesn't come to mind. Well, I think that I think tough. I think toughness does. USA! USA! The reality here is that former President Donald Trump is still favored to win in both Iowa and New Hampshire, despite skipping every debate so far. We're going to very simply make 
America great again. These candidates are likely battling Mr. for Trump second place. That means the expected Democratic and Republican nominees will both be in their 80s after a four-year term, a fact that voters we met were keenly aware of. Well, I voted for Biden last time, uh, but you need presidents that are younger. You can't have candidates that are 78 or in their 80s. When they start losing their facilities, and it, it, they ought to have be smart enough to resign. It's not fair to me as a young person to watch older people corrupt my life. President Biden now preparing for his first official campaign stop of 2024 this weekend in South Carolina, after mainly using official White House events in key battleground states to tout his accomplishments. America's having infrastructure decade. This election, Democrats reshuffled their primary calendar, officially putting South Carolina before Iowa and New Hampshire. But the Republicans didn't. And if you're wondering why GOP White House hopefuls spend more time with voters in these two states than anywhere else, it's easy. Their first winning over enough Iowans or Granite Staters can prove to the rest of the country a candidate has what it takes. Just ask New Hampshire nine-year-old Hannah Kesselring, who, with the help of her parents, has attended an event for every single Republican candidate, even asking some tough questions. You're giving at least three reasons why you think and some others, Haley supporters think that you should be elected president. Which candidate stood out to me? I really like Nikki Haley and Christy, but that's just my opinion. Are you guys truly undecided voters? So we, when we started this process, I'll be honest with you, I was like full-fledged Trump. And what Hannah had made me realize is I'm going to listen to everybody. She's a little too young to cast a ballot herself, but smart beyond her years, Hannah has a message for the rest of us. You can't complain if you don't vote. Thank you to the Kessel Ring family. Thank you to all the good people of Iowa and New Hampshire. We will be back, and sooner than you think, because the Iowa caucuses are on January 15th. You can catch all of that coverage on ABC News Live. Coming up, game over. We've got the details on how the 13-year-old beat, how this 13-year-old beat the unbeatable Nintendo Classic. Do not go anywhere. He's next. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America, tomorrow. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most-watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Traveling with the president in Dublin, Ireland, I'm Mary Bruce. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. All right, welcome back. Here's something I bet you didn't know. No human has ever beaten the original virgin, version rather, of Tetris. That is until a 13-year-old from Oklahoma managed to do it. Check it out.
rocks. That's Willis Gibson, a.k.a. Blue Scooty, beating level 157 in the classic Nintendo game. That's when it freezes up because nobody's supposed to be able to make it that far. Before that, people only thought that artificial intelligence-powered programs were capable of pulling off that feat. A good game from us to our friend Blue Scooty. There is much more ahead for us right here on ABC News Live. And today's big story, with record migrant crossings, the border battle intensifying from Texas to here in Washington. Why the Justice Department is now suing the Lone Star State as both parties remain deadlocked on reform. And in our spotlight, the names included in those newly released court documents related to Jeffrey Epstein. Our panel weighs in on why so many questions in that case are still unanswered. Coming up. ABC Friday night. I was terrified. It was just so traumatic. Nightmare. <laughs> a hidden medical crisis facing women right now. Our doctor, our nurses were crying at my bedside, wishing they could do something. They literally couldn't do anything until the blood work showed that I was dying. The confusion, the horrifying consequences. The nurse asked me if she can pray for me. I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. Diane Sawyer, Rachel Scott, the Impact by Nightline special, Friday night on ABC. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. I just walked in and she's laying on the bathroom floor and there's blood everywhere. Mo had the potential to be one of the greatest bike racers of all time. No one in cycling gets murdered. What the hell is going on? Authorities have charged fellow cyclists with first degree murder. What is it like to hear that your daughter is a fugitive? Friday night. This is the first time we're going to hear from the last people who saw Mariah alive. The all new 2020, Friday night at 9, 8 central on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is what would you do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Welcome back. Record migrant crossings at the southern border prompting more calls for action here in Washington. I'm Jay O'Brien. In today's big story, the Justice Department now suing Texas over its controversial new law allowing state and local law enforcement to arrest people suspected of entering the U.S. illegally. Our Mexico City-based foreign correspondent Matt Rivers covers the border extensively for us and joins me from Texas to help break it all down. And in our spotlight, more documents expected to be released today related to Jeffrey Epstein. Our panel weighs in on what we've already learned and the questions still unanswered. But we begin 
Beginning with our big story in the growing legal battle over that controversial new law in Texas, the U.S. Department of Justice is now taking the state of Texas to court over SB4, a measure that makes crossing the border illegally a state crime. It empowers state and local law enforcement to arrest people they suspect of entering the country illegally and would allow state judges to remove migrants from Texas and send them back over the border. This was Texas Governor Greg Abbott's reaction to that lawsuit, writing, I like my chances, and saying his state is the only one trying to stop undocumented immigration. But the main point the Justice Department is making here is that it's not Texas's job. Under long-standing U.S. law, enforcing immigration is something the federal government does. Here's what DOJ lawyers wrote in that lawsuit. Quote, Texas cannot run its own immigration system. Its, enforce, its efforts through SB4 intrude on the federal government's exclusive authority to regulate the entry and removal of non-citizens, frustrate the U.S.'s immigration operations and proceedings, and interfere with U.S. foreign relations. So to break all of this down, including that legal filing, we turn to Matt Rivers, our Mexico City-based correspondent who covers immigration for us. Matt, uh, my first question to you is, uh, obviously the U.S. government here saying it's not your job, Texas, to regulate immigration. That's the federal government's job. What is Texas's response to all of that? Simply put, Jay, they're just saying, no, we don't agree. We don't think uh, that it is only the federal government's job, if only because it is the state's job to protect its own state citizens, and that's what Texas is saying it's doing here. What the federal government is pointing to is that long-standing precedent that you mentioned, including a recent Supreme Court case, a little over a decade ago, back in 2012, our viewers might remember this Arizona law, a similarly tough immigration law called SB 1070, made it all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court largely struck down that entire bill basically saying it is the federal government's job to carry out immigration policy. Texas knows all of this, Jay. They know all of this, and yet they say that if the federal government is abstaining in its role as immigration arbiter, it must step in in order to protect its citizens because what it's saying is that its citizens are at risk because of the high number of migrant crossings here. And one thing I'll add, the Texas Republicans that passed this law, they knew they were going to get challenged in court. So in their minds, it's a win-win. They're fighting the good fight, and if they lose, well, they can tell their constituents, hey, we're still trying to do something about all this immigration. And if they win, well, hey, they're carrying out the immigration policies they want to come, that they want to carry out. So this is something Texas Republicans have been planning for since they passed this bill. This is my highlighted copy of that complaint. The Department of Justice filed the word Arizona, that Arizona case, they cite it all over this thing. So you're exactly right. I, I want to pivot, though. We're learning today that the city of New York is suing the bus companies that Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been using to send migrants to New York and other Democrat-led northern cities. Abbott is, is just now responding. What more are we learning about that? Yeah, what Greg Abbott is saying is that he, he thinks that this lawsuit is frivolous and that it actually might be against the law in terms of what Mayor Adams is trying to do here, because what Abbott is saying is that it was the United States government who permitted these people, the, these migrants, to come into the United States, and because of free travel between the states, Abbott is saying that these migrants have a right to go to New York City. Also, what Abbott is saying is that each one of migrants, each one of the migrants that have been going on these buses, they have signed a piece of paper, they know where they're going, and they're making the choice to do so. They're not doing so against their will. What I will tell you is that that's not entirely true, and I know that because I've spoken to migrants who went to get on those buses, and maybe they signed a piece of paper. Was it clear that they didn't that they didn't uh, that they had an option to not sign the piece of paper? No, that wasn't <coughs> clear to them. They had no idea what was awaiting them in New York City or uh, in Chicago or one of these other cities that they were going. So it's not so black and white. When Abbott says every migrant is fully informed of the decision that he or she is making, I can tell you that's not entirely the case. But that does not stop Greg Abbott from going against what Eric Adams is doing here, saying that they're already in the United States, and because of that, they're allowed to travel freely within, within the U.S. as long as no one's forcing them to do so. Matt, one more thing for us. We saw that contingent of more than 60 House Republicans go down to the border yesterday. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson was there. He said America was at a quote-unquote breaking point with the current number of undocumented immigrants coming into the United States, clearly signaling that this is going to be a key political issue for Republicans in 2024. It, give us a reality check of what you have seen in your coverage of the border and what officials there are telling you the situation is and what they need. Yeah, I, I've been covering the border for years now, and I keep coming back around this time every single year, so I've got years past to compare it to. 
it is a crisis. There's no other way really to describe it. And I say that from the point of view of the migrants, of law enforcement, of local municipalities, of state governments. It is bad for everyone involved in what is happening at the border, and it is simply unsustainable. When you talk about what is needed at the border, it's basically more of everything. It's more people to process asylum claims. It's more people to help the migrants get the kind of food, water, housing that they actually need. It's more law enforcement capability because Border Patrol and CBP stretched entirely too thin. And when you're talking about long-term solutions here, <clears throat> there's really two things that need to happen. One, more resources needed at the border to deal with this uh, influx of people. But two, I feel like a broken record, but it is comprehensive immigration reform because we have an immigration system that is designed for the immigration realities of the mid 80s. And yet we haven't upgraded it or, or updated it in decades. And so our immigration system entirely outdated, unprepared to match this moment. This is the new reality of so many people coming to the border. And the United States immigration law simply is not prepared to meet those challenges. Matt Rivers, thank you as always for us, sir. I really appreciate your time. Thank you again. I want to take this now to our big story panel. Joining us today, our ABC News contributors, Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse, former Trump administration official Sarah Isger, former Democratic U.S. Senator from North Dakota Heidi Heitkamp, and op-ed columnist for the Los Angeles Times, LZ Granderson. Thank you all. Welcome in. Heidi, I want to start with you because you heard Matt say, comprehensive immigration reform. We know the Senate is right now locked in negotiations over that exact issue. Yesterday in that trip to the border, though, we were just talking about the Speaker of the House and what he said down there, and he also drew a kind of line in the sand. He said Republicans would not consider any kind of immigration reform that comes out of the Senate if it doesn't include elements of a hardline border bill that they passed last year. All of that is the wind-up to say, how do you think that's going to go over with your former colleagues there in the Senate, where you need bipartisan agreement to get anything done? Well, you, you, this whole issue screams out for people working together. How can you say this is a crisis and we aren't pulling together? And I, I mentioned that on both sides, and I really applaud the Senate. But I want everyone to remember that back uh, in one some of the first couple of years that I was in the Senate, we passed overwhelmingly immigration reform, almost 70 votes. And Paul Ryan, who was then the speaker, refused to take it up because it's always been a political football, much the same way it is today in the House of Representatives. But, you know, the one thing I do want to say is I find it interesting the northern mayor saying we can't possibly handle all of these migrants when they expect Texas to handle all the migrants. This is something we all need to work together to solve this problem. We need to work with our neighbors to the south. LZ, you heard Heidi mention there the false starts we've had before in immigration reform. What would it say this time around if the United States again falls short on a compromise here? Well, unfortunately, I'm expecting us to fall short on the compromise because, you know, Heidi's 100% correct. Uh, unfortunately, we have too many elected officials who benefit from there not being a resolution to this. And that has been a driver on both sides for way too long. You know, my real concern about all of this is just how awful it looks as far as how the Biden administration has been handling this as it pertains to Democrats. You expect Mike Johnson, Demo Republicans, to use this opportunity to drive home their message. But the fact that you have so many Democratic mayors and governors also jumping in and saying that they need help, that is a self-inflicted wound for the Biden administration. Sarah, I want to turn back very quickly to SB4, that new law in Texas. How do you see Texas's argument going over uh, with a federal judge and ultimately the Supreme Court? Is this a play to just get this in front of the Supreme Court, as Matt indicated some Texas Republicans have said it is? Well, we had a, a version of this case last term in front of the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, look, Congress has to give uh, you know, the executive branch money if you actually want them to do uh, immigration enforcement at the border. They haven't done that. And to Heidi's point, this is, by the way, not just uh, you know when Democrats control the Senate and Republicans control the House. Barack Obama had a unified government. He had the White House, the House, and the Senate and didn't do it, and so did Donald Trump. Uh, so, you know, you have these states just gasping for help because you can't have a social safety net where you're guaranteed hospital access, you're guaranteed an education, and then not have a border. No other country has this problem. Mike, we're in an election year. How do you see this current crisis at the border impacting voters? 
I think it's going to be a top of mind for voters going into, in particular, this presidential election cycle, and particularly if these candidates cannot broaden the conversation out that this just doesn't fall squarely uh, with the Oval Office, but actual funding needs to occur from Congress in order to assist to what Heidi said, some of these northern cities. To me, this is political gamesmanship at its finest when you have Governor Abbott strategically targeting Democratic states and blue states. If we want to make this a truly comprehensive immigration reform, it does include other mayors and governors of red states, too, as well, because we're all one nation that needs to solve, as Matt Rivers said, this antiquated comprehensive immigration reform. Mike, Sarah, Heidi, LZ, thank you for your time. Stay with us, keep your seats, because coming up, putting the first batch of unsealed Jeffrey Epstein documents in our spotlight, what we learned from them and what we didn't. Our panel gets into that after this. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live, streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Brooke Shields, the most photographed woman in the world. A sexualized child model. What happened to her isn't really about hers, it's just about women. I let myself be vulnerable, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about what happened. I thought my one no should have been enough, you know. When someone like Brooke Shields talks about it, it makes a difference. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, Monday night on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today? YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about. The new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Welcome back. In today's spotlight, a trove of previously sealed court documents related to Jeffrey Epstein were made public last night. More are expected to be released today. They're all from a civil defamation lawsuit brought by an Epstein victim in 2015 against his one-time paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell. A judge in Manhattan unsealed the documents after a long legal battle, and inside were the names of dozens of rich and powerful people who were allegedly in Epstein's orbit or had met him. These names 
names were mainly gathered from accounts of victims and others close to Epstein who alleged that these well-known people were in some way or another having a connection with the disgraced financier. Some mentioned in the legal papers have long been named as knowing Epstein, like former President Bill Clinton, former President Donald Trump, even the magician David Copperfield. Others were new, like model Naomi Campbell and actor Leonardo DiCaprio. Many have said that they had no awareness of Epstein's crimes. So let's bring back our panel here, Mike, Heidi, Sarah, and LZ. Mike, first to you, what stands out to you the most about this whole Epstein saga? The, the, what stands out the most is the, the question that there wasn't a there there. As of now, we've yet to see what is yet to be released. Uh, but as the documents have indicated, there were no wrongdoings by other people that was affiliated with this, aside from Epstein. This goes into the large narrative of the conversation is, are people guilty by association? It's no doubt uh, that once you get to that type of income level and access level, that they do tend to be friends and travel in the same packs together, same events, same circles. Um, and so as uh, people are responding that, yes, I was friends or in association with them, but I had no idea of all the illegalities uh, that he was doing. Sarah, the legal question to you here, the first thing that drew a lot of attention about Epstein was that plea deal that he got in the mid-2000s. He was able to pull that off with the help of some powerful and expensive lawyers, at least in part. What does that say about our justice system? Yeah, it says that the next time you see a federal public defender, you should give them a hug and thank them for their work. It's a hard job to be a criminal defense attorney, uh, and they're overworked and overburdened. So, yes, if you can get a private defense attorney, you're going to be able to sort of work that system because they don't have the time to actually take a lot of this to trial often. I think this is a tragic case. I wish we spent more time talking about how to prevent sex trafficking in the world and specifically in this country. And it kind of goes back to our previous conversation about immigration reform, because right now we're basically in incentivizing people to bring children over the border. They end up in factories with child labor, sex trafficking. It is a crisis. Heidi, uh, former President Trump has not been accused of any wrongdoing in these documents, but he is mentioned. Uh, what do you make of that and any impact it could have uh, on his run again for the White House here in 2024? I think it's so interesting, people trying to make political uh, hay on either side here. I think it's what Mike said, are we guilt by, is this guilt by association? But I also find it upsetting that the MAGA people will point the finger and say, look who was on there, all these prominent Democrats, and never once mentioned that Donald Trump, you know, basically was affiliated and associated um, in a social way with Jeff Epstein. I think the bigger question for me is, who killed him? Because I'm not sure that he uh, committed suicide. That there just there is way so there's so much scandal here, and it runs really deep. LZ, to you, there are a lot of online sleuths now pouring through these documents right now. There's a lot of misinformation that's coming out of that too. The word Epstein was trending on X yesterday. What do you make of that, and why there is so much interest in this case? Well, I think the biggest driver for this is the relationship with Donald Trump and whether or not there's any additional information that could satisfy people that either want to see him off the ballot or in jail or punished in some way. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, I think that is the biggest issue or the biggest driver to what comes out of this right now is does this impact the former president? And if it does, does it impact the voters? Because then that's the potential to actually change the narrative of the general election potentially. But until that sort of, you know, other shoe falls, I think it's interesting to talk about in terms of the names that come up. Obviously, it's about our justice system and the access to wealth and power. But in terms of 2024, if it doesn't directly impact not Donald Trump in a negative way, I don't see it getting a lot of traction politically. Mike, Sarah, Heidi, LZ, thank you all. We have one more stop for us here coming up in our last call. Their cups runneth over? Question mark, the frenzy over the Stanley Cup when we come back. This is ABC News Live. 
the crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. After serving eight years in prison for the murder of her abusive mother, she's free. And now, tomorrow morning, the all-new GMA interview. What will she say now? What will she reveal? Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Good morning, America. Tomorrow. Tonight, with tensions rising in the Middle East, the threat of wider war, plus tracking a major storm, the Northeast bracing for possible heavy snow. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Everybody in that home is okay. To catch you up with what happened overnight. We are here at fashion's biggest night out. What's happening today, YouTube has unveiled a new set of policies. What people are talking about, the new ad campaign. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. A real life Barbie dream house. A name change for the Wienermobile. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Traveling with President Biden in Ireland, I'm Karen Travers. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. All right, time now for our last call. What's causing a stir at Starbucks and Target locations, you ask? It's the much-coveted Stanley Cups. The limited-edition bright pink cup released nationwide yesterday. It's causing long lines, overnight campouts, and mayhem, mayhem, I tell you, at stores. The 40-ounce Quencher is the third product released from Starbucks in Stanley's Galentine's collection. The cup has been one of the most popular gifts of this holiday season, too. The mugs, they cost less than 50 bucks, but on eBay, they're now selling for over $200. And its durability has been on display in this viral video by a woman whose car erupted into flames, yet the Stanley Cup remained inside and intact. It was in a fire yesterday. It still has ice in it. We bring back our panel now, and you can all be forgiven, as I did, for thinking that the Stanley Cup was something that you won in hockey and not something that you drank liquid out of. Apparently, it's both or all or, or neither. Uh, Elsie, to you, uh, this is a water bottle, and it's causing a craze. What do you make of this? Well, I wanted one up until I saw what happened with the car, and I'm sitting there like going, I don't know if I want to be drinking out of things that can't melt. I just, it's just, it doesn't make me feel comfortable. It's too good for you, is what you're saying. You don't want something just, like that. Yeah, I need something cheaper and more, like, meltable, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Heidi, we turn to you now. Your thoughts on the Stanley Cup craze. Well, my dad was a seasonal construction worker, and Stanley thermoses were the standard for every construction mm. worker. So let's not just focus on Starbucks. Let's give a shout out to the blue collar. Um, although at these prices, my dad would shake his head if he were alive and say, that's just craziness. Buy, buy a full thermos and do it right. Wait, it's the same Stanley? I didn't know that. I'm the children of a construction family. I'm the child of a construction family. I had no idea it was the same Stanley. So thank you for teaching me that. Um, Sarah, we turn to you. Long 